Good morning, everyone. My name is Binks. I'm joined by my great friend, Corbeck, and we are bringing you the Custown University Esports Rainbow Six Siege LAN of 2022, and it's looking to be a great one. We're going to have our first two contenders of the Drexel Dragons taking on the University of Cincinnati Bearcats, and both these teams look are looking to bring a lot to the table in this competition. They sure are. It's an exciting day here, Banks is a land. It's always good to see teams playing against each other, but let's take a look at our rosters here and get ourselves started this morning uh, and see our teams and the players that make them up. I think we have a roster screen. Whoa, 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 check. There we go. There we go. It's Drexel, Drexel University, University of Cincinnati there right off the top. Yeah, really looking forward to seeing both these teams. First all are the Drexel Dragons. We got OSD Trooper, Ri-Fi Guy, Italian Mafia, and Ducks. Of course, the captain of the Drexel uh, Dragons is going to be Ry Guy, Ryan Fansica, uh, Vanstock. Sorry very much for that one. But he is in his senior room, and he's looking to do well and have some fun with this. And this team looks like they are ready to come and compete. They've really been able to been on the up-and-coming rise. They're currently in the CEA Spring Open, the NACE uh, Varsity Premier Collegiate Leagues. And we are constantly able to see this team on the rise, working together and building chemistry. 
That's right, let's take a look at their opponents, the University of Cincinnati, the Bearcats here, Mango Fett, Pop, Kithin, Bread, and Bean Chillin', Captain Kithin right there, this is his last semester here in his uh, degree for Materials Engineering, so uh, he's excited to be out here leading this team and hopefully leading them to victory here today uh, at this LAN. Yeah, just a moment before we get into our match. Our first match of the day is going to be on Clubhouse. It's looking to be a big one because I think Clubhouse really is going to be able to show exactly what both these two teams bring to the table and really show you how confident they are. And we can see our lovely bracket for the day. So our first match, Drexel University and University of Cincinnati. Then we're going to have the host of Cuztown University taking on West Virginia. Um, and then we can move on to our losers bracket. So in case you're never seen a double Elam bracket, what happens is everyone starts on the top. And then once you lose a matchup, you're going to lose, go down to the losers bracket. And on your second elimination, that's it. You're done. You're going home. You're done for the day. So two wins. You're out. Simple enough. Double Elam. Yeah, it's a simple process. Also, keep in mind things changing a little bit here in terms of the actual game length five and five will be the round divider i believe not the usual what is it uh first to seven as it were so actually first to six here uh and it'll be best of ones as well so these teams will only be playing on one map uh before they move on to the next match so drexel and cincinnati starting us off here on clubhouse let's go ahead and get an idea of what we might see from them hibana getting banned early on standard stuff here on club bank uh that's a very typical attacker ban you want to take those uh ex kairos pellets off the board prevent some of that verticality that hatch opening i'm sorry Mike was turned on properly, but um, it is exactly what you want to see in that scenario. And Flores definitely accompanies that by making sure that you can't just stick util on a wall and no one can get rid of it. And the Kaid being off the board makes that this might go back to a very old fashioned gameplay where we have the Thatcher outside accompanied by the Thermite and you might get a bandit trick on the inside. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that uh, more old fashioned style of siege. Yeah, it's interesting because Thatcher is an operator who has gone through some serious transitions, right? He used to be this this perfect, everybody had to ban him, you know, it was just the choice. Nowadays, uh, you can get by without having a Thatcher in your lineup. You can get by without having Thatcher banned as well. I mean, the addition of utility, just like the impact EMP grenades, has not rendered him pointless, but has certainly taken some of the pressure off uh, the need to take him out of the lineup. But, I mean, initially here looking at it, Cincinnati Defenders not coming in with that as an option. Of course, with the ability to change things around, you know, in the attacking prep phase, they can kind of do whatever they want here. Uh, not starting off on that uh, CCTV cash bomb site for what it's worth they're actually going to go ahead and power down uh in the basement and i agree with that i really do i think that's a, a good place to start i think CCTV cash has become kind of a kind of a pitfall for a lot of defenders it's not the site that it used to be it really isn't um i, I find that cctv a lot of the time is uh, a lot more attacker sided and it's a lot more comfortable for them because of all those long lines of sight they can just completely abuse uh, all their magnified scopes and i think that's something that we forgot old siege uh the defenders still had a lot of magnification on the scopes i think we all remember those good old days of jaeger acog those are long gone and the defenders are really just trying to force these close range engagements Right, you know, it's, it's a very valid uh, assessment, too, the way things have kind of shifted in the game overall. Interesting sort of defensive setup here. Uh, a couple of good little openings to take use of. Love the fact that Solus is in this lineup as well. Such a strong operator who's really just slotted so well into the game. Provides a ton of info. So uh, that'll be Brainax who'll be taking that over. Right, I got on the Maestro as well. That's another, I would say, actually kind of an interesting choice. We don't see a ton of Maestro anymore, but he remains a very solid operator choice in a lot of situations. Speaking of solid operator choices, though, Brett here on the Jackal, such a strong defender, really good for clearing out roamers. Ducks in particular is going to have to be very careful here. I believe he's the one who's being tracked right now. Which probably explains that quick impact grenade and uh, getting out of dodge right there all the way back to the bomb site by the looks of it. 
Yeah, one of the great things about this basement site is just your ability to rotate back on the fly and those key extensions that force the attackers to waste all of this crucial time as we see Cincinnati having to clear every single obscure angle because you want to make sure they're trapped all the way down in the basement and have no way out even though they still have those three key rotate points. And now what we're seeing here is going to be an impact trick from the Maestro. This is a very key point because you want to make sure that they don't have an opportunity to get the hatch open. And it does look like the Maestro will be successful in denying it as it's mainly Habana that has a good ability to open up that hatch. Yeah, and it's it's well done on that aspect as well. The trying to get the uh, trying to get the ace in to open the hatches is always a very difficult challenge, right? Because you just have to use so many Selmas to get the job done properly. By which I mean, I guess two, but still, it's a lot of Selmas, right? In the in the context of it, you only got a handful. Uh, I think they did not succeed in getting that hatch open the impact trick has basically denied that to them so they will have to go and look for some alternatives Bean chilling obviously getting taken out right here but a very aggressive push from brad i mean i knew this jackal was going to come to fruition eventually but brain Axe going ahead and shutting that down as well Ooh, playing fast and loose there though with those long angles down here in blue you got to be very careful Binks. you don't want to get caught looking here with only about 30 seconds left on the board yeah, this is when the exact push comes out. We see the Ayana Gemini Replicator coming down from Pop. But you got to be careful because you have to make sure that they don't spot you out. You don't want your push to be so clear that they can move all of the resources. Mango's going to get a frag onto Raigai, evening things out from a 3 to 3. But look at that. Pop also fires it, and it's just a fiery storm of red. And it's all left up to Quinera. Just waiting, playing inside of Arsenal. He's going to be able to find one. Look for Mango. Has to swoop out the Kerdos secondary pistols. Tries to spray, but it's going to be Kithin to find the opening frag. And Cincinnati takes the first round. Ah, uh, well, bit of a bummer right there. I mean, a good effort on the side of the defenders. Sort of just got eaten up in those last 30 seconds. And we see that. You know, that's a fair, fair thing to have happen right there. Uh, you know, the last minute execute. You got all the defenders kind of maybe out of position or not in the places where they necessarily want to be. And I think that was part of the situation that they were in right there. A lot a lot of bodies stacked up in blue and they sort of just got slowly kind of squeezed out like a tube of toothpaste uh and that kind of led to those kills coming in on the backside. uh good start for the attackers cincinnati gotta be happy about that one you take out one of the strongest bomb sites on the map early on it's gonna force a rotate out of drexel as well they're gonna go up here to uh cctv cash for round number two and this is where you might see that thatcher that you were discussing a little bit earlier banks you might you might see him i don't know it's, it's not being shown in the lineup so far uh, the temptation certainly would have to be there interesting that a potential swap to thermite is being shown there by mango fat but it looks like they might stick on the buck no thermite i think will be making an appearance obviously some sort of discussion going on right there i'm very curious to see how they intend to, to breach this wall though uh with just two double breachers you would think you want something there for a little bit of a countering of the hard breach denial perhaps they'll bring some emp grenades i don't think any of those operators can run them though and so that's the case um they're gonna go into this without anything to deal with this bandit so either they're gonna ignore it completely here Binks, or they're going to find some way that i can't quite discern to get around this challenge yeah the only thing i can reasonably see is clearing down below and using that old-fashioned sophia mm -hmm. impact from down below um that's all i can really think about um to to get this all done and dusted of course we have all these nades that they can easily dump so you can use the stuns and here comes the nades and that will blow the first two they have to be concerned and this has actually been a really good clear being chilling to find rye guy they're done and off the board and that's gonna be the hard reach open all within the first minute very impressive from cincinnati as uh, we didn't see that coming up and uh, clearly drexel was not expecting to have such an obvious utility dump so early in the round yeah, neither was I, to be honest. Usually that doesn't really work out because highway is, you know, a relatively vulnerable position right there uh, from the sense that you can kind of maybe get a roamer up there in master bedroom who can put out some fire onto that balcony and make it very uncomfortable or just playing off that window in and of itself is always a bit of a dangerous prospect. But troopers ADSs, they either got burned out or they were slightly mispositioned right there, not anticipating that, like you said. And this is the end result of it. I mean, the thing is, the breach is open here, but there's no... No one really from Cincinnati on that side, right? They're all playing sort of over through construction. So they may have opened up a second front right here, but I don't know that they've necessarily managed to actually, you know, do much for themselves in this context. 
Yeah, it doesn't seem like it's done too much, but... It's a bit more, uh, actually, I think, open in general than they probably want, and you'll might see as the round progresses here, Cincinnati begin to make some sort of rotate. That said, I mean, they managed to breach cash here as well. And in truth, this is a very dangerous breach indeed. Cuerno there just rolling off the side, staying alive, now has to fall back one more kind of a uh, defensive position. It's absolutely lit up by Pop there, catching in through those peak holes. Trooper taking down one more. That's Bread, who's knocked off the board. Uh, and it's not going particularly well here for the Drexel defenders, falling back, trying desperately to hold on to cash. I mean, they've got some options to play with at the moment, but a potential nasty crossfire opening up here from Mango Fett. Mango Fett throwing in a couple of flash grenades, trying to open this up if possible. The Nitro Cell over the top finds no one. And then it's fall back and grab the diffuser because there's only about 20 seconds left on the clock, and you've got to go ahead and make a play here at some point in time. Ducks absolutely waste pop right there. And there's Ducks again coming in on the backside and cleaning up yet another kill. Yeah, I really like that round from Drexel. Like they Biggs did might a be great job. Some audio issues here, and they early morning. Not as early. <laughs> not as early. Uh, I think, for I think, I think I'm good. I'm me, talking right say, now. If you can hear me uh, off the top of the deck, but we'll see if we can get him back in here in just a second. Hello. Hello. Um, he is broadcasting from a here. proper studio, so he's got to do uh, proper studio things over there. So we get ready for round number three here. Uh, setting up Drexel one, Cincinnati one again. Going to six here on the map, so a little Attack bit shorter. We are rotating over bomb. now to gym bedroom. Basement will not be attempted again by Drexel. I guess they're waiting on that one. Perhaps turning it into a bit of a me? tertiary bomb site. Uh, yeah, just per maybe turning into a bit of a tertiary bomb site for them at the moment, which is interesting because usually, usually, at least in this day and age, I think we're starting to get to the point where CCTV cash is becoming what I would call the tertiary, uh, and these teams are sort of stepping up into a bit of a different different setup here. Love the use of the castle here, the castle and the frost mats. Uh, I think it's a very, uh, a very wise and interesting choice. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb. And there you go. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> um, yeah, I really we've had from Drexel last round. And I'm, the little part that I wanted to add was the uh, the discipline on when to push from Drexel. Like, they, they slowly expended their utility. And I think that they were able to slowly wait Cincinnati out, forcing them to know that they were on the attack, pushing up, having to get that case down. Um, it, it, if Cincinnati had just a little bit more time to work around the map, I can see that going a different way. But Drexel knew that they had time on their side. You certainly did. And this Jackal coming in again here from Drexel, going to put a little bit of pressure, try and clean up some of those roamers. And a relatively convincing push here rolling in through CCTV. Uh, there's a bit of an extension out to Cash. They certainly put the reinforcements down. But in terms of actual defenders holding this positioning, well, it's just Rifi Guy, the captain right there, uh, kind of waiting behind this shield. Interesting cross placement. You don't always see a shield right there. It's kind of a nasty pixel peak, sort of waiting for somebody to bust down that castle barricade so they can maybe get a couple of shots or even a feet shot if they can manage it. Thanks, but nobody uh, nobody obliging them just yet. Yeah, you always have to miss those pixel shields that we were so accustomed to a couple of years ago. And it could work out, but it's a question of, well, is there going to be a nade that tries to, to take them out? And we're going to have Brainax, who actually goes down. They were playing also in construction. Whether or not they're able to rotate to a safe spot to get revived is still up for debate. I really like this slow play from Cincinnati, making sure they use the drones. Raigai is going to be able to take out Pop. That's your Ayana. That's your ability to consistently drone, and that's a creative play. Drop your bandit down to the first floor. Have one of your players rotate down to somewhere that might not have as much uh, heavy fire. Great play so far, and they'll be able to get right back up with that 20 health. And that's an extra gun turning this back into a 5v3 favoring the defenders. Reloading. Oh, uh, it'll be a... 4v3 now, Kith and the captain finding a kill right there, Bread finding the other one, closing it up just a little bit, and slowly but surely, uh, the rope tightening here around the waist of Drexel, Manglefett getting another one in there as well, so Cornero is down, 
That just leaves the Jaeger holding in from this position. Could have gotten a kill opportunity right there, but he won't find it. 2v3, boiling away, waiting for somebody to just step through that window into the frost mat obligingly. That's what they're looking for right here to maybe even this up. Difficult position for the Jaeger to be playing. Trooper has to kind of fall back there. He's got multiple angles he could get picked off from. Instead, though, it's Ducks who backs up here, kind of exposes themselves to this opening, trying, I think, to get a cheeky kill in there. Will find it. The MPX singing and getting Mango fed off off the board and a rapid cleanup there from the Drexel side. The Frost Mat did come into play at the end, Binks, and it worked <laughs> out. Yeah, I always like to see Util getting used across the board, and that's exactly what we got to see there as Drexel connect their second round in a row, and that means that they're going to be going back to re-attempt the Church and Arsenal room. What my question is here is what are they going to change and what do they have to change going into this site? Because last time Cincinnati did a great job of cornering them out and giving them no safe place to play. But my biggest concern is going to be them getting those hatches in a timely manner because Ace just does not do a good enough job, in my opinion. Need to locate and as many bombs as they can. Yeah, no, I agree 100%, but I mean, you're kind of uh, you're kind of in a difficult situation, right, where you don't have any good choices. The only thing I could think you bring an operator like Buck, who does have sort of the, the you know, handy-dandy little hard breach charges that you can bring along with you. And I think that's probably the easier option here. You could always try and play the, the kind of thermite, right? You put the, you put the uh, exothermic slightly off to the side and, and try and blow it up that way. But there's far too much, I think, of an opportunity here for the defenders to, to maybe get that one off. I was actually gonna say, they might be looking for some sort of impact trick right here, but really in terms of the operators who have impacts and could actually do that, it's uh, relatively limited, right? Rifi, Guy, and Brain X are the ones who would be in that position. Uh, and they're not really going to be the guys who uh, who are able to make that happen, if I'm being honest, because they should be out on the roam. Also, the fact that Brain Axe is using the shotgun, I find that very interesting um, in, in the context of Solus. A lot of pressure being put on the use of the SMG-11 right there. Right, if I had a guy trying to get an early pick very cheekily uh, playing up around CCTV, but he won't find anyone and will instead fall back. Red is going to be lit up to a sliver of HP. One bullet from any single one of those guns. Even Brain Axe's shotgun from far away should be able to do the trick. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, quite curious about that shotgun play because yes, you can use it to open up um, walls, but it's not a very effective shotgun to say the least. But early round clearing coming out from Cincinnati and it seems like they haven't taken nearly as much control as they did last time at the two minute mark. Not to say that they've stalled out. They just don't have... As as much as they necessarily need because they haven't made their way into the building there's no roam game and this is exactly what a defender from drexel would want they want to make absolute certain that the players while clearing don't have enough time to actually clear the site properly and that's what we're seeing yeah, they've kind of bamboozled them, honestly, on the entry here. I think they could have been a little bit more aggressive, but look, I Rifi guy waiting here to punish that, right? So, uh, again, the, the perils of roam clear. It's Kithin who dies as well, the hard breacher. Rifi guy there taking bread out, and now it's losing a huge, valuable source of intel. And again, this, uh, this is just all vigil all the time here on the top floor, and he's going to peel off, and I think that's actually probably not a bad choice. He's, he's done more than enough. Uh, picking up those kills on the top deck, and that's going to put a lot of pressure on the remaining three members of this Cincinnati side to actually get in here. You're going to basically, you have to get Mango Fat in a position where he can breach some hatches. That's the only way I think that you're going to turn this into a serious, legitimate push. It's not happening up there, unfortunately. Thank you, Observer, for picking up on that one. Kind of curious on the other side, though. Let's take a look and see if they manage to breach either of those hatches, and they do get one, so they will have the opportunity to at least push kind of trophy if they so choose unfortunately i worry all three of them stacking up in the same place i know that you don't have a lot of choice in these situations binks but it's not ideal yeah if you all funnel in you're gonna have a defender just like vigil be able to pick you off or in that case a fast shooting shotgun might be able to take more than one of you off with a single 
uh, shot. Meanwhile, Mango's gonna make his way in through blue proximity. Mine on blue secret stairs is going to ring out, but it won't matter. Mango to find his frag. Eight seconds to go. Case has to go down. Since now he's gonna have to rush right on in. Rye gotta find one. Refrag by Pop, but there's gonna be Rye Guy and Ducks to find the two remaining frags, and Drexel go up by two, winning their third consecutive round. Well, that was good play there. Drexel, really, I mean, I kind of built off the back of Rifi Guy, who got those early kills, and you can see uh, the scoreboard here giving you a good idea of how things are looking. The kill differentials are uh, really showing right there, as you would expect. Uh, five for Rifi Guy, five for Duck, sort of leading the scoreboard here. Uh, the highest kills coming out of a good equal spread, I would say. You know, Mango Fett, Kith, and Pop, they all have three, but not quite enough. I will say, too, just looking at it here, uh, they've put themselves in, you know, it's not that they put themselves, I guess I shouldn't say that. They had no, I don't know how much agency they had in the process. Uh, but it is always rough to start out on the attack on Clubhouse, right? Like, it's a well-known map. Obviously, mm -hmm. you can make a lot of hay here, uh, Binks, but it is not uh, It is not an easy attack to map by any, or to map to attack, I should say, by any stretch of the word. Can you tell that it's uh, 8 o'clock in the morning for me? <laughs> No, of course not. It's not an easy attack uh, to map uh, either. Can you imagine? <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, may, so may, many my X's main takeaway from Clubhouse. Yeah. My main takeaway from Clubhouse is that you need to, as the attacker, try to isolate angles and make them favor you. And we're going to CC for this final round. Thermite being taken off the bat. That is a very important part. Um, once again, no Thatcher. And the way they cleared it last time was effective. But I would not be surprised to have a, a C4 prepped and ready to wait for the the actual barricade to be broken open. And you throw your C4, you're going to catch two of them. Now, whether the information that there's two players out there is readily available, I, I don't know how apparent that's going to be. But it all comes down to how is Drexel going to counter the attack of Cincinnati. But more importantly, what is Cincinnati going to change? I want to see them actively using everything they capture from the breach. If, if they don't try to isolate that angle and cut off any rotate inside of CCTV, then it's going to continue to give Drexel the freedom and advantage to just prounce on their opponents at any moment they choose. And that's not something the attackers want. Mm. Uh, it's true, and, you know, there's an operator on the board that uh, we haven't talked about much overall, but I think it's worth mentioning. It's the... I think second time now, maybe the third time actually, uh, that Ducks has come out here on the Valkyrie, who is so strong. Um, she usually gets eaten up in the band phase. She didn't on this one. A zombie got taken out instead, and that's, you know, a valid choice. Uh, but I think it, some of the Intel game that has been played by Drexel is 100% related to their fact that they were able to get the. Oh, he couldn't do it in time. He pulled off, and I was hyping up the Valkyrie pick, and Ducks, or Ducks gets whacked by bread right there. Ironic. <laughs> as it's uh, usually the other way around uh ducks do love bread but in this case the bread bites back well ducks are relegated to watch their cams for the remainder of the half as this is our final round of drexel on defense before they go to the long dreaded attacking side but exact same flaw as the first time yes the ball is open and yes the defense have no way of knowing that there's no one out there watching it which gives you freedom to rotate up, but you can't rely on that ghost sixth attacker to keep holding that angle for you. So I, I don't know how much I like it, but if it does get red, that uh, doesn't get red by Drexel that they're able to rotate, then this could work absolute wonders for Cincinnati's attack. It certainly could. And just as a disclaimer, don't actually feed ducks bread. It's bad for them. Feed them like seeds <laughs> instead. It's true. It's true. Everyone's like, oh, I'm going to go feed Duck's bread. It, like, bloats them, and they can, uh, I don't know, explode. So don't do it. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. Jackal here, kind of, again, I, I actually really love what we've seen from the Jackal play of the University of Cincinnati side. I feel like it's been so kind of useful for them, but it's Bean Chillin' who actually steps in from the breach and picks up the next kill here. And now it's Drexel who's on the back foot. We've seen this situation before. Drexel definitely capable of playing out of it. Brain Axe, the one who's kind of starting the run here with the MP7, trying to regain some of the momentum. 
Uh, so a 4v3, now you've lost your Jaeger, you've lost your Valk. It's not the worst losses at an early stage, but things are about to become a lot more difficult because they're going to be able to get this construction breach open in cash. And now it's going to be Quarnero who's feeling the pressure here, holding a similar defensive position to last time. Now I want to just emphasize, these they're all playing on Eastern Stairs and there's not a real way to be watching someone pushing in from the breach right now. It could have massively favored them. Kitten is going to swing around. Meanwhile, Brainax gets a refrag on to pop. All the kills are just being detonated round and round. Brainax has the C4, could go for the denial. He is going to be able to spray, get a triple kill in the round. Mango Fett is going to successfully get the d down. Late on the Nitro won't matter as Quinero finds Mango Fett and it's all left up to being chilling on this Zofia, having to play this post plant they have the long angle the amplified scope they just have to be worried are they going to get flanked they are going to tap the defuse this is going to prompt the Sophia up that's a beautiful kill trying to swing but it's going to be brain axe with the quad kill to give the drexel dragons a three point win the lead and four consecutive rounds in a row corvette Beautiful recovery there by the Drexel Dragons, because I remember halfway through that round, it was looking significantly more grim than that, right? They didn't have the numbers, and I did say, hey, look, they can play out of this. And that's exactly what they were able to do, so an excellent recovery by them and locking it down on the 4-1 here. Obviously, with that slightly different round count, uh, it's going to be a little bit messier in terms of what an ideal spread is, but I don't think... I think we could both agree, Banks, that 4-1 wasn't it. That said, defender advantage now swapping over to the Cincinnati side so we'll see what they can actually do with this they're going to start in church arsenal as well they are also bringing that maestro into play valkyrie making an appearance again on the other side though drexel the operator that we started off talking all about this uh it was mute he is being brought here by trooper i wonder though if they'll trade that around because i'm not sure what advantage the mute is really going to give them on a basement hold in particular um Never a bad operator. Again, there was a reason why he was consistently banned, Binks. But in this particular circumstance, I think you might find more value from almost uh, running maybe in Ayana or actually pairing Sledge up with Buck so you can get some of those frag grenades in action too on this vertical play. Ten seconds to go. Yeah, I, I, I like having more than one soft breach, especially on this site. And th there we go. We are going to have the switch over to the SAS operator. You get the Ayana, and man, uh, it's almost like they can hear you. Your, uh, your calls will come <laughs> directly into fruition here. And with our three-minute attack phase now underway, Drexel has a plan, and they just have to execute it. Now, from what I can see from the early aspects of this round, I'm expecting Drexel to be very focused on getting... Um, not necessarily kitchen open, but church and making feel sure that every single person in that armory site feels very uncomfortable. But the first step to that is going to be Rifi Guy, the captain of the Drexel Dragons, clearing out and finding Bean Chilling, who's just sitting comfy cozy on the central red stairs. Going to catch him off guard from the drone, and that's going to result in the opening frag going the way of Drexel. There goes your roam. A very good win for Drexel at that. Is That's not going to be a thorn in the side late in the round, and it allows for a lot more clearing and look at this passive soft breach that allows the players of Drexel to now once again feel even more comfortable exactly what you want to see from an opening pick such a beautifully executed pinch right there as well on that kind of kill on the stairs it's sort of a worst case scenario here uh for the drexel roamer right fi guy getting very aggressive actually gonna back up just a little bit here for a moment by the way fascinating weapons choice uh on the uh jackal you don't see the smg uh making it its appearance very often but i do love to see it and its fatty drum bag but uh sledge playing two floors up trying to look for really long sight lines here still has frag grenades to bring to bear they've also got ducks on Yana with frag grenades too. Those are increasingly valuable resources here as the defensive positions that the Cincinnati side can hold are increasingly minimized. Though it's right by guy who strikes again. He's been such a critical force for the Drexel team, now leading them on the attack. You remember his uh, impressive round on visual. He's doing it again, this time on the other side of the ball. Yeah, I really like that he's maneuvering around and not forcing his way into Cincinnati's territory, but pushing with his team and making sure that the ground that he connects on is connected by his other teammates. And you can see that in the pitch towards blue, but just not ready for Mango Fett, who's just holding ready and waiting for that great Mossberg kill. 
They're going to keep waiting behind. And now the problem is, frag grenades can be cooked over that wall. And down goes Mango Fett. But the interesting thing is, you don't have point notifications on. So the attacks of Drexel are not going to know that he's been down. He'll be able to get back up. Immediately killed by Brain Axe. He's going to be able to connect onto two as he makes his way right on into the church site. All left up top to the Maestro of Pop. He'll be able to find one. Looking for a second. He's able to find it. Spraying down the hallway. This is looking a lot more winnable. The fuser has been planted, spraying, trying to go long. The remaining two players have two claymores in the way of Quanero, but not necessarily have to use them. Spraying, trying to find these Ooh. players. Keep in mind, they don't have the outlines like we do. It's a lot harder to spot these camouflaged operators looking towards Moto, trying to find any frag, any damage possible, because the attackers have damage in their side. They have time on their side, and most importantly, they have a lot of util on their side. And there's the ace of Quanero to put Drexel University onto a match point. <sighs> Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Nothing more to really be said about it. I mean, the Maestro is such a good operator for those clutch situations with the Alda in hand, but you can't win them all. And the 2-1 split there, always a really difficult prospect. Drexel just continuing to play very smart, uh, very put together. I kind of really can't overstate how much I enjoyed sort of their opening maneuvers right there. They got so much out of the entry play of a uh, Rifi guy to really make space for the team and kind of close angles down and slowly but surely just sort of pin Cincinnati back. So their only option was to kind of tighten up on the bomb site. Uh, and you can see the end result of that in the round differential. Looking ahead now, we go over to Jim's bedroom. This is a this is maybe a little bit of a better prospect for Cincinnati, right? I don't think either of these teams has looked particularly comfortable on that basement site um so we'll see if they can maybe pull it back together on the other side again i i do really like uh this defensive setup i love the addition of the castle i love the addition of the frost in there as well you're giving them a lot of utility that they need to clear uh and i will say too i always appreciate alibi i think she's such a strong operator she continues to be such a strong operator uh and she adds kind of a really good maybe kind of cash hold uh here if that's what the extension that they choose to make and just by where they're investing these 80 Yes, is Binks. I think that's exactly what we're going to see. Push slowly underway for Drexel. Now, the biggest thing about being on match point is that you don't want to get overzealous and think that you're unstoppable, especially when you have such a heavy extension, which I love to see from this bedroom setup from Cincinnati. It's a good extension, but the most important thing here is that you have to make sure you're ready for refrags. If you have a player get a quick pick, you want to make sure you're there ready to take things over. They're going to have some quick pings from Mega Fett, a player just sitting outside. Unfortunate they're not able to find a quick pick. But regardless, I'll digress on that one because the push from Drexel hasn't <laughs> seemed to take too much important. I was expecting a quick push into CC Corbic, but even with the droning, it seems like they, they've taken their time. They have no interest in contesting this side. And now finally, we're going to have the Stoll Jackal making his way while being droned towards Cash and Eastern Stairs. Jackal doing his own soft breaching right there. Just whipping out the shotgun and opening up a wall. And Drexel, I mean, they're doing exactly what they need to do, right? They're, they're pushing in slowly but surely. You've got the wall open here as well, so you can add more pressure onto this cash hold. But they've got to figure out a way to take this shield out, right? That's going to be the, the key sort of next step in this defense. Because as long as you have a Jaeger stacked up here, this is a significant threat to the flank of the attack. It has to be dealt with. It demands your attention. Uh, and I think they're really struggling on how exactly they want to sort of put together this puzzle. Rifi guy coming in. He'll be the one who does it, sneaks up the stairs <laughs> coming from down below and finishes him off. But they didn't account for a pop. I think they might have missed drone the alibi right there. And the kill coming in to punish them for their uh, rather aggressive bit of play. Swaps back to the other side. Pop gets one more, barely survives it. Doubles up, gets another one. That's three kills from Pop here at the University of Cincinnati Bearcats are holding cash against all covers right now two attackers left and they're both very low on help that uh, said one of them is brain axe who's kind of been a big killer here i say his name i speak it into death immediately wiped on the stairs bred the one to finish it off 
Here comes the slow walk of Trooper, just trying to get a kill for Pride at this point in time. He's got to find someone here. And unfortunately, I don't think he's going to be able to do much in this position. The 1v3 clutch with less than, you know, one chunk of health is not something I envy anyone. Steps up towards the gate here, slips into office, looking for someone to kill. Won't find anyone. Goes on the wide wraparound, looking towards construction. Five seconds left. And there it is. Bread waiting in the corner to finish it off. And a beautiful round on the defensive side here for the Cincinnati Bearcats. Let's just go and diagnose what Pop did there. I really like that they were able to play so slow um, in, in the way they just held cash. Angle to angle, they were ready and expecting where the next player could come from. And that just shows a lot of, uh, of comfort level in in how exactly they can hold that down and a beautiful replay here you have the single kill time to reload six bullets left and that perfect flick to the left gives them the third that was three instances that drex all sent one player in the first one was excusable they didn't know for sure the second one that push has to be coordinated between two players because if they flick between the two out is a very fast firing gun and the magazine is not overly massive which means it's gonna have to be two headshots giving the attackers the guaranteed trade and if you played for that then i see that being drexel's round but regardless pop capitalized and they essentially won the round for their team there they really did and it was a, it was a very good hold and also by the way a great illustration of the issue of mr droning <laughs> because <laughs> that was what started that whole process off. Um, I do believe they misdrone it. I'd have to go back and watch it again to make sure, but I'm pretty sure that's exactly what happened. I think that they thought that the uh, the, the shield was the only defense, and then they kind of breached that, and they were like, okay, finally we can begin our push here. Uh, and they were sorely disappointed. They were sorely disappointed to find out that there was more waiting for them uh, on the other side. Now Cincinnati with a little bit of life breathed back into them. I mean, the unfortunate aspect here for the Bearcats is they are still on match point, right? So you got to be frame perfect. You uh, you can't make any mistakes. Uh, and y the add-on to that is I feel like these things, uh, when you get to this start uh, point, can be so determined early in round if you just get like two or three kills, one kill even, mm. off the rip. Also, I got so distracted right there because I'm trying to figure out what the... What the point of the... Oh, not no. to be rude, I just don't know what the point of the reinforcement is I, in that I, spot. Okay, I, I can diagnose that one for us, Corbeck. Uh, I can try to understand. Please if you do. use Castle, you're, you're trying to direct the traffic of your opponents. This is a first floor bar defense, something we have not seen yet in this matchup, so I'd like to see that Cincinnati's trying it. But that means you want to isolate as many long angles as possible. So within that, I, I, I think that they want to make sure that all of Strip remains in control of Cincinnati and they want to make sure they have at least one player to take down with them. The next challenge is, of course, going to be maintaining the top floor coverage. And that's going to be a lot harder as Bean Chilling and Bread will both fall relegated to the bench for what could be the end of this matchup. Next up on the left is going to be uh, Kithin, who was droned out. And Raiga is going to find his third frag of the round on the hard breach of Thermite. Meanwhile, Ducks is going to get trapped in a frost map, but both Mango and Pop don't have any real capability to deal with that. You have the hatch inside of stage open, ready for the drop. The floor is being opened up. The ceiling all around the Echo of Mango Fett has been opened and a suppressed supernova. That's the one I have not seen in a very <laughs> long time. Corbett, not too sure about that one, but That's at brutal. least all of your shots will be suppressed. They have the Baron 9 for those slightly more long-range encounters. I'm starting to see the problem. You don't have the one, the magnification, and two, that recoil is a lot crazier to control as Mango's gonna try to make his way, but that's a quad kill from Raigai, wanting to end this one off real fast, all about the pot playing in strip, with next to their reinforcements hiding behind boxes. They have the spray from every single member of the attack coming their way as Drexel wants to be over with this. Ace going for the plant, making sure it's a default spot, want to put every second of pressure onto Pop. Slowly swinging towards the pool table. Swing out and it's the right guy with the ace and flawless round to win the first match for Drexel University. I was gonna say, give the ace. <laughs> Just let him have it. He's earned it. He's earned it. Uh, you can imagine the team love to see there, it. But, wow. <laughs>
<laughs> Love to see a great bit of play there uh, from from Ryfi guy to, to 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 walk it in at the end, right? Senior year, he's the team captain. Uh, what more could you possibly ask for right there than a flawless round ace to finish it off on match number one here on the day? Well, we are going to be giving you a little bit of a break before we come back with our second match of the day, which is going to be your host of the Custown University Bears taking on West Virginia. So you don't want to miss that matchup. So while we get everything set up, do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. And you can see our lovely bracket there because the winner of that match, this means Drexel is going to be playing Lebanon Valley, which is LVC, a very big competitor coming into this tournament, Corbeck. Indeed, something to look forward to. So don't go anywhere. We're going to be getting set up for our next matchup as all these players need to get towards their computers. And we'll be back with more Cuztown Land R6 action very, very soon. So, who are you? Uh, I'm Davies. I'm the captain of the LVC Rainbow Six team. And we're here at the Cuztown Land. Uh, how confident are you going into this next game? Uh, we are, I feel like we're a bit of on the higher side of the teams here, so we're pretty confident uh, coming into here. We've scrimmed basically all these teams before, so we know kind of a little bit about their play styles, kind of what's going on with them. Uh, we're feeling pretty confident, though. Is there anything else you did to prepare? Uh, for preparation, a couple of us went to the Six Invitational. That's like the World Championship of Siege. Um, it was a really cool experience. It was awesome there. Uh, we had a couple more team meetings this week to kind of figure stuff out for this week. A lot of people's first lands, including mine. So uh, we got to learn about the jitters, kind of doing that. We did some VOD reviewing last night, got some counter strats for some teams and such. But we're, we're a, little, a little bit more prepared than normal game day for regular collegiate matches, for sure. Uh, is there anything else you did to prepare? Uh, just kind of going over uh, teams, strategies. Really sure we're locking in our own strategies as well as not being too afraid to go off the paper get what needs to be done in the round but other than that not really thank you welcome back everyone to your Cuztown university esports rainbow six siege land of 2023 my name is binks still once again joined by my good friend corbick and we have a match between your Cuztown golden bears against the west virginia bobcats coming up very very soon yeah, that's right the host taking on uh, one of the visiting teams here, you can see that on our bracket right there, cuts down versus West Virginia. Of course, Drexel emerging victorious in round number one. They're moving on to play Lebanon Valley College. The winner of this game going to go on to play Robert Morris University. The other will have to go down the loser bracket and play Drexel. But let's take a look at our lineup here. It's the Golden Bears. Golden Eye Tribute, Tom's Thundy, and Skirt right there will complete it. A solid lineup if ever there was one. And I'm, I'm looking forward to see banks what the land host have in store for us here today yeah i really want to see these supposed uh strats from hell from tom z that we so elusively heard about during our uh, pre-game shows but let's take a look over at west virginia so if we look over we have fire truck colseco kai sorry kai and drake star and stewie so every single one of these players from the bobcats looking to bring a lot of experience to this matchup especially with the goal to grow their rainbow six siege community and just the esports community as a Whole, this team has a lot of potential coming into this tournament. Well, there you go. The lineups on display uh, for the second match of the day. Uh, I, I am also eager to see these these hellish strategies. I believe the the line uh, for for Cutstown from Skirt is that he uh, hates the game and he's only forced to play it by Tom Z, the OG. So uh, we'll, we'll see if that's the case here. I guess in this matchup, uh, but definitely promises to be a uh, a good one and, and one to enjoy watching. I'm sure. Yes, and we are going to be, I will confirm it, but we are going to be going to a theme park, a very interesting match for a best of one with uh, West Virginia on attack and Cuztown going to be on, um, actually, I don't have the information on who's on attack. I believe it might be Cuztown on attack and West Virginia on defense. I could be mistaken, though. 
Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll find that out. <laughs> we won't have a choice, as it were. Uh, but Theme Park is an interesting pick. This is a map, right, that I, I was was popular, sort of, in its day. It got reworked. It's come back. People still like to play it. Uh, I find it to be a really challenging map, personally. Yes. It's one of the maps that, gen in general, when I play the game, I consider it to be one of the hardest. Uh, it's really difficult for uncoordinated teams, which is probably why I find it so challenging to play unranked or something with people who don't know what they're doing. And attack on theme park, you might as well just be, you know, throwing a bouncy ball at a wall over and over again and hoping it comes back to you. So we'll see, too, what these teams have in terms of adaptation uh, and, and strategy here to show us as we go ahead and get started and jump into our band phase. It'll be cuts down on the defense. West Virginia Wesleyan taking over on the attack and cuts down with the first band. Well, I I can see a possibility of the Thatcher, but I, I'm more looking for Cuts Down to go for more of a hard breach band. We saw the Habana first match, maybe an ace here, but no, it's going to be the uh, utility clear of Flores. So get those RCE Rotero exploding drones out of the way because they do such a good job of clearing utility in our second attacking ban from west virginia is going to be that jackal so they want to make sure that they have a little bit of roaming freedom when they're on the defensive end so that means both thatcher as well as every single one of our hard reaching operators are remaining on the board for this match yeah, the hard part here is going to be basically getting, uh, for West Virginia Wesleyan, I should say, the hard part is basically going to be getting to the defensive half, right? Like, that's kind of what you're playing for because you've got a little bit more of a truncated round structure here. You're not going to have as much of wiggle room in terms of having a bad attack. So you really kind of have to be prepared for that. The Jackal ban, the Mira ban, I think those are both pretty reasonable bans, all things considered. Uh, Mira does have some setups here on Theme Park that you can use, and she is is always a solid Ooh. operator do quite like the soulless ban uh coming out of cuts town i think that's a not not bad choice i think the the issue i have is i feel like both west virginia wesleyan and cuts town uh, have handicapped themselves just a little bit, right? Because Solus is such a strong defensive operator. Cuts down starts on the defense. Uh, similarly, Jackal such a strong attacking operator. West Virginia Wesleyan has kind of uh, handicapped themselves a bit by taking them out of the pool, but they clearly have a plan. Uh, and it's Thatcher and IQ making an appearance. Those are some interesting additions to a lineup there that you don't see all the time anymore. Hmm. Uh, I think that if we ever. could. <laughs> I think we could look at that as the um, as more of a move towards possibly verticality, where Thatcher can go and go for those two dimensional clears with Thermite, um, but you can have IQ um, as well as the Dokeby. I can't remember, but when you ring the cell phones, if you can actually see um, the cameras in there, it, the, them having to pull out their phones, I don't remember. I feel like that would be very broken, but. Um, yeah, you do. You do? I'm pretty sure. Well, you if they, do. Yeah, it's I, any, I, I any I useful electronics. Being able to see it. Yes, yeah, so I, I, I feel like it will be allow, allow IQ to be able to see them. Um, but that all comes down to if they're going to be playing it vertically or horizontally. I really want to see Star uh, if she goes up above and shoots down onto the site. Of course, only half of it. Uh, prior to the rework and even current is the breachable part. Um, so everything inside a throw room is very safe for the defenders. Yeah, indeed. I mean, IQ is always a bit of an interesting choice. It's an operator who I think has a very useful gadget, but is very underutilized. In organized team scenarios like this, it's a little bit easier to get value out of her, you know, scanner, just because you can communicate a little bit easier with your squad. Uh, and that's something that should, I think, benefit them just a little bit here as we get started. I noticed that uh, Glossika, though, was kind of playing off on their own on that Thermite. I hope they have teammates nearby, because you don't want to be, you know, Glossika... Uh, as your hard breacher is not somebody you want to lose early on, right? Your entry here, uh, honestly, is probably star. And I think you're seeing that right now. If anything, I would say one of the downsides of this Wesleyan lineup is they don't necessarily have a really good dedicated entry player here. Yeah, you can try to use those Dokubi phone calls, but you don't have clear dedicated soft breach. And I think that's what we're really looking for. 
glow to find the first kill onto Tom C, freeing up the mute. Thunder to refrag onto auto. There goes your dopamine. No more calls. Swing out. It is going to be. Then he's going to get flash and is going to have to try to find the frag on the one they down. But he's going to find it. Two players on the side of West Virginia are going to be down. All of up to fire truck. He's going to try to attempt to revive the thermite of glow. Star is unknown, <laughs> possibly off site, but it's going to be a C4 all the way from boat that will win that one out for uh cuss town sorry it was an attempted rush right there i think was the general idea right get on the bomb site as quickly as possible get the plant down unfortunately they just sort of got trapped in the stack coming in and i mean let's be honest throne room armory a very strong defensive site overall the strongest on this map i would argue um so a rough start there but nothing that is uh i would say insurmountable though i still do kind of contend these lineups that are very support player heavy i mean that's essentially what we're looking at here right you got I mean, almost three, theoretically, four sort of support operators here in your lineup. Uh, you know, I would say that obviously Thermite, Thatcher, Ace, those are all supports. I would probably put Auto Lottery and Dokubi into that box. And I'd almost be tempted to put Star into that box as well on the IQ. Just that said, I mean, IQ does have that movement speed. They are pretty quick on the ball, but. Yeah, I don't know. You're you're making things a little bit diff more difficult for yourself, and I guess the idea of adding like a sledge, for example, uh, would help. Nomad is a, not a bad choice. I see Glacico basically going through uh, a series of choices here. Uh, Keandrake showing us a, a glass. That's wild. All right, let's see what they've got here. If a, if a glass, I, I a glass here. Here. A glass, a yig, and a nomad. What a choice. Uh, I want to, I just want to see what happens at this point. Now, what I thought we were going to have happen is the Ying switches over to take the smokes and the Glass takes smokes and you can smoke off an entire site, flash as well, and just have the, the Glass have the ability to just uh, free Ego Swing everything, but you don't have the utility to back that up. There's not even a smoke on the other side, not to mention the fact that it'd be counted by the Warden of Tribune. So, not too sure. Interested to see what exactly this glass does. They are able to open up hatches with their sniper rifle as it falls into the DMR, DMR class category. But I, I, I hope they drone, and it seems like they have okay drone economy. Seven drones remaining on the board. Make that six as one more will fall. Five, and we can just slowly watch in the top right corner of your scene to just let you know how much utility West Virginia have available. And a beautiful one tap from Thunky. There goes Otto. Is they're not going to be able to deploy a single one of those candelas. Oh, and there's another good kill as well. Glosico getting caught looking there by Tribune. And they'll kind of fall back now and, and reset the defense again. Cuts town emerging really strong. Thunty gets another one. Thundy gets one more. Fire truck there nearly had a moment of resurgence, but it was denied. And now everything on the shoulders of Key and Drake there. And Tribune just cleans it up and easy as you please with that MPX right there to, to wrap it up on the day. I'm really happy with the way they played that and it was very calm and calculated holding the angles and knowing where their opponent could be coming from and more specifically knowing it where their teammates were knowing where there could be a refrag potential or making sure to have that three second lap of intel because one of my favorite things that i always feel the need to mention is the fact that util is only good or sorry not util info is only good for three seconds mm -hmm. after that three second windows i hate to break it to you but your opponent has legs they can get up and walk somewhere else so after that three seconds, yeah. that's the only time you're going to either catch them rotating and have them specifically where the call comes from. And that's why anytime you die, especially in a tactical shooter like Rainbow Six, you have to make sure to call out immediately where your opponent was. None of this, like, slamming your desk, getting all mad, like, how did he shoot me? No, 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 no. That's not going to help anyone. Uh, you got to get mad after you give your call. And I think I mean, that, that's exactly what the setup helped for. Yeah.
It, it definitely did. I, I couldn't agree with that more. And to give you an idea, sort of the pedigree, the two teams that are playing, obviously cuts down. Uh, they're they're strong. I think they came in second place at last year's event. They they play in CR6 Open League and they make playoffs. Similarly, I think West Virginia Wesleyan came in uh, top ten in CR6. I want to say so. Uh, you know, these are these are good collegiate teams, right? Like they they know what's up. Uh, and so you see those kind of strategies being executed, and it just all sort of falls into place. I think, if anything, the challenge here for West Virginia Wesleyan is not so much a skill differential as it is just map, right? Like, it's just not, and I've said it before, I'll say it again, it's just not a fun map to attack. It's 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 a slog. Uh, and I think that's being illustrated a bit here as well. Love what Thundee is doing, by the way, with the Aruni really making the Aruni work. You saw all those good uh, DMR kills, and I bet... Oh! Oh, no! Oh, wow! <laughs> One more good, I didn't say you saw all those kill. DMR kills! Another great one tap. Um, <laughs> who's in charge? Is it Fundy or the DMR at Thirst for Blood <laughs> at night? It whispers to him in his sleep. Yeah, I, I have zero control over it. It was it wasn't me, bro. It, it wasn't. I, I promise. <laughs> but uh, I digress. Um, hopefully, as he was able to connect onto the important frags. Thundee is going to get lit up, not able to find an immediate frag, and it's going to be the counterpart DMR of the Dokeby of Auto to find that one. Tom Z also able to grab a kill onto Fire Truck. There goes your gridlock. Meanwhile, Glow has been down on the Twitch. Based on where they are, I have reason to believe they might have fallen off the roof. I'm not positive. Golden is going to get lit up all the way across inside of Cash Room. Meanwhile, his phone is ringing. That's why you put it on silent, especially when you're going to a theater. You always have to be ready and make sure that your opponent does not hear you. Golden swinging out knowing the opponent has the audio cues that he's coming, but now that it's checked off, spring up looking for them, and it's going to be Star with the advanced fire rate to win that one out. Kyan and Tribune to have gunfights all around. Kyan to win that refrag, leaving it all up to Tribune, who's gone on an absolute frenzy so far this matchup, 6 and 0. Oh. And it looks like Glow is going to potentially bleed out if their team does not get to them soon, making this 1v2 that much more winnable. There we go. Now Kyan opening up the site. Now, Bunk, it's very important to be able to manage your angles properly. Plant is going to be attempted by Kyan. Swing up. One kill for Tribune. Now down to a 1v1. Swinging is going to be Kyan to win that one out, and we're going to see a 1-1 scoreline. Well, there you go. A good attacking round right there from West Virginia Wesleyan to kind of punch their way back in. Um... Cuts down on the defensive side. I, I still think, right, obviously they're sitting with the advantage. I, I think that that round kind of was sabotaged from the beginning. Obviously not on purpose. Accidents happen. Uh, but, you know, you're going into it with a 4v5. Obviously, the defensive side, that's one who can swallow an early round loss a little bit better just because of the mm -hmm. nature of defense versus offense. Uh, but in that particular scenario, I think that the man disadvantage hurt. And you can kind of see that at the end, right? I mean, it's a 1v2 there in those final moments. And Tribune does manage to pick up the kill on Star on the zero. But the fact that they're kind of low on ammo with the Sterling at the bitter end uh, is, I think, what allows Kian to kind of finish that off and get West Virginia Wesleyan on the board uh, and a good call from them overall yeah I really like that one and if I'm being completely honest I want to see that Custown keeps going for a few more aggressive plays throughout the that would be very very useful and I think if they use that especially if we saw them deny the rush last time we saw throne room that could be exactly what Western Virginia is fearing from them that that timed aggression and I, I love to say it, but strats from hell. Strats from hell, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I like the, I like the operator light up. Obviously, it's, it's 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 a solid setup. You got two trap operators in there. Always interesting to see them in play. Uh, I do find the Wamai versus Jaeger dichotomy is always one of the most interesting choices that a lot of teams can make. But hey, who needs uh, projectile denial if Sunday just goes ahead and gets a kill right at the start there, and that'll be Kian Drake who's taken down. So one of the hard breachers off the board, and then close. Seiko, the other hard breacher, gets caught by a goo mine on the way in, so he's got to be extra super mega dude, but careful because he's the only one who can get these walls open now. Uh, you, so you don't want to lose them in these early moments. You say that as they're peeking towards the gun. Like, oh, they're just feeding into my anxiety, and then hey, 
You, you can't peek an angle like that. It's not your role to peek. It's much more of a Dokubi role. You have to try to hold time where you know their head is going to be peeking out. That's exactly what you want to see, and you have to rotate and make sure to play around who you're who your operator is and what your role is. Once that role is done, once both those exothermic charges have been cooked, now you just gotta get that case in. Now you can feel free to run around and go frag out, have some fun. Especially as Custown is looking to deny this very aggressive push. Glow to find their frag. He'll fall. It's gonna be a trades back and forward, evening up to a 3v2. Glow made his way into sight and is going to go for the defuse, but it won't matter as Tom Z is there with Mossberg shot, gonna shut him down. Otto able to find the headshot. Now we're gonna see a 1v2 with a minute 25 to go. Lots of time for Otto to use that Dokubi phone call and find it, but it won't matter as Tom Z is there to collect on his second Mossberg kill of the round and to maintain that Custown has the lead. Again, it was very similar to an attack to the last time we saw West Virginia Wesleyan jump in right into Throne Room Armory. They came through the same corner, they made the same push in the same spot, and they uh, they got murked in, I would say, a very similar way. Uh, obviously, cuts down with a good read on that whole attacking pattern, knowing what to look for right there, and kind of not hesitating to shut it down. This, of course, I think is going to put some of the pressure back on West Virginia Wesleyan to just maybe vary things up. I don't think we're going to see them coming back to that bomb site again, because we're on round five already uh but certainly for attacking here i think they need to look at maybe some more unpredictable angles maybe something a little uh less direct uh that said i mean looking at their lineup it certainly is one that seems direct to me right you've got a sledge you've got your ace i love the addition of the gridlock in here as well an operator that i feel like does not get enough play does not get enough love i know that she's a little bit slower in terms of her overall speed which is one of the reasons why she doesn't get uh, a lot of usage but man you can really lock things down with those track stingers uh and and really hold tight on various corners and, and make it far more difficult uh for your opponents to outmaneuver you and i wonder to a certain extent if that's what the plan is here from west virginia wesleyan five seconds uh i i don't really have an answer for you there corvick but i i really do hope to see that um friendly fire now being active which means con your dmrs make sure that uh, the safety is on, hopefully. <laughs> and we can just wait. A little bit of late setting up as the final reinforcement from Custown will be used. And starting this round off, we are going to see very good drone economy from West Virginia. And this is going to be the final round in the half. As just a quick reminder, we do have five. We're down to the five-round split halves for this tournament. And once again a lot slower from west virginia on a site like this and i like that they'd like to take control of the roof but i want to make sure that they are clearing out angles and having that refrag potential not through having the same person the same angle but through having a separate person holding a cross angle yeah it's it's true i mean it not a bad setup. It's a good setup from Cutstown, honestly. Like, I, I like what mm -hmm. they're doing here. Uh, it's unfortunate that Glosico gets that early pick. And, you know, we've obviously seen Glosico make some things work there playing these Thermite roles. I almost wonder if it would be better if we kept him on the sledge in general. Otto Lottery, though, is the one who picks up the next kill right there. A very aggressive swing. And now Cutstown, I think, is feeling the pressure a little bit here. Uh, this is a very aggressive West Virginia Wesley. And I was talking about direct versus indirect. They're being very direct about it. Of course, Unfortunately, uh, sometimes you get the bear and sometimes the bear gets you. In this case, it's Cutstown getting the bear back and Tribune there getting down in it as well. And suddenly, uh, it's kind of dreams and memes here for West Virginia and Wesley. And they look so great at the start of that. Now they're getting ripped to pieces. Now we're back to a 2v2. So at least keeping it a little bit even. The problem being that fire truck is so low. A stiff breeze would basically knock them over here, Binks, and, and kind of put an end to the hopes maybe of West Virginia Wesley and sneaking out another one on the attack a wild swing there by fire truck unfortunately nobody found in it they've got at least one of the enemy team i believe i want to say it's tom z who's pinned down here but they'll go ahead and regroup so they can at least play off the trade potential which is exactly what you need to be doing in this situation 
Yeah, especially playing for the gridlock utility. There's four tracks still in their pocket. I would really like to see that they use it. Doesn't matter. They have a rifle and they'll be able to find the headshot onto Tom Z. It's all left up to Tribune. Nine and two. Looking to capture double digits before the end of the half. Tribune has full health. He'll shoot out the first Gemini replicator and is going to slowly make their way back towards the top of Dragon Stairs and try to go for the flank. But you have to be mindful that anytime you move in this game, they're going to make sound. And if you have clear comms on the side of West Virginia. They're not going to make all the difference. A great headshot can narrow this out to a 1v1. You know what? The fire truck has the slightest bit of HP. It doesn't even have to aim for the head. Swinging around inside of office is going to be fire truck springing, trying to win it out, going for the reload while it's still possible, using that bomb chassis, a surface that you're not able to shoot through. Delay time as much as humanly possible, but nope. There goes fire truck. They're going to be down. Tribune has the sound cue. They're going to go confirm their kill. 11 and 2, and a triple kill for Tribune as Custan will finish the half 4 to 1. Bomb diffuser disabled by defenders. Bomb defusing attempt failed. Ooh, it was close, though. It was close right there to the bitter end. I mean, the plant going down there was a great achievement, honestly, from West Virginia Wesley, and just given the situation that they were in. But with that low health bar, I think it was just a little bit too much of a task for them to recover. Uh, you know, I was going to say, it, it's not as if Cutstown have everything going their own way, right? I think a lot of that was beneficial you know, beneficial because of the defender advantage. Uh, I'm curious to see on the side swap now, whether we see West Virginia Wesleyan kind of step up and maybe even this up. I wouldn't say it's out of the possibility that they could easily win three straight on the defensive side. Uh, but again, I don't have a frame of reference for cuts down on the attack. So I, I can't go and uh, make a solid prediction there just yet, Binks, uh, until we get at least one round under our belt. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Essentially waiting and just looking at this initial lineup, which could change on the side of Cutstown, is that Amaru. I really like that it adds to that aggressive nature, and I'm curious to see if Tribune's going to be able to capitalize on uh, just that aggressiveness. But nope, there's the switch to Ayana. So we'll turn our attention over to West Virginia, who is going to opt for the Mute Malusi Vigil combo which that feels very old to me Corbeck and I don't know if it's made a comeback and I'm just oblivious to it but it feels like with the changes to Malusi that happened so many seasons ago this combo just doesn't work as well as uh as well as I'd like it to because it doesn't give you that same information Malusi's work could essentially be done by a proximity mine uh and just contribute better utility to the board Very true. Yeah, I mean, taking a look at the attacking lineup, I, I, I actually like, again, I think this is a very sort of, I would almost call like a standard attacking lineup. The Thatcher is the operator actually in here that I would be the one who I was like, I'm not sure that you need, right? Like that's a... That's the one that I would look at. That said, I mean, you've got your hard breachers. Uh, you've got kind of a, two solid entries here of Thundi and Azio. Uh, and I think they're probably going to be the ones who make the most hay here, right, in terms of getting these kills. I'm genuinely curious to see West Virginia Wesleyan's ability to kind of adapt and react to very aggressive and solid entry plays because that's ex essentially what I'm expecting uh, from Tribune, Thundi, and to a certain extent, Azio in there as well. And I think we're going to get our first kind of taste of it right here because they're going to enter through Arcade and, and try and get pretty aggressive here on this attack. Yeah, slow and steady is going to potentially win the race, but keep in mind that West Virginia gets more util as time goes on. Meanwhile, the first opening kills are going to go the way of West Virginia as Otto and Kai and Drake are going to find two kills respectively. Down goes Thundi and Azayo. Meanwhile, Tribune's going to collect two. They have a double kill on the round. Otto and Kai and also both going to be refragged. So evening out to a 3v3 with a minute and 15 to go here in round six. Custown looking to go on to match point. Oh, well, it's getting a bit tense here towards the end. Tom Z trying to kind of find maybe a, a feet peak angle right there. It's not quite working out. Uh, the hard breach charges, you know, the Selma's going off in the back means he's going to have to sort of shift his focus here. Fire truck's still alive. Still got good coverage of the bomb site, and I don't think he's under any threat in this direction. No, I lied! Tribune is on the roof! 
that's a completely unexpected <laughs> positioning there in the late round for the Iana and makes an awesome kill out of it. The quick follow-up there as well for Tom Z. And, I mean, hey, all right, Nitro Cell coming over the top doesn't secure the kill on to Golden. Instead, it's Tribune dropping in through the hatch. I think, is that a quad for Tribune in this round? I want to say is. it is. That is indeed a quad for Tribune. If we can just get a quick look at the scoreboard, because I think that puts them up to... I, I want to say 15 kills on the ha uh, uh, in five rounds, or sorry, six rounds now. Uh, 15 and two, that's a 7.0 KD. Um, very impressive from, from them, and they aren't even necessarily playing that big, flashy, ash-type role. They're on the Ayana collecting information for both themselves as well as the team. Uh, that's exactly what you want to see from uh, a flex frag player. Um, so very, very happy. And it, oh, it is going to be Gustown taking the time out. So we can look at the, uh, uh, exactly what we have going on for the next 30 seconds. And you have to wonder what's going through their mind. Cause this also gives West Virginia time to plan out exactly how they want to defend. It, it is quite peculiar to go on to a attacking time out, um, when you're just trying to figure out what site you're going to be attacking. Yeah, I think probably part of it is that uh, they had a little bit of maybe technical issues, I would assume, something like that. Mm. I mean, 15-2, and two, by the way, is just a spectacular kill here and really kind of the driving force for the amazing performance that Cutsdown is having on this 5-1 and one score line. Unfortunately for West Virginia Wesley, and I just don't think they've managed to find an effective way to stop uh, iTribune from uh, going to work. Right, like that's just been the that's been the major issue. Uh, you you just can't lock them down, and if you can't lock them down, they're just going to keep fragging. I mean, the positioning from the Iana right there was, I would say, very non-traditional, but 100% effective. And I would almost not be surprised in the slightest if the members of Cutstown were trying to herd their opponents over towards Control Room right there uh, to kind of set those kills up. Uh, if that was the case, I mean, it worked perfectly. Going now to Throne Room Armory, which is a uh, much sort of stronger defensive site, I would say, overall. And this might be an opportunity for them to turn it around, but much like in our last map, it's frame perfect time here, Binks. You cannot give up a round. You cannot make the slightest mistake. You cannot get caught out by Giannis peeking through the roof and stuff like that anymore. You have to score a kill early as well. I think that's probably going to be the most important thing right here. Uh, I think Glow Sika is the one that I would consider to be really important for that, but it's actually Kian Drake who's going to try and take the spawn peek right there, but to no avail. So I do think it'll fall back on Glow Sika as the Glow Sika as the big roamer here to sort of uh, secure an early round kill here for West Virginia Wesleyan, but it's not to be. Glosico is the one who gets caught, and who else would be picking him off uh, but Tribune, who just continues to be an absolute fragger here for this guts downside. I really like the play of the Amaru, and you also have to remember that they have those soft breach charges, sorry, soft or smaller hard breach chargers, the can openers being able to do a lot of great work. Kyan is going to be droned out, and that's the problem of going for an obscure roam. It can work in ranked, but the moment you have a team properly drone you out, you're going to get very narrowly cornered, and it's going to be Kyan to win out their first engagement against Thundee and no second operator from Cuzstown to follow that one up. Now there's one at the top of Dragon Stairs. They're going to get into a little tiny skirmish, but it is going to be Kyan trying to rotate back and not take things too head on because you want to maintain your man advantage or the even man count going into the final minute and 35 seconds. It's the, the even man count is good, but I mean, West Virginia Wesleyan, right? They they have to make plays here. You, you can't just wait until the final seconds of the round with an even man count and hope it works out in your favor because at the end of the day, it cuts down. They're going to be able to execute. Tribune is still alive. Uh, it, it's just too much threat. Uh, to, to really deal with an effective matter of just kind of playing a wait and see game. It, it calls for aggression, but aggression is also, I would say, probably the riskiest path they could take. So you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place right here. That said, I mean, it's Throne Rune Armory. 
Uh, it's a solid site overall. Kia Drake, though, maybe in a bit of a difficult position here. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's Golden who strikes next, which is just putting even more pressure on these West Virginia defenders. Fire truck now rotating back on the other side. Going to just try and hold off anyone coming in through the armory side of things. Not a great position to be. Star has a really long sight line, though. Could make something of that with that DMR. It has to be careful of fire truck stepping into it as well. 30 seconds left on the board here, Binks. Uh, and, and it's definitely time for Cutstown to make it happen. Yeah, Cutstown has to commit. They don't have enough walls open. This is my biggest concern. It's going to be a funnel into sight. And if West Virginia watches it properly, we could see an absolute fiery storm of red. But as Z1 Star will look at kills with Rowan and start to connect onto a second double kill. Tom Z going for the plant all the way on the other side of Armory with just narrow seconds to go. Kai and Star are going to have to go for the retake. 40 seconds to do so. Star with a huge triple kill. All left up to the fragger of Tribune, who's going to make their way in through blue. Here's the defuse. It's going to swing, wow. but it's going to be Kaya and Drake with a double kill to keep West Virginia alive. Defenders have disabled the bomb Spectacular play right there from West Virginia Wesley. And Star take a bow. Honestly, uh, the lockdown player right there. Uh, you know, obviously, Kai, I guess he should be the anchor in that situation, but it is not the case. Star on the Aruni. They're the one who absolutely <laughs> just lights out, holds off that cuts down attack, and a good assist there by Kia Drake in at the end to come swinging through uh, and, and pick off sort of that final raid boss of Tribune right there. Absolutely love to see it. Good, good kind of edge of the knife play from West Virginia Wesley and all things considered. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I will say obviously cuts down. They had a good setup. They they obviously had Wesley and kind of back footed. And then unfortunately, they all just funneled in through the same breach. And well, uh, you know, it, it doesn't work normally in sieges. It's not going to work in Rainbow Six Siege either. Yeah. <laughs> um. I, I want to see that uh, Custown structures and times their defense just a little bit more. I think that was the main thing that wasn't going well for them. Uh, so my, my question for you now, Corbeck, is now that we're on a second floor site, do we still see verticality or any sort of attempt at verticality from Custown, or do they commit to a fully horizontal approach towards this bomb site? Uh, I mean, verticality has its limitations, right, on the second floor bomb site. I don't think I expect them to do a lot. Obviously, like, the, the sort of responsible decision would be to, to clear uh, the first floor just to make sure that there's nobody, such as, for example, Giandrek kind of hiding out down there. That does seem to be uh, Giandrek's kind of favored strat right is that they'll sort of bury themselves off somewhere in the map and they'll sort of work their way back in you don't want to be caught looking by something like that but you do i think want to primarily apply horizontal pressure the only thing i could see from the real vertical is if maybe they got tribune back up on that hatch again but i'm not sure that lightning's going to strike twice from that position that would be a very uh be very unfortunate set of circumstances right there and look it's Kiandrake actually striking early and it's tribune who goes down so that is a rough start here for the side of cuts down on a critical match point round yeah, this round could easily turn the tide the way of West Virginia. So the Bobcats doing a great job. Now they have to maintain this man advantage, but make sure that Custown doesn't have too much ability to use their util to their advantage. This also means the remaining players of Custown are going to have to step up into those fragging roles and play with each other to close out this matchup. To do so, they're going to start making their way down. We see Azio possibly making their way up towards the roof. And if you're wondering why, why they made their way down before going up is you don't want to risk the chance of a run out, especially on a map like theme park. You can see defenders getting aggressive, but time is running out. Corbeck, there's only a minute 30 to go and Cuztown has to make a very quick and aggressive push. And that might be exactly what they're going for here. And they all drop into control room. Glosico firing away right there. The shotgun do its deadly work and that's just immediately ripped the legs out from underneath any sort of cuts town attack two of them left now it's golden and ozio i mean they might be able to make something happen but certainly the numbers not to their advantage glosico is going to make it even worse that's so many kills on the round for glosico right there and a flawless oh! round is glosico i believe aces so in both our first two matches we've had ace flawless rounds 
That's absolutely bonkers to think of because it's not like it's on the back foot for the team. You see that you have these players stepping up to the plate and they are ready and maneuvering themselves around the map to properly contend any push from either the attack or the defense. So going into our eighth round, sorry, our ninth round of play in this matchup, what I need to see from Custown if they plan on closing this one out is playing together and most importantly playing for those refrags from different angles. We saw a funnel down into the control room. That works if nobody's there and it gives you a good chance to just spring a trap on your opponent. But the moment that they hear you running around on the roof, there's good audio that comes down, especially when a lot of barricades have been opened up outside. It made it very easy for Lucico to be ready and to have their unwelcoming arms ready just to collapse the entire push of Cuz Town. Separate angles. If you had one player just stay from the west side and just slowly lurk their way up towards site, that could have made all the difference. Well, it could have made all the difference, but it didn't. So West Virginia Wesleyan finding a little bit of energy here at the tail end of this, trying to maybe bring it back to an overtime situation if they can. And, uh, well, that's a brave electric claw placement from Fire Truck. I'll say that right there. The idea of putting one on a soft wall scares me a little <laughs> bit, but, uh, there's, there's a plan there. I'm sure there's a plan. Uh, they know what they're doing here. And again, that defender advantage on theme park, I think, really shining through here. Uh, Binks, it's, it's a difficult map to attack and cuts down. We saw them play so decisively on the defense and now they're beginning to run into the same wall that their opponents did. That said, I mean, West Virginia Wesleyan back still to the wall, right? Like that, that same wall, they're backed up right against that. You, you just cannot slip up here, and it literally would take maybe one or two mistakes from Wesleyan players at this early stage, like Kian Drake possibly getting caught out by this drone and killed, uh, and that would be all it would take for cuts down to turn this around. Yeah, seven drones remaining for cuts down. It comes down to what you said at the start of the map with how it's so specific to the positioning of players. But it's going to be a double kill from Otto as we start to pick up the frags in this matchup. Fire truck to add on the goodbye to Tribune. Tom Z and Thundy, the two remaining players, and they've had great fragging potential in the past as Glow will fall. No more clutch ace potential for them. Thundy able to find his frag onto Otto. Thundy able to find a second one onto Star. All left up to Fire Truck with a DMR in hand. They're going to have to try to play for these long-range engagements that they do have the two times scope the swing around waiting trying to contest a bunk of b spring they're stuck inside of initiation they don't have many ways in they're droned out with a minute 25 to go cuz town is in the driver's seat on what could be our final round of this second match swinging around slowly trying to find any sort of headway find any sort of head shot Thundee has a successful plant rotates all the way over to upper arcade as fire truck has the pressure on but Tom Z is there to win it out as cuz down remains in the winner's bracket Well, an excellent final round there from Cutstown. I got to give credit to West Virginia Wesley, and I think that really was a map side differential more than anything else. They put up a hell of a performance on the defensive end. Uh, they had some spectacular moments there as well, but just too much of a running start. Honestly, that's what it was. Too much of a running start for the Cutstown team, and they will go ahead and, and stomp their way on uh, to, I believe, face Robert Morris University here in the bracket. You would be correct. So our next matchup for Custown is going to be later on with Robert Morris. Um, your next match of the day, you are going to be able to see Drexel University again taking an LVC to be able to decide who is going to be playing in the first round of the losers bracket against University of Cincinnati. And then our fifth match of West Virginia and uh, I, I'm really looking forward to these matches, Corey, because a lot of these teams have shown great potential. And I have to remind our viewers that this is only a best of one, which means if your map bends don't go exactly the way you want here, there's a random thing. Perhaps in this case, West Virginia was expecting Custom to ban out um, Theme Park in favor of a different map. It changes everything up. So there's still a lot more to come from the Custown University Esports Rainbow Six Siege LAN. But we're going to take a small break before we get into our next matchup. We're going to stop our stream just to try to fix a little bit of the jumpiness. So don't go anywhere. We'll be very, very, 
Uh, we'll be back very soon with a lot more Rainbow Six Siege action. Hello guys and welcome back in and first off a massive thank you to Binks and Corbeck for taking us through maps 1 and 2 and unfortunately for all you guys at home now you got to deal with me and Whippet for games 3 and 4. Whippet how are you doing? Oh I was doing great until I had to join a call with you and now mm -hmm. I've got a cast with you so I mean I guess I get the cast and siege that's good but I'll have to work alongside you so uh, yeah. You win some, you lose some, I guess. It's yeah, you got you gotta take the good with the bad sometimes. And speaking of the good though, we have an upper bracket game coming up after this one. And the Drexel fans out there, well, they're gonna be pretty happy after a win in game number one. Well, of course, you mean you walk out first game of the day, get that W. That's what it's all about. Again, in this format, you got yes, you got a lower bracket, but you need to be able to keep those wins rolling. You don't want to lose that advantage. That's the matchup we have for Gibby, come on. You've been here before. You were doing this last time around this little event was around. So give us a little bit of run through. Who we got? Who we got coming up? So yeah, Drexel University, fresh off the back of a win in the first round, are taking on Lebanon Valley College in game number two with that angry looking little mascot there for this one. But the benefit of this being an upper bracket and the benefit for both of these sides is the fact that you lose this one and you've got another life. But let's have a look at that roster now for Lebanon Valley College. We've got Emporium Davies, Plexios Reliable and The Senate. Right, you see a name like the Senate Whip, but he's straight away thinking this this guy's he means business. He's, he, that's got the name. That, you, that that's him. That, that could be him just off that he, name. He alone. is him. I mean, right, the nickname, of course, the Flying Dutchman. Can they get off to a flying star in this upper bracket final, of course? And Gibby, we've been we've been taking a little bit of a look at some of these these colleges competing. We, we, we've done a drip check on some of them. We'll get back to that later. But we have our next opposition, the Drexel. We have OSD Trooper, Rifle Guy. Guy, Italian Mafia and Ducks walking in. Look at that moustache. That is absolutely superb <laughs> on that one. Both teams on the upper bracket, of course. Earlier victories today. And this is going to be an interesting clash, clash of teams. It's going to be a fun one to watch. And Drexel, of course, I don't think they were overly challenged in game number one of the night. And that will help them going into the rest of the day. But it also means that their aims will be warm going in. Looking forward to seeing if Rifi Guy can continue playing like he did in game number one. And Italian Mafia, you said it before, that moustache means some business. But I, I wish I could grow a moustache. But you know, putting my head out of a car going more than 20 miles an hour, my beard flies off. I, I, I can give you, I've seen you like two days without shaving. It's, it's possibly like the most horrific thing I've ever seen. Grim. Grim. We are, here, we are here. It is time. When our band phase gives it any predictions what you think these bands will be. Well, the funny thing is, a month ago, this would have been easy. This would have been so easy to predict the bands, but now we're in a new world where the band phase is a little bit different. You know, we're seeing the operators like Solace get banned now because she can just be an absolute nightmare in the prep phase for getting some intel on what way the defender or the attack inside, or for attackers, sorry, trying to find out how the defenders are setting up. But in addition to that, we're seeing a new world where operators like Flores' ban rate has gone way through the roof. We're seeing the likes of Dokubi and Lion getting banned a little bit more because they've got the impact EMPs and they've got that global ability as well and you and i we casted some qualifiers for si recently and the bands were just horrific we we didn't know what to say, to say about them i mean i like to always refer when you get to the latter stage of a competition no matter what level you're playing at bands begin to make that deviation away from the default jackal will be our first to being waved goodbye and the map we're going to be going on is clubhouse so to me, e easy early read. We're going to probably see some form of an extra extension or longer form roam where you might rely on a lurk style of play. Jackal is very obvious and direct counter to that. <coughs> Drexel will take away the Yana. Okay. Well, I'm a fan of that one straight away. And that's obviously a directed target. Yeah, Yana getting gone as well. It's two nades out of the back pocket. The attacker bans, not the ones you'd expect to see. Solace, of course, being banned. It's a trend that's kind of started today, and it'll probably continue on a little bit longer, especially on a map like this, where there's plenty of little spaces to hide those offensive offensive utility and drones. And then Valk, no surprise to see her removed at all. But the big thing for me, we'll put straight off the bat with this one, is Kaid and Mira both in play. And this is a map where you look at some of the sites in particular, and especially down at base, 
but Mira and Kaid can cause havoc for attackers. And with them being on the board, I wouldn't be surprised to see them have some form of an impact. And the Senna straight away is going to add Kaid to that lineup. I mean, you're forgetting one of those high impact operators is going to be that Azami as well. And considering mm -hmm. that we've seen two grenades removed in this ban phase with Yana, now all of a sudden soft destruction becomes a little bit more valuable. You see a sledge getting brought. That's really, you know, you got the hammer, two nades. That's your primary source of soft destruction available to you. Nook brings them as well, but the likelihood is those nades of Nook will be used down below the try and clear these default positions, such as Island or anyone sitting in a known spot with solid information. That will be likely the job of ducks. Yes, yeah, so we're going to this top floor site, CCTV Cash, a site that has fallen out of favor quite a bit in the recent meta. But I think having Azami in play does make the site a little bit more favorable. So what we'll expect to see is Azami playing on top of top garage, use those Kiba barriers to just create an almost impossible push for those attackers to try to take that garage site. So if you want to take garage, you got to get control of bottom. you got to get control of that Adams area as well to try force that Azami out. But instantly I was like, that's what, but teams, we've seen it before. You open up that main breach and then you flip it around and you push through construction site as well. So that Azami being in play, it will cause a problem, but only if you focus all your attention on garage. The primary thing is, of course, if you do that split execution, you don't really need to worry about any pressure inside of Garage because you've got this massive cross angle all the way on CC, and if you put primarily most of your utility towards construction, then that impact is you have to really worry about it when you cross deep the site to try and force the plant, but they already begin to put a little bit of pressure trying to displace any movement inside of Garage, and these keeper barriers, look at how much line of sight they block. You have so many, so much more cover, so many more angles to work with, and you can reinforce this position as that utility begins to get burnt away. Main breach opened up, CC now available, and you just look for a little bit of drone game, a little bit of information. They spot the player all the way by two, but look at this, a fortress made of Kiba set up, and this could be a very difficult thing to remove. You've got four needs to work with but can they be able to find it well it doesn't matter all right the mafia boss gets it done long shot with the thermite finds the opening pick and azami waves goodbye early garage control now forfeit you can walk in and take it for free Pretty nasty angle. Look at that. Ace is already halfway up those stairs. Now the Senate has the long angle. Ducks will fall just below as Emporium is able to get that kill coming up through Adam. And Brianax just putting pressure on CCTV window. The Senate now with a tough job on his hands. He's responsible for holding that push up through Garage as you've now forfeit that area of the map. And if you're OSD, if you're playing inside Garage, you need a little bit of support because now you've got Plexios pushing this way. You've still got to deal with the fact that I believe it is Emporium playing by Adam as well. This is a bad spot to be in, and OSD is going to get put into DBNO. So this attack for Drexel started off positively, but you're about to go two members down, make that three as important gets, down, but though. we have an execution. But he steps off the C4, finds it a triple for Emporium. One minute left on the clock, and well, Rifi guy is taken out, and that is a clean defense from Lamadon Valley. And let's be real for a second, Whip, but whenever they lost the Zami on top rafters, we thought that that was the door open for Drexel, but a really good bounce back from Lebanon Valley. When you lose such a key area, it's, it's a very scary uh, kind of thing to worry about. Like, oh no, wait, we've lost control of Garage. How are we going to retake that control? And they're on a good job dealing with the pressure. One thing I will say from Drexel, you've got the main breach. You've got that opening pick. You can now position someone inside a garage, try and hold that pressure, but you can rotate construction. That's basically free. You've got a lot of the defense will now focus on that retake towards rafters. Why not put one player, your thermite, on that cover, holding CC that cross, and then move everything else to that construction. Or put someone else there and use your thermite to get that single wall in con. So a little bit more of a, like, a three-dimensional posture would have been more effective there, especially how linear CC can be on those retake positions positions but still well done by Lebanon Valley to get themselves back in the fight and get themselves an early one round as we go down to the basement and this is going to be a difficult one to break down this is the gimme site for a lot of teams it's the one that you see a lot of tier one sides go to here first because you're almost guaranteed to win this defensively if your structure your strategy is sound and with that Kaid, those electric claws now as well able to make those hatches a little bit more difficult to open as well 
can be countered pretty easily yeah. by the fact that we do have a Thatcher in play, but you got to be quick, and you do have Habana, the, the queen I've heard her called, of getting hatches open. Now, the one thing that I will point out, Whippin, and if anyone who was watching SI will pick up on, sometimes on a site like this, when you know there's a bit of a heavy roam, if you can get control of blue pretty quickly, you can actually force a site, and if you're in there before the rotate of those defenders makes it back into site, suddenly for the defending side, it becomes a bit of a mission. And looking at this roam right now, if Drexler were able to pick up on it pretty quickly, which it doesn't look like they have, they could have had a big impact with a fast push. Not only that, though, if you can get areas like, if you can hold lounge, you get billiards control, you even begin to put pressure on construction, you leave that roam presence, nowhere to go. You will try to rotate away, stay alive, or even if you feel that pressure from that phantom pressure simple drones can provide, you get caught in rotations, and that's really effective to do here, but the roam presence is going to be let exist. Let float around upstairs and burn time. You've got a pulse down below, relaying a lot of information, and well, your Twitch is walked on in and checking every angle, but you got to worry about cap count traps if you vault on through this door, and you got to worry about cap can up here as well, but for the time being, a good effective time. And Capcans drop down Plexios in a position to go down by oil pit and rotate back to site. And while, yes, it's not been that kind of 1 minute 25 drop back to site, still an effective time waste, forced entries upstairs, and this is a good start to the defense from them. Yeah, you're forcing the clear, and really, Drex will need to get the Thatcher in play now to try and get those hatches open, because key to this is getting that open, so there's the first Thatcher being thrown, should get that Electro Claw, and now Habana can get to work and open those hatches. You ask why that's important? Well, it means that the defensive rotates a little bit difficult, but there is the impact trick to stop four of those pellets from popping off. C4 will be wasted by the Pulse this time around, but he is able to be a conduit of information for his team passing the location of this buck and by opening so much of the floor here it might even have the opposite effect for buck as the pistol's going to come out and there brain axe is able to get emporium is able to get the kill on the brain axe and that's why when buck sometimes it's not the best idea to open up everything See, lots of teams doing that two-level vertical destruction. You can do that from logistics as well. Although the ace has crept all the way down my bottom main. will know the Banshee's there, so has to worry about that one. But even more of a problem, the Pulse knows exactly where you are. So, in this situation, you've got the hatch open, but you're really struggling to find a foothold. You can't drop that hatch without dirt pressure because you haven't cleared these areas. So, you're looking for a main stairs moto initial entry. And a lot of guns are trained on these very limited entryways. You've got one less active gun, and the Pulse has all the information. This, with 20 seconds left on the clock, the fuser in hand isn't going to be an easy one. What do you do? Drop Moto, try to <laughs> brawl your way? That Banshee's going to slow you down, and Plexio seems ready to brawl and scrap. A flash by Atlas, the Senate will be the first to fall. Gets us back to level man count, charging into Thatcher. We're going to get caught by the Capcan. Looks for a second one, but there's a trade. DMR is going to sing off in the distance and try and look for a second. He needs to find it, though. We're running out of time, three seconds. Timer goes red, and that case won't go down. We're not even a chance of that one in the defense. We'll claim round two. One round, Whippet. I got one round without you making the Pengu reference of 20 You're seconds on the clock. You're welcome. <laughs> one round. Everybody here, they got back, they, they stopped watching SI, and they were like, right, I don't have to worry about a Pengu reference well, now. What are you doing? You're Something safe. You're, You're safe. Hear me out. You're... Hear me out. You've got 20 seconds left. You've got a diffuser in hand. What do you do? You know? It's behind a paywall, mate. you got to pay to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Nick knows the answers. Go, go chat to him. He knows. He knows what's up. <laughs> I think he does. Two-time world champion, but Fabian has three. So there is that. That is true. That is true. It's a reminder, you know, we are working on, on hostile soil here. EU is kind of on top right now. Was it ever? Was it ever not? Well, there was Smile. a little bit last year. You know, TSM, SSG, they had a bit of success. Ah, I don't remember those games. I didn't watch them. <laughs> No fans so doesn't count. That's all I'm saying. EU undefeated with fans. <laughs> Ignore it. We're not talking about SSG. If you're at home, guys, whip it. Just anything that doesn't involve an EU or CAG victory, he he doesn't know. A bit of CAG. Do you he like? Remembers do, the, like do, do, do you enjoy a bit of CAG? <laughs> he remembers the games. He just he just never remembers the final results. I know? refuse. If, if EU lost, he doesn't know. I refuse to believe these results sometimes. No CAG won SI. It's, don't, don't tell me otherwise. They have never lost an SI final. That's as almost as good as a record as Fabian in those. <laughs> Speaking of Fabian, congratulations to him and G2 for winning SI again. It's uh, something that a lot of young players come through. And I, I know that in Europe, and I know that there has been a couple of occasions in NA as well, where players do make their way up through the tiers of Siege and make it all the way 
to the very top. So who knows? A couple of these players in a, in a year or two could be potentially playing at a much higher level as well. But that's what Grassroots Siege is all about, isn't it, Whippet? It is. Very effective use there. The EMP goes out from Thatcher. The breach is open. You got a Monty to try and brute force some map control early. You know you're going to be facing a mirror window inside a bathroom. And I looked, and it's not being patched up. So the Selma will burn through and give you a massive line of sight. And this is where the Monty can be a massive problem. It just walks in, takes map control. And for everyone from Lebanon Valley, you got to now start worrying about the plant going down early behind the Monty and the crossfire set up from the windows. The case should go down here. It does in a very early post plant setup. It's not really a rush. It just stormed in, took map control. But Plexios gets one. Can't make it two or find a third. And it's all down now. To the Jaeger. All alone. Reliable. What can you do? You got a Monty to worry about as well. So you have two active guns chasing you down. Doesn't look to be easy. He's going to get caught out and holding a crossfire. And I think Gibby, it's pretty safe to say. With 25 seconds, so that the fuse goes critical. It's all but over. Yeah, 12 seconds to get himself three kills. One of them's the Monty as well. It's. If you can get one or two eggs at frags, it's all well and good. But it was a really good, effective, aggressive push from Drexel there. As Ryfi guy is able to get that one out. They're going for back-to-back -back wins in Clubhouse. And they finally pull a round out of this one. Because, of course, this is first to six, not first to seven. So Lebanon Valley already a third of the way there. And that was a vitally important round for Drexel to win. And the big thing I like about it was there was no faffing about Whippet. No footer and no, no, no fidgeting. Faffin. No faffing, no footering, no fidgeting. They got the breach open and they forced the plants. You, we've changed our lexicon to not sound as Irish as we truly are. And don't even, don't even curse people's ears to have to hear the word footering. That's not, that's not fair. <laughs> that's not a fair thing to do, man. You can't say that. <laughs> You've broken me. It's we, we, we are four rounds in and you've already shattered me. Mm -hmm. You're getting quicker. You're getting quicker at this every day. It's okay though, like if anyone has any complaints, send them directly to Kutstown Esports. We're we're not responsible for any mental damage caused to the viewer over the course. I have to listen to the, the deranged ramblings of Gibson Gaming too. I, I, mate, I don't exist. You, this is all in your head. <laughs> oh, it's, it's all... Can't, can't escape this. Can't escape it from you. But we'll, we'll, we'll complete that rotation now. We're going to go back to CC and Cash. That will be our site. And... The thing about th this site to me is for Drexel, you need to implement that, that two-prong approach. You need to get that main bridge open, and then you need to begin the pop pressure towards master bedroom side. Otherwise, it can feel a little bit flat. It feels way too reliant on clearing garage, putting that pressure on, and even then, that's not a gimme. That's not an easy fight to win. So open this breach, rotate some hard breach over, and get that single wall in construction. You need to clear one player over towards gym, but you have the resources to do it, so I'd like to see them start implementing that now. Yeah, don't be surprised to see Azami maybe not leave herself as open to that pick from the main breach as what happened in the first round as well. So Davies will play a little bit closer to that elbow position as OSD will begin to open that breach with a little bit of help from the Italian Mafia as Thatcher or Thatcher throws it and now Thermite will go to work. Brian Axe in position as well, just in case there was an attempt at any form of a trick. But there goes the dynamite. Open goes the breach. Job one done. You've already got bottom garage open as well. Two minutes gone. OSD gets the Ooh, opener onto pick. the Senate. That's a big pick. Now it's when you maybe start putting a little bit of pressure on the other side of the site. You got the opener pick. They can't defend this sec section of the map as effectively as they were used to. Now just try not to make the push as linear as what happened in round one. I like a little bit of focus now down below inside of Lounge, but you need to kind of worry about, think about that cutoff of any potential roam presence coming back. Low Plexus will find that. That's on that Nomad I was talking about inside of Bar, or a long shot in that new little back area of Bar. Find it towards stage, and that's going to get us back to that four versus four playing field. Now, a minute 30, and you still got control of Garage. You got two players on platform. You need to make that call now. What is your approach? What is your strat? And if you just have to worry about this fight on towards rafters, it's going to get very sketchy. So go fast, go deep now, or begin that rotation. Because time, it's not really your ally on the offense. It's not. And you've got the ace. You've got Sophia. You can clear the shield in that position as well. That's just stopping anybody pushing from across radio. So you're not stuck for options here. And now Brian Axe will just creep his way in through that breach. You know you have a player above. Reliable's holding red stairs as well. You feel the next pick is vital. But Emporium could be the problem. The troublemaker for the site. You know exactly where the player is. But you don't have the utility whip it to clear it. You don't have any needs. You don't have any flashes. The only way you can really push pushes with some assistance from Sophia, but Emporium is holding that push from below down inside pit, but now he moves. 
This is a problem. As you funnel more and more of your offensive pressure, your operators into the single position, it's just going to be a more intense target. Creeps up and spots opponent's army, finds that pick, and now advantage. 30 seconds, and then we're going to begin to flood the site. The run out from construction gets caught with the C4 below. Doesn't find anyone. Living it's in a fair two versus three fight. 20 seconds, the case begins to go down. But he's exposed. His head's going to get clipped by the side of Reliable. Down below, though, Brainex gets one, and OSD shuts it down. Drexel had me worried just a little bit in that round, but a heavy flood the site once they cleared rafters and that's all they need to get the job done and this is one of the reasons why i absolutely adore siege as a game as well one player falling can impact the whole round the minute you lost the zami on rafters that whole defense had kind of fallen to shreds it was a big fight it was a brave fight but again timing is everything in siege if emporium held his position inside of oil pit just five seconds longer you win that round it is tiny little decisions like that that have a massive impact on the late game. So now the sides are level. I believe this is the last round now before we get to see the first side swap. And we've got one more to go after this because it is, of course, first to six instead of first to seven. You get the feeling this is a big, big round for both of these sides. Obviously, whoever wins this one's going into the side swap. Yes. Numbers are very scary for me to talk about, Gibson. So you win this, yes. you go through and I'm an accountant. Yes. I'm scared. You, yeah. you do go 3 2. Winning this one does make it 3 2. Okay. Well, I, I can figure that one out, but that is the side swap, yes. 10 seconds to go. I think so. <laughs> I, I, right. You fill me with I'm so much confidence. I am you fill me with so much confidence, Gibby. Oh my. Well, look, we have this thing called the Castler Curse, so if we say something, the opposite is true. Is the opposite true? Yeah, or we could both say something different so that that way one of us is right. I don't think this is a risk I'm not willing to take. I'm not willing to take I, I'm with, that. I'm with you. I'm with you on this one. Every time I've said anything, anything on a broadcast, the opposite has happened in quite emphatic fashion. So I'll leave it at that. But the basement defense is what we're going to go back for from Lebanon Valley. And um, to me, this is going to be an important one for them to win. This should be your gimme. This should be the easiest site. And you don't really need to extend up. Says you don't need to take a lot of risks. But the thing that gets me a little bit excited, gets me a little bit, can I, can I look at this uh, line up and say, well, first of all, the opening pick is going to go in favor of the offense. That is huge. And has the vigil got caught through the window? Mm -hmm. He has. And while well, speaking of something that's getting me excited, Ducks on the Ying is that pivotal tool of that execution. Whatever they decide to do, those Candelas are going to be a massive part of it. And if they can keep them alive to that execution, this could be huge. Yeah, losing Vigil that early too is a big loss because the only impact Vigil brings is a, is a selfish one. It's there for frags, getting kills, and no other utility for the team. You lose Vigil early, and well, for Drexel, now you can get to work. Get that hatch open. Get the other hatch inside of Kitchen open now too. Looking at the defensive side, there is one C4, two C4s in the back pocket, as well as three impacts to impact tra trick these hatches. And just look at the amount of information that Emporium is able to gather for his team. One thing, though, that I don't think that Drexel have done is they've not opened up dirt. So there's no real pressure from dirt that way, meaning that the defenders can fall back towards AKs if need to be to watch for the drop. Ooh, ooh, this is a sketchy one. The wise words of Emzo used to say these holes work ooh. both ways. The C4 tossed up and soaring through the sky, unfortunately. No one's home. So, similar approach once again. Moto hatch open. Kitchen hatch open. Main stairs pressure arrive. Well, kitchen hatch open soon. Unless there's another impact trick. Those four pellets survive. So, hatch open and establish. So, a lot of those key steps, a lot of those positions on that checklist are established. And this is going to be a huge one. You've got an opening inside of church and you've got candles to work with. You could really force an execution deep in here. And against Emporium, he has to worry about the verticality above him. But does it even matter? He looks up, finds one and gets it to a level fight. Gibby, 30 seconds in a 4v4. 4v4, wall is open now too, towards the little Baron side church. Reliable playing inside generator. You feel like this fight with OSD could be a big one. He turns his back to the fight, but manages to keep his head in the game as he makes his way back up to the stairs. There goes those Candelas, causing a little bit of confusion and chaos in the site, and Ducks will push on in. Gets himself the first one. Execute time, 12 seconds to go. Davies is going to get one on the Ducks. OSD gets it on the Emporium. There's another one, and suddenly it's a 2v1. As Reliable is the last man standing. 1v1 now, as Italian Mafia is down. Can Reliable pull it out of the bag? No, he can't. Ryfi guy wins it, and Drexel take a 3-2 lead. But with it, watching this game so far, 
I'm really impressed by Drexel because even in the two rounds that they've lost, you got to give it to them. They got to the execute phase. You know, they were alive in the game to at least get some attempt at a case down, at least some attempt to win the round in the last couple of seconds. It's it's something they've done well is get themselves into positions to execute. Lebanon Valley were able to bounce that one back twice, but that's three rounds in a row now for Drexel as they go on the defense. The thing I like about it is the way they flood the site. So, yeah, they set a lot of these key things up, right? You've got your hatches for your pressure. You've got your verticality to clear these power positions. Yes, okay, you lose that player to the pulse, but that's not really the important aspect of that approach. It's having everything open, making people feel unsafe, uneasy where they stand. And then, when it's time to go, flood the site. Walk in. We saw how effective that Ying was. Kai was looking like, oh, where am I? My screens fall white. I don't have nothing to do. And gets that early pick. Now, yes, Ducks can't have more impact. Fa more, it doesn't have more impact past that moment, but is able to get that opening, get that moment, and then they flood the site. Case goes down. Can not only won at the end of the day, but they won it winning out, and I'm very impressed with that ability to just decide, yeah, it's time to go, time to flood site. They've done it perfectly that time, and we'll go to that side swap now with Shrexel donning CC and Cash for the very first site. CCTV Cash, seeing that We'll see a little bit of a change from Lebanon Valley as they elect to take the Thermite this time around instead of the Ace. And we will see Maverick brought on board. Maverick's an operator who, for a couple of months there, wasn't really or didn't really have a high pick rate whatsoever. But now with the extended barrel buff and now with the fact you're going to a legacy site like this one where Maverick can have an impact, it's not actually that bad, bad of a pick, is it, Whippet? No, it, it, it's not something that's... I wouldn't say it's the most common thing to say see nowadays. The thing that really makes me curious about it is we have a Thatcher in play. So you can do this a lot quicker, a lot more efficiently. And you're going to, well, try and clear this claw with information. I think they know where it is, at least trying to figure that one out. But you have a Thatcher. This is time that you could have done a lot quicker. So an EMP. Walls open, just like that. No one's really going to trick with that nade pressure. That was a very scary, that's a very scary position. And now, your Thermite can get impact tricked. And guess what? You got no answer to that one. Second Kaiku Claw goes down. Now you're in a real bit of bother. You don't want to commit to this fault, but they got good information. So they can clear that second claw. They can now get another thermite down. But impact tricks. Something's going to go right. Give me impact's going to go through that hole. And watch three, two, one, impact trick. It feels like they're playing Minesweeper oh. on the Breach, but it opens anyway, so the Breach has been popped on open, and Plexios gets the opener, as Italian Mafia will fall for Drexel. I love this little angle that Duck's made for himself, using those Kiva barriers so he can watch for Emporium pushing in. But Emporium has the perfect operator to clear rafters right now, but he does have to deal with those Omidas. Dry-Fi guy pulls one kill to make it back to a four versus four, and Ducks will peak. There's the first one of those flames. Throws streams shot and Docs will be forced to move. He will catch a flame just a little bit as he's forced to move closer and closer to the stairs as Davis gets into a bit of a fight over by the breach as well. But with a minute left on the clock, Duck's job is to die here with it. He's here to play until he dies, but the main thing is how much time can he take off the clock before he does it? One barrier down, guess what? Just replace another one, and he's just going to be able to stand up there, fight, scrap, and brawl all he wants. He's got a prone angle to work with. He gets figured out. Havana drops down, will rotate up to Adam and Secret, but 40 seconds. And as you said, his job is to simply stand and bang, stay alive. Toxic counters will choke out this push on the main bridge, but they have to vault on in. They don't do it yet, and that will be Rifi Guy finds one on the Plexos, and this is a problem now. It's going to be even more now, amplified in the four versus one. 30 seconds, and he doesn't even have the diffuser in hand. It's all but over, Gibby. I'm going to pop my prediction down and say he might try and scrap and try and find a pick towards rafters. But that's going to be it over. I think Drex are going to get this round. Yeah, he picked up the case as well, so Davies will hold the run out. But you get the feeling at some point there will be a run out. Davies running out of options, running out of time, running out of an opportunity to win this one. Eight seconds, seven, six, giving up on the ghost on this one. That'll be a round one for Drexel as they move within two rounds of going through to that next one. And again, it's, a, it's an impressive bounce back. You look at what Lebanon Valley College did in the opening round or opening few minutes of that round. They got the breach open. Not pretty, not very pretty way of doing it, but they got it open. They managed to clear a couple of players from key positions, but Rifi guy was able to pick up a couple of very big picks with the SMG eleven, and it just left Lebanon Valley with no options. And that, that's the thing. Like, the thing about that site is that you can break it down in in a lot of simple steps. Just go construction. You save a lot of heartache, you save a lot of pressure, go construction. 
open the main breach. Go construction. I think teams would really benefit from that one. It's, there's not a lot of utility over towards that massive weapon. These teams are squaring up and basically, you know, point into the middle of the ring and say, let's swing. Let's see who comes out on top. That's a dangerous game to play on the offense on a map like Clubhouse. When you have an Izami on the board and you've lost two sets of nades on an operator, you're going to see a lot of play with. Yana is one of those ops that we see a lot of usage of. You lost two nades. You've lost an all Yana. You've lost an ARX. You lost a G36C. You've lost some of that fragging power. You can't stand them buying the same way. And Drexel played that perfectly. They, they just whittled down time, whittled down resources, and Azami, a big part of that. Really impressed as well by the kill distribution of the Drexel side as well. They're not really playing a style of play where there's one or two players doing all the work. You know, Dux is going six and four. Ryfi six and two. OSD got four kills. Brian Axe is the same. They're sharing the load. And if you were to look at the roles that the team is playing, they're pretty fluid with their, their lines between attack and defense and the jobs that each of these players have taken on to do. Dux, of course, with the Oryx will play on the top floor, puts out the those viable arms to catch if anybody moves in towards that master bedroom side as well. And Oryx an operator that does his best work on their own as well, but. A friend of ours loves to say a certain thing about Oryx, Gibby. What, what, can you describe him as the fastest operator in the game? I believe Stokes has said that before. A few Just times. Just a few times. Just a but few he is times. Right. It's, it's a brain worm, though. It's in there now. Sam said it 4,000 times. Now I'm going to say it another 3,000 times. It's just locked in. Mm -hmm. We love Stokes. What a guy. Plus one. He, he does have like COVID, works. though, because Warden <laughs> gave it to him, so... No, you can't say that! Oh, we've also lost our Oryx. He wasn't too fast outrun the Nook, though. Can't outrun the stealth. He can't outrun bullets. And the FMJ finds him, strikes him down. The opening pick goes for Lebanon Valley. A very good start. Considering the site they have to break down will likely come down to a very big team fight execution. But you've got yourself that extra gun. They'll slowly begin to work through opening the store. Sledge will swing that hammer, try and cripple every position best he can. Make it uncomfortable to stand here. But there's a C4 in the hand of Kaid waiting down below that could be a massive problem. And you've got to worry about that Kaid clause. Well, you can't even begin. Oh, that was so sad. So close. Davis nearly finds a wonderful shot through that vert. Unfortunately, this doesn't connect. But this nade needs oh, to go. Oh, oh. <laughs> it needs to go down first of all. But it needs to clear that claw. And I think it will do so. Has done so. Yeah, now they'll go for that. They do have impacts in there. But oh, the electric claw has been tricked. As another one. What, what is it uh, Parker's got? He calls it the electro shuffle. Electro shuffle. Yeah. Makes it sound like more of a dance move, doesn't he? <laughs> This is a very, very, very dangerous position. Now, as you open up more of this floor again, you reveal yourself that TCSG. A single shot from that one's going to be a problem. But look at the top of your screen. Every second whittled away by holding F and throwing a gadget. That's all Kaid's doing right now, and it is really choking this play out. I think it's time to bound their hatch, and they've done that exactly. you got a backstab set up all the way towards blue. you got a Noctic and Pounce. So now, main stairs, maybe dirt tunnel, but you've got 40 seconds. This is a problem. You've got to try and dive on, and you got one extra gun. What can they do? Yeah, Italian Mafia holding down dirt, but OSD will potentially pick up the opener there you're for their side, and there you have it. 4v4, Reliable still playing on top of our Plexios now, only rotating towards blue, as Emporium will hold the player by generate as well, but 15 seconds is what has hit the clock. Time going away, Senate's going to fall to Brian Axe, who dips into cover. The knock not able to get one, Brian Axe gets a second, almost gets a third, but there's Emporium Ri-Fi guy on the trade. It's all down to Reliable in the 1v3, he steps in towards AKs and Ri-Fi shuts him down. Drexel moved to match point on this one. And really, there was nothing fancy. There was nothing crazy about that defense at all. They just set ups with a standard defense to just eat as much time as they could. You said it. Pushing F is all that they had to do. And really, it prevented Lebanon Valley from going to work. Really nice defense again by Drexel. And, you know, I spoke, we spoke a little bit with Corbeck and Binks before this one. And they said, expect to see some clean defenses from Drexel. And that's exactly what we've seen. Have we have we lost Whippet? You have, unfortunately, oh Gibby, so I may have <laughs> accident I may have accidentally pressed the button on my audio controller. Whoopsie. Nice. Sorry about that one. As I was saying before <laughs> before my, my, my stupidity got in front of me. I'm not a big fan of timeouts on match point, nor are you in, in this situation. 
it's a scary one to leave that break, leave that moment to collect yourself until the 11th hour. That's scary. And now, one round, you make a single mistake, the map's done. Drex will win it. And that's a very, very scary position. This is the best of one, remember. Mm -hmm. It could be worse, though. They could bring Monty. You know, it's... No, don't we... even. Don't even say match point Monty in my presence. Ever. Ever. They're not. They're bringing Glass instead, and I'm a fan. Don't even say it. Don't even manifest it, Gibby. They can, they can swap three picks God, in the game. <laughs> don't say it. Nope. We didn't say nope. anything. Ch nope. Chat hair, nope. nothing. No. Nope. Get me out. <laughs> so, looking at this You just gave me flashbacks to Skyscraper. You have oh, just no. gave me flashbacks to Skyscraper. <laughs> Oh, Only five me. times in a row. Only five times in a Ooh. row. For those of you who don't know, me and Gibson have the uh, unfortunate job of watching J Link's makers on Sky Casting, Skipper, casting. We... We're what? casting it. We were casting yeah. it. I was watching casting. It's the same thing, isn't it? Well, <laughs> sometimes I don't even watch me. I just, I just listen to the sounds and imagine what's going on. That's impressive. That's impressive from you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you can do that in ranked games, huh? Come on. Oh, it's the... There we go. Hey. There we go. You want to know something? That could be a genius Electro Claw right there. It, it might actually work. Why? Elaborate. Because elaborate, you look at the... Gibson. Actually, no, they've got, they've got a Thatcher. Thatcher's re no, radius no, 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 is too elaborate. high. No, 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 no. What, what, was, what was the genius? I thought for a second, if they had, if they had EMPs, I think that it might well, have just do. been out of the reach. <laughs> well, they do. They do. That's kind of yeah. Thatcher's thing. Yeah, but if they had the, had the mini, you know, the impact the EMPs, impact. it might oh, have been just ones. out of reach. Yeah, <laughs> the mini ones. Oh. <laughs> unfortunately, it wouldn't be. That's unfortunately, K calls aren't out of the radius. Emporium, it's a lot of damage. That's his DMR fires off though. Right fly guys the first to fall. Breach has already opened up an establishment. Well, it wasn't a stroke of genius with that one. But I'll tell you what though, that claw is going to be able to catch the second one shot tossed towards it. Keeping this position inside of Gary, inside of bathroom, secure and safe. Well, that's a... Uh... Oh, that's a finger wag. I wouldn't have picked that one with your TCSG. No, it's not the best idea to peek, but you gotta see, you gotta hit your shots. And that's exactly what the Senate did, giving them a massive chance now to potentially take control of this round. It's a five versus three. Looking at the setup, those castles are still up in place to prevent any access or lines of sight and towards the main area. Now, if you're reliable, you're looking at the fact there's a castle there. You can use that to your advantage as the Senate gets another kill onto Italian Mafia. Um, oh, yep. That is. That is a level of technology, technology I've not seen. Deploy that. Write that down. Write that down. As we will see Brainax slain. Leave him all alone. Get peak with Super. Oh. Surely get one. That could have been huge. Big task ahead of him, though. Needs to get four more. A minute to work with. He'll look for a second. He'll take the spike. It's a prolonged one. He'll be exposed to Logi. And that's where he gets shut down from. Plexus finds it. And we see that round go in favor of the offensive side. Gimme. Maybe that timeout worked a little bit better than I expected it. It did. They took the time out. They managed to win the next round, but guess what? They're going to win a couple more in a row just to force overtime on this one. The score is 5-3, and we're going back to CCTV cash. Now, last time we went here, we saw the Azami being played by Ducks just cause an absolute nightmare for those Lebanon Valley attackers. They had no real way of clearing the player from that position. And looking at the attacker lineup, I know it can change completely before we get there. Well, they uh, they do have the glass now. You bring the likes of Ash. You bring a sledge. You bring glass. You got four needs. It'll help a lot with trying to clear the player from on top of that rafters position. Something I like to see teams do with it when they're trying to clear rafters is to open up the double wall, or the quad wall that's just below rafters, and sneak a player on there and just toss the nade right on up as someone else puts some pressure on from the door to just force that player to worry about two different angles at once. But you know, we've seen it before. Teams sometimes have different ideas, different opinions on how to clear that one. So I'm curious to see how Lebanon Valley adjust their attack to try to clear the player that position. Well, they're taking they're taking more needs. They're bringing, they're bringing six needs potentially this time, Whoop. I like it. I like it. More needs the merrier. Bring me back to that day before they were before they were taken from us, before they were nerfed in the ground. No, I'm happy actually. We, Villa, Villa is a much safer place to play. But unfortunately, we will see Reliable grabbing those two smoke canisters and utilizing the full array of that thermal scope mounted on that DMR. For Lebanon Valley, this is a critical round. You win this, you get yourself in the one round of getting yourself back up, tied up with this with your opposition, getting that overtime. And Gibson, would you look at this? 
They're all going master bedroom side. They're not even gonna worry about this. And Plexio's set up for the backstab on the nook. I like. Come, Come on. on. Come on. Go prone. Go. Let's go prone. Go prone. There we go. There we go. <laughs> I'll be worried for a second. There's a gunfight coming up. Malusi is pretty close. Though it actually was it with ducks that we saw that was nearby. We've got OSD close by as well. So Plexios. All Plexius has got to do is be a nuisance. Don't go uh, effectively chasing this kill just yet. You know where the player is. Just keep them occupied while the rest of the team push on in towards that construction side. We'll see the push that we've been desperate to see tonight so far. Once you get that wall open and you get control over by the grinder desk, well, at that point, the defenders, they can't rotate anymore. You isolate a complete site. There is an impact I've trick going on. I've never heard that desk call that in my life. Ever. Yeah. That is, what that's is it? What's on one. the desk, though? What is on I the desk? It's a desk. Just a desk. Okay. It's, it's, it's construction. So if I say construction, you know what I mean. Yeah, but there's a desk in there. You got to play oh, by it. My out. job is to annoy you. I'm here to annoy you. My job is to annoy you. Tell you, Matthew, though. Very much playing Dance of the Devil. Glass open up his window as well, just above his head. Not got a lot of headroom to work with that shield and that opening in that breach, but it's not a full breach, and it's a problem. Zami will give it a little bit of extra cover. Liable's working with a very minute angle. He's got a cross towards Red, but he can begin to chew open that wall. He got information. The backstab down below is huge! But Plexos, you need to win that one! And that's going to give a massive lifeline. Four I versus four. Opening pick goes. Brain Axe is going to get slain. This could be a huge one now, but this is all going to come down to the collapse. One gets traded back, TCSG gets one, fresh magazine ready, primed and loaded, and Reliable could be the X-Factor here. He lets right by guy cross out from red, begin to chew open that wall in towards A, but OSD is going to fall, the knockdown below, the backstab's been set up absolutely perfectly. 40 seconds, Gibby, and it's going to come down to a 4 versus 3 brawl. 4 versus 3, Italian Mafia is snuck into that little position beside Radio. Will pop on the glasses now as he waits for the player to step on, and Plexios gets another one on the backstab. But there's the push, Reliable is there to make it a 4v1, leaving it all down to Ducks. As he sneaks towards Red Stairs, player prone, takes him out, and Lebanon Valley win two rounds on the bounce after that time out. And they have bounced back really impressively on this one and you, you call it the tcsg well but it's not called that anymore at si it's been dubbed the slugger shotgun thingy majig who said that one thank you right. <sighs> ah it's the, it's nah. the slug nope. shotgun thingy majig no nope. nope. get me out get me out i'm a fan i'm not gonna lie oh <sighs> fan behavior from you gibby fan behavior mm -hmm. from you but i tell you what though that, that that tactical timeout called two rounds ago has seemingly worked worked absolute miracles we're one run away from overtime, Gibbsy. What do you reckon? Do you think we get there? Or does it end right here, right now? Church Arsenal is going to be a tough nut to crack, though. Drexel's really okay. good defensively the first time we saw them here. So Lebanon Valley will need to adjust things a little bit. Probably expect to see Glass removed from the lineup whenever they find out the site, because I don't think it's the Nasty most Glass-friendly one. No, 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 no. That is... Passion. I back the Glass technology. I think it is... Yeah. You know, I hope Zanoxa yeah. was watching. Zanoxa, of course, a tier a tier two player in the EU. He picks Glass every single round of the prep us. phase. He baits us with it. I hate it. I hate it. I love Zanoxa. What? Hate him picking Glass. Simple well, he doesn't Laz. do it to any other casters. He only does it to us. He knows. It's mental warfare, Gibby. He, he throws us off. He's, a ta he's quite talented, though, as Zanoxa. Oh, okay. I was a little bit worried they weren't going to get that hatch. I was like, huh. It's just like, I'm like, Gibby, Gibby, go get the hatch, and he wanders off somewhere else. <laughs> Old man doesn't know where he is. I, I reinforce Lodgy hatch somehow on the top floor <laughs> to the roof. Matt's on the roof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, mate. Do you expect oh, anything different? You have broken me. You have, we are, we are nine rounds deep, and you have utterly destroyed me. These guys had to listen to, to Binks and Corbex deliver an excellent cast earlier on today, and then they're stuck with us. The deranged EU pairing show up like, hello, let's... <laughs> ah! <laughs> Meant to reset, Gibby. What's happening? Yeah. What has happened is the Senate has stepped in towards Kitchen, just waiting on Thatcher to come into place, just so... Oh, oh. hey! There we go, second it... attempt. Oh, I was waiting for you to say it, so they're going to open that. The key and claw, there'll be no electro shuffle as this time around, as he's just going to step on into dirt and hold that position now from there. So you've wasted one of your impact or one of your EMPs trying to do that, but 
you still should be able to put some work in around the rest of the map. You've got Sledge, you can open up Verticality. You've got Nades in the back pocket. Two of them because Glass is going the old-fashioned way, taking the smokes as well. But I do want to see Lebanon Valley continue to make use of their utility. It's something that they've done better in the last two rounds is use what they have in the back pocket. With this kitchen hatch open, I'm really looking at the idea of go to dirt. Get your dirt. You, it, it's there. Oh, okay. And away we go. All right. Straight away. Plants go down. Set it inside the stick it. The crossfire's held upstairs. No retakes available. Davis gets one the OST and it's going to be a brawl. Kai Mafia gets one trader back, but you can't retake upstairs. Right fly guy is going to get one. Shut down though. Senate's going to be able to try and cause some chaos. Now his pistol hand has to scrap and brawl through that wall, but it won't be an easy one to win. You can't deny the glass upstairs catches one on the rotate. And you even know if you vault through this one, you know it's all but over. Two versus three. But it's a dumb deal. It's locked in. We're going overtime, Gibbsy. Yep, Brian Axe is in position. He is taking down Lebanon Valley. Take us to overtime for the first time today. And you got to say, the way that they've began to use their utility, the way they began to just speed up their decision making since taking that tactical timeout has had a big impact on this game. So we're going to overtime. Dare I say Laz was the answer? Oh, you said it was going to be a six pick or a re pick. And I said, yeah. stick it. Once again, my genius boggles me. Incredible <laughs> how brilliant I am. Anyone who, any team need a coach? Okay, a Jeremy Clarkson. Who? Nah, I'm brilliant. I am brilliant, Gibby. What are you talking about? Attackers need to locate the <laughs> I, I, you bro Now you've broken me. Revenge. Act. Revenge. I've got you. But the Flying Dutchman have brought themselves back into this one. What but it's been a, a good bounce back so far. They are uh, certainly flying now, you could say. You're welcome. You enjoy your play on words with that one. Oh. Never again will you ever catch me say it. And I enjoy the sigh as now you know how I feel. It's terrible no, it's, puns in it's, it's not the pun. It's not the pun. It was your delivery that, that did it for Why? me. Ah. Oh. You're, wait, you're, 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 lost, you're lost at sea with some of these puns, mate. <laughs> oh, nope. Nope, I will not engage. Get me I out. Not. Get me <laughs> Oh, he broke me. Speaking oh, of how... get me out, these teams will be looking to get out of this game with a win. And oh, it that's will a clean be one. Another... That's a clean one. I'll give you that's a nice little one. You like it. So it will be another defense down in the space. But last time we came here, we saw Lebanon Valley very quickly and cleanly deal with the electric claw that was inside of Kitchen. And they're going to put some pressure on Dirt again. And by opening up that wall, even if you're not going to push from that section map, just opening up Dirt Wall gives the defenders something else to worry about. Something, another thing to worry about is the fact that Ducks now has dropped a significant amount of HP and he'll dip on down through blue and had they had a player in position just a second quickly, they would have been able to just isolate that duck and take him down, but he should be able to make his way back to site. You'd hope so. If it goes wrong now, I'd be really perplexed. But he's managed to make his way back. Woo, round of applause. Don't clap, Gibby. Oh, I wasn't going to. That's, that hurts. Once again, we begin this delicate dance. And it ends very abruptly. Flex just decides, no, 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 no Kai trick. Die. You are gone. And Plexo will find a second one in the round now. OST is next to go. Problems begin to arise with Rex of the defense getting picked off one by one. No trade, no answer, or retake being thought about with the glass on that cover once again by Chains. Means realistically, this entire corner of the site is in control. The offense have it on lock. You need to deal with this, and it will not be an easy one. You need to try and find a way around it. He hears a player inside of stock. His cost of cover is there. Detonation happens from that can opener. And Emporium knows. He's going to find a lot of damage. Both players trading back and forth. Gets it shut down. The impact's going to arrive late. The second player's there as well. Finally gets that trade. Four versus two. A massive amount of damage on the Italian Mafia drop happens. Plexos finds a third. And now Duck's left all alone. The case should go down. He can't even think about a retake upstairs. That Glass has it on lock. And Davis upstairs finds a third. Lebanon Valley closed it in. One round away. I'm impressed. I am really impressed by the way they have bounced back from that situation. 5-3? 5-3 if I'm not wrong whenever they took that time out and since then they have won a lot of rounds on the bounce and wait for the score to go just because you know we're not doing the normal count so yeah three rounds on the trot now for them as they move to overtime match point 
But again, they're forcing Drexel into these retech scenarios and they're getting picks that really they shouldn't get. You know, you got the freebie on to Kaid, who was playing on top of the boxes just by creating a little bit of vertical pressure. Once the Kaid was gone, they had no way to really stop that breach from being opened onto the hatch. And from that point on, you feel like you're fighting a losing battle for Drexel University. So we move on to overtime match point. It is that freebie defense that you like to call down in this basement this church arsenal defense and if you're lebanon valley you're just one round three and a half minutes away from, from this exact point right now from securing your spot into that next game i think it's the upper bracket final you move into after this one what a run that would be and again five three they called was it five two five three what was it giving numbers yeah oh, five three i think oh, I, three. I thought you had a bit of brain delay no, nah, that's just that's just the that's just the old age kicking in. <laughs> oh, Gibby. Well, yes, the timeout worked absolutely perfectly. They, they managed to reset and change their structure. The way they changed, especially on the offense, was they decided, yes, let's go for these one-dimensional pushes, but let's deny retakes and let's deny those cutoff moments. That glass on change is a perfect example of that. That worked twice brilliantly, back to back, and now they move to the offense. And now they move to the defense. My bad. Can they keep that same level of pressure up? And they have Emporium on the Vigil, a selfish operator, but that selfish operator can use that one person utility to try and be a kind of a whisper in the wind. And shit, this could be shit. huge. Yo, putting pick and it goes the way of Lebanon Valley. Absolutely huge. And this double roam game already job done. You can fall out the site, mission accomplished, but they might be able to find one more as Brainax is dancing, creeping around upstairs, knows there is a threat. But this will be more of a decision to sit, hold, and lock down this rotate until they can deal with it. But no one seems to be too keen to budge. Yeah, Plexios has two ways of rotating back towards site now. One of them would be through the waiting arms of Brian Axe. But by making all of this noise now, he is going to give away his position. So Plexios knows that he cannot push back that way. Gets rid of the drone, steps on up, ready to fight as he pushes into Logi now as well. You've got Emporium still in position as you, the double roam still stands in the place. You're allowing, though, these Drexel attackers to begin to lock down your rotates back towards site. But while all this is going on, the rest of Drexel, they're having a great time. They're sitting on site. No pressure coming there whatsoever as all of the Drexel attention is on clearing these two roamers on the top floor. A massive time waste normally. You see teams drop away at this point, but you can't. You know your rotations are hep. They're working away. They're just doing vert. Do they have a flank Joe network? That's going to be the big thing, but you couldn't waste more time. You need to get these in, these critical steps done. But damage done. You've lost one. You've lost that Ying. Who ducks was so pivotal and walking in, being able to cause that chaos, that bubble of action with those Candelas. And with that Rome presence still a factor and a vigil on the board as well. No matter how good that drone network is, it sows a little bit of doubt into the back of the mind. And this could be huge. Every second drains away, giving the double Rome upstairs. Looks yeah, pound. Or looks destined to have some damage. And no, the cap can drop. Finds it down to waste. Oh, this is scary, Gibby. Yeah, Ace back on feet. Rifi still trying to clear the room with 30 seconds to go. Plexios gets one. Emporium gets his kill, making it a 5v2. And well, the bell has start to, started to ring here. Another player drops. Reliable gets one. Plexios trades it out with OSD. But Lemadon Valley take full advantage of that tactical timeout. They fight their way all the way back for a 7-5 victory. And what can I say but really well played for them. And those two roamers, normally they fall back to site within a minute and a half. But they weren't given the option to rotate back to site because of where those att attackers were. And that actually caused more problems for Drexel than just letting them go back. Oh, I mean, they couldn't rotate. They, either, they thought their cross was going to get held, so they hold, held on to those positions, and that was a massive time sink. The opening pick goes in favor. You lose that Ying. You lose that Candela. You lose, that, you lose the explosive utility for that execution. It's a massive problem. Now, Gibby, there's a bracket we've got so far. Run us through it. Yep, so we are now see Lebanon Valley move into the upper bracket final, which is listed as the semi, but that's of course what it is. They will play the winner of Robert Morris University and our hosts Kutstown University in the next game before we begin to dance inside of the lower bracket. The last chance for these sides, the gift for Drexel University. Losing that one is a tie against West Virginia Wesleyan College, and we'll wait and see who the University of Cincinnati will play in our next matchup. But, but that was a 
fun little introduction to the NA college scene for us two in game one. Oh, that was, that was an absolute blast. I mean, we saw a matchup that looked to be one side. All of a sudden, timeouts called and a massive run, a massive reverse sweep. We went all the way, not, not quite all the way to overtime, but we got two overtime and we saw that victory go out. And that was, I'm very impressed with the adaptions made. That change to attacking philosophy, that massive commitment to, right, we're going to play one dimensional, but stop them on that retake. We know what we're good at. We're going to stop them trying to retake, stop those rotations. And it worked out perfectly. And let's not even forget that Rome presence, what they've done upstairs, that was perfectly done, well executed. I think they were very deserving of that victory. They definitely deserve that one, and they move on to that upper bracket final. We do have another game coming up for you in just a few moments as our hosts will take on Robert Morris University. But until then, I think we're going to hop into a quick break. And when we come back, we'll take you through that next one. We'll see you guys in a few minutes. All right, well, I'm Joshua Garcia. I'm known as iTribune in the gaming world. I am from Goodstown, yes. Uh, last game we played, we feel pretty comfortable. Um, Tom, our in-game leader, everybody knows Tom. He's, uh, we're, he's the reason we're all here, but he is a avid theme park guy. He's loved theme park forever, as long as I've known the guy, like seven years now. He's just always on theme park. We've been dry running, scrimming. Theme park is a very strong map of his personally, and he's made us practice that map a decent amount of times. Our next game, it should be fine. I'm pretty sure we're playing Robert Morris. I know we've played them a few times before. Um, I wasn't here for the last land, but last land, they... Not sure if we ended up going up against them, but Tom has a game plan. He's been doing some bot reviewing, some strat making. We have a decent idea of our map, so I think we should be good for our next matchup as well. Do you think you're going to win the event? I mean, we're hungry. We, we've we been prepping for this ever since the last land. You know, me being not able to come because of um, I had some complications, I couldn't come, but we've been prepping ever since the last one, many months ready for this. We are hungry, we want it, and I believe we're gonna win. Welcome back in everyone to the Kutstown University Rainbow Six LAN. It's 2023 and yes, Whippet and I are still on your screen. I'm really sorry for that. But look, we got the hometown heroes taking on Robert Morris University who but have had a little bit of an incident on the way here. Uh, the, the, uh, their mode of transportation has not operated correctly and uh, they aren't here on LAN. Unfortunately, they are going to be playing remote. But they're still playing. They're still competing. That's what can. They got that competitor in them. They got that dog in them, and they're gonna try uh, and play. Every time I say that, you laugh, Gibby. Every time I say it, because you're not saying it with the same gusto that you normally do. You know. <laughs> well, listen, I'll bring that out later on when I've got it. But of course, Gibby, you love you love to talk about teams. It was a run through. Let's have a look at the Robert Morris University lineup. We got Faith, Whiskey, Warden, Reprovation, and Shrogan. Two things at the start with it that you've got a lot of faith. You love a bit of Faith and Whiskey. They're your favorite things <laughs> in the world. Oh, man, absolutely. You know, Ishkavaha, as we call it in Ireland. It's, it's, we call it the water of life, is the whiskey. That's a bit of me. That's a bit of me, that is. And of course, I, can, I just love a bit of Siege. I cannot wait to see what these guys do. Uh, I'll, I'll be fair. I'm a, I'm a simple man from Europe. I've not seen these guys play. I've, I, I rarely take a dabble over. So every time I get to see some new faces in NA play, I'm always very excited to crack straight into it. Yeah, excited to see which of these players could potentially be the difference maker for Robert Morris University. I'm keen to see how they play because they did take part in this event last year and didn't do too badly as we get ready to look at our home side. We got Golden Tribune, Tom Z, Thundee, and Skirt on the side. Uh, Tribune, of course, went 14 and 6 in the first map of the day. Big performance by him, Whippet. Oh, that's huge. Going 14 and 6 and again with one less round played to win inside then what we see in 2 1. That is huge. That's a massive amount of number. And give me, you were both mentioning, you know, that little interview segment before we dived over in this one. That's a drippy hoodie. That, that, that full send pink hoodie, absolutely drippy. Both me and Gibby want to know where that's from. Yeah, so if you're if you're watching Tribune, where did you get the full send hoodie? And that that essentials top ain't bad either. You know, it's, it's got drip. I I like it. I like the drip. Mm -hmm. If you guys don't know, Whippet beat me up after we worked our first land together because he said I dressed like an old man who got confused walking through the shop and grabbed things that just didn't didn't fit. So yeah, Tribune, we'll help me out. We'll talk about that polo shirt ever help. again. We'll never mention the polo shirt, will we? Help a man out if you can, Tribune. Help, help the guy out as we get ready for this one. So 
Aqua, but dare I ask, do you think that being the home side will give Kutstone, Kutstone a bit of an advantage going into this one? Or do you think Robert Morse, considering that they're technically playing from home now as well, might be able to get the edge? This is a bit of hometown pride. They're all going to be together. They're going to be in that LAN environment. Teammate to your left, teammate to your right. I think that's a huge factor. I'm not going to place any predictions until I see them go head to head. Maybe halfway through the game, I'll have a good idea where it is. I'm basically Maybe saying match I'm point. You Maybe you'll give a prediction at match point. I'm basically saying I'm not giving you a prediction, Gibby. I'm smart. I'm smart how I do this. But I know I'm very excited because my favorite map's in play. It's my favorite map that we're going to. So I'm just excited to watch them siege. So if anyone at home wants to know where we are playing, it is going to be Chalet, one of the most fun maps that you can play inside of Siege, and it's just because it leads to so many engagements. Like, as far as the map size is concerned, it's not actually a huge map. You've got three floors, but a lot of engagements engagements can happen early on. Sure, for example, if you're playing down by main stairs beside fireplace, you can see the whole way. You can create a line of sight the whole way from one side of the map to the other, which can be fun. Well, but this is going to be NA style. So we always see Chalet EU style. So I'll be curious to see if there's any stylistic differences and how it's played out today. The big thing I'm looking out to see these teams do, and to me, I'll kind of know on the offense how this game's going to go from the use of cutoffs. It's a lot of windows, a lot of external angles that you can use a map like Chalet, and it makes moving around the map a very difficult and arduous task. And if you see a Valkyrie ban, it's going to be even harder because the defense won't know, all right, there's a guy holding this window or a guy on this position, and that's going to be key to this one. Movement of the defense, if they can get around the map easily and not get cut up on rotations, then we are in for an absolute firefight glory. Fights will happen in every single corner of this map because the defense can move around so quickly. On the flip side, it could be that strategic stalemate, that slow burnout utility slog that this map can become, especially in Europe, because teams like to sit and like to hold cutoffs and try and force that pressure. You send in your entries, have supports on cutoffs, and that's typically how we see it back home played. One of the things that I like about Chalet as well is how it's evolved lately that when teams are pushing top floor, for example, it's not always the same old library push where you push the fireplace and get the wall open anymore. We're seeing Solarium used a lot more. We're seeing a bit of pressure being put on bathroom window. We're even seeing bathroom window being pressured now from the mudroom repel as teams look to push it out. But we'll talk a little bit about more of that once we get into the game as we step into the ban phase as the first attacking ban Ooh. will be a Flores and we'll put that makes yes. sense. Autumn yes. Map like yes, this, it's a yes, good bar. Yes, 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 yes. I'm a fan of that one. Now, Kutch Sound are on the defense. The Flores ban is mean you can hold on the key positions like Ivy so much better. Means you're basically safe, right? You have to, if you have a Romai, you have a Jaeger, you cannot clear that Ivy shield at least without major difficulty. Huge opening ban, and we'll see a Jackal mirror coming out to massively influential operators. And I always talk about that mirror. It's easier to deal with that now than in the server, and that's going to make you know bar games a little bit tricky from the defensive perspective. And this is the make or break ban number four. Who's it going to be? There's a lot of influential defense operators that you're going to let through or have to ban one. Oh, don't make me wait. Three, two, one. Solace. Solace. Ooh. So Valk's in play. Yes, yes, yes. Valk is in play, which means that these defenders will be able to get way more information as well. And this is a map where there's some pretty good hiding spots for those cameras as well. So we're going to step on in. Of course, the defensive lineup will be locked in in 15 seconds time. The attackers can change it up whatever way they so please uh, until five seconds left inside of the prep phase. But we are going to kitchen dining. And the one thing that has increased in prevalence on this map in particular okay, over the last... Okay. You know 12 months is the fact that 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 ground floor you know kitchen dining or bar games have become the favored defensive sites and it's nice to see that trend continue but if you are going to play this kitchen dining defense you gotta control that top floor you almost set it up the exact same way that you would if you were defending top floor that master bedroom office site so you do the same things you hold the top floor you reinforce these walls really what you're doing is you're giving those attackers two walls that they need to worry about breaching and that's only if they want to go linear towards library well, but how rare is it these days to see a team actually push the site and trophy side uh, it's basically unseen unless you do a heavy solarium side take and you typically only see that when there's not a significant commitment upstairs I am really looking into this setup and I like what Kutzen are doing what they're planning what they're cooking up because this is basically a very standard default 
high level setup for this site. They have a lot of fallback opportunities. They can fight both the solar take and the main lobby take. This is massive from them, and this is going to force RMU to go very aggressive to clear mezzanine, clear from Fluke Balcony, and begin to put pressure on directly, because you can't worry about below until you've got that verticality. And that's what they're going to do. So they get the drones in early, spot the fact that you have a bandit playing by half wall, and... Like, d dare I say, Bandit could potentially attempt the trick here in the side of this position to just make life yeah. even more difficult. Now, Bandit's life is very important, is very, you know, reliant on the fact that he needs somebody covering this door from as well. He's safe, yeah. so a thunder, thunder down below has vertical on that door, and you got someone in piano on that cover. That wall basically stays safe, unless you commit someone to send an opnade or clear that verticality down below from main lobby, but even then, you're not committing pressure to lobby, and Referential is going to be the first player down. I think that was the prone IQ, trying to get an angle from jungle deep inside of kitchen, or inside of dining, I should say. Caught out early, left him to give you know, should get recovered, will be left on 20 HP early, but... Good son in a good position so far, as this defense is giving a lot of problems to solve. And RMU, they're not doing bad on time yet, but it's beginning to get to be an issue. And the second player now left in DBNO. It's wasted about 15 seconds. Just to get this res is wasted 15 seconds. Fuse is in play. He hasn't even had a sniff of an opportunity to use his utility in this one yet either. A shrug now will be picked up as well. And so far, so good from the side of Kutstown. You've held back the early stage of this push. And Robert Morris need to identify one of these players to take on an end opening engagement. Reprovation still knows where the player inside of Dining is playing, who has fallen back in towards Kitchen now to play the longer angle. But... I'm looking at the lineup. They don't even have any real breach that they can use apart from the you know, the secondary, those can openers, as Atsio is going to open up a can of whoop ass on the reprovation as he's down and out now, finally, after the earlier knock. A long angle set up now, a head level one, but it's going to be a difficult fight. You try to position yourself in jungle, but you don't have vertical. You're going to have to funnel your way through a single doorway at this point. You can't get the wall, you can't get anything else. So now, well, they might be able to get this wall, give themselves a second avenue, but look at the top of your screen, Gibby. 25 seconds left on the clock. What do you do? You have to try and brute force your way in, but the vertical upstairs is going to mean this vault is basically inoperable. Your timer is going to go red, and it's going to be a bloodbath. Everyone's going to start swinging. Stand and bind, but it's going to be cut down. Swinging haymakers, and they get a four versus one. It's surely all but over this stage. Seven seconds. Tribune finds whiskey, and it's done. And that setup caused so many problems. Chalet defense could be a long, long time for RMU. They didn't give us a lot to work with on that one on their attack, but it is a very, very difficult site to take. But I like the way the Kutstown played it. They set things up the right way, and they just caused a lot of problems. Tribune, carrying on from his form in the game one of the day, picked himself up a 3k in that one as he put a couple of names onto his list. But we move on to round two. We're going to take a dip down into the basement and wine cellar site. So as we move to wine cellar and snowmobile, where will... Robert Morris elect to attack. In the past, you think about this one the same way as you nearly would Clubhouse. You get both breaches open, both breaches being, of course, the main breach by Snowmobile, and then you put a little bit of pressure on the wine wall over by Boiler as well. Once you open those two breaches, it keeps the defenders locked into place, rotates become difficult to achieve. It's something we didn't see a lot of on Clubhouse in the last map, but I think when you're attacking the site, you really got to get both of those walls open to have an effective opportunity to win a round. One of the my personal favorite way of attacking this site, Gibby. What, what, what would I call this? Would it be a John strap? Oh, wouldn't it be? Oh, it would be. I, I'm going to guess you're going to you're going to educate the chat about dropping prone dropping that hatch in kitchen. One of my favorite things teams tend to do is bring a ying, you do an entire solar side clear, you take control of the trophy, and from that you're able to get control of kitchen, dining, set up flying camps, and basically with a ying, and someone opening up that trench wall, you can have all the chaos. You prone drop the clear little guy in blue, open up that wall, clear pillar, and it's a job done. And the opening pick, Thundy finds one on the shrug. Not too sure, sure the source, last time I checked, Thundy was upstairs instead of library. He's close enough to that one as well. He could be a massive problem. Still on low HP, but again, on the roam, he's got that opening pick. He can waste some time, and he's got his one for one at the end of the day. Still gets his kill and still keeps himself in the game to potentially add to that tally. Main breach is open, looking at the defensive side. They don't really have anything to prevent the breach on the backside as well, so Whiskey will go ahead and open that. So you've got the two breaches now open, so you effectively get a little bit of control, but you are a man down. So... 
What Whiskey needs to do now is just prevent the player playing on Pillar from swinging around and causing some problems. Azio is going to prevent Reprovation from getting into the round as he picks up another one on the Oryx. So it's now a five versus three. Faith spots out the opportunity to take some shots onto one of those defenders, but missing them on this occasion. But with a minute and 40 seconds left to go, you have a lot of time to work with. You've got two drones that you can use to work out where those defenders are. And there is one pick. This is the point where you would get one of those calls up where you start to do a little bit more drone work. Work out where those defenders are and find the next way to maybe potentially get yourself into a 3v3. What I'm looking at right now is, okay, so man advantage, cuts down. They hold that right now. A single pick goes in their favor. The round's basically done. Tom's going to be able to find that one. So Whiskey's now slain. This is now a hero play situation. 4v2 a minute left. So you have time to get information and begin to figure out what you're dealing with. The issue with that is, is you've only got two guns. You've got two guns against four. You have a pretty... Oh, this is a free oh, no. Mozzie, you're going to read into this one. Oh, Tribune just in time. He peeks out to the breach and gets one. Sends his C4. Doesn't quite connect. But doesn't matter. Pistol in his pocket. He peeks it wide and gets himself a second and a second round for his team. Tribune coming in hot. That's a couple of kills in this one already after two rounds. As again, he's able to take on... No, it's not really a 1vx in the grand scale of things, but it is a 1vx in the case of he was the only person in that fight for the Kutstown side. As he, I think, moves up to five kills after two rounds. But again, the early pick that came in from Kutstown from Thunder caused a lot... Thunder caused a lot of problems for Robert Morris. They were able to isolate attackers and pick up kills that weren't traded back. Another thing that we didn't really get a chance to talk about in the last map, or of course the start of this one, is the impact that trades can have on maps like this. You gotta get players in positions where you can get the refrag, you can get the trade, so that even though you lose a man, you're still somewhat even on the number scale. Always having that, I like to call that that golden window, right? that three second situation. You lose a player, three seconds later, you get that trade. That's the bare minimum for a successful side. Goodstown aren't really giving RMU the opportunity to have those trades. Look at how they have, have the upstairs set up on that previous round, right? You're defending the basement, that's where the bomb set is. You had an elaborate maze of rotates, reinforcements, all holding upstairs. Basically, Goodstown held the entire map, and it was near impossible to have a significant availability, availability to get those trades. Well, if they can adjust their gameplay, maybe they can get those trades in this one. As you said, the three-second golden window, and it's something we see defenders use as well on the roam game. Players stay within three seconds. Here's the first opportunity, and Thunday for the second round in a row is able to pick up the first one on the reprovation. Down goes the twitch, down goes the opportunity to get those drones in and get rid of defensive utility. Early aggression from Kutstown coming in clutch again. The issue with, with a moment like this is, right, you, you get us bomb picked, it's really unfortunate, you lost a Twitch, you lost an F2, or a DMR, both impactful weapons, and that shock drone. Huge utility potential. As well as information. No trade. You can't trade that one back, and now you're immediately on the back foot. The round's basically just begun, and now you've got to start problem solving from a different perspective. So, what way do they elect to push in the swim? Well, Faith will be start by putting some pressure onto Library. Defensive side, nobody really in position just yet, apart from, well, any, nobody. I thought there was somebody in place, but we've only got one player playing things, on top main. I'm, I'm old, I'm telling you. It's, I'm actually, it's the last round. My brain hasn't caught up from the last round yet. I still see people in the positions they were once in. Get me out. Get me out. <laughs> so... Shrug will open up that little line of sight, the letterbox through the front door to potentially deliver in some rounds that could get a kill. But it's a very tense game. It's very slow push coming in here. Vault by faith will pop on and gets rid of the frost mat. But now he finds himself in a gunfight and that'll be golden as he steps in and gets himself a kill. Waiting for another player to step on through, but Whiskey will hold the push, turns his attention to Shrug, who eats a lot of damage, and Golden gets himself another one, as he now turns his attention to Warden on that fluke balcony. One man army stuff here, Whiskey gets one, Warden gets another, bring us back into a 3v2, but with a minute left on the clock, and HP not at a premium here for Whiskey, still a tough push to make happen, especially with Tribune still in the lineup. 
this wall should get open up. So now you're in a difficult position. You want to get that case down. You want that win condition. But that's going to force you into a technical one versus three. So you need this next pick. you got to work for about 20 seconds now. You need to work that pick. You need to get information. And you need to use whatever you've got. You've got two smoke grenades and an MPs. And that's what you try and brawl with. They have no information. So they're going to have to face check this one. And be brave with these gunfights. One player is going to get swung wide. Jaeger wins it. And now you're in a one versus three. And this is where you begin to feel a little a bit like it's all but over. Warden takes a little bit of damage. He'll reshuffle, try and relocate, but that's Saria. Gates blocked him. He knows someone's close. He knows that swing is arriving. He nearly finds the head of Jaeger. Finds a little bit more damage on that tray with 10 seconds left, Gibby. It's just going to be desperation. Looking for an exit now in Kirkstown. Looking on the precipice of finding themselves at 3 0 advantage. Yeah, Warden's just struggling here to get something oh. going at all. He's going oh. to get knifed by Atsio as he steps on up. And that's round three in the bag for Kutstown. And timeout requested by Robert Morris. Is it too little, too late? Well, we don't quite know. Last time around, we saw the tactical timeout have a huge impact on the on the whole the game as a whole. But look at the side of Kutstown. Three rounds down, we're putting three players yet to taste enough lead to take them out of the round. The big thing about this timeout, Gibby, to me, is this is the right time to use it. You've let yes. your opposition get that flawless rotation. So they have just won three sites in a row. They played these sites in a very specific way. You've seen it. So Kirsten has showed their hand. Now you've got the try and counter strat. It's not a long time in this time out to begin to, to rework what you're doing. But you know it's going to be a pretty expansive setup. They're going to, if you're in kitchen dining, which they will be for this time, you're going to be seeing a massive upstairs extension. How do you deal with it? Well, you need a better resource management to clear all of upstairs. You want to be able to get the utility off that wall in office. You need to do it from down below. You need to be able to get that wall open and put pressure on from there, bathroom and solar. So can they do it? That's the big question. Question that'll be answered pretty quickly as the timer begins going down once more as we edge closer to the beginning of round four. On the defensive side, Bandit will be taken as the preferred denial operator. Of course, I believe, if I'm not wrong, you can take Kaid if you like. He's still in play, but they're just electing. They like the versatility. Bandit brings a little bit more. So, we move in. Castle will be in play. They just create a maze for those attackers. You know, Castle can be a great operator if used correctly. I want to point out one thing, though. Robert Morris are bringing a Fuse again. Now, it might change, but last time they brought Fuse, I don't think I saw any of those dangerous hockey pucks being used at all. But it was essentially just bringing an operator and using the LMG. I would like to see was Robert it Morris act. It was the AK, man. AK, was it the AK last time? Okay, AK-12. It was an AK-12 with an angle grip and a 2X. Hey, come on. Okay. Okay, but anyways, he didn't use <laughs> you any were, of his utility. I freaked you out a little bit. I freaked you out a little bit. Probably had a, most, probably had a flash hider on. That's what I would say. Yeah, either way, though, he didn't use his utility. <laughs> what, what, is I, what is Fuse's purpose? Um... Put thing on floor, on our wall, and send other small things that go bang through floor. Hockey slash. pucks. Deadly hockey pucks. I mean, we saw, I mean, an unorthodox use uh, of Fuse during the Invitational. Kino on M80 was able to use that to set up, basically open up the entire floor instead of lobby. That would be the, the perfect time to use it. It's, it's, I like it when teams deploy technology like that one, where you can use those hockey pucks to detonate, open up the verticality, uh, and create a lot of pressure from a single bit of utility. Massive impact and value from that. But again, it clears space, and if you get top floor control, we hear those hockey pucks detonating below. Look, well, it was a vert grip, not an angle grip. Ah, stupid me. Your your point is completely invalid now, whip it. No. <laughs> it was close though. We'll give you that. It was close, Warden. Firing towards. He needs to be careful he doesn't tag up his own team hit over Shrug's by the fine. library Shrug's site. Shrug's built different. He's fine. He, sh he shrugged it off. Get out. Get out. Nah. Get, out. Get out. Get out of my walls. I, I, Tom wanted me here. That is true. He was like, he was like, can whip it, can whip it come? Right now. I am getting flashbacks to the LCQ and EU right now with Warden. Be careful not to fall off the balcony. What? He's cooking something up here, actually. What, what, what? 
He's got the right. There's a window open in piano. He has a crossfire established. Now that double barricade is still on piano. You've opened up this master bedroom position. As you'll take a little bit of damage, and that's going to be the opening pick now in favor of Robert Morris. That's a very good change. The opening pick, huge advantage. Office walls open. Make that stroke. You find the second goal is going to be there, but Tribune's going to be able to find one trade back and doesn't fall back. You need to stand your ground for a little bit longer and find a second one. What a shot on the warden. And now, this is the problem. The two picks got traded back almost instantaneously, and control is still held up stairs by Azio. Yeah, Thunder is going to get one onto Whiskey, making it a 3v2, and now all of a sudden it ain't looking good for Shrug and Reprovation. Reprovation, of course, has had a tough start to this one. The opening pick in two of the three rounds that we have seen them lose so far. So now Shrug steps his way in through Fireplace. Now he's got a long angle to, st to just peek into the depths of sight, but no defender has to peek. Just Kutstein need to be very, very regimented and structured and just not give anything away for free. That profession steps in through, picks up the case, but with 20 seconds left, whip it, what do you do? Oh, Gibby, I knew you'd get revenge on me with this one. It's going to be a three versus two. Good sound. Just need to hold our angles. Play for trade. Shrug needs this. Well, one player will drop to the basement. That's going to be an opening, but no. He vaults on him, but look upstairs. Vertical control still in control. And now it's all down to Yana. Reprobation alone with four seconds. And they didn't have, but it's all but over. He's going to get swung wide by Thundy. That'll be Tribune and get that final confirmation on Shrug. That's four rounds in a row. Kind of good, this Tribune fella. Kind of good. No, he is a little bit good, that is. Yeah, not bad. That shot on Warden, by the way, that is oh. huge to win that one. That, to me, and not only, not only, like, we're not only highlighting because he's, like, the, the guy that went 14 and 6 in the opening map. Like, that moment, to me, is what wins that round because you deny that crossfire. You give your team space to breathe, and that means Azio's a little bit safer inside of piano. Doesn't need to worry about that player on that balcony because that player can jump in. Piano window, bathroom window, cause all sorts of chaos. That pick was huge, and the fact is, could have fallen back. Could have got one, fallen back, and left Azio to die upstairs all alone, but stand and held that ground, which is so important, because ultimately, having that verticality, denied that Thatcher's jumping when the one player dropped in the hatch, dropped in the basement, and they were able to basically win off time alone from that. So, four rounds in a row, good sound, lucky in complete control. Good start for them as they move, or they've got one more round on the defensive side to deal with, but... The big thing for me, whenever I watch, you know, University Siege, Collegiate Siege, you know, some of the lower tier sieges, Siege, I'm looking for the decision making of players. You know, uh, there's a lot of very talented gunners coming up and through these days. They're they're everywhere. For me, I always look at decision making. You know, what way does the player play? What way do they engage themselves in these fights? The way the Tribune is moving around the map is really impressing me because... It's not just showing that, yes, mechanically he's very good, but his decision-making in the server has been impressive. That is the big thing for me. It, right, so, obviously, there's all these players right now. Everyone looks everyone looks at the highlight reel players to get these big shots and crazy moments. Your decision-making is what makes you the player that you are. You can have the, the, the aim to, to, to dig you out of the most awful situation, but some of the better players don't end up in those awful situations. And that's the making of someone that's brilliant. Pro tip out there, guys. If you want to get picked up, become a support player. That's what people need right now. There, There's not too many support players going about these four. days. There's about four. Yeah, and three of them are already on a team. <laughs> so, we look as we move into this round five. Looking at the position of some of these defenders, they're keeping an eye on the main breach, which has been opened already, but a lot of the attackers have rotated around already inside of big garages. They'll begin to put some pressure in and around Wild Cellar. Wild Cellar. Now, Asio has taken some damage, but that, of course, did come from using his dash as he was able to make oh, a what rotate. What's dash called, Gibby? Oh, it's the Kiva. Oh, why no. have you done this to me? Smile. Smile. I, I, I uh, have to torture you a little bit, but... I was saying, okay, so on towards trench side. Everything's getting open up now. That's going to be that's gonna be boiler now open and this long angle open up. This long angle is going to be a massive... Rema dash, by the way. What? I remembered. The Rema dash, I remembered. Okay. Tom's just going to go huge and get, get like three there. He's going to find another one. Oh, no. Unlucky. Connie's upstairs. <laughs> Connie gets upstairs and gets one more. Give me, you throw me off completely. Face back alone in the 1v3. Minute left on the clock. And I have a feeling Kurt Sam are going to be able to hold on to this one. They might peek, might get aggressive, might try to confirm it, for confirm it, but that hatch upstairs being open is basically the death sentence of this round. The hatch will watch the case, the case is cold, and it's basically done. 50 seconds of kind of holding off the inevitable for this one. Okay. It's one on to the vert play. Now, 
decision making. I, I get the ride was one. <laughs> no, but... no, 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 that's techers, mate. That's techs. That's fine. <laughs> no, 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 that's technology. He's, you know what he said? He said, play off my contact. That's what he that's said. That's true. That, yeah, he went, play off me. Play. I'm going to do, I'm going to drop this hatch. And if I don't win the round, you're going to win the round. And they won the round. And now they're on match point. Flawless half. Flawless you threw me half. so much in that round, Gibby. I, I despise you. Look, you. you did it to me, okay? No, you did it no, to me. I had no. to do it back. Wake up. This is... Wake up. This is... This Wake is up. 20... Wake is... up. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> oh, by the way, the I see... <laughs> help the siege. Help the lads. <laughs> so we move on to round... It's, it's weird to say match point in round six, but it is. It is also a timeout for Kutztown. It's, believe it or not, the second game in a row that they have taken their timeout on their match point. Uh, so it's kind of just a... warfare. That's yeah. It I actually, want... I would love for teams to do this more often. I think, well, okay, yes, it gives your opposition time to, like, have another mental reset, begin to speak, get it, get back in the flow of it. But the, the kind of oomph that has, imagine, like, you're playing on stage for a major... And it's a close game. Your opposition overtime match point. You know, you're waiting to, you know, it's not, it's round 14. They're overtime match point. And then they call a timeout. That's, that's a mental blocker for you. That's a huge one. And Kutztown, they've looked in control here on Charlotte. The way they've sculpted the map, the way they've played, the way they've controlled, the way they've played off each other, had perfect context, perfect trades, perfect setup, has been very, very good. Robert Morris have just struggled to get into that fight. It's been a very difficult time because they get any advantage and instantly Kurtzstown find a way to get that trade back. They suffered some early spawn peaks as well. Doesn't make things easy, but on the side top now, to the defense they go. And it's going to go down to basement first time around as well. Snowmobile and wine cellar. Site that we, we keep pointing out in Europe has gone out of fashion a little bit. Teams try tend to avoid it to elect to go onto the top floor and do ground floor sites instead. So... With that, what way are Kutztown University going to... Right, it's match point, Whippet. Yep. What I can see Stone... that. What is Stone Day bringing out? A ma... It's a he's match cooking. point, no, Monty, no, everybody. he's cooking. I don't like what he's cooking. No, no. Give me... No, match point, Monty. Woo, okay. So, <laughs> I'm scared. I am scared. Now, I know what they're... What? I know the recipe that they're going for. And a whiskey... He's going to be the demise of this one. If they walk in with a full smoke, sends, glass, Monty, Thermite through that breach, they're going to get caught out by that warden. If the warden's aware of it, if they're able to deny it, and they're going to go for that bandit trick early, this could be a problem if they don't deal with the bandit trick and they're all stacked up. This is a little bit massive. I think they're going to go for it. So the Monty will use his harbor utility, so they're going to get at least one opening. Ooh, what way will he go? He got the thermite, but you get one open at least. And <laughs> I played this exact same attack yesterday, and uh, this is pretty much how it went straight away. You get the open and pick on the bandit who was tricking, and now thermite can open the other side of the wall. Now things get a little bit easier. Another EMP will be thrown to make sure that there's no layovers from those bandits as they begin to open it all up. And in a few moments, we will see the X come out, but it is slowed down. Just a little bit. Things getting tense. Things getting quiet. Things getting maybe a little bit cautious on the side of Kutztown. Bandit has fallen. Faith relocates in towards the blue. And I'm surprised, Whippet, that things have slowed down so much. They don't want to show their hand immediately. So you do this, right? You instantly rush into it. It's going to be a problem. Tom's going to be able to find reprobation upstairs. And now this is when you execute. 5v3. Send every... Oh! They've only got one breach, though. That could be a problem. Monty's in, though. Monty's in. He'll draw a lot of attention, draw a lot of fire, bait some utility. But once you see these flashbangs go out, once you see these smokes arriving, a C4 is going to get sent as well. It only takes a lot of damage, but that's going to be that's going to be a massive push from Tom. Down the main stairs, Faith will get one trader back, and that's going to be your thermite gone. But hard breach already been established and opened up. The Monty can force and take control, and will push that warden further and further back. Time to get the execution going. Trying to get Tribune to stick that plant. That's exactly what he'll do. He's going to try and make it work. The Monty will try and scrap and brought the warden and wins that fight as well. Left on a four versus one. Faith all alone. Case goes down, and Tom shuts it down. What a round from him as well. Huge and cuts down, and they take a flawless victory here on Chalet. Flawless victory and dominant victory at the same time. 9-0 for Tribune. He didn't drop a single life over the course of that whole map. But I really like the way they use the Monty 
to force the player on main stairs back towards them to get to allow Tom to push on down and get the kill. That was really well coordinated, really well played. They identified the fact that there was a warden as well. So I think that's why they didn't go for that smoke push that we expected to see. So a couple of nice adjustments from the home side. Robert Morris, yes, you lose game number one, but that was the upper bracket. You have another life. And when you drop down to the lower bracket, that's when things get really risky for them. Yeah, I mean, they have the life lifeline. Double elimination gives you that opportunity to, to lose a match and survive, live to fight another day. And that's what they've got in that one. Good sound, though. I don't think anyone wants to bring them chalet for the rest of today. That is definitely a scary map. And I was exci excited to see it played. It's one of my favorite maps. And they showed why they wanted to go there. They were brilliant on it. They were impressive from the first moment to the last. The setups were pretty advanced, pretty well executed on the defensive side. And then the one attack we got to see, yes, they went for a little bit of flare and pizzazz. But whenever plan A didn't quite work, they adjusted pretty well and won out the round. So that sees Robert Morris step on into the loser bracket where they will play against the University of Cincinnati in game one. The game, we also see Drexel University taking on West Virginia. But that Lebanon Valley Kutztown game, the upper bracket final that we're going to have as game eight of the day, it's I'm looking excited. fun. I mean, all these games, they, they've all been fun so far. I can't wait. Yeah, but Kutztown, they really impressed me with the way they were structured. That was very well thought out. We won't, probably won't see them play Chalet again today. I, I can't imagine anyone's risking that in the map bounds. The way they set that up was very well done, and they look to have a very high-level team cohesion. Home, home field advantage must be, must be a massive factor for them as well. They got the job done, and, and, and flawlessly so. Yeah, Robert Morris maybe suffering from the fact the van couldn't get them to the venue as they lose that first map remote. So with that, though, we're going to jump into a break, and whenever the broadcast gets back, you'll be joined once again by Binks and Corbeck, who'll be taking you through the next two maps. But we'll see you guys in a little while. How's it going? My name is Logan Kramer. I am the captain in IGL of WVWC. My tag is glowseco.wvwc, but something that I'm looking forward to going into this next game. Uh, we are in the loser's bracket. We did lose on theme, which is usually one of our better maps. Um, we came in like last minute, so we were, we were kind of cold and still trying to warm up. Um, but I think now that we have a little bit more of a warm up time going into this loser's bracket, we, we could go pretty far. Um, so I'm going to rely on my guys. Tate showed up really big, fire truck. Uh, he showed up big last game. Uh, if he continues that performance and the rest of us step up and get out of the sleepy days, I think we'll be all right. So I'm looking forward to the, the loser's bracket. What's up, guys? My name's Dean, but you might know me as Italian Mafia in game. I go to Drexel University. Uh, winded up in the lower bracket against LVC. Rough game. Uh, almost had it. We were up 5-2. But the, their attack was really strong. Our comms kind of fell apart. Uh, so we're trying to... That was our second round on Clubhouse, so they probably got a lot of info us off the first game. Um, so we're going to try to not play Clubhouse again. Um, and we're just going to try to get our, make sure our comms are up, make sure we're getting trades for roaming, make sure we roam in pairs, and try to work our defense really well. Uh, thank you guys for all the support out there. And welcome back, everyone, to your R6, Custown University Esports Land. My name is Binks, and I'm joined by my great friend Corbeck once again. And we have our fifth matchup of the gate. Uh, sorry, fifth matchup of the day coming at you very, very soon. We're gonna have the Drexel Dragons taking on the West Virginia Bobcats. And it's looking to be a really close one because both these teams are gonna be the first match in the loser's bracket which means you lose this one you're done for the day you go home yeah a lot of pressure on both these squads here binks and we've seen both of them play now so we know what they look like uh drexel the dragons they had their match a bit earlier it didn't go so well for them west virginia wesley and they put up a heck of a fight but they also didn't make it out uh so you know pressure pressure you don't want to be the first team knocked out of land but one of them does have to go home whether they like it or not so uh that's the uh unfortunately the way the cookie crumbles here 
Yeah, so let's take a look at our first team, the Drexal Dragons. Now, you know this roster. Let's talk about their first match. So round one, they were able to win that one out 6-2 against Cincinnati, but then they went on to play Lebanon Valley College on round two, once again playing on Clubhouse. Now, things didn't go as well the second time as they were all the way up on match point 5-3, to three, but after a tactical timeout from LVC, LVC just came back and they went all the way through to win it 7-5. to five. So that hit that definitely hit home and hurt for the dragons but they proved that they have what it takes to beat lvc they just could not get the job done so i'm looking at them to have that same dominant performance in this matchup because they've proven time and time again that they already have a win under their belt unlike our opponents of the west virginia bobcats so taking a look at them again they had a six to three loss against Cudstown, and that was a match on theme park which you mentioned very keyly is a very different type of map and it's hard to attack so i'm looking that now that we have a normal map our map that we're going to is going to be villa we should be able to see a different sort of pace from west virginia on something that has a bit more normalcy indeed yeah I, I think i think that's true and i mean uh, again i feel like both of these teams in the match that we saw earlier today did put up a pretty good fight right like it, it was not entirely one-sided uh in either of those games so i think they're quite maybe i would say almost evenly matched in a way uh you know i'd be looking here for someone like uh was it glow Seco, the captain of west uh, wesleyan is somebody you should keep an eye out on Rifi guy another person who put up a lot of kills for his side right that was kind of one of the driving sort of uh motors of that team during their first uh first match of the day so those are just some names you should take a look at of course going to villa 2 starting it off uh banks a very uh you know well-known map defensively oriented though and that's one of the dangers in these best of one series is really side advantage where you start uh does play a major role in dictating the course of play yeah, so we'll see exactly where these teams start and i can confirm that uh we're gonna have west virginia on attack um i do really like the idea of starting on attack for villa um mainly because it gives a lot more freedom um to to bend the map to how you want it of course you're playing reacting to the defender sites um but I feel like the attack on Villa gives you a lot of time to understand what your goal for the map is. And I think we can both agree, Corbic, there's nothing worse than being on defense and being down where you're forced to go to the same, like you have to keep going to a different site with every single round you win. When you win on attack, it does not make that much of a difference. The defenders can go to any site and uh, I feel like it adds that extra bit of pressure. So good to start in the attack to have the opportunity to go up yeah that, yeah it's gonna be it's always gonna be rough right especially again villa defensively oriented everybody knows that uh that's not a guarantee obviously sides are never a you know that's not set in stone but certainly i think it'll it'll be an advantage for drexel uh to start on the side that they probably feel a little bit more comfortable on i know i would personally feel a little bit more comfortable if i was starting here on the defense as well jackal ban early on i think that's a really solid ban for them right out the gate right you just take that tool out of the kit of West Virginia Wesleyan. You don't allow them to bring that operator aboard. Banning Thatcher. You don't need to ban Thatcher in this day and age. You don't need to ban Thatcher on Villa if you don't want to. I know I talked about this earlier in the broadcast, but yeah, okay. Get rid of Thatcher. Get him out of the picture and don't worry about him anymore. Flores is the one I'd be thinking of that remains on the board. A very strong operator here. A lot of drone potentiality. Uh, to come in, so that's something they're going to have to watch out for. Interesting choice, a Capkin ban. We see those uh, not infrequent amount of times nowadays, I feel like, Binks, and I never am quite a huge fan of them, though I do sort of understand nobody wants to walk, you know, chin first into a Capkin trap if they can avoid it. Yeah, they, I, I think that it was, yeah, that makes sense that it was, was actually, sorry, I was expecting Drexel to be the one to ban next. They had to go against the Capkin in their last map on Clubhouse. Um, but I digress. I don't like playing against Capcan either, but I do feel like there are better bans in a lot of scenarios because it does leave a lot of freedom for the defenders in the form of Kaid now, which is going to make the attack a lot harder because you don't have the Thatcher. He's been banned out 
Um, so two, three hard breachers initially from the side of West Virginia. So we'll see if they, they keep to that. And obviously they <laughs> will not the moment I say it, but we can begin to talk about this defensive lineup where it still Attackers looks like it's going to be a heavy to move towards more of a trap type operator with both Frost and Alibi being taken. Right. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, it's uh, it's an interesting defensive setup for this site, honestly. I mean, I love Rifi guy's pick here. Uh, you know, bring the frost out. She's an operator that actually can get quite a bit of value. Uh, I quite like as well, you know, I, I said this in one of our earlier broadcasts, I just think Alibi is such a useful operator to have in pretty much every situation. Uh, I don't remember, I'm trying to remember, was it Drexel that was doing weird things on Clubhouse with frost shields and uh, castle barricades, or was that another team? Uh, I was just watching. Yes, it was. It was, it was Drexel. Drexel, right? Yeah, because I see them setting up this shield there, and I was like, eh, it's an interesting spot for a shield so we'll see what they we'll see what they play off of it obviously ducks on the azami is giving them a lot of flexibility to do some various things but that said yikes big bold play here from trob needs to be very careful they don't get cut out right there because that is an easy place to get cut uh, and that'll be a good opportunity here i guess to test west virginia wesleyan's ability to do some droning because they should not miss the alibi hiding in the corner of his study it's, it's that type of angle where if you're not expecting it, then oh well, and they have missed the drawing. You start come in, that's gonna be two free kills. If they just turn their head right now, Throb, you can get that first blood easily. There's one, two, missing the spray. That was a free opportunity not to worry about someone coming from the ledge. Spray out to find their second kill, looking for a possible third as they will rotate all the way back down to planes. And what a big way to open up the game for Drexel is they've completely just spotted a big hole in West Virginia and it's gonna throw a lot of things into question about what is going on with the droning misdroned simple as that misdroned i mean i said it would be a test of the droning and it, and it was uh the, the issue was they sent in the habana first of all probably shouldn't have led with the habana but that's neither here nor there uh, they lead in with the Habana, and you could actually watch the drone following the Habana in. Ideally, that's not bad, right, to have a drone accompanying whoever your entry is, but you really want to send that drone in first so that it gets the opportunity uh, to scout out the area. Now everything in the hands here of Kian Drake and Otto Latry, and I mean, neither of these players is particularly bad here, but I feel like they have really no good tools to work with in this scenario, uh, and it's going to be, they're going to have to cut through some serious chaff to get the point. I say that, though, and Cornero is down, but Italian Mafia right there to double back, and finally, of course, to finish it off, it's Traub. Yeah, that, I, I felt like that round was going Drexel's way immediately off of that uh, hidden alibi kill. Um, I, I like it, though, because it showed that Drexel was willing, willing to take a risk there, especially on an early round. Um, and I feel like that will allow them to... Uh, force West Virginia to go back and take a lot more time with their clears because in the event that they don't, then uh, they, they could so easily get caught in that very similar scenario. And I think we've all had those days where we just completely miss drone and forget to check such an obscure corner, which I, I, I'll be honest, I, I wouldn't have thought to check there if I was in a very, uh, my drone is to clear through study into planes. My biggest concern is thinking, where are they gonna be in planes? The study's a very obscure spot, but with that being said, I'll digress as we are actually going to the planes and games site next. Well, this would be the logical kind of, I guess, next step, right? You, you rarely see teams who are brave enough to go down and play uh, on <laughs> kitchen first. Are they trying to get a shield on top of that table? I, can you yep. do that? I, yeah, I think you can, I think there's right? like a one small spot. It used to be yeah. easier. Um, and then they nerfed it to Oblivion. And then they still, someone still found a spot to be placing it. And I don't think it's as good as it used to be. But it gets the job done, and I think that's what people are looking for. And I love that Asami is setting up for the extension, because the longer they stay alive, the more rewarding that hold is. I, I don't, I don't know if it's just a me thing, but I think that's great. No, no, it's a decent extension to make, and one that I think is uh, genuinely quite sensible. Uh, you know, you want to try and slow down West Virginia here a little bit and uh, make them fight some battles, right? And 
this is something I think we saw from Drexel earlier. It was Rifi guy in particular uh, on the roam who was kind of acting almost as, you know, the initial, or not even almost, was the initial point of contact for a lot of these plays. Very lucky to escape with his life, but he doubles back on it. And Glosico there waiting to finish it off will secure the kill using the DMR on the Twitch. And so that's a good opening here, and that'll slow this extension down dramatically. Ducks is going to try and hold it out and then maybe show a clean pair of heels. Doesn't want to get stuck waiting to see what's coming for him down the pipe. Understandably so. Uh, again, this is it. This is a good opening. This is what West Virginia Wesleyan needs. A lot of space taken, and you've kind of cleared the first defensive line, and now you can start focusing on crossing that main hallway and actually assaulting the bomb site. What I really like is six of their exactly drones, six of their the seven drones have been deployed and are in use. So that, that just goes to show how much of their utility they are attempting to use, including the shock drone from Glow. This is a stark contrast where we have the info of zero as well. They are making sure that they miss absolutely nothing. That Twitch drone is doing absolute damage. Auto able to find their kill onto Throb, moving this to a 5v3, favoring the attackers. This is a textbook round for West Virginia as they're showing it exactly what they want to be doing in this scenario Kai and Divine Cunero and now just remaining two of Ducks and Italian now both these players can flat frag respectively but it's just going to be about how they are going to find this great use of the barricade they'll blow it right back off and they're going to try to use an impact and it's going to be able to catch one in that pokeball goodbye to Otto Kai is also going to be down in the hallway finished off by Italian Mafia and look at this we have a round two to three now the attackers waiting to make their way into sight. You had an initial smoke, and this shield has not been dealt with. Even though the ADS was shot, because you used a Selma breaching charge, it was able to be shot right back off. Star able to find the frag on the two Italian Mafia, all left up to Ducks, who's playing all the way in the back of Aviator. They're going to make their way through the landing, but what's this? The tracks are getting in the way. No way to work the way through that without taking a lot of damage and making noise. It's just looking towards sight. The fuse are finally being planted by Glow. Star will go down, down to a 1v2. Fire truck has no more tracks left. They will also fall to Ducks. They're on a double kill. Make that a three since Star's already out of the play. All left up to the Glow with D, the DMR in hand. They have the smoke in their pocket if they can use it properly, but it's going to be risky trying to sling that over the site, but it won't even matter. The shot with the DMR from behind the bar will secure West Virginia the round and make it a 1-1 game. Oh, well done there to make it the 1-1. Interesting to kind of see that one develop. I didn't necessarily see it going that way, but uh, all right, here we are. Uh, so round three it is, and we'll see where Drexel decides to take this. It's going to be a dining room kitchen to start. Okay, fair. Uh, you know, I, I like it when they don't repeat bomb sites, right, that they, they just kind of had some trouble on. So they'll dip down there. Defensive lineup really not set until very late in this round. And interestingly enough, no Solus or Pulse in that setup, which I, I think is genuinely surprising, to be honest, because they're such good operators on this particular bomb site. Just the ability to counter out the verticality, right? Like, you've got to get people up on top of the site. You know that yeah, your I... opponents are going to do that. And someone like Pulse, or in, in this case, I guess, like Solus, could also play this role. Just really put the constant threat of observation on whoever's up on the top floor. But what we might see instead here, Binks, is maybe an extension, like a physical extension up to that second floor to actually try and, like, fight it out up there. That might be what Docs is showing us. We'll see. I guess we will. We have seen a switch from the Dokumi to the Ying. So I have to wonder, does this mean they're going to try to put the Candelas on the floor or roll them in? There's a few different options for the Bobcats to take in this scenario. But I, I have to, I, I'm left with a few more questions than I am answers from Drexel's approach. But it's not to say that it is wrong because you aren't required to have the pulse. And it seems like they're going to be playing for a lot more of a physical guns up approach rather than the C4 util, which can be hard to just constantly display in a scenario where um, they're initiating a lot of pressure onto the physical site immediately. Mm, indeed, it's true. And the real challenge now. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh. If they had just fired, they could have got him. Glosico gets him anyway. Rifi guy caught looking. And for the second round in a row, Rifi guy gets beaten out right there at the start. Fortunately, Trob there to turn it back to a 4v4, at least keep things a little bit more even. But it's Glosico. Again, remember, these are the names that I said. Glosico and Rifi guy are ones you should watch out for. And Glosico is cooking right now. 
Good kill from Trob though, shuts him down. Unfortunately, a little bit of caster curse right there. And Trob's trying to keep the fight alive, running back into the basement, just posing a constant threat to this West Virginia Wesleyan side. I find a lot of players are scared to go into the basement. Really happy to see that in that case, the Thorn will stay alive just a little bit longer. Quinera to find Star, making this a 3v2, favoring the defending side. The Nomad was able to use their util, so it's not the worst person to lose. Fire Trick also taking some damage to the wall. Still one EE, one D remaining. They're going to deploy it and along with those two remaining Selma breaching charges. The Bobcats have a lot of potential. Quinero will fall, so that means no more Mute and C4 on the board. Now just waiting things out, as this is going to be the tense in-between point of the round. Still two Castle Bear Caves, so if you want to get very crazy and try to put those back up, that could be a viable strategy. But Mafia is going to attempt to sneak around successfully, so because they will find Fire Truck. Now Auto is stuck all alone in a 1v2. They have a means to get towards site. They have an air jab set up to possibly watch different types of flanks. But swinging, they're going to check the pantry. What a shot on the throb. And now they have sight. They can see the C4 was prepped and ready. And most importantly, they have time and freedom to go for a plant. Because as Italian Mafia pushes up, they don't have the proper line of sight onto this ace. Swinging around, it's just too long for the plant. And Italian Mafia will win that one out with more than enough time as the ace was just caught place in the case Bomb diffuser disabled by defense. close though very very close Defender right win. there between the two of them i mean honestly a, a razor's edge differential and it was such a good start for west virginia wesley and the only problem was and it kind of actually piles back to the issue that they had on the other round that they lost is it, i feel like the droning the the information game was just not there i mean you saw the frost kind of pop out and that was you know what not frost i'm sorry thorn thinking about traps and then i saw frost pop up you saw the thorn kind of pop up from the basement there uh vinks and that was what set the set the tone right they didn't have a bead on where the thorn was and they got you know progress off of that so mm -hmm. it's a lesson to be learned again and something that i think west virginia was Leon Attackers needs need to, to step up a little bomb. bit if they want to remain competitive in this match yeah, you got a point there and what what i really felt with that round was uh the turning point it was even trades throughout uh all up until you had the castle flank and i i felt like that was a really big turning point in the round um primarily just because it showed once again an inability and of course it's late round it's hard to have drones um but it's that idea of making sure that during the round you're not just using your drones for pre-placed but you're getting that active util in flank pants because i feel like that's something that a lot of people forget about because it's not as clear and as important they don't always come into play but when they work corbeck man oh man do they work oh very true they do work they work very well uh you know <laughs> that's as what you like works. to see yeah, when, when it I works, frag, it works. I really like, when I play Rainbow Six Siege and I frag, I really frag. Yeah, when it, works, <laughs> when, it when my fragging works, it works. <laughs> but it, it's just one of those things where it, keep doing it and it will pay off. Keep placing those pre plays and those flank drones, it will pay dividends. It will indeed pay dividends, and that I think was what we saw going on right there. Looking at this defensive setup here, we'll see not bad opening again from west virginia wesleyan they actually get some penetration and kian drake actually gets a kill with the glass this is an interesting angle for the glass to be holding if i'm honest with you i don't know how i feel about it necessarily but i can see the strategy behind it because he's opening up a lot of space here rifi guy now falling victim to that as well so a three to five rifi guy down early and that's basically all the roaming presence of drexel taken off the board i see that is trob trying to get aggressive right there trob does swings wow. out underneath with the nitro cell and finds the kill nearly gets two on that as well because glosico is down fortunately they'll be able to get him back up and just yet again not marking all the members of drexel is really punishing this west virginia wesleyan team because that's another moment there where you really should have probably gone and cleared underneath and made sure that wasn't lurking and they just didn't do it and so as a result they get punished now though i mean still 4v3 the advantage with west virginia wesleyan they just have to find a decent opening here 
It's going to be all quiet as West Virginia, the Bobcats, want to make their way north, as Bobcats do. Um, just slowly making the way in. And, of course, we have a more of a split push. Just walk-in closet. You're going to see Otto, the case holder, getting droned in by his team. Now, if Ponero is not properly watching this, this could be absolutely crazy. It will. Even while being frashed, Otto will find that frag. And this entire round has been flipped up on its head. Italian's going to have to find a lot of frags. Otto's going to be lit up to a sliver of HP. They're going to continue to go for the plant. C4 being cooked out. Time's at the essence. And they're going to deny that plant. Case will not go down. Star is also fallen into the down but not out stage fire truck is going to have work to do here they have their teammate that they could possibly try to go for the res but you're so careful so cautious of every single possible angle to be held they're going for the res star's gonna get right back up the swing and he'll fight both of them what a shot from italian mafia great individual play from italian mafia not a lot more to be said other than that right just kind of keeps it together knows exactly what they need to do and West Virginia Wesleyan, unfortunately, another opportunity just kind of slipping through their claws right there on that one. Uh, I mean, it, I think probably the answer was maybe a little bit more of an effective shutdown on Italian Mafia. I think you see also, again, the, the opening there, the intelligence misstep, right? I don't think they necessarily know that Italian Mafia was in that position ready to fight it out. Uh, and that's kind of, again, what happens, right? You're filtering through a choke point. Italian Mafia is waiting. He picks one of you off. That's all they need to do. Need to Reset the board. Go again. I mean, I will emphasize, and I still think this is true, a lot of these rounds have been eminently winnable here for West Virginia Wesleyan. They're just not hitting the right notes at the right times. And as we go back to the kind of primary bomb site of Aviator Games, we might actually see West Virginia pull one out. They seem to like this site. They seem to feel comfortable here. What's worrying me, though, at the start already, Binks, is Traub on the cab. Cab is not, I would say, a particularly great operator. But for a team that's already showing signs of struggling to track opponents, Cab can be very annoying. What I'm looking forward to is the Cav against Nook. It seems like that's... Oh, never mind. And uh, uh, I'm not, I, I'm not, I have nothing to look forward to. I was like, I was just told we were going to the amusement park and I was denied, but I have enough to look forward to. I, I can look forward to Throb. Now, I wouldn't normally support that placement of hiding Cav there, but a lot of players have gotten into the habit of looking down and checking for the Frost map. So even though there's no Frost on the board, it, it might cause for the habit to look there. Um, very interesting sort of dynamic and we'll see if this have pays out but I, i'm really interested about the route that they're taking as well as how exactly they plan on getting the most valuable thing out of cap which is that interrogation right and that's uh that's the tool you really want there i mean as much as she is you know can be a real fragger that's that's where the sort of big benefit lies uh in this case i mean it looks like for the most part the members of drexel are not are so spread out they're actually kind of missing the push of west virginia wesleyan hiding in the bathtub now i don't actually think no way I recall. No there is one person over way. there it's Glo Seco on the drone no! Has no idea just double taps him with the shotgun and that is a terrible way for this round to start for west virginia wesleyan i mean i don't actually know what else to say about that that's a really bad way for that to begin you also don't seem to be able to get Drake in the cutoff position that you want him in and it does seem like west virginia wesleyan just sort of stalling out right there a kill from trob again he tries to get one more but star on the cleanup will at least staunch the bleeding for the team still unfortunately four to three now is the situation as the good kaibi ping goes out and they begin to push up towards the bomb site drop the bomb diffuser it's going to be Rai Fi to connect onto Star. No more signal for the Dokubi. And 4-2 to two favoring the defenders. Final minute of play. Glass as well as Gridlock. Not the two operators you would necessarily be looking for. And a fall through the hatch is going to force Kayan to have to play things once again a little bit different. They will try to use the scope. We have Rai who's stuck in a very obscure trophy angle. And this could cause for a great flank it's going to be rifi to find cayenne and now from the other side of sight just looking for any sort of leeway to to find a frag you have to find an entry here but 
through the work of Throb, it, it seems rather unlikely that that's going to come into fruition. And there's Ryfi to collect their third kill on the round after being stimmed by Doc. And Drexel has looked very dominant here on Villa. Right, they have. And I mean, that's again, I, I will say partly that defender advantage coming into play, but also Drexel uh, just hitting all the right notes, right? And you saw West Virginia Wesleyan's attempts to, I think, kind of out strategize the things that Drexel was doing and nothing was landing. They just could not seem to find any sort of rhythm in a lot of those attacks some of them got awfully close but in those 1v1 situations too west virginia just not able to really play it out how they wanted and as a result drexel you know pulled off a couple of real serious clutches right there Attack. moving ahead though i mean you do have the defensive split right so west virginia wesleyan takes over here they come out they've got the aruni they've got the azami it's a solid lineup they don't have any dedicated hard breach denial for what it's worth but i don't think they need it they're playing that kind of open wall defense here they are almost inviting drexel in to fight and over on the drexel side I mean, I'm curious to see what they can do with the amount of roamers that they have. And honestly, just the amount of throwable utility, like utility that they're bringing. <clears throat> you have uh, you have the Flores Rateros, you have two frag grenades on Trob, you have everything that Ducks brings to the game, you have all the Selmas, you have three air jabs. It's a lot uh, for West Virginia Wesleyan to deal with. And that's something that I think could be uh, a little bit overbearing here as this round progresses. I, I do genuinely, the Rateros alone are probably gonna make an absolute fortune for the uh, Drexel side because there's literally nothing on the side of Wesleyan that can uh, really counter those out. I got a good point there. So last time we saw this site, it was with West Virginia clearing very heavily through, like their first time through, very heavily through bedroom. Uh, so I'm interested to see how exactly that's going to work out. Great use of the Rotero drone is going to force the displacement of the shield. And that's going to allow for a lot easier push up through bedroom. Not to mention the fact that Glow is the first one to go down, especially as the Azami. That is the worst possible situation because you did not get your full use of your utility as you get more and more barricades as the round goes on. Auto is holding down inside of Sat uh, Saturday Room where you have to try to hold every single one possible, but you can't do that if you're getting droned out. And most importantly, they've lost their shield. They're lit up to a tiny bit of health. C4 is going to get cooked out and thrown into a very awkward position. Corvic, it feels like a lot of things are not going the way of West Virginia. And now down to a 4v3, they're just looking to get worse. Yeah, I mean, they, they tried here a, a good delay at the start, right, with the extension, but uh, Drexel's just kind of eaten that alive, and they're pushing up so aggressively now, it's hard for me to imagine how the remaining members of West Virginia Wesleyan are actually going to make this work. Star has played very well in a similar clutch situation that we saw on uh, Theme Park. Like, we genuinely watched them pull it together. And they might be able to do that again. They are going to get droned out here, I'm pretty sure. So the position is not going to kind of be inviolate. Fire Truck, who's having a rough day, isn't going to be able to do anything either. That's Star who gets caught looking. The drone catches him, and then the gun kills him. Good kill from Fire Truck right there to break that donut, give himself a breadstick. But Cornero on the long sight line across just goes ahead and shuts it down. Yeah, great attempt so far from West Virginia. And there was a lot of stuff in that round that I did like. I liked the improvised play, but it, it, there's no denying that Drexel had a great read and that use of the Flores, where I believe this is one of the first matches that we've actually been able to see Flores not get banned. And you're seeing why, because they don't have to get to right next to the shield to blow it up. That that RCE Rotero drone was set up next to the wall. It just had a narrow line of sight onto that shield, and it made all of the difference there so i like it i want to see more of it so i'm interested to see whether or not west virginia has what it takes to adapt and survive because their life in this tournament is on the line the candle's about to go out 
yeah, you're on match point here, and I just don't think they... I mean, I, I'd be, I wouldn't rule it out. It's not impossible, but yeah, it's going to have to be one hell of a feat for them to recover here. Uh, and they're going to a secondary bomb site as well. I mean, I actually really kind of... Uh, I enjoy what they're doing here with their defensive choices. The castle, I think, is an excellent choice on this spot. You've got your Volcons there. That's a lot of kind of area denial. You add into that more smoke grenades, right? And you're just continuing to stack up a lot of denial pools not sure that said what the plan is with that reinforcement that we just saw on the wall back there that was a that was an interesting choice there for statuary and now kind of running out of time in the pep prep phase as well Kian drake peeling back and i think gonna basically try and set up a very kind of pixely cross fire angle here with a uh, fire truck who's playing off of that open wall this is a high risk high reward scenario because if that gets blown up then i think drexel's just gonna walk in but fortunately i guess for west virginia drexel is choosing to come from the other direction does render some of their preparation mute here banks but it's uh not the worst development for them i think is a bomb team. has been located slow push thus far from drexel the dragons opting to go for a lot more of a different push um i i like the smoke play i like everything that we've seen from west virginia but the option to boycott it is probably among the smarter ones prepping the nade from down below whether or not they have the info prepping it beautiful throw throb wow goodbye to glow that's an explosive way to open up the round and it seems like drexel are looking to pounce on this opportunity shooting up the default throbs making his way towards astro stairs but there's kyan to get the refrag back down to a 4v4 minute 45 to go and every single part of the dragon's approach has seemingly changed players starting to make their way over to the bedroom side late in the round why would they do that for the simple reason as the all the resources of west virginia have now shifted allowing rye guy to get more of an easy entry into this saturday uh, statutory as well as trophy room site yes statuary on a saturday i think you'll find exactly uh, good crossfire right there from Quarn carano doesn't actually work star instead finding the kill onto italian mafia and keeping it at three three the health differential may be coming to play ducks now pushing up here checks down towards statuary desperately wants to peek this door i think probably to remove an electro clock kind of doubles back on it thinks better of the idea the defenders still stacked up here just waiting, I guess, for somebody to kind of move into them. And I think that's the right call. You don't want to get overly aggressive in this tense of a scenario, right? If I guy there opening up some very long sight lines, covering that down with the AK-12, hoping to just detect a hint of movement from the Drexel side. But it's Cornero who gets clipped first. Auto Lettery getting one as well. Ducks now shifting up. That'll be one member of the defense down. Star is still locking it down. Gets dropped, though. A desperate firefight here for Ducks. Ducks looking for the kill, and he finds it. Star down. Auto Letchery down, and West Virginia Wesleyan University is out of the land today. We cannot deny the beautiful play from Drexel. They did a really good job of being able to just cover their angles and most importantly find the holes in the offense and defense i'm a really big fan of how they're able to play together and most importantly play off the frags they weren't getting but they were creating a lot of those fragging opportunities were not because they instigated it's because they controlled the placement and the movement of their opposition and i loved every single second of it so as we move in towards our bracket we can see that drexel is moving back up to losers round two and they're going to play the winner of our next batch the match which is going to be robert morris against the university of cincinnati so really interesting to see and we could see a lot of changes in this bracket so don't go anywhere because this this land is still getting underway corbick and we're moving our way towards a explosive finals my name is jacob you might know me as pop um we had a pretty rough game against Drexel our first game. It was pretty early. We, weren't, we, weren't, we were kind of warmed up. Had some issues um, on the communication. We didn't do our normal pushes. It didn't really help us. We lost because of it. But our next opponent is RMU. We should have a pretty good game against them. Scouted them out pretty well, and it should be a great game. Um, if we, we we should if we go back to our default pushes, and we are great and great on communication, we have a chance to actually win it and come back. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, we're here. <laughs> <laughs>
This is awesome, my buddy Corvick. Uh, we're back for your Cuzcan University Esports Rainbow Six Siege land. I'm Binks, joined by Corvick uh, to my left, uh, right for you. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have a great match coming up for you. We're going to have Robert Morris University taking on the University of Cincinnati. Now, this is once again in our loser's bracket, which means you lose, you go home. So we got the Robert Morris Colonials taking on the University of Cincinnati Bearcats. Now, we had an opportunity to see the Bearcats earlier, but Robert Morris played when our friends Gibson and Whippet, or Gibson, or uh, Wibskit, <laughs> uh, were casting that one, and that was a 6-0 uh, to zero defeat for Robert Morris. Yeah, and both of these teams have played in, I think, similar circles, right? I, I know that they both played in CR6. Uh, the Bearcats, I know, they played in Open League, and they are usually somewhere in 12 to 20 in terms of their overall ranking. So they're a good team, uh, and I think they can definitely give Robert Morris a run for their money. But let's take a look at RMU, Faith, Whiskey, Warden, Dep Reprovation, and Shrug right there, rounding it out. Whiskey, the captain, a senior, a lot of seniors in this lineup, actually. Whiskey, Reprovation, and Shrug kind of the senior talent that are on this roster. So uh, we'll see if they can muster some of that veterancy here to help them out in this uh, in this difficult challenge that they're facing ahead. Yeah, they are not able to drop a, another map. So as we look over towards the other side of the Bear Cats, you recognize this team. It's a Mango Fett, Pop, Kithin, Bread, and Bean Chilling. And we heard Pop just a short moment ago in his interview, just talking about what the team needs to work on. And I have to agree with a lot of the points that they made, just really emphasizing on the team playing together. And I want to see them watching for that crossfire as well as refrag, because our map that we are going to next Corbic is going to be the side of Oregon so mm -hmm. if we do go to Oregon then you you have to play for the refrag and if you're going for the roam there's no such thing as a single person roam and I, I I feel like that is so emphasized on Oregon because you play for that too you get the one you get your trade hopefully it's a hard breach uh, and then you can make your way back to site for that final stand yeah, and the, the downside here, I think, is that Cincinnati is starting on the attack, and with these, you know, one-map series, there's not, again, a lot of room for leeway. Interesting ban early on, taking Montaigne off the board. That's not one that you see a whole super-duper lot, so not entirely surprised right there that they're ready to take Montaigne out, I guess, yeah. because... Why, why it's not surprising is because I do think sometimes you see teams that get really worried about the idea of running into like a Montane player or a Montane strat and they don't know what to do. That said, probably better uses of that band. Yeah, and next up is going to be Solus. We saw uh, them band out a few times already and that's just because of all the information gathering they can do, but you still have the pulse on the board even though it's a little bit different. Pulse isn't shiny and new, uh, very much an OG operator. And Mira, the final one to be relegated off the board. So as we continue on to round one, Robert Morris is going to be starting on that defensive end while well, Cincinnati's going to be stuck attacking. I do like... Uh, as far as my personal preference for Oregon, I'm actually on the defensive end. I love defending Oregon more than attacking it because it gives me a much better read on the other team rather than having to attack first where I feel like I can't get enough of a read of how they would play on the other end. That's, yeah, I think that's, I think that's a very valid point. And I mean, the bigger deal here, I think, for these teams in particular is that it doesn't give you a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity, I guess, to learn your opponent's defensive setups, right? You're limited on rounds, and you're limited on the number of times you will see certain sites. So you're guaranteed pretty much to see a tertiary, to see three at least three bomb sites, right? You're guaranteed mm -hmm. to see a uh, primary, a secondary, and a tertiary, but you might, for example, only see the primary once you might see it twice it's really hard to get an accurate read on just how your opponents like to play things for example if there's a specific player that likes to kind of play out and be wild you might take you a round or two to figure that out but when you only have you know uh six rounds to lose 
uh, finding out those kind of lessons is costly if it comes at the cost of, you know, each <laughs> each lost round. So something to keep in mind right there as well. And the setup kind of taking a little bit of time here for the side of Robert Morris. Reprobation, I don't think, has that shield down. And Faith gets spot out and gunned down by Pop when he attempts to swing the corner. So four out of five to start already. I like that initial move by Pop. They had good info and it was just a good gunfight, good headshot win. Um, I don't know how I feel about an early swing like that. And it's like I mentioned earlier, the single roam is going to hurt you more than anything. Uh, and, and that's exactly what you saw there. The Kaida Electroclaw being deployed from across the hall. Uh, very interesting considering that you had the Zofia from down below. It's just going to be a matter of time before they go out and spot it. But whether or not the Mute finds it first, this is a big game of cat and mouse between the floorboards. With the minute 50, it seems like while Robert Morris just, sorry, just regained the man advantage, Cincinnati hasn't gained too much of the map as they're still trying to make their way up to the second floor and get this hard breach. I get this hard breach. Yeah, they've actually managed to do a pretty good job here of getting in through the attic. The downside is obviously the attic is such a narrow attack angle. And you see, you know, I've seen plenty of teams try and fight their way through this breach and just get completely eaten alive. The advantage I think that they have here is that pop is kind of unmarked on that side coming up armory stairs. So if the defenders on the side of Robert Morris aren't particularly aware of this, they are aware of it though. Never mind. pop gets caught by reprobation so much for the ambitious flank. And now unfortunately, Cincinnati in a bit of a hard place here, having to fight their way through less than a minute left on the clock. And you can actually feel the pressure starting to build here just in terms of their play style and the members of Robert Morris are slowly encircling them. This could be disastrous here, but 40 seconds left and they've at least managed to push their way into the front part of Attic. Shrug and Whiskey will both find kills of their own. Great headshots all left up to being stuck on the gridlock. In a rock and a hard place, Whiskey will use that warden to great effect. And I didn't even think to consider it. And clearly the gridlock didn't either, as it's a quick swing out and a very quick kill. As Robert Morris will find their first round in this tournament. I think you saw a perfect illustration, by the way, of what I was talking about right mm -hmm. there uh, in terms of how difficult that attic angle is to push. There's a reason why I feel like it's often treated as sort of the secondary hard breach attack point, right? Like you never want to go there first. You kind of end up going there because it's the best available option of a, a pattern of negative options, right? Uh, and you get through you get through the hallway you get to kind of the antechamber you know where the drop off is and you're just stuck in another part of the attic so okay that's a hard bomb site you're going on down down to basement unfortunately okay another hard bomb site if you play it correctly though it's not that bad and you can really do some decent work here unfortunately they're missing the flores which is the person that i think you would want the most in this particular scenario to help you clear that elbow and that is one of the big sort of strategic challenges for any team that's assaulting this point looking now at the way that cincinnati has things set up they have some tools to deal with that, but it seems to me that they're being a little bit more, I guess, showing a little bit more of a probably vertical attack pattern here. That's what the presence of, you know, like the Havana makes me think, uh, and the Thatcher as well, to actually allow them to open up those hatches uh, just in case they had to worry about like a Kaid. They don't, uh, but you get the you get the thought process. Good point. Faith going for that same aggressive, and that's why you have to let your drones drone a little bit farther in advance. You see the drone just waiting there. Saw that in our last game, too. Yeah, exactly. Exact same situation. You have to wait and clear behind that drone. Otherwise, you're going to get stuck in some very awkward scenarios. And as time ticks away, it leaves Cincinnati unable to push right on in as it's going to be your hard breach of Ace just waiting for the extra assistance required as the hard breach always um, should be the last to die. You see hard breaches and your support players as the last to lie. They should never be the first to go. But Faith will continue to maneuver around the small tower area looking for the entry onto Ace. But they'll get a little bit too antsy, too aggressive as Dark Knight or D-Knight will be able to find their frag and good push so far Corbic still falling short on the Zofia but there's a lot they've made up for and hopefully time is one of them 
Yeah, losing the Sophia early on was rough, but the fact that they managed to get Faith down means that, you know, they've got the space to work with. Reprovation, they're taking some serious damage as well, has to show, uh, you know, his heels and fall back and, and sort of reset on the defensive angle, but they cannot lose sight of the fact that Reprovation is still out there, right? This is a big rotate from the Alibi, still a very serious threat. Pop's kind of the one who's trying to hunt them down, but, you know, you don't have any way of tracking them. And it's actually, you know, the case that they've, you know, long gone. It's going to take Cincinnati a moment to realize that, I think. Uh, and in that time, it's not going to happen. But someone like Mango Fed, who's a little vulnerable right there, could have been picked off. Fortunately, not the case. So they can sort of start to build for how they want to attack the basement now. Again, though, they're getting to a similar situation they got into last round, which is that they're just running out of time, really, uh, to get this execute out of the way. And you don't want to rush it, especially on a site like basement with so many defensive angles. Whiskey just sitting in supply. We saw them use their smokes to great avail last time. Doesn't look like that's going to be the scenario here. Throwing the EMP. They have a drone on the warden. They just have to be ready for the swing. Great flick finds the head. Nice shot, Brett. Plant will now be attempted. This is going to be a double kill for Brett as they just have to keep holding the angle. Look for the third. Nope, there's warden to shut them down. Now to a 2v2. Case plant will be successful. Pop and Mango Fett having to hold it down for their team. Warden spraying down with that MP7, trying to find any sort of frag possible. Just waiting. Great oh. one shot for <laughs> Reprovation. They have the shield to work around now. Long angle being held by Pop. Able to hold Case quite well. Cooking the nade. Gonna have to throw this properly. Throne is gonna dismantle the shield. Spray out, great headshot. Good Down kill. goes Reprovation, all left up to Warden. They're gonna have that fast firing gun. They're gonna take a close gun fight. Oh. There's Pop to win it out. We have a match, ladies and gentlemen, one to one. Well, not the ideal scenario you want to be in if you're on the attacking side, but it's still a W is a W. Great play by Pop there, maintaining composure and playing that out as well as they did. I mean, I got to give credit to Reprovation on the other side, though. What a one tap. That was insane, especially considering that Reprovation's uh, health was so low. <laughs> All things considered, that was wild uh, that they were able to pull that off. But, I mean, just great end of match play. That's actually one of the things that I think we've seen across all of our games here today, Binks, has just been players really clutching out and playing mm -hmm. spectacularly in those late game challenging scenarios. Uh, by the way, don't blame Robert Morris for going back to the well on basement. If I had my choice, I usually say don't do this, but, man, if it was a choice between this and, like, up and dining hall or meeting or something no way you, you're you're gonna go back to basement that's just the organ special where a map like villa you see three sites where in some scenarios i wouldn't even call kitchen and dining the tertiary bomb site because it is one of the best in the game in my opinion where it really displays what siege is all about but in other regards it it uh, it has to come down to a certain level of comfort, uh, which is why I can see that a lot of uh, defending teams don't want to go to dining, uh, including dining on this map. A lot of people just don't like to eat. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't mean to hit my mic there. Just like slapped it out of the way. Of, oops. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're right into our third round of play. Cincinnati's fighting to have the opportunity to get to that top level, to get to the round advantage which they have yet to hold in this matchup, Corbett. Right, yeah. And, you know, this is, again, a situation poor Beyond Chilling is, is much more cautious now. <laughs> I think after what happened last round, you can see just the, the hesitation there. But they've got the drone coverage. Unfortunately, it won't do be chilling any good. Oh, no. Gets caught by Reprobation and killed. And again, Reprobation with about zero health left runs away. But they can't account for Faith either. And that's two of the attackers done down dusted already both of the entries gone you've got pop still still two frag grenades but mm, that is not the way you want a round to go and all of that happening within the first minute of this attack what that means is although it's early frags they weren't able to use their util as much as they wanted to it does give a lot of options for cincinnati to try to fight to get this round back they could so easily just work for those frags but reprovation will just say no no just just call it call it as it is there's nothing left here 
Faith and uh, Reprovation just doing a great job shutting this entire round down. Pop is left, uh, honestly, just trying to pat the stats at this point, looking for a, a way for them to push together. And there's going to be a timeout request by Cincinnati, a uh, much needed one. And it looks like they might just try to take this time to add an extra minute to the tactical timeout. If I was Pop, I'd be shooting out that window barricade, running as far away from this wretched building as I could, and just taking this extra 52 seconds to talk with the team and uh, figure out what is next. I feel like you used to see people do that all the time. I feel like I don't really see mm -hmm. it as much anymore. I, I think it's, it's interesting because you have like, it was the unofficial tactical timeout. And I feel yeah. like recently, especially in Siege, a lot of these rounds have been a lot closer, a lot more winnable to the mm. point where that tactical timeout uh, hasn't been needed. It's if there's a will, there's most definitely a way. True. Very true. Uh, and it's just interesting. And I think that is actually probably what's going on here, which is a wise decision, all things considered. They need some time to figure it out because honestly, Banks, that was rough. And not just in the sense that they lost, it's the way that they lost, right? They didn't even get a sniff of the bomb site. Like they weren't even close to the basement. The, the roamers in particular, I think just really sort of cut them to pieces. Uh, before they could really get anything going. And honestly, uh, finding the wherewithal to recover from a rough opening like that, where you just go down three to five so quickly, is a really difficult challenge in the game of Siege. Like, I cannot oversell it enough. You need a really steady hand on the tiller and really good kind of elastic thinking to walk around from that. Um, and, you know, sometimes you just aren't able to pull it together. That was a classic example. Still very early on in this match, though. Only round four. They've got a lot more to play and a lot to play for, so I would not be surprised if Cincinnati comes out looking a lot more solid on the other side of this timeout. Yeah. Uh, they they just have a little, little tiny reworks that they need to do in their setup, and... I think it was largely you can see the uh, how you can only see the two operators that were identified. Of course, you weren't pinging on their drones. They might have known more, uh, but that that's just a, a big indicator. Like uh, I, I don't know if that's just the picks for this round. Actually, I, I don't know if that's the way it worked out, or if that's just who they saw last round. But I want to go back and talk about our bands a little bit. Where do we think that had they had access to the Flores or the Montang, this would be a different match for Cincinnati? Um, and I see the floor is making a big impact on that basement site as well as the Monting as both of those operators have a very cemented place in clearing up blue somewhere that didn't have any play last round. Yeah. Yeah. That's not, that's not a bad point. Uh, you know, the downside here for Cincinnati is they are going back up to kids dorms, which is, you know, the primary bomb site. So last time they got caught it was a very slow push by the time that they were able to actually kind of enact things it just didn't work they had pop try and set up a flank that got shut down as well hopefully hopefully lessons learned and they can make some changes here if i'm sitting on the side of cincinnati i think one of the things that i'm most worried about right now though is just how do you blunt the opening kills right you can't have faith picking somebody off right at the start you can't have faith and reprobation picking people off right at the start you've got to counteract that and you cannot bleed early deaths especially as an attacker so hopefully hopefully during their timeout they discussed that and thought of maybe some ways they could avoid it what makes me a little bit less happy is that they saw the jackal pick they had it bread was sitting on it and chose not to take it because i feel like there's no operator who'd probably be better for the situations they're encountering than a jackal yeah yeah you you straight up it would be really it would be really useful to have <laughs> it's a really good point and i i think it was staring me right in the face and i i didn't see it until you you said something but looking at their their a operator selection just think about who they could have taken it does seem like a good lineup i would have maybe swapped out the maverick for the habana or the uh thermite but i can see that they are trying to go for the maverick breach into attic but then it would also allow for some different opportunities. Great shot from Bean. I really like this angle. It's a lot more uncommon now because you don't see people, especially vault up to try to hold this long angle. And it's a great use of that magnified scope. So faith to fall. Util is most likely place it and leave it. So they don't have to worry too much about it. Reprobation. 
Waiting for the Reno, just waiting to try to watch best they can. Are we going to see a potential Renault? Now, this is always a big concern. The spray from Alibi shoots every single round in that MX. They'll have to reload it as they rotate all the way away. And it's a split push from Cincinnati. One that did not work out in the past, but I'm interested to see what will happen this time. Right, now back up. This is exactly what I was worried about seeing. We're going right back into the attic. Warden already waiting in position here with the AUG SMG. Just wants somebody to drop down into it. Gets clipped from a different angle this time, though. That's better. That's that flank that they wanted to develop last time. Developing from a different direction here. And it's Pop <laughs> once more. This time coming in big window. And I don't think they know that Pop is there. Reprivation kind of slow turns as if he's just had the sudden dawning realization that he could get shot in the back. He might have heard the Yana Gemini disappear. And that might have been what spawned that. Now a 3v5. And Robert Moore is getting increasingly pinched here in two sort of separate defensive positions. Yeah, this has been a really good push from Cincinnati. Still yet to lose a... Def uh, sorry, a player, but then we'll have a absolute flurry 1v1 all the way down to a 1 versus 2. Pop and D Knight are the only ones left to be shrug on the Jaeger down below, having to make their way slowly up. Now there's the question Do you have four drones still on the board and deployed? Are any of them useful? We're going to have a Claymore being set up, and I really like this angle for the Claymore, but it's just a matter of will it do enough damage. you got to be very careful for the wall that you are next to. You're making a lot of noise. A spray in the wrong direction could make all the difference in this round. Unite just waiting inside of the attic. The Jaegers made their way all the way into Trophy, looking to use the breach. 20 seconds to go on this defuse. Pop knows that they have the time advantage. Spring around info on the Jaeger. Shrug has nowhere left to go. 10 seconds, 3 seconds to kill, and then 7 to defuse, and it's going to be a round going the way of Cincinnati. Whether or not Shrug gets any kills to their name is up to debate, but nope, there's the ace of d Knight to shut any hope down. Yeah, well played again by Cincinnati. I feel like they really kind of learned from what they did last time and adapted to it. You got that big window angle, and I think that was actually the critical aspect of it right there. I would imagine that that round might have gone rather differently if Reprovation had been able to turn fast enough to, to whack Pop as they sort of looked in. Uh, instead, though, it did not go that way. That left kind of that nice cutoff there where they couldn't really cross over to help reinforce the attic. Uh, and that was what allowed Cincinnati to apply the pressure the way they did. So very good round from them. Much better than the Armory Stairs flank, in my opinion. Now, kind of, you know, a pendulum swings back the other way. You've got to see what Robert Morris can do with their adaptations here in terms of their gameplay. They're not necessarily showing us a lot of new operators, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and assume that a couple of things will at least be set up differently in this context to stop that cutoff happening again. This is basically a fight to win the half. I, I think that's the, the biggest way to put this. Cincinnati still has yet to be in the lead this game, and Robert Morris has made that very difficult. But it's the exact same site, and a roam on this one does not look as <laughs> as promising as it would for another, unless they went for any sort of C4 denial, which they have two of, in the form of what I'm assuming is going to be the Warden as well as... Not the Warden. We have Warden, the actual player, on Kaid, as well as Mute. This is killing me, Corbic. I just want Robert Morris to go back onto that attacking side. So when I say Warden, it's not as confusing. But first to fall is going to be the aggressive Jaeger of Faith, as it's going to be being chilling on the gridlock to get the opening frag. And that's exactly what you want to see if you're a Cincinnati fan. It is indeed Bread here trying to go for a sort of cheeky under the floor play here to take out uh, any defenses they might have, though I doubt very much. Well, I don't know. Some people actually do stick the Electro Claw down there in the floorboard, so maybe that was what they were aiming for. Uh, not ideal by any sense of the word. And well, OK, we're going to play this angle again, too. You like this one, eh? It's it's not a bad one. Unfortunately, Whiskey getting the kill here again. Bread taken down this time, and that'll keep it at a four to four. So the Roamer entry game kind of comes to a nil-nil tie there, all things considered. 
And Warden is once more the man in motion here for defending the attic, and I do not envy them this task because Cincinnati seems dead set on making attic uh, kind of their their attack angle du jour. I mean, they they even had for a moment they looked like they were going to try and get D Knight in through master or i should say bedroom closet and then they kind of gave it up because they weren't able to uh get it open and now here we are back again with uh bean chilling on the gritty leading the way here on the assault but getting droned in the entire time which i think is going to make this a lot easier they need those cutoff angles again though or i'm afraid that uh bean chilling is just going to get caught kind of out in the open uh and cut to pieces that said a lot of penetration i mean they're going pretty far here they're they're not really being slowed down yeah, I really like this warden getting lit up from who knows where. Shots all around. Very scary as a Kai player. They still have that C4 in hand. And they're just looking for the right angle. Swing around. It's going to be a game of whack-a-mole, but Pop is going to fight right on back. Goodbye to your Kai. Man advantage now back in the way of Cincinnati having the Ayana on the repel. This is a very split angle. Nothing feels safe for any of the players of Robert Morris. Beautiful shot by Pop on the upside down bedroom repel they are starting to look to go in towards that b bomb site reprobation has come up and they're going to have the flank mango fett is going to be down inside of attic meanwhile d knight is going to start going for the plant the warden is off the board which means they can continue to spray all of them to shrug 1v2 you're gonna have pop and d knight what a familiar scenario as we've seen it just moments earlier in the previous round 33 seconds to go shrug back against the wall swing trying to find one what a headshot on to d knight all of them to pop but they made their way into master bedroom and they find their third headshot on the round and it's going to be the university of cincinnati taking the lead for the first time in this match and winning out the half yeah that was great i i don't think you could actually ask much more if you were the university of cincinnati they overcame the defender advantage they end that split on a three two uh now they have you know the the same thing on their side and oh man I, I feel for robert morris a little bit because i felt like they were doing a lot of the right things but they failed to do exactly what cincinnati did which was adapt right like we didn't see any real i think great changes out of them to counteract that push through attic they just sort of expected it to happen and kind of let it happen and maybe they were hoping on their gun skill to to work it out for them but you still saw people getting caught you know the warden you mentioned it gets caught in that crossfire right there that kind of stuff you should be expecting because that's just what cincinnati did on the exact last mission or last uh round and they tried to set that up the other time you were up here anyway putting all that in a box you know, it's, it's in the past. Binks is in the past. We'll look ahead now to this round, round six, where Cincinnati has that defense to run. I, ki I kind of like what they're showing us. I think it's an interesting one. I You've got an Aruni in there. I feel like we don't see Aruni as, mu Aruni as much as we used to. It's a perfectly viable choice. Being chilling, picking up there on the Jaeger ADS. So you do have some very solid projectile denial mixed in here. A lot of Warden play from both sides here today. I mean, obviously Cincinnati taking it out of the box on round number one. I'm not sure I necessarily agree with how much Warden is being used. And one of the reasons I don't necessarily agree with that is because Valkyrie is on the board yeah. and nobody has taken Valkyrie as far as I understand. And Could I don't the know- Could scope? I mean, yes, but Valkyrie is just so much like can basically do what warden does same gun i think still has a nitro cell unless they've changed it since the last time i had looked but also has a massive utility intel network that is super duper mega valuable uh and the fact that nobody seems to want to pick her up despite the fact that she's unbanned is uh is strange to me yeah, reasonably so and we're gonna see a slower push from robert morris Swing around c4 being prepped i don't know if there was a sharia gate set up there uh, impact trick will fail as the can opener will be detonated towards attic as robert morris will have one of their many entry points available to make their way in and this has been shaping up to be the closest match of the entire tournament thus far with it being so back and forward none of these teams managing to win two consecutive rounds until cincinnati did that previously 
Fred to find the opening pick onto Reprovation. A top frag from the side of Robert Morris, but Shrug also looking to be a contender as they're now 6-3, and three, taking out Bean Chilling, who's relegated to watch cans for the rest of the match. Great use of that DMR to open up the hatches, and that's a great change. Swing back around to the front door. They'll find their kill, a double kill, onto Faith. And they can continue to watch for their team. A minute to go, and this push has almost become entirely one-sided with no one but the Thermite of Warden sitting inside a master bedroom. Still, all the pressure coming from the east side of the site, giving Brit a free rotate up white stairs and a good angle to hold with 50 seconds to go. Well, time is of the essence now. Bread, unfortunately, getting absolutely lit up there in a critical situation. There are three defenders still in play. I don't know if they're even going to be able to res Bread here, just given the way things are going. Pop doesn't have the, the wherewithal to do it. D9 gets caught. Pop moves out of position to get the res in. That might have been a tactical mistake, because here comes Shrug to finish it off. Mango Fett, though, trying to save the day. And Whiskey finishing off two with the LMG. And I'll be honest with you. I really do genuinely think that was because they went for that res. They gave mm -hmm. up their defensive advantage. You have to you you have to understand it's down but not out. They can provide information to your team. Yes. But the moment you try to say, oh, we need the rifle, we need the rifle. No, what you need is to hold your angle. It's a one-sided push. You don't have anyone to your back. You hear the gunfights, you hear the footsteps. You gotta make sure to use that. And it is so tough. It, I think we've all had that Call of Duty zombies moment where you have that friend say, No, it's okay, you don't have to try to res me. And you go for the res and you lose your round of zombies. All that time that you put into it down in the gut. Yeah, Corbic. And that's exactly what we saw there. And it, it hurts to have to watch a player you could res stay down. But sometimes it's for the better. Let them give you the information. Let them push up. And that shot that the other team has to take, has to use to kill that down player can always make the difference. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Binks and Corbeck here to tell you don't help your friends. Let them suffer. <laughs> for your own benefit life lessons here today yeah, on don't help your friends broadcast your friend asked they... you to be revived no no let them let them mellow think about yeah, what they've them. done yeah if you help them up they'll never learn and that's the important part to remember if you take them to the hospital they'll never learn anyway <laughs> make them drive the themselves they break their ankle drive yourself to the hospital Tough it up, bro. You gotta tough it it's up. It's your right foot. Anyway. You can't press on the gas. Use your left foot. <laughs> it's standard. And you'll never forget how to drive with your left foot after that. All anyway. fun games are standard. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it was really that, though. Like, genuinely, you, you got to hold on to your positions in late game scenarios. If that had been like a minute and a half in the round or something, yeah. maybe I would have said it was acceptable to go for that res, but it was just way too dangerous given the situation that they were in. And Cincinnati probably knows that now in hindsight. I feel like that's a relatively obvious uh, kind of learning moment there for them. Still, I mean, they're, they're in control of this match. I'd still say that pretty comfortably right now, despite the scoreline being tied. It really does feel like it's RMU's match to win, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, so we'll see kind of what they can do with that distinct advantage. I, I it's think, interesting, uh, by the way, that Bread has swapped from the DMR over to the Roni. Mm -hmm. I like the rapid fi uh, gunfire, and so we can stop talking about the last round of being a dead horse, or rather breeding a bru bruised bear cat. Um, we can now focus towards round number seven as a reprovation has gotten the first kill onto bread. So that Roni not going to have to do as much damage as we are hoping to see. But the beautiful thing about a Roni is that those Sharia gates are still mounted and there's nothing you can do to get rid of. You can disable them for time, but the defenders can always reactivate them either through using a maestro camera or just plain old fashioned bullets. Faith to find their second on the round. Meanwhile, the first Toxic Baby is going to be detonated with a, with a minute and 20 to go. Faith at a single sliver of HP. So if they breathe any of that Toxic Smoke, they're going to go into that down but not out stage and potentially die from it. So down to the final minute. Second Toxic Babe is being thrown and possibly detonated, being chilling, sitting inside the freezer. 
D Knight is able to take out Shrug. That is going to be your buck and most likely a flank from Big Tower side. No push and pressure from Blue Bunker. I don't know if this is a change in the meta Corbeck, but it seems like this area is just constantly being just left for the defenders to make a great use out of. So as we have all these players waiting, third final talks of Bay being cooked out, being chilling, going to swing out at a great time to catch Reprovation off guard. There's going to be Mango Fit to find faith, and this entire push from Cincinnati seems to have evaporated into toxic gas as Warden starts to push their way in through Freezer. They need to contend with being chilling. Swinging, trying to hold the angle best they can. Their other player of Whiskey is going to be down in laundry, having to attempt a plant. Warden will fall. Final air jab is going to be sent out into sight and is going to get caught by the ADS. And now a swing. They don't know that Warden is down because point notifications are off. Keep swinging. Big kill from Whiskey. This is winnable. They just have to swing out, trying to find the player, and they will find wow. it with the very last bullet. D Knight to win out that round and allow University of Cincinnati Bearcats to continue their lead. Wow. That was spectacular. Good hold there from Cincinnati. Also, by the way, I always find the uh, look of uh, the silencer on the Keratos or whatever it is <laughs> so incongruous. It's really quite funny. Uh, <laughs> Why? I don't know. You can't silence a revolver. Anyway, uh, back to the matter at hand, though. Good hold right there. And uh, you're totally right what you were saying uh, uh, kind of Defender towards the mid round there, Binks, about, you know, a lot of space, space being left to the defenders to play with. I think that's something that we've kind of noticed across a number of different matches today, right, is that pressure is not being applied uh, usually very well applied i should say from multiple directions and as a result the defenders are playing in very flexible setups that kind of allow them to respond to a variety of different situations back up to kids dorms we go and this is the kind of place where we could be having that conversation as well right there are a couple of sort of set in stone attack routes robert morris last time they were up here sort of predominantly favored coming towards through attic you know pushing in from that side this is a, an eminently winnable site for cincinnati right like this is one that they should have probably won last time they were up here i wouldn't be surprised if they win it again and i think part of that is because robert morris lacks a, a bit of multiple uh, multiple causality when it comes to trying to take these spots yeah, I like this. I'm anxious to see the choice to use a bandit here is a curious one to say the least. Where yes, you have Maverick, but you haven't had the other team going for that. And you oftentimes see them trying to clear from down below inside of meeting room or going for a twitch drone. So I think a mute could have been a much better choice where you just throw one mute on the wall, say, okay, if they go for the extra corners, they'll be able to get it. But at least then you know exactly what type of angle they are going for. Uh, so th th that's a little bit uh, of a, a curious question. But I, I, I don't know what exactly the point is. So little pocket EMP being used, and if a bandit was there, he'd be able to trick it. But no, bandits made their way all the way back to game room, having one bandit battery inside of their pocket, ready to be deployed on the south wall. As the split push from Robert Morris is now well underway. Good push coming in, but it's Reprovation who is waiting to strike that early blow. Shrug also gets one in. And obviously, the aggressive opening there from Cincinnati, not what was needed in that scenario. And now things become very scary indeed, because there's that multiple front I'm talking about. Master Bedroom Closet opened up. And, uh, well, this, this might be curtains for Cincinnati here. I do not know how they're going to recover from this. They are going to need to uh, turn those guns on. And they're going to have to go very loud indeed. But I think D-Knight is about to... No, he's get close to it. He might very well get shellacked here before he even really gets the opportunity to do much, just given the way the angles are playing out. Pop, actually lucky they didn't get taken down. And sure enough, there goes D-Knight. Smoke coming out from Pop. Pop still trying to maintain. Looks away at the absolute wrong second right there but doubles back and gets Faith down. Pop trying to hold on to it with the SMG-11. He won't find it. Shrug on the triple kill. And now the plant going on. Bread, the only one left. Just 16 rounds in the Glock with the stock. Gets one. Forced to reload immediately. Now a 3v1 situation right here. And an unenviable task ahead for the Aruni player. If they want to make this work, they clip Shrug for a brief moment. Bread once more stepping up into the threshold. And there's nothing they can do. A beautiful angle there from Shrug. I believe prone hiding in the corner of kids and that is that so Robert Morris University keeping it even here Binks 
yeah, I really like to see that as you can have all the info you want there. That's a very hard push to combat uh, if you are Cincinnati. And it felt very textbook, if you ask me, Corbick, where we had the push from uh, three or possibly four different routes into the site. And that's that's your biggest nightmare if you're going to be going for any sort of second floor hold. And that will be forcing us to see our first tertiary bomb site uh, of this match. Where we're going to be going to kitchen as well as meeting room. The biggest thing that I would have to see here is going to be the hold from above. And that's probably the reason why you are going to see a castle play here is because the moment you have that ability to hold from up above, you can keep that hatch open and hold the entirety of that meeting room side. I sorry, that that meeting room towards tower side. So all going to come down to how well Robert Morris plays into the split front and whether or not they seek to control vertical. True. Yeah, that's uh, verticality is again what I'd be looking for right here, right? And they're showing us that they want to play the verticality. That's what Robert Morris is looking for. They have a fuse. It's a dead giveaway, right? There's no hiding your intentions when you have a fuse, a sledge, and a buck all in the same lineup. And I mean, the harsh truth is. This is a terrifying prospect. If you can actually get a fuse into position, he's a scary operator to deal with, right? Like, no doubt about it. The issue, of course, getting him into position, right? He's slow. He's chunky. Takes a while. Unfortunately, it's not Faith who goes down first. It is Reprobation, but still a 4-5. to five. Shrug nearly dying early on as well. The big hitter here for the RMU side with that 12-5 and five stat line. Very low on health, but still very much in this match. And none of the members of Cincinnati even flinching at this point in time all seem very comfortable in their defensive positions here as it looks like Shrug may still play the entry just with a very limited health pool. Meanwhile, down below, Pop kind of tightening up, not even feeling the need to use any kind of cameras or maestros right now, holding a long sight line out of kitchen and sort of just uh, a bit of a holding pattern here for the Cincinnati side. No, Binks, are you there, my good mate? Oh, I am here. My mic, I, I pulled a whip it and I forgot to click my mic back on. Thank you very much, Corbeck. <laughs> um, meanwhile, Shrug is going to make their way into sight. They're going to take out Pop. I was talking about the narrow way, way into sight from Attic. That's another narrow way in, but when you force your way in so aggressively, that does allow you to go for the plant. Plant will be denied. Oh, no, it still will go down as Mingo Fett is able to find two huge frags all left up to Warden and Faith. You know, the fuse up above, they can get to a good position. That can be a big difference maker, but Bean Chilling is going to be on the diffuser. Spray from Faith. Time ticking down, and what a ninja diffuse. you got to be very careful. Yeah, look down, look up, but no, that case is right in the middle, and a long arm does exist. The only difference is with the little diffuser device, you hold it in your hands rather than having to long arm all the way towards the diffuser. A little bit of season nostalgia for you. Well, match point here for Cincinnati, and they have got to be happy with themselves for guiding uh, their effort to this point. Robert Morris, I mean, uh, this is not outside the realm of possibility that you push this one into overtime. I'll say that. It's probably been one of the closest matches I think we've seen all day. Uh, laundry room, supply room. You're on mm. the basement site. That's the scary aspect here if you're sitting on the side of Robert Morris, right? Not a favorable site for a last stand sort of, mo sort of moment on the attack. Faith showing us fuse again. I don't think that's as solid a choice onto this basement site. There's simply not as much soft destruction to really make good progress off of a fuse. There's the swap coming in. Jackal, I think that's a much better pick. A lot of intel provided really lets you lock down on where some of these Cincinnati defenders are and, and hold them rather tight. By the way, I also love Whiskey coming out on the Nomad. I think that's a really solid choice. And another operator who's been a little underrepresented in our games today, uh, that could slow down some of the Cincinnati Rome a fair amount obviously though the big gun in this setup is shrug and he's the one who you really want to put in a position to maximize kills couldn't have said it better myself honestly i i want to see that on the side of cincinnati they hold i want them to get 
This is going to sound very weird, but I want them to go for at least a tiny little roam. Um, try to get at least one frag that's unexpected. And, and just spring the trap on Robert Morris. But it does not seem like that's going to be the case. And we're going to see, for the first time in this matchup, a lot more pressure towards construction. But Reformation is going to be rotating off of it. And I don't think any of these players are actually going to commit to it. As Mangos just has the Toxic Babe ready in their hands. Ready to throw it. And that would have been a great if you even faked going in there. To try to bait out a Toxic Canister. Make a huge difference in the round. But... I'm disappointed if you, if you couldn't tell. A good good push from Robert Morris, nonetheless. Cover me, reloading. <sighs> well, uh, there everybody's still alive and made it in. That's that's good. <laughs> um, hasn't always been the case, so <laughs> that's a that's a good place to start. You know, play it cautiously. Uh, poor Mango Fed. I feel like these are gonna be sitting there holding that smoke canister <laughs> until the the sun goes out because just nothing's happening over there, and I don't know how long it's gonna take uh, for them to actually want to pull off that elbow. Same with Faith here, by the way, who just you know they've got the Jackal Idox up and ready to go, but nobody's revealing any footprints. Pop looks like they're gonna be the initial point of contact. Actually, gonna hide behind the bomb chassis, I think, and hope somebody uh, comes up to them. Smoke grenade does go off. Are they? Smoke canister, I guess you should say. They're looking uh, the are wrong they just spot. throwing that at nothing? Yeah, there's, there's nothing, nothing there. there. Oh, well, there's something there, and Freezer Shrug gives the Viking crew cut straight to bread, and that's a way to start here, and look at the penetration of the defense, being chilling now, holding that angle for all he's worth. Yeah, great push so far. They've really opened up a lot of angles, but now D Knight knows that they can hold from Blue Bunker once again. But the push has come out in an absolute frenzy on this side. You see them flicking left, flicking right. Pop is looking for any angle to hold. Meanwhile, Shrug's gonna find being chilling. We have everything popped out. Ward is spraying through the smoke. He's gonna find the headshots. They have the pings to go along with it. Hit by the air jab, flung behind the shield. Plan will be successful, but that's a triple kill from Shrug as they've made their way all the way into supply room, looking for any other angle to hold. Shrug to find a fourth on the round. On to D Knight, and we're going to overtime for the second time in the Cuz Town Land. Overtime. Okay. Cincinnati, though, still, I think uh, they'll be actually on the attack for overtime, if I remember correctly. So that's bad news for them. They weren't able to bury the biscuit in the basket there at the tail end, and now they will suffer the appropriate punishment. Big ups to Shrug, by the way. We should take this opportunity now that we're looking at the scoreboard to uh, to hype up the Buck player. 17-6 mm -hmm. and six in this match. Absolute fragger here on the side of Robert Morris University. And pretty much, I mean, uh, not to give too much credit you know, to him, but I think genuinely the reason why we're even here uh, in this overtime. Yeah, and a lot of times, like that last round, they opened it up and they continued, not just with an opening frag, but their inability to be refragged is a lot of the reason why Robert Morris is doing so well. And I think you highlighted that quite perfectly. Now let's go and diagnose Cincinnati set up here for uh, our overtime round. To go back down to meeting room and dining. One tertiary site that they won out last time. But very peculiar because they won off a long arm that is not something you want to rely on because that, that that's that just comes in very very close to home it does it does come very close to home i misread that by the way as you can obviously see on your screens it's robert morris who has the burden of uh, attacking here in overtime and that is i would actually say not that big of a deal just because this has been so evenly matched i don't think it's worth really bringing up and saying oh there's a significant advantage for the defenders here um the bomb site choice i think is the most fascinating you know is the most interesting point of all of this in my opinion and the lack, I think, of real good, solid vertical pressure here from the side of Cincinnati. I think they've got one roamer up on the top deck, if I remember correctly. And if uh, if it can be taken control of, should give Robert Morris a significant advantage. That said, RMU has favored some very direct approaches to these bomb sites. Look at what happened in the last basement round. That was just a straight up walk through freezer. Like there was not a ton of complexity there and, and not a ton of maneuvering it's just they kind of knew what they wanted to do and they just brute forced it 
can't really do that as well, I think, on this bomb site. But if they do make such a maneuver, they will definitely can't Cincinnati in a bit of an awkward moment. But it's Cincinnati here who's got a little surprise in their pocket. Playing from down below, Mango Fett lights up on Shrug. And then Bread jumps around the corner to finish off Whiskey, who was going in for the revive. And Bean Chillin, who's been prone here this entire time, just continues to chill. Reprovation is going to be to look down, find Dark Knight, and be able to hold on to any hope of this round. The Twitch run will be jammed right away, having to find that view chamber can be very, very pesky. Meanwhile, Shrug was revived, so with a minute to go, we're going to have equal footing, just a lot of health points favoring the defenders, but that can definitely change in just a heartbeat as the headshot in Rainbow Six Siege wins above all. And we've seen that Robert Morris really knows how to connect onto those head sheets, but so does Bread. They'll be able to find Fed. Refragged by Reprivation, who gets a kill through the drone hole. Meanwhile, being chilling, still wrecking havoc up above. This plant is not going to be possible unless you clear that attic out, as Reprivation will now also fall to the roaming Jagger of being chilling. All left up to Warden, who is now stuck in rear stage. 30 seconds to go and three players to find. There's the triple kill you're looking for from Bread. They've been rotating around on the Oryx, making very good use of their utility and ability to rotate. Now, all the time has dwindled down. 15 seconds to go. Warden with an unlikely plant to find. Makes their way around rear stage, looking towards kitchen corridor. Not able to find any frags. Seven seconds to go. Plant is out of the picture, and we are going to see Cincinnati once again going to match point. Operators, you have run out of time. Oh. Cincinnati playing that very well and just kind of forcing RMU to dance to their two. And I love the coordination and teamwork that we saw out of Cincinnati on that as well. Looking, for example, at those kills in Attic, that was just so well orchestrated, a true kind of almost set piece play in the way they handled that entire sequence. Robert Morris, they will now pick up the defense. That's good news for them. They can kind of extend their fate here. But the, the harsh truth is, you know, even if they win this, they will be facing the barrel of another one of those attack rounds that they don't feel very comfortable on, in my opinion, uh, in a lot of scenarios. And it'll be one in which, too, by the way, Cincinnati, I think, will have a lot more leeway in picking their bomb site. So uh, the, the forecast, not particularly great for them. But as much as I say that, they're obviously going to want to try and push this right uh, and keep them themselves in this matchup love how this one has gone banks i actually really have enjoyed a very close matchup between these two teams with everything on the line down here in losers practice yeah, it's, it's been a really close matchup so far and i i'm looking forward to see how it will continue but what i one thing i'm very concerned about corbeck is this top floor site is gone so wishy-washy and i think it's really shows how both these teams have constantly adapted but cincinnati had a little bit of trouble on attack now of course it wasn't the basement site which was the one that they clearly struggled the most with but it's been a lot of the same thing, same clear for Cincinnati, where we saw Robert Morris switch it up. In this case, we're going to have Mango Fett as well as what I'm assuming is going to be Bean Chilling going over to Big Tower. You're going to have Mango Fett just go and do his regular clear, Bean Chilling holding from up above. Meanwhile, on the other side, Sophia goes down below or use the Thatcher inside of um, Big Closet just to make sure to get that wall open and then just, oh, just pinch right on in. If I could do that, just thinking about it quickly, I feel like that's going to be a lot more easily read. And exact same thing with Pop just sitting out on this ledge. Exact same as we saw in previous rounds. It's a good opening here for the Cincinnati attack. I like those grenade throws right there. I think that probably allowed them to reach the closet, which is what they were going for. Mango Fett hasn't really had an opportunity yet to set up the second angle here, but the rest of the team playing this very well in the sense that they're doing exactly what they need to cut off RMU's positioning and kind of force them back into playing a very tight bomb site hold. Whiskey is maybe the player that I'd be watching for here, possibly someone who could come at a different off angle, and I think that's exactly what was attempted right there with limited success bread holds it out and continues to maintain this cutoff coming up armory stairs meanwhile in the back door here comes the blowtorch to open up the opportunity here for that attic push setting up both prongs of the attack here binks is exactly what they need uh to just continue to 
squeeze ever so slowly down on this Robert Morris side until the RMU team, I don't think they're going to necessarily know which direction to look. Yeah, it's been really good so far. D Knight first to fall. I don't know if that's literal. I think it might be as they are downed outside. And a Jaeger ADS is going to burn some of Maverick's flash bangs. D Knight has been revived, and there's going to be a lot more pressure. I really like to see pressure through this window. But you got to be careful. Anytime you push this, they're going to try to spray if they're down below or even remotely close to it. But just breaking that window open, perfect play from D Knight. That's my favorite because now you are constantly there. Look, Whiskey is concerned about that, and it's going to steer a lot of pressure away, making them feel even more pressured as Mango Fett's going to be able to find the first opening kill the round onto Faith. Meanwhile, the remaining players are just trying to wow. spray down, find the feet of the Kaid, just playing all the way back inside a bedroom. Big refrag from Shrug. They're going to find two on the round. Spray back. Back out from being chilling looking for the third one there's a triple kill for shrug there goes being chilling and this entire multi-sided push has been narrowed down to uh, a single or double dimensions pop is going to make their way into sight spray out not able to find a kill to the name now four to one reprobations oh. to find two to finish off the round we're going around number i don't even know at this point is this round number 11 12, 12. I'm not 12, good at sorry, math. 12, 13, 13. 13. Lucky <laughs> number 13 there. But who's it going to be lucky for? Uh, it's all the way. It's gone the distance. Overtime match point here between these two sides. Cincinnati has the defense. They will be doing basement again. Can Robert Morris University find the attack that they need? That's the real question here. Uh... Your guess is as good as mine on this one, Pinks. Honestly, your guess is as good as mine. This match has been too close uh, for me, to, I think, to definitively say one way or the other that it will boil uh, in favor of a team. Yeah, uh, you have a very good point there. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the pause is for, but if I had to give my diagnosis here, uh, we have Cincinnati, which is going to be attempting the kids' dorms approach. And this, might I add, is our final round. We don't have endless overtime in this scenario. So we are now looking over towards everything um, on the attacker side. Because that's I feel like this is um, uh, exactly what we are, are, are afraid to see. And I want to diagnose this lineup because we don't have all the defenders selecting yet. Um but from Robert Morris, I do like that they have the Twitch Buck Sophia and I think and the Lion Thermite. This just reads, I don't want to say repeat, but uh, we're going to have Twitch double window and then the Buck as well as I think just the Buck and maybe Sophia going or sorry, Buck Lion going for the Attic Breach and then Thermite as well as Sophia going for the push down into master bedroom and the reason why i'm placing those operators there um is all because with their utility zofia down below and it's just those easy angles that they're going to be able to hold now the micro adaptations that i want to talk about here corbeck is going to be going for example up to the master bedroom window the single window trying to cut that off if you're going for the master bedroom push you should be opening up the double you should be open up one the attic window uh, for a quick rotate out if you need it as well as the master bedroom double window every single pressure point even if you want to go down below and open up a random hole is meant to make cincinnati feel very pressured and out of place that is one of the great things of having a match go to overtime match point is that people are going to be antsy and they're going to want to check every single possible angle they are paranoid at this point because unless you've established a clear-cut pattern in their mind and even if you have uh, it's going to change everything, and every single piece of info I've said has changed as they've gone to downstairs. This is painful, Corbeck. How, <laughs> how 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 long ago did it change, and I didn't notice? I was going to say, no, no, it's 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 a tragic accident that often happens sometimes, because you just get that top-down view, and you're like, yeah, all right, I see where those bombs are. I've got a rough idea. I was going to say that the my favorite idea here, and I, I, I they're not, they haven't oh, done painful. it. It would have totally been to audible into a into a blue bunker rush. <laughs> and just <laughs> just see what happens, because I don't know that Cincinnati would ever expect you to do that at this stage. It would obviously have been an absolute Hail Mary, but I think you probably would have you probably would have caught him pretty good. <laughs> just I don't <laughs> know that they would have been ready for that. Uh, regardless, 
it will not be what happens. So you got to get shrug and reprobation in the game. They're playing fragging operators. You've got the FAMAS. You've got the hard-hitting assault rifle of shrug there as well. If you can get those guns going, if they can each bring down, I think, just one kill here in the early stages. I mean, look, shrug hit a 20 bomb. This guy is fragging out of his mind here in this match. And reprobation is not that far behind. If one of them dies early on, that is the epitome, I think, of bad news bears here for RMU. Uh, no pun intended. Reprobation playing that lead role. And then they're going to swap that out with Fate, who's going to now push into Laundry. And I don't know, it's, it's about a minute and a half in. And there's been no real openings here for RMU. And Cincinnati, I think... Still trying to figure out exactly where the hammer blow is going to fall, though Shrug's constant tippy-tap shots coming out of Freezer probably giving away the day. Yeah, we don't see that Mango has gone and deployed a bunch of util towards no! Blue Bunker, and there that is, is the first time. This is the little alteration. This is the changing and breaking windows that I was talking about. This push through Blue Bunker can make a really big difference. Red will find a refrag into the top frag of Shrug, a really crucial player to lose, and now Robert Morris are going to have to prove that they are more than just their buck player, which we've seen before. We know they're capable very much so, almost shooting their team. Three players from Blue Bunker, which can be the first one to make their way into Royal Room. That's the second kill for Reprobation. Now looking up towards Big Tower, not expecting a player there all they have to do is swing out possible trigger discipline i might be missing it but a triple wow. kill for reprobation they're cleaning up the site giving robert morris so many opportunities two huge kills from pop evening things out spray through there's a third kill for rep fourth kill for reprobation i correct myself and 19 seconds to go warden is going to be going for the plant great use of this shock drone sending it in towards the site just trying to find the remaining player of mango fett as the toxic babes are being cooked through you have time to reload your primary secondary is finally being put back into its holster 30 seconds to go in the defuse mango fett back against the wall spray out looking for the ace is rep Reprovation just spraying in the wrong spot. You have no ammo left, but 23 seconds. You are doing your job. You are delaying for time all whilst Warden sits back and watches as his teammate goes for the yeah. huge ace to keep Robert Morris University in this competition. Wow, what an ending right there. Reprovation just going super saiyan to keep his team in the fight. Shrug goes down, the kill leader, and, and Reformation's just like, hold my FAMAS. Like, I'm going in, I'm gonna keep us alive. And they do that. A heartbreaking loss though for Cincinnati. Genuinely a heartbreaking loss for them because they played that so well. They took it to overtime. They had the defense. They had all the pieces they need. But sometimes, sometimes, Binks, you just can't account for one individual player going ham, and that is exactly what happened right there. Yeah, so our closest match comes to an end, and your next one is going to be Robert Morris University taking on Drexel University, and then that will be casted by the lovely Gibson and Whippet, as well as your semifinal match between Lebanon Valley College and Cuztown University. We'll be back with match number nine just before the finals, so the lower bracket finals. Don't go where, don't go anywhere. My name is Binks, joined by Corbeck. Very, very soon, you're going to have Whipson and Gibbet with another phenomenal match here at the Cuztown Lab. See you soon. My name's Connor. I also go by Ducks at the RX. Um, I go to Drexel and we had just beat WVWC and uh, hoping to go into the next game either against U Cincinnati or RMU, depending on who wins. Uh, if it's UC, then we're hoping to kind of have a repeat of what happened in our first match where we uh, having to beat them 6-2 uh, on club, so we'll see what map we go to then. If it's RMU, uh, watching their game with Kutz, I think we have a pretty great shot, so I can't wait for either match, and hopefully both of them do good, but of course we have to play one, and then we got to beat them, so on to the next. Professionals, we are professionals. I said welcome back. I was muted on Gibby, VMAX, but Gibby, 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 I am a pro. I am a pro, okay? I am a pro. But what I was saying was I want to give a little bit of love to our producer Saffron for having to listen to us behind the scenes so far. So Saffron, a lot of love your way, and we're we're sorry. We're uh, it's certainly a unique experience to, to deal with um, the stuff we say. Um, 
deranged might be a way, a way to say <laughs> with some of those things that we come out with. Gibby, we got more siege to cast. That's good. We do. We move on to the next game of the night. And thankfully, at this point, we have seen every single team playing. So we shouldn't be in for too many surprises. We're seeing Robert Morris fresh off the back of that last game, taking on Drexel University. Drexel, of course, were, but had a good start to tonight. Then they got beat in overtime in the last game we casted, where they surrendered a 5-2 lead. They definitely want to fix some of the issues they had in that last game if they want to make it through against this Robert Morris side. And Robert Morris showed a very good Oregon in that, in that, that last match that we saw, but give me. You're the man. You're the roster man out of us two. Run us, run us through it. Am I? Okay, Faith and Whiskey, Warden, Reprovation and Shrug. People to watch out in this roster, Reprovation finished off that last map with an ace whip it in overtime match point. No better time to pop up than that. Shrug had a big game as well, so keep an eye on what those two are able to do for this Robert Morris University side. And on the other side of this fixture, we have the lineup. Oh, we're going to get the lineup for Drexel. Whip it on the Drexel side. Who caught your eye in game number one that we casted? Apart from Italian Mafia and that fantastic mustache. Well, I mean, it was to be one of the players. So I said, actually, I think he had a massive impact in that more support style role. But Ducks was one of the players that was on those high impact operators. A Ying was a common, common kind of tool mm -hmm. in that arsenal and was always massively impactful to how they played in it now. Unfortunate result for them in the match that we got to watch them on Clubhouse, but I see a lot of potential with these guys. I think they could have a little bit more flexibility, and then we're on for a good run. They definitely will be. One thing that I love about that picture for Rai Fi is just the fact you can see Italian Mafia just looking over his shoulder. Just the eye peeking through towards the camera as we get ready for this one. Looks like at the moment, Clubhouse will be the battlegrounds once more for this one. And we'll put the last time we saw Clubhouse, it did involve one of these sides, Robert Morrison in the game that we... Sorry, Drexel in the game we casted. And one of the problems that they had was whenever the defense was set up on the bend but don't break method as and they held sight hard, sometimes Drexel just struggled sometimes with clearing that line. Yeah, they, they, whenever it was a, a bunker-style defense, they really just had a hard time breaking it down and being consistent in doing so without massive amounts of time delays in it. Again, on a map like Clubhouse, the thing I'm going to be really looking for is the teams that are going to be able to be flexible and not spread themselves too thin, but especially on the offensive side. This is a map that in terms of top uh, in tier 1 play has went attacker side because CC, CC, CC and Cash, one of the, the most common sites to see, we'll see a lot of it played in this matchup. Open up the main bridge, good construction, simple as, right? We mm -hmm. need to see teams be a little bit more fluid in how they break this down from what we saw earlier. And there's a lot of chance that we have a, a good response from them. They've played a couple of games already, so I think Clubhouse should be a good one between these two teams. So what you're saying, about well, this Love Siege, Breach, Breach Wall, simple as, is what you're saying. <laughs> love Siege, Breach Wall, Win Round, simple as. Sim it's, simple it's as. Like, but yeah, it's ruined us. That one it's phrase has ruined us. <laughs> it has, but what, what, when you look at the actual game and the way that they played as well one issue that i think they want they will want to fix is their clock management you look at some of the rounds they lost and in particular on one of the basement defenses they came up against two members of lebanon valley playing on top floor on the double roam game i think it was the vigil and the cap can and they spent two and a half minutes trying to clear those players when it was a basement defense and the operators that they were trying to clear them with was the Habana, which you kind of need getting up in those hatches. And I believe was it the Thatcher as well. In an ideal world, you either deal with those two operators early or you forget about their ex their existence and leave somebody on the flank watch. The thing about that round was they were pretty close to a, a very well thought out way of dealing with that one. They had the cutoff held at least. So in that situation, they should know, put someone to watch main stairs, have someone watching construction, and then you're going to have an entry. Push that in and put pressure on directly. That entry, all they need to do is be there, be present, and you're likely going to force rotation away, which you can use your cutoff support players to catch out. It didn't quite get that to work. You just mistimed it a little bit, and the opening pick, which was actually the Ying player, who, who was holding mm -hmm. onto that construction window, got caught early. So it was mm -hmm. an unfortunate round, but they were able to, I think, learn from that, hopefully at least, and they'll be able to implement that better again. Going to a map you've already played in the day like this is a big advantage because you're a little bit more clued into it, and you probably were able to correct mistakes from your previous map, and then you're going to be able to build upon that now. 
And having seen both of these sides played already tonight, which of them do you think are in the better place going into this game? Now, I'm not necessarily asking for a prediction, but which side do you feel we're, are looking we're better going for a in? Prediction. You, nah, just... you're the same as Demo. You're the same as Demo. You just refuse. No, no, no. no. When, I, when I am feeling confident, I'll say it outright. You know, like every time I, I, I kind of said outsiders weren't going to do anything in SILCQs. But I think Drexel, are gonna, Drexel have a good chance here. I think it was an unfortunate that they were able to, they, they let such a big lead slip in the previous match here. That's the big thing that I think is going to mentally affect them. Is that an issue that, okay, we, we were so far up, we had a timeout called against us, and all of a sudden, we, we lost control of the map. If they can just finish out and manage games better, they're in a good shot, because they showed a lot of promising stuff on Clubhouse in particular. So that's where I would say my advantage would lay in this game. But I could be wrong, who knows? Yeah, they've played a different amount of Siege today so far as well. Drexel, of course, have played two games, one of which I believe was a was a 6-2 or 6-3 loss, and then they went to overtime, whereas Robert Morris, their first game was 0-4. They got beat by Kutztown University, and then they went into the second map and went all the way full overtime. So both these sides playing a different amount, but the first band's going to come through, and it will be Monty. And it's Shally that we're going to, so it wasn't actually clubhouse as we've been uh, <laughs> we've, we've been, been completely bamboozled oh, Gib, I, i'm you know what Gibby? i'm gonna place all of that on you you've done that you, you okay you you saw you you went ahead of the script you saw you saw the menu oh. you're like oh, ask clubhouse it's gotta be club that wasn't look i'm never trusting all a word you, you ever say again nope all you do is gaslight and bully me mate. Okay. Oh, don't act don't act like you're a saint like you're a saint between us. Buck's been banned out, by the way, as well as Valkyrie over the distance that we, we ramble on away. The Buck's an interesting one to me. We've seen a lot of teams recently implement Buck, especially down below, to use that as, as a cutoff point for Solarium Stairs. That is what I think that's about. But Mirror, a pretty standard one, and that leaves Azami Solace still in play. That's a little bit scary, especially having Azami available. Yeah, and you spoke about the buck too. We didn't quite see it yet, but you've seen it in the past where players will attack Solarium, but they'll get control of Big Garage and prevent any defenders from rotating through those Solarium stairs as well. So there's multiple options here for, for teams with buck is in play, but as you pointed out, that has been removed. I do like the defensive bans, though. You know, we saw the impact that Mira can have. We saw the impact that Val can have at stages today already. It's good to see both of them removed off the board because I feel like on a map like this, yes, Azami has an impact, but not as much as what Azami can have on maps like Clubhouse. I'm going to say I beg to differ, big old Gibby. I love it. <sighs> don't know. The bees are being played, though. I don't... Allegedly. I was, listen, we've seen... We've seen the bees baited to us uh, many a time. I wouldn't even comment on it until they're actually in play. But we speak about Azami, right? The high impact. Now, she's not in play right now, of course. Saltless is in play, and Faith brings that out. And I'm really intrigued. I'll, I'll put a pin on what I was mentioning about Azami. Solace here is huge. You go down below, and you are basically a nightmare. You can't plant safely. It is so difficult to deal with and deal with that Solace down below. They can hunt down your information. They can choke out that information, that key part of that attacking style, and then deny the plant. It forces you to clear. It forces a problem area, and that's what I really hope RMU lean into. Yeah. I would go out and say, what, 70, 80% of the top floor is pl is played playable vertically on this map. Like, a lot of that wall is soft, so Solace can have an impact. Now, look at the roaming game that they've got set up really early. Faith will play inside a library to hold that library push. As we pointed out already, that floor is, the is very soft for the most part. And Faith can just play inside stock and wait for the push. Now, the question is, does Trooper know that the hatch is open right now. If you know the hatch is open, you probably want to put some pressure on the other side of the map, or, but they're go going to the send... single window. Yeah, we go in the single <laughs> window. But look, Faith is going to get the kill. Shrug's going to get the other. And uh, yeah, Library has not been a very good opening start to this one for Drexel. Again, that, that's an entry point where so well, basically they went in and they went, Library's clear. They probably knew the hatch was open and they've unfortunately sent one person to a window. One person got caught out down below. A little bit of a lack of information on top mezzanine, top blue, top ivy. As OSD will get one back. Reprovation falls, gets us to a four versus three. 
This is a winnable situation. It's recoverable from Drexel. They need the next pick, though. And the way to do this is basically go down below and try and shut down this double roam. Shrug and that Solace of Faith are going to be huge problems. You hop on a drone and anywhere on Mezzanine, anywhere outside of the library, you're dead. Because they're going to know exactly where you are and relay that as information. Act it as it's more of a reactive pulse. That's the best way to say how Faith should play this. Huge. Oh, huge. And that's the pick they needed. What? I hate how we synced that perfectly. I hate it. I've worked with you too long. Too long. <laughs> way, way too long. But look, you've cleared the player on side piano. So that's a 3v3 now. You know that at this moment in time, that is safe. And you can worry about it. Now, Shrug is playing below. You've still got the mozzie in that position. No C4 in the back pocket, though. So that's one bit of verticality gone that you don't need to worry about. So what OSD is going to do is just use those nomads to just stop the player from pushing up through the library stairs. So now you know the players below have to either push up main or push up from Solarium side. I'm curious to see how Trob is going to use this gadget though, to see how the bees are going to be deployed. Warden could actually remove that problem straight away, but he looks away at the wrong time. And OSD is going to take down Faith as he steps inside Piano. Gets into another gunfight, but Warden and Shrug will combine to take down OSD and Trob, leaving us all down to ducks as he waddles his way up towards this double window. 20 seconds on the clock. The diffuser is in hand. Ducks, what do you do? Well, he's going to find one player. At least the Texas gives away his position. He has to scrap and brawl and doesn't see the head of Warden. he lose that fight out in the defense. Instantly get themselves an opening. And I have to say... I am a big fan of what that defense tried to implement. That buddy system roam with that mozzie with that solace being able to deny information, play down below with a C4 as well as all the key information. A nice buddy system. It didn't quite work out the way they would have intended but caused lots of problems from Drexel. And if they maybe amend you know, some positioning, don't get caught up by that one player on Mezzanine Balcony who found that, I think, that pick on the whiskey. This is kind of, that was a very, very clinical round from them. And I think they have a lot of potential to make that a little bit sharper next time around for that site. But alas, to the basement we go. Good signs from Drexel too, though. They bounced back well oh, yeah. from losing the two-man deficit. And really, when you think about it, if when they got that pick onto the Oryx, who was playing by piano, they got a little bit aggressive at that point. They could have taken complete site control. But these are the things that, you know, you can look back in hindsight and say, yeah, we can change that up next time and take advantage. All in all, if this game goes the way round one went, it could be a fun one because, of course, this is lower bracket. Whichever team loses goes home. It's, it's a tough one. Getting the, that advantage, that, that shield, that extra life upper bracket, it's gone. These teams are fighting to stay in this competition. Of course, best of one. An unforgiving format. Cannot make mistakes. And, and I mean, the map pool that we've seen is reflective of that. Chalet, a very common best of one map. We've not seen, correct me if I'm wrong, much sky, much border, much bank. It's been pretty, pretty down the club, Chalet. Bit of Oregon we saw last game as well. It's been a pretty, pretty sounder one. And Trob, opening pick on a Reprovation. And that's a massive blow. Reprovation, one of, the, one of those key gunners, one of those active players that's able to cause damage. And gone within the first five seconds. Laz is having a big effect on Chalet today so far as the bandit trick will be attempted now and the breach will pop as the bandit charge does go off and Brian Axe finds the kill onto Warden, putting Drexel in a commanding position inside this round now, but they need to clear those uh, those extra bandits now. There will be the breach opened up a little bit more in this one and that gives them a lot to work with with two minutes on the clock. So Faith may look to try to get a couple of picks back playing on side the top floor keeping a little bit of vertical control but i like the way drexel have, a a pr have approached this round Trob in a great position deep inside of sight playing by pillar you're gonna get caught out though faith creeps down those main stairs finds that pick the nade goes out the smoke is blown but it's gonna be a problem you have no thermals to deal with it and you can't exactly walk trooper into this position with a minute 30 you begin that rotation down but the case is all the way by primary bridge and case is finally rotating all the way around and we're going to try and mix this up, swap it up. A lot of attention still being played, but that EMP gives it all up. They'll know exactly what's arriving. They'll know pressure will happen from Boiler. But they haven't really put a lot of thought into how to clear that pillar shield. What resources do they still have? Well, they've got no nades to work with. So that shield, that player and pillar remains, resists, and will stay. And that is going to be a problem. If Shrug is not cleared, this round might all pivot around that player. 
have no real secondary utility at all. You've got claymores in the back pocket, but other than that, it's just breach charges on the side of Ace. So everything they're going to do from this point on will be done with the barrel of their gun. Here's an opportunity for Trooper as he finds Shrug, making it now a four versus two. Faith taking back control of main stairs is going to come under heavy fire as he's forced towards the breach, and Trooper will find that one, leaving it all down to Whiskey. All by himself in the bottom floor. Finds one through the verticality, but the case is going down. Uses the warden now. Steps in. Didn't really need to because utility, but he gets it. Oh my god! One. He transitions, but Brianax shuts it down, and Drexel win round two. But with some whiskey courage, almost gave them a massive chance in that one. Oh, I, I was believing a little bit of that courage. Like, oh man, what a shot. What that pick on the main stairs, absolutely key, absolutely critical, and a beautiful transition read into that angle. Oh my, what a moment that would have been. With that brings us level one round apiece between these two teams. Wine Cellar going to get replayed once again, and I imagine the attacking lineup will change a little bit. I can see that glass getting brought out once again, although I am a big fan of that Dokubi getting brought out, especially on a map like Chalet. <laughs> Hopefully it's not got the Dokubi buff that we saw a little nope. bit earlier Don't on Twitter. Don't even. <laughs> I, I opened Burda and I saw the most ab it's abomination what I saw. I saw a CZ75 with an ACOG, Dokubi with a Rama charge, and Valkyrie's camera. Not about it. Not about it. It's a good loadout rent. though. I would take it. it no. No. Ah, that is living rent free. <laughs> I'd take it in rank though, as you said. That would be pretty fun. Every day of the week. Might help you, get, might help you climb from the 0. 0.4 trenches that you live in. Uh, I'm actually 0. 0.5 now, get it right. Let's and go. I'm almost that diamonds. Is big. That is big from you. I'm impressed. Didn't stop you from griefing the Elo last night, but hey, we move. I mean, I won every single game last night. I don't know what stack we might have got. We might have got the Elo, but we lost. We lost the. We lost the war. <laughs> It's about the damage that was done to the mental over the course of this one. And we'll, we'll see what damage was done to the mental by Robert Morris in that last round. Because, yes, Drexel took the win. But Whiskey almost pulled that one back. The flick onto the breach was absolute filth. Pure filth from day one. So we'll get back into this one. The plan will be similar once more. Use those EMPs to try clear the bandit from this position and get the breach open. So the first one pops. Bandit can't keep both sides at once. There will be the ace charge popping off as the Selma moves the bandit away from that position. So now you've got a little bit of something to work with. You've pushed the warden back into storage and he is just going to be a little bit trapped in that position. With, but it's a dangerous crossing if he wants to make his way in towards pillar from here. He's actually okay right now because that angle's open up. The wall on the right side's open, so he's got a little bit of more like, kind of freedom of movement to work around that side. Misery. Normally, with that entire breach open, you and the connector, you're dead, right? There's not really a lot you can do for that position. You are pinned in there and really rely on luck to escape. So he's basically locked in there to his own mind, but he can rotate away. A rotation's happening now. That extra breach getting opened up will lock him in place. So that bomb that you know he is in connector, he is done, he's there, and you can begin to get a little bit predictive about where these players are. Once again, though, this shield and pillar, that's the problem. Look, utility, there's no nades, but Whiskey peeks out one anyway. No OST's gonna be able to find him and claim that life, and that's a huge. Huge open, but Faith on a massive flank all the way in car garage, and this could be huge. You don't seem to have any information. The drone network hasn't spotted this one out yet, but that shield sows a little bit of doubt. No SD's all alone. There'll be no trade if Faith arrives. So Brian Axe now rotates back towards me in breach once more. Warden still trapped inside this room, but with Faith wrapping around the side, there's an opportunity to pick up another kill. Now the phone call coming out will reveal Faith's position, or it should do as the audio makes its way around the map. And yeah, look, OSD very aware of the fact that Faith is going to push this way. So Faith cannot move. Do not come this way, or you will get taken out by the 762. So the rest of the push from Drexel making the way towards me and breach. 40 seconds left on the clock and there are the smoke grenades which may allow Traub to push closer and closer to the breach. Steps inside, gets himself one, peeks inside but there is the bandit getting the one onto Traub putting us into a 4 versus 3 with 25 seconds. He gets another warden and reprobation pick up some kills for themselves as well leaving it all down to Trooper all by himself stepping back outside but with, but with 15 seconds on the clock he's fighting a losing battle. The foregone conclusion he needs something heroic 
heroic and faith will be the final nail in that coffin of the round. And that was a very close one. Doku be walks in, fine shrug. I was thinking in that round, the mute playing by Pillar, bottom main stairs, that was the problem. That was the key of that round for the offense. Drexel, you walk in, you clear that, you've got an opening. All they do is deal with the bandit, and they just couldn't. Huge reaction from the defense of our, our, our MU, and they got the job done. Two rounds to one, good start from them. And I've, I have to say, I am liking what I'm seeing from Drexel. I really like what I'm seeing offensively from them. The fact is they're opening up that breach, they're holding it, locking it down, and then they're going to rotate away, put pressure on different angles. And they even thought about mixing up where that execution was going to arrive. Did we want to execute from somewhere or do we want to go from trench? And I like seeing that thought process from teams, being able to think, all oh, right, what's going to give us the better solution? What's the better option? I think they made the right one, just came down the winning those individual gunfights, and they just couldn't get over that margin. But another good round, good promise from them, but RMU get the victory. I think the big thing for me when it comes to Drexel is when you get inside that last 30 seconds of every round, they're still in with a chance. They've still got the players alive. They've still got the man up. Every round so far has come down to that last 20 or 30 seconds. So it's a positive sign for Drexel. But the issue is they find themselves 2-1 down on the scoreboard. And as much as we're singing the praises of the Drexel side, Robert Morris on the fence have done some very good things when it comes to just delaying and stalling out and not allowing positions or Drexel to really take advantage of the round. We've seen Whiskey come up with big plays. We've seen Warden come up with a big play. The rotate by Faith in the last one, pushing down through Big Garage and picking up that kill onto the Ace, who was inside a boiler, had a massive impact on that round. And that's what I like about this Robert Morris side. They're not afraid of taking map control as a defending team. Whenever you see that opportunity to take that control, it's very important the teams that are able to do it. From what I'm seeing from this, again, we're attacking that uh, that office bedroom side. And again, they're very immediately putting direct pressure on from this window. All they're doing is just holding onto the angle and just... Gibby, Gibby, you've ruined me with that. I can't even pretend you've not done that to me. Look, I've done nothing to you, no more than what Faith has just done to OSC by picking up that kill on the vault in through library again. Reprovation will toss out the clone device just to give a little bit more information in case anyone pushes in that way. And one of my favorite things that good alibi players do, Whip, is don't get in a gunfight, keep one in pocket, and then toss a clone out. What did you think I was going to say? Exactly that. Exactly. You know, I know why you like that. I know exactly why you like that. That's Leon Gitz's favorite thing to do. <laughs> we love a bit of Leon able to find a head of shrug, though. Can't shrug that one off. Full damage taken. Headshot sent into the grave. And with a minute 30 left to go, a good position. Mezzanine will send that EMP out. And it's time to get that wall open. So, first couple of big checklists are established. They've got that wall open. They've got these angles. The thing now is going to be a concern. Is, are you going to be able to have a drone network that spots out a potential flank? Or who's going to be able to put that pressure relief on Solarium stairs? You send some up the creep there. But look at this. Faith down below knows exactly where that drone network gets established. And able to avoid it best they can. Ducks gets one on the ward and leaves us in a four versus three. But technically... A 4 versus 2. 4v1 on site now. Oh, no. 4v2 on site. We see that Solace down below getting caught out by Lion. Reprobation on low, low HP as well. It's time for Dreadful to show or time for Robert Morris to be able just to fight out these ones and tell you what. I've got Reprobation to be able to try and do it. That's a good shot as well. 40 seconds. Smoke squad. Execution arriving. And out the window. He surely he goes. He's thinking about it. In case we'll get planted. He drops prone. But this is going to be a problem. That Flores John will burn away. Whiskey. You won't be able to see half. Well, you can't walk. look at that deep. Reprobation falls. 3 versus 1. Gibby. Time begins to dwindle. Flash bang won't affect Whiskey, but I think he's going to be caught out by too many angles as they begin to swarm, choke him out bit by bit. And just like that, the round is won. Pistol on hand, Duck shuts it down. Drexel get themselves level. Good round by Drexel again. This is a real back and forward game that we're seeing so far from these two sides and seeing some flashes of excellence from both. And I got it, man. I cannot call at this point which way this is going to go. So this will be the final round of the defensive half for Robert Morse. A reminder for those of you, if you are joining us at home, that it is, of course, first to six here for this LAN event. So it'll be five rounds on defense for each side if they manage to make it that way. And Robert Morse will be looking to take a 3-2 lead going into it. But if Drexel can pull this one out of the bag and they take the 3-2 lead into their defensive half, well, then you got to feel they will have the advantage. And let's be real with it. If we're being real about this right now, in a best of one scenario, especially when it's first to six, a three two half on attack is more than you could ever need. The thing, the thing about that is it's chalet. 
and that and that's the issue here, right? You, I think Charlay is attacker sided. I, I genuinely think if you understand this map and break it down into its individual components, the attack should be able to walk with the defense every single time. Every single site has a clear and multiple clear respected avenues to make that work. You always are trying to fight reactively on the defense to what the offense are doing, and that can be very problematic. Drexel need this round, in my humble opinion. They need this, they need to put the pressure on them. They know they can win rounds, they know they can win these difficult rounds. They just need to put on the pressure, step on the gas, and get these next ones locked in. I hate agreeing with you. I hate it. <laughs> I shouldn't. You know, remember back in the good old days when we disagreed with everything each other said, and now we've cast think, it so I many times. It's pretty, it's pretty safe to say, Gibby. You've come in, you, you started working with me, and you were just wrong, and you've learned. You've learned from me. You've learned all the wisdom that's stuck in my brain from being a fan of this game for eight plus years. That's what it is. No. No, you've I learned refuse. from me. No, it's all it's me. You've learned from me. I'm actually an AI program. I'm learning head. all the time. Trob gets the opener on that one as he takes Shrug out, making it a five versus four. Shrug not quite having the impact in this map as he had in the last one. So Trob, having got that open and pick, now takes control of the basement and he moves up towards Lyra Stairs. Faith with the shotgun at the ready. In a precarious position, that wall is soft and any drone work whatsoever could give Trob a free kill, but he's completely unaware at this moment in time. He's going to open up that soft wall, which should give Faith a little bit of information and Trob is tapping the wrong way with but as he gets closer and closer to Faith Brainax will get the kill on the reprobation Trob misses the head again by a fraction of an inch and the longer Faith stays here and the longer he holds his nerve the bigger an impact that he could be about to have on this round and Robert Morris needed in a 5v3 Massive advantage. Drexel have all potentially to lock this one out. They need their drone network though to be able to find and just keep themselves secure. This is winnable from Robert Morris. And tell you what, if you have situations like that, I'm delayed a little bit, my bad, Gibby. I, I was, I may have opened up, I may have been a little bit delayed on that one. Sorry. It's okay. A little bit delayed was Whiskey with that headshot going that way as well as he lined that one up perfectly. C4 tossed up over the hard wall, but it's going to be blown and nobody is going to be found. You feel like Drexel have really taken advantage of this round so far. Faith still playing below. The case is going to go down. The C4 is going to miss its target by a long way. And Drexel now on the verge of a 3-2 half. Case goes down. Warden inside of Master Bedroom playing by the bomb chassis. Sir Searching to find a kill, and he is going to get down on the trooper, but there's Brianax Brian to trade it back, and through the window, Dux is there, he takes down Faith, and that is a 3-2 half for Drexel University, as they are now going to be moving very confidently and happily onto their defensive split. I like that. I like this a lot. Again, I was a little bit concerned for how they came out of the gates in this matchup, but they've been very reactive to it. Now, this is the question I want to ask, Gibbs. On the defense, you have to be way more reactive than you normally would. You are not setting the tempo on this map. It is all about what the offense can do, how they enter, what control they have, what cutoffs they hold. How are, are, how are Robert Morris going to play this one? Are they going to play for cutoffs or are they going to get in and try and take early internal map control already? Because that's going to be the entire dictator of the pace of this map. Well, we will find out pretty soon. Once again, for those at home, the attack inside isn't quite set in stone just yet. Five seconds left inside the prep phase is when we will know exactly what lineup Robert Morris are going to take into this one. Looking at the defensive side, we do have those Kibas that will be used by the Azami this time around. Usually, we see those be used inside of library, allowing the... Azami to just play behind that reinforced wall to step aggressively into library from time to time. This is a setup we have seen time and time again. Oh, oh no. Oh no. That is. It's unfortunate, but we'll get it next time. As I, I love this position. I love all the angles that you can set up with it, but I wouldn't actually put a Kiba there. You can put one on that chimney. There's a little, little like black panel that you can put your Kiba on that stops that. that that mezzanine balcony gives you a great angle and you can also put it a little bit lower to fight towards main i love that that's a bit of me that is but they haven't done that because they tried to put it on the railing to make it a bit more of a gun fighting situation faith will take that initial entry right down below instead of car garage and well trooper gets the opening pick reprobation first to fall and for a player that we saw being so impactful in terms of frags in the last map reprobation getting shut down once again very early a massive blow over rmu 
And the thing about it is, you spoke about Reprovation in the last map. He is the player who got the ace in overtime match point to get them through to the stage of the bracket. And he is down now, meaning that Drexel have got the opening pick. But again, for Robert Morris, it's not the end of the world. You can still pull this round back into your favor as long as you are able to isolate these defenders and take the right gunfights. So you have two defenders playing here. The Wamai will work in tandem with the Azami to lock down this library set section of the map and in order to clear them you need to get some pressure on the fluke balcony some pressure towards that piano window as well looking towards library and from there you can maybe move these players but time is starting to tick away a minute and 30 seconds left and looking at the drone network they've got only two drones left in the back pocket as brain x gets one but faith will take down osd to keep the numbers within one that's a good pick from whiskey on the ducks but trob did take down faith so it's still a three versus two a minute and 10 seconds to go. One player alone on site. This is an issue right now. You, If you if you know this, you can just flood the site right now. You get the, get the case down, have one covering. I think that's exactly what they need to do. They need to just walk on him, but Trooper is going to hold that front line, lock it down, and force us in your one versus three. Warden, he's got about a little bit of HP. It's not a lot. A single bullet will be enough to send him, well, to end the round for us right here, right now, against three full HP defenders. He's got 40 seconds, lots of time to work with, probably lacking in information, he's got no drones in pocket. All of his drones have already been used up, so at this point, it's like a 35, 40 second reset for the side. They can take this as a pseudo-tactical timeout, begin to think, begin to talk about what happened, and correct the processes that went wrong, because I'm pretty safe to say, Gibby, I think this round's going to go in favour of the defence. Brave call. That is a brave, brave call. The scenario. I know. He does have the case in the back pocket, and Trooper is really the the main target off inside Master Bedroom. But I think you're bang on with this one. He's taking the ad hoc timeout and hoping that maybe somebody is going to gift him with one because they know exactly where he is. But Drexel, they're going to hold their position. They're going to hold the line. And with that, we move to round seven. And again, it was a bang bang round when it came from, when it, you look at it from a trade perspective. The amount of times that we saw multiple gunfights going on at different parts of the map and both teams losing a player, but Drexel just able to keep the man advantage for the majority of the round. And we now move to round seven. I think the big thing about that round to me is the opening pick. They were able to find reprobation within the first 15 or so seconds, and that's an issue. The defense from their opening pick, can just play for trades. And if the trades work out in their favor, if they keep in that golden ratio of three seconds, and yes, I see the Kavira Gibby. I see it just as much as you do. But I didn't want to believe say it was nothing. real until it's, it's locked it's in. It's locked in. I didn't want to say anything. I didn't want to even imagine it until it was locked in. So, all right. We have a game whenever we see a Frost in play. We, we, we find one poor attacker. We say, that's your name, and you're getting Frost minded. You can say with Kavira. Gibby, you normally ask me. Who I'm gonna lay the caster curse down on. Who's gonna get interrogated? Go on, who is it? Realistically, looking at the attacking lineup right now, you'd think that it would have to be Reprovation or Faith. Because you don't expect the Ace or the Thermites or even the Thatcher to be in a position where they are going to become potentially or fall foul to that, but Maybe in the late round, it could have an impact down around Trench. Maybe the ace goes around there in a little solo mission to try open up that boiler wall. So I'm going to say it's probably going to be Whiskey or Faith, but in reality, I don't see an interrogation happening. But deep down, no, the no, no, dark side no, no. of me it, wants will it, it so bad. Will it into existence, Gibby? You know you want to. Will it? I, you, Manifest I you it. <laughs> Manifest it, Gibby. Spawn peak from the Kavera there does a little bit of damage on the reprovation. <laughs> a little bit? That's nearly half HP. It's a little bit in Siege. No. So, no. No. <laughs> Thermite will try and get this wall. It looks like the band the trick. Whoa, it's going to be cutting it narrow. Who's it? Oh. oh, he just survives. Oh, he still managed to escape with half of his, half of his P stolen from him. Gets away. Scampers in. And now, this is what I was talking about. Now the entire breach is open. This is where you find it problematic. If you're inside connector, good luck. That's where you live now. You are not getting out of that one. So, I believe it's Bandit still in that position. You now exist. That is your job. But... For the rest of RMU, look at what they're trying to do. They're trying to put pressure on the West Main. They're trying to get themselves an entryway inside of study. I'm sorry, inside of trophy or towards trench. This is where you could have a Kavira make that late, that late round flank, especially through towards that hatch inside a trophy, and could be an impact. And if they don't know where Trob is, that could be a problem. Yeah, and that's so, a free you know, pick you know where there. Is. Yeah. Yeah. 
that, that's a free one. And he spoke about OSD being trapped inside Connector. Well, it's cozy in there. He'll just bide his time and play that position. Reprovation will stun himself as now the boiler wall will be opened, isolating the player on pillar. Shrug will find a pick on the Brain X, but OSD is going to get traded out by Reprovation after he took out Shrug as things got a little bit crazy. Trob takes down Faith as the Cav does have an impact with the gun. Not so much the interrogation, but 3v2 post plant situation. Players locked out of the site now can hold that case and you have to worry now for Drexel. That is a knock onto one. That is going to be confirmed out as Trob takes down Warden. Two versus two scenario now and two of the attackers are on the wrong side of the map as the push comes in. Reprovation finds one. Reprovation finds another and Robert Morris pull around back but a little bit risky whip it there sending two of the attackers in backside while the case went down by, by bins. It was a little risky, but it worked out because realistically, you're going to be expecting that massive open, that massive breach to be where the rest of that cover is. Reprovation walks in from Wine Cellar has a really easy time finding and denying that last bit of pressure or that Kavira tapping the case, and they get themselves within one round striking distance of getting this matchup level. Perhaps we curse it, curse to Kavira. Actually, no, it was you this time. It was you. You, you said it. Me. Smile. It's my job. If I'm a caster and I'm not cursing something, I'm doing oh, my job no, wrong. Oh no, it's too good, Gibby. It's too good. Let's spin the Wheel of Fortune once again. Dux is on Frost. Gibby, who's stepping in the pog map? Reprovation. It's always a high-impact <laughs> operator, a high-impact player that does it, isn't it? It's just the rules. We... And of course, for everyone else, or, or for everyone, if, you, if you spot this Frost, I, I really do hope RMU decide to connect with the team. Remember, guys, stay with me, Gibby. They've got a Frost. We weren't in sync. They there. have. We weren't in sync. No, we weren't. Do you, do you know why? No. Because I was I was too lost in just hearing your voice. Ah. Oh, don't flatter me like that, Gibby. <laughs> so we move on to round eight. Drexel looking to move on to match point. Robert Mor Robert Morris looking to tie the sides at four rounds apiece. Now, the setup will use the Kiba barriers to lock in that top floor. It's, as we like to say, when you're holding this site defensively, it is all about vertical control. You reinforce that double wall in towards office, you reinforce the double wall in the kitchen, and you force the attackers to open both of them, or at least attempt to, in order to take control of the site. We spoke about it a little bit earlier as well. The Solarium takes on these pushes through trophy quite rare at the minute because of how strong this area of the map is on the fadeaway Trooper will catch Whiskey, he dips back into Piano and already that is a strong situation for Drexel to be in, they've got a 5v4 they've got that defensive hold set up and you've lost one of your hard breach, the only hard breach you got left with it is the two can openers in Fuse's back pocket Ooh, that's a, that one hurts, that one hurts a lot you, you don't have a redundancy, you've got no extra hard breach utility well, bar for the can openers, but how impactful are they going to be outside of getting hatches? You don't really want to vault on through one of those angles as well, considering, look at the site we're on, that's a problem. So already, Trex is in a great position, they just need to hold on for a little bit longer, and Brainax is going to cause even more damage, Shrug next to fall, and you're going to be waving goodbye to that Thatcher, so if you don't want to get through that wall, you need that bird control to get it. Reprovation next to fall, and they're just going to walk in one by one. Faith finally finds that trade, but a little bit too late. Four versus two. And you got a feeling this round might just begin to taper off in favor of the defense. Next pick needs to go in favor of the offense. Or you need it. There's no other solution. It is down. It's an imperative situation. Get this next pick and that's your lifeline. Yeah, you can drone. You can drone them into position and through Ivy, but the problem is it's so hard to take control of this area of the map. So Faith will attempt to drop an aid on in, but isn't going to find anybody this time around as Warden now makes the move for the breach. We've seen the script before. Here's the fuse to just make sure nobody is nearby, and then you're going to go ahead and breach it open. Trob steps up and steps back, but does stop enough, or enough of those pucks from pushing through. Steps back in towards Kitchen. Now Trob getting a little bit aggressive, and I like it because he's not going to give Robert Morris anything for free. Finds one on to Faith, leaving it all down to Fuse. He's got a long angle towards Trophy, but as you like to say, angles work both ways. Trob gets the kill, and it is now match point for Drexel University. That round was very, very difficult the moment the ace is gone. The reason is, without a, without a large opening to walk into either office or dining, you have to funnel yourself through basically the kill boxes. There is no easy solution. It is the longest way possible, the hardest way possible, and now, well, 
match point for Drexel, and they looked in, they've looked in complete control here on the defense, and again, I talk about how you need to be reactive on the defense, that is only when you're getting held, your calls are getting shut down, and you're not getting pressured, they've not really went for these extensive roam presence, presence, presences, they've been able to keep themselves close to sight, play all their cards close to the chest, and it's worked out fantastically for them, now it's not over yet, only two rounds away, RMU, they need to play these perfectly now. Not a single mistake can be made, otherwise, Chalet and this map and your run in this competition is all over. When you put it like that, it sounds like it's a pretty bad situation to be in for Robert Morris. You need to win two rounds in a row on attack to just force overtime. And we've seen, though, that this map is attacker favoured. You know, we had this conversation already, but Drexel have done a good job of winning rounds that they had to. And they're just one round away now. Looking at the defensive lineup, it is one that will eat up a lot of utility. You've got those laser gates, as our friend Ace and Dez like to call them. You've got the one my the discs will catch any throwable utility that's coming in and look is there a more frustrating operator to play against at times than playing against the zami when these kiba barrier mazes are set up the thing about the zami that makes her so frustrating and so strong is you clear one she's got another one you clear that one guess what she's got another one and these labyrinths these these puzzles that you are very can be very difficult to solve are often protected by adequate gunners or utility like ads's or my discs and, well that yana clone goes in spots a lot of information they know exactly what they're dealing with but now you have to, well i'm like this actually you gotta get this four hours drawn in and i like this setup this is actually a setup i do gibby i do this thing you could have cleared the keeper, but you'll get yourself a little bit of space, a little bit of control. The detonation won't happen because an impact grenade stops that. And now Brain Axe gets a little bit of... Ooh! OSD peeks that, and luckily Utility was in the hand, though. He gets that disc down. That cannot re-fortify that position, and library falls just like that. And that's a huge, huge. two-paper fade. Absolutely massive. They took control, vault on in, and just like that, this round is all in control of RMU. Yeah, now Brave Play pushing up onto Fluke Balcony to melee that also. So just make sure that you can't, she cannot use it to see inside of Office. So a blind vault will need to be had if you push on in. Now the breach is going to be open. Duck's position is a risky one as he steps behind that half wall once more. But looking at the utility, I'm not quite sure they're able to get that breach open just yet. Reprovation trying to use the verticality to clear the player away. The nade pushed in will force Ducks towards Piano. And with nobody playing by piano window you've given the player a free rotate back in towards the, this wall so now they go for the breach once more Flores should get rid of the utility a minute left to go Drexel with three players left alive backs to the wall Robert Morris doing a great job of pushing this attack the way they want this is still a reasonably winnable situation and right now if I was in the defense you gotta drop that c4 if you've got one down below but they haven't got one and it seems to get even more problematic is oh Doug tries with a drop shot finally gets reprobations now and has control down below and has a c4 45 seconds a trooper well you gotta get fight, fight a little bit of war upstairs faith will get one more in the round leaving it all down this one c4 will be able to get two three in the round 30 seconds remain Ducks with a single point of HP will send up the solar stairs and knows one player will stick, one player on the cover. You got yourself a fair one on one gun fight for about one more second. Here's swing out wide from bathroom, but can't find an angle just yet. They all have got a bad weapon for brawling, but Shrug shuts him down. And Robert Morris survive yet another round. So that was good, but you gotta do it again. It's still match point for Drexel. Absolutely nothing has changed for them in this game. They take a timeout. They're going to have a little bit of a talk. And I'm okay with it. This is match point. You have a talk. You talk exactly through what site you want to play, how you want to set up, collect yourself, get your breather, and get ready to go and try to step forward to the lower bracket final. If you do not manage to win this round, though, it goes to overtime. And whip it. We've been in this scenario before with Drexel. They've had a match point lead no, with us two no, no, on the no, cast. Don't, don't manifest it again. No, 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 no what cast or curse. What no, am I manifesting? No, no, we might have seen this once before. Uh, all the Drexel fans don't want to hear that. Don't want to hear that one bit at all, Gibby. Gibby. Yeah, Time but on. the Morris fans do. So that's where you, that's where your allegiances are. I see how it is. I have a question though. I see how it is. Yes. I have a question. Riddle me this, if Robert Morris lose this round. Yes. Do we say that they go home? Or do we say they log off? Because the van never made it to the venue. 
I mean... I'm I, curious. I mean, Can chat tell us? I mean, we normally say that they go home. We've worked online tournaments yeah. before. Well, tournaments where teams are all online. So they, they would go home. I don't think my my office at home isn't really home, you know. It's an office. Separate space. That's your whole room. What are you talking about? That's your whole house. No, no, I've got I've got at least two rooms. Look, I leave a bowl of water and some food in every day and lock the door when I leave. You've got everything you need in that little room. I've got I've got a mic, I've got a light, I've got a computer, uh, I can play ranked. Yeah, you're right, actually, what more do I need? You've got siege. That's that's all you need for sustenance. You know siege what? Sustenance. Up the siege. Up the siege. Up the lads. I've broken you again, haven't I? I, I? There's not really a whole lot I can I can reply just after you said you leave a bowl of food and water outside my door every day. Not no, inside your door. I lock the door when I leave. Well, I'm, I'm always that awake. Bad of a guy. Come on. How how do you sneak in when I'm playing ranked? I wait till you're in a clutch. What? I'm, when am I last alive? Explain this to me. Explain this to me. <laughs> because the round started three minutes ago. <laughs> and you were browsing the bird app. Nah, drone time ain't phone time, Gibby. I, I, stick, to, I stick to these rooms. You, you've absolutely shattered me. Drexel. Yeah, drone to... <laughs> Drexel, no, no, no. We're getting back on... No, I'm putting us back on track. C4 from Trob. Will it arrive? I don't imagine it will. It's a pretty risky one. Reprobation will try and put a little bit easily sent towards mezzanine balcony. And he'll try and ship away at this very, very well fortified position. There's that C4, and as I said, thing arrives from it. It wasn't far though. They they weren't far close. off the target, but it's but it's gone. You can't use it now, and they've also got the breach open by the looks. Oh no, did OSD just just a second too late and now the breach is open so now things become a little bit tricky for the defensive side you've given them a line of sight through that fluke window or window in towards sight osd's position is still a little bit if he want and he decides now is the time to back off he'll push up through those i stairs and actually he's going to rotate the whole way back around through solarium so they've given up library now with a minute and 44 seconds to go and look at the drone network that robert morris is setting up right now i saw three drones so three of the five players were either using fries or intel oh, hey no. someone walked into one we didn't predict it this time but it's ah, always someone can't be a pogma in a game without with us casting can there's always got to be one that's made my day mm -hmm. that's made my day i'm a i'm a happy dog now <laughs> oh, so now, Trob, I look at the aggression here from Trob as he steps on up, gets the kill on the faith. Big plays in the big moments. This is it. This is match point for Drexel. And they've got the opening pick. He's going to crawl his way back into the corner to some safety. He's got another gun fight just around the corner if he peeks that way. Duck on top of the piano as well, but that Flores drone will move Trob. He's going to take no damage whatsoever as he got just about outside of the effective area of damage radius there. And now Reprovation will push up alongside his teammate Shrug. Going to get stunned by his own teammate though. That is a bit of a problem as Dox is able to swing around and get the pick. Trob is almost able to get one, but Whiskey hits him with the headshot and now we're back in a four versus three. Oh my god shrug hops in the window takes down brain axe and now we're in a three versus three scenario but there is osd to pull it back into drexel's favor 20 seconds left in your tournament for robert morris you've got the diffuser in hand and I'm not going to use the pun this time around but whiskey will get a lifeline that's exactly what it is Whiskey now playing by Fluke Door. They've got seven seconds left. They have to force the push, but it's going to get taken down. Dux gets the kill. Dux gets another. Drex will move on to the next round. And Robert Morris, well, they're going to turn off their computers, step away. It was a good run, but it's over. Drex will move on to the next round. Oh, and they fought hard for that one as well. Give me, I've got a hat on now as well, by the way. My hair, I couldn't contain Ooh, my hair. I like it. Hair at all. Berlin Major. Smile. Had a fun time there. But that is another team going home, and you kind of see that was uh, uh, that was well for Drexel. Move on to the next round, and they will face the loser loser of Lebanon Valley versus Kurtztown. That was a fantastic match. But get to say goodbye. It's always sad to say goodbye to a team giving. It always always hurts my heart just a little bit to wave goodbye to a competitor. It is, and. Look, these teams, they go in, they try to have a good time, they try to get a little bit of prize money and some experience, and 
sometimes you get unlucky. I know the best of one format can be a difficult one as well because you, you know as well as I that a best of three is a completely different affair than a best of one. Players will take more risks. They're more likely to try things because, you know, there's more... You know, there's less of a risk in doing these things because there's always another map. But unfortunately, best of one, it doesn't quite work that way. And Robert Morris will be going home. But Drexel have bounced back well. You know, considering the result that they had a little bit earlier against, you know, against, I think it was the Lebanon Valley side, it's a good bounce back. Now they can focus on that lower bracket final. But whip it. Any last words on the last fixture before we jump into a break? Oh, don't put the pressure on me, Gibby. Don't put the pressure on me, though. But for Drexel, I have to say, that's a massive bounce back. I was really, really worried when we started to see RMU begin to close that one out because mm -hmm. you know, Drexel, they struggled to close out the last time they played on Clubhouse. And all of a sudden, I was getting flashbacks to that one. The timeout was called, and they made the right decisions. They played clinical, clean, and perfect siege in that final round. A beautiful mixture of aggression and conciseness. Got it done. And unfortunately, we sent R RMU home. They do indeed. And with that, though, we're going to take a little break as we get ready for the next game of the night. And when we come back, it'll be whipping now again to take you through the action. We'll see you guys in a few minutes. Hi, um, I'm Plexius. Um, I play for LVC. Um, we just took a, took a hard-fought match against Drexel. Uh, we started off good on the defense, lost a couple of Ds on attack. Uh, we usually ban a zombie on that map. We tried to not, and it, it bit, us, bit us hard. We weren't ready for it, so... We just started hitting the other side, downstairs, took the gunfights. After that, it really just fell into place. Um, we really found our tempo, and just killing them all before they could kill us was really our strat, not even the, the objective at the end. So, yep, it worked out, and uh, we got the win. Does that win make you feel more confident about the rest of the tournament? Definitely. Uh, we didn't get any warm-up time, so I kind of felt like going in, like I was a little bit shaky. But once the round started going on, it started just feeling, it felt good. So I'm, I'm confident going into the next game. We'll, we'll start out better. Won't be a comeback. <laughs> How stressed were you during that game? Yeah, when, when we were down 2-5, I can't lie, um, I, I felt a little pressure, but I knew exactly why we were losing, and each site we lost, I knew exactly what we needed to fix. Um, and we brought the right ops the second time around, and uh, I think they got like three kills in four rounds, so yeah, it was working, so. Hi, my name is Jack Moskowitz. I go to Lebanon Valley College, and my gamer tag is The Senate. Um, pretty excited to start playing again, because it's been a little bit since we've had our last match. Um, just getting a little angsty. Uh, but other than that, uh, ready to play again. Maps, whatever comes our way, we're prepared for pretty much anything. One of my favorites would be uh, Oregon or Club again, but who knows, I think we're gonna do great. Prepared. <laughs> we've, we've scrimmed this team before, or we've scrimmed a couple of these guys before, so we're prepared. Hey, I'm Azio. I'm with Kassan University. Um, we've had some pretty good momentum today, and uh, we just hope to keep things rolling. Uh, ideally, we would want the same maps we already played since we've uh, gotten accustomed to the strats. And uh, we're expecting to do well today, hopefully make it to the end. We're good. We know what we need to do, and we, we know how to do it. Welcome back in everyone to the Kutstown land. This is 2023. My mic is not muted this time because I am a pro. And I am joined by Whippet, as always, this time wearing a hat to keep that big siege brain of his in place. Uh, I wish it was because of my big brain. I, I can't control my hair. I need to get it cut. Should have done it from Montreal. But hey, you know, modern problems, modern solutions. I'm very well done, Gibby. You, you remember to unmute your microphone. I was, I was ready to dive in. I was like, oh, he's done it again. Oh. Oh, he's crazy, but Gibbs, we've got more siege action. You gotta, you gotta, you guys gotta endure this to us for one more best of one. So, Gibby, who have we got this time around? Well, this time around, we have the home team town, Kutstown University, taking on Lebanon Valley College. Like two teams with very different paths to the stage as well. Kutstown University have stomped over the opposition every step of the way to this point. Whereas Lebanon Valley, they came back from a 5-2 deficit after a tactical timeout to force their way into this fixture. The star of the show so far for Kutstown University. Well, we'll talk about that in just a moment because we're going to look at the roster for our 
Lebanon, Valley, Collyside, Whippet, Emporium, and Reliable. Two players that stood out for me, but I know Plexios had a pretty good game as well. Plexios had a mega performance, especially on, well, obviously on the club, as the one that we watched, was always able to have a massive impact time and time again, and was maybe not the player that was being, you know, putting up, you know, two, three every round, but was always able to find that key, that round defining pick, and that's a massive attribute to have as a player. A very solid team, and the fact is that they came from a 5 3 disadvantage to win that in overtime after a timeout was called. This team can dig deep, and in the best of one, you need that resilience. You definitely do. So let's have a look at Kutstown University's roster. Tribune, of course, the star of the show so far, but let's not take anything away from the impact that Thundee and Tom Z have had in the early stages of some of these games. On that previous game on Shally, Thundee hit some big spawn peaks with it that had huge impacts on the rounds, almost as big as those forearms. Look at look at those muscle veins on Thundee. That that man, that man knows what he's at. Whippet, are you okay? Um, sorry about that, Gibby. Uh, I... <laughs> I don't know you. You muted. I don't know you for a second. No! I thought I'd get away. Wait, but yes, yes, impressive forearms. <laughs> I had something smart I was going to say, but I think the moment's passed now. In that one. I was going to call you out for it, and then I got caught myself. That's the way, the way of the world. It's karma. That is karma working in action. And you said earlier that you were waiting to take the handoff. Well, but the only time in my life that you were ever eager to take a handoff was whenever it was from Milos. You were like, I want, you were like, Gibson, I want to take a handoff from Milos. Can you the... blame me? Can you blame me? Who doesn't want, who, who in this space doesn't want to say, thank you very much, Milos. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> About Chat, that you don't me. you didn't see it but i saw the smile on his face after he took that hand off it was like a dream of his ever since he started watching siege 15 years ago even though it only came out seven years ago oh, you know, it's year eight now i've what <laughs> we managed we managed to waffle our way to an entire pre-game gibby uh that we've, is... we, we've we've swindled <laughs> our way through this whole casting career already <laughs> Well, how we manage this? Anyway, oh, it's like so an elephant up a tree. Nobody knows how we got there. I, so no one knows how it's there, and I'm not going to question why it's up a tree. That elephant has started climbing, and it's going up there again. It's, I can't stop it. It's going. Uh, Osa Flores, Gibby. That's, that's who's been banned. Yeah, Osa banned. Not too surprising the impact that Osa oh, could have border, being a press. Yeah, we're on board this time. The Flores ban, we've seen the impact he's had today already. Solace being taken out by Kutstown. We see the, you know, we know that Solace has a big, big, big impact on a game. In particular, in the prep phase and in the last 20 seconds of round. Which, funny enough, Whip, but most of the games we've had tonight have gone down to those key 10 to 15 seconds. So give me, we're not quite... Go, so go ahead. 20 seconds left on the clock. Diffuser in hand. <laughs> what are you going to do? Well, you got to play with confidence and be comfortable. I know. That's all I know. I, I haven't paid for the rest of the play, DLC. Play with confidence in situ. In, I, I don't even know. I heard it that many times. I've wiped it from my memory. Every look. Well, look. You feel like every time there's a break, you kind of have to say it now for Twitch. Hey chat. guys, my name is Nicholas Morrison. You know me as Pengu, two-time world. Ch <laughs> oh, we we honestly like. I love it. I absolutely love that man. So let's move into the game. As we move into round one, 45 seconds for the prep phase for Lebanon Valley to set up this defense in a way that will be difficult for Kutstown University to just work their way through. Now, when you look at sites like this, Whippet, especially, especially when you play here on border, there's a couple of, you know, normal, standard ways people like to do it. You can go get that main breach, take, put a bit of pressure on the half wall, get that player down, and then do what I do and fail to cover Pengu as he plants and then have him give I out knew, to me, I give out about going, me. I was going, so, Gibby, what you're trying to say is, you can either do this 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 attack on this site, the normal way is take CC, get the balcony, do normal pressure, maybe think about putting a little bit of light pressure on that sandwich window, or you go for that entire office I take, or the Gibson approach, where you troll everyone on your team with a simple command, and uh, have an MS Paint lecture about how you did it wrong. Or... You can rush and win the round in 10, sec in 10 seconds by pushing in through the window, oh, which we saw as well don't recently. Remind but... Don't remind me of the things I've seen on border. 
the lineup isn't quite set up that way, so Thondi will step his way in through detention. I think that, if I'm not wrong, I saw a silhouette inside of customs, which could be a little bit of a problem as Thondi looks to push his way on him. Tom Z will move up onto the balcony, so really it looks like they are going for the, the more standard side of a push. So you clear out CCTV, you get the main breach open, you clear the player on half wall, and you work your way in. Reliable, set himself up inside of office. This position whip, but it's pretty similar to playing in rafters and clubhouse. You're there to play your life. Mm, um, yeah. Sometimes maybe yes, sometimes maybe sometimes no. Sometimes maybe yes, sometimes maybe I disagree with your opinion, but all the time. Hey, what? I don't disagree with that one. Thunday finds the opening pick on the Davis, and I mean, Thunday's been one of those players. It's always on the opening side of engagements. He's always able to find something early in a round. That's a huge impact. And whoo, nearly find the second. Mozzie nearly caught in that rotation. That's Plexios, and the opening pick goes down below. I have to say, I'm a big fan of how we've seen Lebanon Valley extend across this entire top floor. They're not bunkering themselves in, they're not boxing themselves in, and they're not really committing to playing a dangerous position inside a CC. If you have that rotate by Brazil, it's a very scary place to be. Just, they're just waiting. And a very patient approach from Kurtzstown so far. They're not rushing in, they're not playing a high tempo border. They're trying to catch out rotations and. <laughs> okay! Hello! Said it sends Tom Z all the way home! What a shot! Minute left in the round, we're back to level. That was a first-class delivery of a slog between the eyes, and Plexios is going to double down on the pain as he takes down Thundi. Two high-impact players off the, t the tally already now for Kutstown. Atzio hits Senate through the soft wall, but he didn't know when he's not able to finish that one off, and Golden is now forced to push this position all by himself, and that breach ain't really one that he's going to be able to step in through. It's going to be a door move, but he does find the kill onto the Senate. The Senate does fall so now you got to open the door you've got the diffuser in your hand you've got enough players to cover if you want to do it but plexios is slowly just thinning those numbers down as all of a sudden we're in a three versus two and i have a feeling this is going to be a fun game golden shoots across the distance does a little bit of damage he has the case but opportunity to get it down starting to run out 10 seconds to go he goes behind the hard wall and here we go player playing just below Atsio is going to get one but Plaxios does the C4 and that will be the round and Lebanon Valley College bend but don't break brilliant round from them whip it well an expression I love the same very similar to that one the strong wreath will bend within the wind that's exactly what we saw the opening pick went against them they were able to stay calm collected get that trade I mean the Senate. That shot he hit. Oh. <laughs> Get me a little bit hot and bothered that one. What? Just swings YT in a single slog with pinpoint first class delivery in the Toms. Uh, and well that's gonna be that was a defining moment. That got them level. That was able to start to string together a lot of little trades. Lebanon Valley played that very well. Now, here's what I would say I want from these teams on border. Border is an explosive map, and when it was reintroduced in the map pool, when it was rearranged, readjusted, and changed up to the way it is today, we all expected this map to Defenders be back to what it was. Bomb. Super aggressive, super Defenders. fast paced, gunfires, powerless. Alright, it isn't. It is a lot slower, a lot more methodical, but there is one tool that every defense has, and you can get to the proximity of this map and fight the entries and be a problem. That's what I want to see. If you let Kutztown break this into a strategical show match, a strategical chess match, that's where I think they will be better in this situation. So for Lebanon Valley, yes, you're at their opening round. Fight the entries. Make getting into the building difficult, as every offensive team on a map like Border will struggle with that. And typically, this is offense favoring. So if you can take as many rounds as possible in your defense, that could be huge. And funny enough, you look at all the tier one competitions we've seen lately, that's what the good border teams do. You don't let the attackers comfortably get inside the map. And I think it's been a problem so far for a lot of teams whenever they're attacking this one is to get that open and pick. So what can Kutztown do this time around? This site though, inside a bathroom and tellers, a little bit differently the way you're going to defend it. Reliable's position above will be a bit of a problem as he will attempt to push over towards office if the attackers look to do it that way as well. But, but this round is set up nicely when you look at the attacker lineup again and Fuse is going to join the party once more. I'm actually enjoying how much Fuse I've seen so far today. It's a nice little refreshing change of pace. Again, those cluster charges have utility. Again, you can't really deny that they have an impact or can have an impact in a game. 
Tribune will take a little bit of damage, send some shots down range as well. Emporium is going to come off worse for war wear as well. Good long angle held, and that's going to be a nice little crossfire establish. And, and this is what I'm talking about, the stylistic changes or differences. Kurtzstown are going to play this like a chess game. They are going to take control, hold crossfires, try and get that map control stage by stage. You need to be disruptive to this because, yes, it's slow, yes, it's methodical, but the more you make them feel pressured early, the less easier this stage, this mid phase becomes. And that's what Lebanon Valley need to do. So, yes, again, they were able to dig themselves out of that last round, but I'm a little bit worried if they don't begin to dictate the pace of this matchup, how this could go. How this could go. Yeah, they've sent Thunday and Tribune in as the first two parts of the entry with some drone work, and Atsio is going to fall. I think that was... I'm checking them. Yep. Yeah. That was a C4 from below from the Senate that was able to take out at CO. Now, the one thing I will say, Kutstown need to get Tribune going. That's the big T for Lebanon Valley. Shut him down. He's already died more times with it in this map, which is one round and a half in than he did in the whole last map that we casted of him. Is it? Is yep, it? he didn't die. He didn't die in the last map. 9-0. Oh my. 9-0? That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's a little bit insane. Trivia again has been... Okay. That's why the fuse is a little bit vulnerable. Open verticality decides to lean in and try and place that cluster charge. But reliable, we'll get that instant trade. We're going to wave goodbye to Tribune as well. Four versus three. 40 seconds to work with. The hatch is still intact, but the vertical openings are there. You need to begin to think about dropping in the workshop or going in the square. You don't have a lot of options here, and it's going to be down to who can win their ones. Advance through the defense, but that nade will buy a little bit of space. Drops on in spots. One player dropping off the platform, and what a shot by Tondi. Be able to find one more. This could be huge. Azio is going to get reliable, and now advantage now swings for Kurtzstown. But can they close this one out? 17 seconds. It's all going to be down to two versus two. Tag team brawl. They dart deep in the sight. Who's got the case in hand? Remaining. No one. It's dropped. It's gone cold. The cover needs to be there. Everyone's isolated and alone, but Thundee will get one. Sentinel falls, and this is huge. Triple zero is dawning, but Davis wins the one. Three seconds, two seconds, one second. Does it go down? It does. I can't even read it. Thundee knows exactly where the threat will arrive. He needs to win his one and does so. Shuts it down and then pulls us level. Love it. Really good play there by Thunder. Huge round from him. Got the case back. Got the plant down in the nick of time. If he started planting a second later, they do not win that round because, well, the push would have come all the way back around. So, we move to round three. This game set up on a knife edge after just two rounds. Because, of course, whoop, but this isn't first to seven. This is first to six. So, every single round takes on even more importance than it normally would. And one thing I'm seeing from Lebanon and Valley, again, is this committal to playing both floors of the map. You see Pulse being brought straight away. You see the C4s. They are committing to playing both floors of this map on every single yeah, round. And forcing Kutstown University to clear border, which, as you said a little bit earlier, is tough or easier said than done. The thing about it is, they're forcing a massive clear. You have to go in, you have to control every aspect of the map in this style of play. The issue I have with it, and I'll be quite frank, is that there's no aggression. There's no super, no fighting at the perimeter of the map. That's what I want to see from a defense on border. Kutstown, they're not a slow team, they're a methodical team. They're kind of prime SSG in, the, in that way they're playing. They're getting in the map control, they're not being very, they're risk adverse, right? They're not trying to take risks, they're not gambling. They're doing things via the, the motions and taking good steps to progress through the map. A very good style of play. Lebanon Valley, get disruptive, get in their face. Be on border, a map like this is going to benefit that style. Bias, because we, we got to cast it. But, but Secret versus Outsiders in, in the EU qualifies oh. for the Invitational, right? The reason why Secret was so effective, so brilliant on that map in particular, is because they were able to fight Outsiders, make them uncomfortable on the outside of the map. On Order, you can do that. It's one of the few maps you can do that, and it works both ways. You can get caught out being aggressive, but I'd like to see just a little bit more of that venom, that punch from the defense, especially when Border helps you do it. But that's what it is. It's aggression. It's not... You no, know, doing anything. They're not doing anything silly. They're not doing crazy. It's calculated aggression. And that's why you're seeing them bring Jackal this time on the attack. Because we're talking about them looking to clear the map. Will you send Jackal in as your first entry? He will get the ping. But oh no, Tribune is going to fall as he steps into the cap cans. But he should be rezzed. Or at least you would like to hope that his teammates will be able to do so. And that's exactly what Thunday is going to do. 
But Jackal's gotten a lot of information. You've... You know what? You know what he's done with it? Tribune has cleared the cap cans. He's going to say, right, I got rid of two of the cap cans for you. <laughs> I love it. All right. You ever, you ever get your drone caught by Mozzie? You didn't lose a drone. You cleared a Mozzie pest. That's, that's yeah. an investment in the late round. Yeah, I lost a drone. Who cares? Go, go, go. Go peek him. Knife bait out of the corner and win your one off that one. But huge early damage done. Tribune, again, not woken up here on border. On 20 HP after that revive. And you've lost Tom's as well. You've lost that Jackal. A strong weapon. Strong capability. And you can use that to isolate these key players. Thundy, though, very much awake. Finds one on the Plexios. And that's a huge. Brings us back to level. Not the golden ratio trade. But now can begin to deconstruct this floor. And put a lot of pressure on everyone. Got to hit those swings, though. Yeah, one C4 in the back pocket left for Lebanon Valley as well, which can still have an impact on this one as Thunday begins to, as you know we said, redecorating the site, having a little look down through the beams to see if he can find any of those defenders for Lebanon Valley. Golden repositions himself onto the window because now you open up the opportunity for that plant as Thunday gets another one. He is on an absolute tear so far on border as he is really carrying a lot of the fragging weight for his side. Does even more damage onto a Reliable. Off in the distance, who's just trying to scan and let information pass towards the teammate. But 30 seconds left to go, 30 seconds on the clock, whip it. And again, they're leaving it late. This is a scary position. This Claymore should not stop this flank. Reliable will be able to shoot that, and they've doubled up on metal stairs as well. 20 seconds left. I won't even say it. Nope, nope. The future will go down, and Golden might be able to stick this one. A lot of potential cover, and I think they're going to go for a retake upstairs to try and work this vertically. The case goes down. Out he hops. Tribune gets one. Tribune gets two, and leaves it all down the Dovis in a one versus four. Claymore gone. He can send those stairs all he wants. But the round, as good as one. We have around 30 seconds until it's all but over. And I think it's pretty safe to say we can lay our bets now and go. Kurtztown should be able to find themselves a second round here on border. And Tribune gets his third. Kurtztown win the round and Tribune brings himself into life. Maybe he was activated. He gave away a little bit of HP and that woke him up this time around. So he got the buff. You know, you hear some players, they play a little bit better whenever they know the HP is a little bit lower. And that's exactly what happened. So Kurtztown take a 2-1 lead. But whip it, we said this is about Shally a little bit earlier. Border is a map where attacking sides do tend to have a little bit of success, a little bit of uh, joy. So if you're Lebanon Valley or if you're a Lebanon Valley fan watching this one, you don't have to worry too much right now at this 2-1 scoreline. I have to say, every time I've ever said the phrase, oh, this map leans to the offense, oh, it leans to the defense, the exact opposite Tactics happens, Gibby. Yeah, because we're casters. It's our Look, we're not analysts. We, we don't be on the desk. If, if we knew everything would be on the desk. We have been. We've had people have had to listen to us do a desk before, Gibby. Yeah, but it was the best desk ever. Do you know why? Because we didn't we didn't actually give away any strats. We, we just we just spoke and had fun with with the incredible Ginny. By the way, give a lot of we a lot of love for Ginny. But the thing is, as casters, it's our job to get things wrong. Like if you were getting everything right, you'd, you'd be you'd be playing. If you were getting everything right, what? But you'd be playing for G2. You would have just won SI. I mean, listen, Rasta Mania is going on. I wouldn't close anything out the window. That's all I'm saying. You do have several offers. I know that much. Offers coming in, flying through my window. DMs full. Who am I gonna go to? Huh? Am I gonna go to? Well, you had J John Esports or G2. It's a tough ask. Oh, that's a tough one. John Gaming LLC or G2? Oh man, I have to go with John. Nobody got that reference, by the way. This is what I love about the, <laughs> I love about these casts as well. But, but guys, you'll that's what, that's what we're here for, Gibby. The obscure. No. <laughs> if you ever hear us saying class. someone's joining, yes, love love siege, hit theirs. Simple as. Up the siege. <laughs> We move on to round four, two minutes and 20 seconds to work for, with for Kutztown as they gain. They look to move in pretty early. Plexios, though, the wall at six and two finds himself. The opener as Tribune will drop again, who's got three kills and three rounds, but all of them came in the last one. Plexios six and two has been a bit of a problem for Kutztown so far. And just by getting that kill alone, but look at how much they've slowed down the push over on that CCTV side. It's a lot. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm right now in my brain. I'm, I'm beginning. I'm forming out the battle plan right now. I'm trying to think, where is this going to go? You've lost one player. You're going to go and try and take it all away from office. This isn't an easy take, but 
the question to me is, how is this flank going to go? How is the drone network set up? How are they going to be able to hold on to that? Because they've got six drones left. They've lost a little few, but... Tom's will creep all the way up. The hard breach sides. You know what? I'll try and solve this problem with my AK-12. It's going to be a scrappy fight through the wall. No clear angles avenue. We need to try and find one. Thundee loves to get aggressive as well, but one player in this corner is going to lock him down. He has to swing out wide, and he stays alive. That Salmon Charger will reveal his position. I have a feeling this player won't last too much longer. Okay. Reliable decides to win the fight. The Senate finds one in the Thundee. This Jago should be dead to right and finally shut down. It's a little bit too late, and the Senate finds a second one for long distance, delivering the slugs a pinpoint precision. A minute left, and Azio all alone against four. I'm going to go level. C4 down below. Emporium shuts it down. Gibby, we've got a game on our hands. That was won, 100% by Jaeger in that position. Absolutely no right to survive for as long as he did. And he shut down Kutstown. Yes, he eventually surrendered his life in the round. But as we keep saying, one player can win a round. And that's exactly what happened in that scenario. And then for the Senate, you know, that TCSG with the 2X on it from range, it's just a thing of beauty. You don't even hear, at that range with the suppressor, you don't even hear it. You're just dead. You just take two to three chunks of damage and you're down. Or one. Or one shot, if you're saying it, because he doesn't seem to miss those heads. That is true. Or 50 if it's me shooting, because I miss everything. I've seen you play a DMR before. Your right, we, do, we don't talk about it. Gibby, I... You and Doka is a delight thing of beauty, you could say. I entertain. I entertain. Yeah, I tell you what, you, I don't, what, you already entertain me wanting to keep you in the stack, though. Well, how's about you entertain this and tell us what's going on in the game? Because I'm Whoa. feeling a little person. I'm feeling a little bit personally attacked here, Whippa. It's just, you're that's, hurting me. Like, that's a, Gibby, like, Gibby, that's light. I am, I am a man, a strange being when it comes to siege, Whippa. You'll either see <laughs> Wait, me. Oh, you'll see, what? Elaborate. No, no. What? So basically, you will either see me kill someone from across the map with an SMG 11 with a one tap. Or miss every single shell with a shotgun from three yards away. There's no in between. I don't really ever see the one tap one though, do I? No, because you're never on. <laughs> I'm always on, Gibby. I'm always on. I never stop. I am siege. <laughs> That's union, mate. Union is siege. <laughs> He's played uh, over a thousand games of rank this season, mate. <laughs> Godspeed. Godspeed, soldier. No, okay, let's put us back on. Let's put us back on the track. And we're going to be seeing Yeah, there's this. Siege on right now. There is Siege. I'm watching it right. I'm casting it right now. Up the Siege. As we'll see, a take all the way from Armory. Opening pick and pulling and find that on the thumb. That's huge. C4. Tribune just about survives <laughs> that one. C4. I mean, I love it. That, that's, how I, that's how I'd react. Oh, there's a C4. <laughs> He's just about managed to survive. Stays in the fight for a little bit longer. But the opening pick has went in favor of the defense. This is a problem. As you now have to already begin the problem solving a different way. And the player drops the hatch just in time. A C4 sent up again. Choose up that angle and makes them begin to think about everything. But control upstairs should be taken. This is pretty easy. We have all the silhouettes. We've got cast review. We know exactly what's going on. It's down for the players to use this network, use their drones, begin to figure these things out. One player hiding in printer has been spotted and it's going to be down. I think Tom's the front line of this one. Needs to win this fight. Emporium pinned in. Has a lot of damage taken already, but no one's going to use that nade. No one's going to send anything in right now because they don't have it in position. And this could be a problem. If the Valkyrie get, gets one, gets two, they won't get anything. Get left in DB, no. And it's going to be a two-player advantage now. Oh no, back to level between these two sides. Back to level, as Tom will confirm that one out, so the Valk can't pass any information along, but now he needs a little bit of help getting this hatch open, and the Thermite will do exactly that. One minute and 20 seconds left to go, so time's still a pretty plentiful resource here for the Kutstown University side, but the every second that eeks away makes it more defender favoured. There's the Senate again with the TCSG landing another big headshot as he picks up another one to the tally. Five and three for him as it's now four versus three on the server. Tribune. On the ash, changing his location. We'll just hop on the drone as he attempts to locate the position of these defenders. But Lebanon Valley have come to play. Tribune, though, finds the head of Senate, putting us back into a three versus three. 39 seconds to go, but Kutstein have vertical control and they've got the numbers. This is the last round of Lebanon Valley's defense. This is huge. With the earlier, with the advantage now in the late game, Reliable will likely not get revived, forcing this into a bit of a desperate retake. As he was dropped down these stairs, and well, it's going to be even more of a problem. Davis 
left all alone. In a one versus three, the case will go down, likely uncontested, but how can he react to this one? He's got one toxic canister, and he's got an SMG and a shotgun. But I tell you what, he's out of HP, because he went upstairs and got caught out. And that is going to be the defense faltering once again the Curtis Sounds attack. Hear me out. I'm listening, Tribune. Tribune 20 HP has like five or six kills. Tribune 100 HP has no kills. I'm not saying that correlation mm -hmm. is causation. Mm -hmm. So, oh, buddy, he, he has been more dangerous whenever his health is a 20. What you're telling me is Tribune, well, what you say, someone should down Tribune, revive Tribune, and he's the best player in the world. Is that is that what we're, is that our hypothesis? As long as you trust the stack to not report you for toxicity. Yeah, I think we should try that. I think we should try that. You should try how I do on 20 HP, and I definitely won't report you every single time. I promise. I know for a fact that if you tried that on me, you would just remove me from the game. You would I just, you would just take me out. I already, report you. I already report you for trolling every time we stack, so it doesn't even matter. <laughs> I, I'm going to have, like, so many reports on my account. I'll, I'll be esteemed, right? I'll be esteemed, but every single negative report that's about me will be me? From, from your account. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Someone's gotta do it. It's it's the same it's the same way. <laughs> it's the same way that the Air Canada uh, Air Canada received a complaint about me having to sit beside you once on a flight. Never I'll, again. I laughed too hard, my headphones fell out, and I don't know what, what rambling you went off on. So let's that's the secret. Do you, for the do you ever now. listen anyway? Do you ever listen to me cast anyway? I'm hearing something what's this noise? Anyway, like <laughs> Frost is like what gives him, Gibby. Who then? What? But I've guessed oh, the last two times. Oh, am I gonna be the one that predicts it? It's gonna be Emporium. Yeah. Um, simple as. So, what? If That's you're me. a member of Lebanon Valley and you spot they have a frost, say it with me: they, they have, have a frost. frost. Then there we go. We got it. There we that go. That's we're back on the same wavelength. Unfortunately for you, probably. We were perfectly timed there. It's just that the the time zone difference made a change. It made it seem that we were a little out of sync. We're in the same time zone. No, but the cast is in, in the US. What? We're in the future. We're five what? hours ahead. Oh, Plexios with a headshot on the Tom Z. Opens up the kill feed on this one with two minutes to go. Golden will now look to find a kill back the other way, but his position's becoming a little bit compromised in the corner of Break Room. You have Oryx. You've got a good operator getting out there. You can just boom your way through just like that and retreat down into square. You ever just time something well on a cast and you're like, yeah, I, I'm happy with that. Never. <laughs> never. That's never happened to me. This is true. I can, can confirm. I'm the unluckiest caster to ever cast or curse anyone who has ever cast it. Yes. So, minute and 25 to go. Thunday will peek out towards bus, but unable to find anybody at this time of asking. A minute and 20 seconds to go. Number advantage in the hand of Lebanon Valley as Thunday will just look to live. Golden pulls one back as he steps up on the stairs, looks to find another one, but oh, it's a little bit windy as Emporium is able to take him down. It's a two versus three, but Lebanon Valley, they're down to one player left alive. Emporium with just over 20 HP and a dream. Two nades in the back pocket, though, will toss the first one over the hill and far away, but ain't going to find anyone with that one. The one thing he, ha he does have is time. Actually, the two things he has is time and a drone. So what, but he's not necessarily completely okay, well, against the odds. Hear me out. He's got time and a drone and an eight and an eight five, but he's lost four teammates. That's a bit of a debuff and he's lost his head. So I don't think he's winning the round. Good call. So that's just me with the, that's, you're, you're the goat. Call me Mystic Mac. I predict these things. <laughs> so we move on to round seven. Kutstown University with a 4-2 lead. Lebanon Valley, though. You're down by two rounds. We've, been We've seen the script before. Have you right. seen the script? I have. Saffron, the producer, has sent me it already. And I've not been trusted with, with, with scriptures. Right. This round coming up right now, this is a good round. Is it a good... Okay, so so give me like an outline. A... What happens this round? Who... All right, okay. If you know the script, who walks into a frost map? Nobody. Okay. Not in this round. Don't say that. Don't say it. Don't oh. get my... No, Gibby. I was excited. You've... No. 
Look, I'm caster cursing it. You see, I'm reverse oh, psychology. Yes. Oh my god, you're right. Okay, uh, yeah, no one, yo, hold on, Gibby, ask me the question. Ask me the question like we just saw the frost, okay? Uh, who's, so what, but who's stepping in a frost mat this round? Nobody. No one's gonna I step in a frost mat ever again this game. Alright, fingers I see crossed what you that did that. Fingers crossed. Right. I know what they're going <laughs> yep. to do here, Whippet. Yep, 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 yep. S so, you've got yourself a Monty, you've got yourself a Glass, you've got a Ying, you've got yourself every operator you need to have an impact for a fast push in through that door. So, what you're going to do is you're going to get the glass on the window, you're going to start tossing those candelas in, a couple of smoke grenades, and you're going to get that case down as quickly as possible. And there's two things here that they need to be careful of. One is the fact that there is a frost and you don't want the Monty stepping in through the smoke onto the top of it. And the second thing you got to be wary of is the C4. If you avoid both of those things, the case should go down. You really want to hope so. Every time I see a setup like this one, the big thing to me is whoever's on AC, on that balcony, it's going to be a glass this time around. That is the most critical part of this setup. You need to be able to hold on and deny everything that gets tossed away. And they're going for an interesting decision. They're not planting with the Monty. They're not doing a turtle plant. They're going to hold it and do it behind. And well, everyone's going to get blinded. But I tell you what, the C4 below doesn't care what it can see. It detonates, depth charges, and two bodies fall. Kurtztown try and be clever, try to be fast. But they're going to get caught out with that. So 11 on Bali trying to get smart and they get caught up with the C4 down below. Told you they had to avoid the frost, they had to avoid the C4s. Emporium will bring it back to a three versus three now, but still with the case cold, and I'm pretty sure Kutstown know that all they gotta do is hold out this position. Thunday doesn't want to say, oh no, Tom Z tried to make something happen, but the C4 was there in place. Now that opens it up for Thunday. He could do the exact same thing, and the chances are there isn't gonna be another Claymore in position. Reliable takes a chunk of damage as he gets into a bit of an engagement here from the boss looking again just holding this position you've got the numbers you've got the time you've got the case but the problem is you got tribune and thunday the dastardly duo for kutstown to deal with in the scenario whip but and until either those are taken out i would worry and tribune will find one on the plexios and guess what that's the case called again and look where the other two attackers are they're no they're in a different postcode the issue is now you've got two players that need to vault in and try and get control. 40 seconds, the case is cold, and you now have to regroup and reevaluate the situation. They don't have a lot of time, and considering that they've regrouped, they're going to go for a rotation, likely in Vent's window, and go up metal stairs. They don't have a lot of options. Yeah, maybe main door, but they're really running out of time here. 30 seconds, and this is all down. Pop this open with the glass. We're going to think about it now. Oh, open it goes. Camera spots it. And that's going to be the round kind of done on us. So this Repel will get heard. The Repel on up. And, well, Tribune on an absolute heater this round will hear. Kills number th kills number four and number five for him. There's the quad. Here comes the ace. There it is. No! 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 Thunday! Good round, though. He's a good teammate. <laughs> Thunday's a good teammate. Gets the kill. And that is one. But didn't I tell you that the script said that was going to be a good round? Listen. I don't ever want to ever ever verbally agree with you ever so i will not say a single word in relation to that conversation <laughs> so it's match point now Le okay, okay this script we've is seen getting this, very we've familiar seen this before <laughs> so three rounds in a row that is the task for lebanon valley you need not necessarily to be perfect for three rounds in a row but you got to be as close as possible to win out this map could Stein have a habit of calling timeout on match points, so I get the feeling we're probably going to see one there regardless of what happens. And the big thing for me, Tribune started that game not in two. Zero and two. Look at him now, 13 and a three. But the big thing for me is the supporting cast has really helped them out. Thunday going 8-3 and three has been a demon on the entry. Golden has stepped it up at times. Tom, he's got one he's got one kill, but it was a kill that mattered. And that's all the counts in, whenever you look at the grand scale of things in Siege. His, his cost is is okay. That's what we'll say. He's Wait, what, cost what king. Matters, what matters most is the way if you win. Okay, so let's be fair. Let's take an example, right, of someone that, like, you know, maybe in a normal round doesn't look great. Shuttle, for example, right? Go. I like, love He's Shuttle. that guy. I, he's he that is guy. that guy. Only when he needs the clutch, though. 
Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's a clutch king, but otherwise, you know, he's a bit wobbly sometimes if you hop on the OBS and, and see him play. Well, I mean, sometimes it's not always about your... It's that one-round impact that some of these key players can have. And tell you what, Tribune, huge impact in that previous one. We talked about he was a little bit cold on offense. A little bit mm -hmm. shaky, a little bit not there, not connected to the fro. fro. And 13-3. Uh, and three. Impressive. What's his best? What, 14-6 was his best, correct? 14 and 6, I think, yeah, is what he got in game number 1. 9 and 0 game number 2. 13 and 3 in his third outing. You could say this guy's kind of good at the game. He knows what he's doing. He, he does know how to shoot back. Ten seconds to insertion. Well, again, players like Tribune are enabled by the rest of the team. He can't do what he does without the right network, the right intel around him to allow him to make the plays that he does. And, you know, you use Shuttle as a perfect example. You look inside of Europe, you've got players like that. You know, Big E.T., the same leader. These players have a huge impact whatever they do have to get involved in a round. I agree. I disagreed with you. I disagreed with you. No. You shuddered. I, I hear. I heard you oh, shudder sh through the I microphone. Shook. I shook. My entire my entire office began to shake and tremble. It knows all the stuff went against the laws of siege. I've agreed with Gibby. No. How has it come to this? How has it come to this? And I tell you what, though, we've lost Golden very very early in that round. Alibi off the board early. The prismas already have in place, so I guess that utility. If we can call those prisoners a lot of utility, have been placed down. You've lost an MX4 Storm and a Bailiff and a very important ability to move around the map fluidly. The Pulse, though, has a lot of control. We'll be able to relay information. And whether, you know, someone not being on that scanner is just as good as someone being on it. You know exactly where a push is coming from. You know where pressure isn't. And that's the benefit. And that mirror window will give a little bit of shock to Yana. Luckily, it was only a clone. I love mirror windows because as an attacker... You have to, even if there's nobody behind it, you have to assume there is. So, by extension, sometimes the window itself can be a set, you know, it can be an extra player. And there's Tribune stepping up behind the mirror, finding the kill onto Plexios. The high impact player for Lebanon Valley is going to fall, and Tribune will continue to play this position. Tribune eats a lot of lead this time around as he dips back into cover. One HP in a dream. Davies will get the kill onto Azio, so Tribune will rotate himself back around towards Metal. Shotguns his way in through. This could be a huge rotate, and he manages to make it stick as they surrender top floor to 4v3. HP ain't in your favor, but Thunday lets that C4 pop, and there's Emporium to trade it back the other way. Two versus three. Tribune with low HP, but what, but what does Tribune tend to do when his HP count ain't that high? He tends to find a little bit of that extra gear. Now, I don't know if that's a live C4, if someone ha has died with it in hand. No, maybe. That could be Thundy C4 sitting below. So again, and we might we might build up anticipation but C4 likely won't detonate. But this is still a winnable situation. The next pick goes in favor of the defense, and you've got Tom's the 81. That's is absolutely huge and very winnable. And look at the time as well. 30 seconds, Gibby. Every single second that they delay getting themselves in the sight, and they haven't quite droned out Tribune just yet. They spot the C4, do they spot the mirror? They know someone's there, the camera got removed. The evil eye will get removed, so events hot. Oh no! Maybe not! And that could be huge! As guess what, Tom has that evil eye, and if this, gets, if this nade gets caught, this could be massive, this could be pivotal, as he might be able to try and deny that plant, but he's gonna be able to shoot it from above, and they now have it, but nine seconds left to work with Gibby. Can they get this down? Is there even a hope for this one? Emporium will find Tribune! That leaves Tom all alone. He might have 81 rounds in that magazine, but it's looking unlikely. Vertical control still held and he might try and wander his way into control but then he'll peek outside i uh, feeling he might get exposed caught out he'll be able to find one looks for a second can't make it land emporium finds him and lebanon valley get themselves round eight and one step closer to overtime one step closer but it was a really good you know back and forth round that time around they did a great job of Getting refrags when they needed to there was a second when it looked like kutstown were going to claw their way back in but they shut that down so as we move into the next round, Lebanon Valley still two rounds away from just overtime. It's still the same scenario for Kutstown. You win this round, you go through. You lose this one and you win the next one, you go through. So, question marks on Lebanon Valley. Can you dig into that well once more? We've said it before, this is a map where attackers have had a lot of success in the past. And as I've said that now, we'll probably see the defenders win because the curse is real. But looking at this site in particular, Whippet, 
Yep. When you're attacking bathroom tellers, what's your what way would you like to see Lebanon Valley approach this one? Now, are you talking about like what I personally like to do, or what I think is the yes. right thing to do? You you saying they're two different things? Well, there's a lot of options, right? You can like, do what Kai do and have like five people on that window and just send enough utility down there to scare everyone and jump in and maybe get a plant down or maybe win the round. Or you can go for a full clear, or what I prefer to do is to try and get control of workshop, hard bridge in that wall, and use that direct avenue and have control that way. Verticality is a typical problem, but not many teams defensively use or open up all those angles. Sometimes it's just left for the offense to do because it can work both ways very effectively. So, workshop, open up that main wall and try and plant. It's how I do it personally, but uh, you have to have the fight through that control that's set up inside a workshop already. Mm -hmm. So, Plexios has been a very dangerous player for Lebanon Valley. And Tom Z is going to take out his teammate Reliable, who falls pretty early on in the round, as Kutstown have shown that they like to get aggressive in the early stages of the round. Now, decision making is key. Emporium could be about to get one, and he does as he trades back Thunday, which now wrestles away control of a massive portion of the map. So it's not the vital bit of verticality, but you've cleared away CCTV. Have you ever really cleared it with it whenever you have Oryx on the board? Whip it, have you whip it, please have you muted again? No. I was it was a pause or You were taking I, it in. You were taking it in. I, I, I was so I was drinking some water actually, as you handed it off to me. And it was like one of those <laughs> awkward moments. I'm like, I've got my I've got my flask of water. And I'm like, oh, he's handed off to me. Oh no, how do I deal with this? So it was a dramatic pause. Well, not really. I told everyone what was going on, but tribute was tribute. We'll be able to find one on the Plexios, and this is a very difficult position now. The defense have a man advantage. Growing that advantage now will be Golden Emporium Falls, and now this presence upstairs, this extension, is all proving to be a little bit difficult to break down from Lebanon Valley. Now, it's not losable, it's not lost yet. The next pick needs to go in their favor, and you realistically can't even play for trades. You just need to be, these to be straight gunfights that you win, and you want to keep HP as well. If just over a minute to work with in the drones, well, you've only got five to work with, and likely some of these are already placed and down, so you can't you interact know, with them. Davies has none, actually. So we're only relying and realistic on two active potential drones in the hands of Habana. To slowly begin to work their way. Access point given to get them into that workshop, but they know it's going to be held, and they now don't have that information that someone's crossed in the CC. This is scary. Yellow ping does confirm that, so now they know there is a threat upstairs with them, but how can they react to this one? That C4 basically kills this game dead. 1v4, 40 seconds. Davis, this has to be heroic. Well, there's one. That's one of the four that he needed to get. So he's got a lot to ask, or a lot left to do, as he picks up the case. Drops down below the hatch, gets into another gunfight, and he's going to find that one too. The impossible task looking a bit more possible as he now dips to one HP and a dream. 19 seconds to go, stuck inside of server as he books towards workshop. He knows exactly where one of the players are off the distance. If he gets this pick on the Tribune, I will start to be a believer, but there's only eight seconds left to go. Misses the opportunity again. And steps up, gets a little bit aggressive. Three, two, one, and Tribune closes that one out. Kutstone move on to the next round as we say good see goodbye in the upper bracket at least to Lebanon Valley as they will dip on down to play in the lower bracket final. But what a game we just watched as you vibe and dance to the music, but whip it. Kutstone University look like they're getting stronger and stronger as this event goes on. I know this is their channel. I know this is their event. But the hometown team are starting to turn up the heat. They're playing very good Siege. I mean, no matter if they're the host, the hometown, no matter what it is, they are playing a very strong, structured Siege. The team are playing for each other. You see that every single time, and it has been fantastic to watch so far. And we can take a look at our bracket. Kurtztown, they've managed to punch their ticket to the final. Lebanon Valley College have that extra lifeline. They will be facing Drexel in that lower bracket final. We can have a rematch on our hand. Well, either way, it will be. That would be a very exciting one indeed. That's going to be a great game. An even better game, we've got two great casters who are going to take you through that game as well in Binks and Corbeck, who will be joining you in just a few minutes after this break. We'll see you guys later on for the final, but when this one comes back, Binks and Corbeck will take you through the action for our lower bracket final. We'll see you guys in a bit.
Hello, my name is James. I'm also known as Trooper. I'm from Drexel, and I'm here from Pedia Cutstown Land. Um, my team just took. What, what did we just take? What team did we just take? I wasn't even talk. RMU. RMU. In a in a in a very very good fun match. You know, did pretty well last last game. Uh, we're excited to see what what teams we're going to be competing against next. I'm excited. We're going to be. I'm excited to see how we do against Cutstown since they're hosting this land. This, they've, they've probably got they've probably got a lot a lot of skill, so we're we're excited for that. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to your Cutstown University Esports Rainbow Six Siege LAN Loser Bracket Finals. That's right, the stakes are as high as they get as one of these teams are going home in the loser chance at the finals. My name is Binks, joined by the wonderful Corbeck, and our two teams that we have going up against each other right now is going to be LBC going against the Brexel University Dragons. So we got a beautiful graphic that has been set up for us today. And Corbic, we've had the opportunity to cast Rexel a whole bunch today, but not LVC because they've been in the winner's bracket all day. Yeah, we've seen uh, Drexel play twice now and they played really quite well both times, but you're right. We've never seen Lebanon Valley College because they have just been winning out here. The Flying Dutchman, I believe is uh, their name, but let's take a look uh, first, I think of the Drexel lineup, OSD, Trooper, Rifi Guy, Italian Mafia, Ducks. You're familiar with the names if you've been watching the stream today. Rifi Guy kind of been the star there of that squad, though they've all had their moments here across these matchups. But it was Rifi Guy who, on the Rome in particular, was a real force to be reckoned with, especially in our first game of the day that we saw with them in it. Yeah, I really liked a lot of the plays that we saw. And as we move over to LVC, where we haven't been able to see as much of them, but we've been able to see the Flying Dutchman in action uh, in the winner's bracket. They were narrowly able to beat out uh, the Dragons in their first encounter where uh, the Dragons were on match point five to three. Then in a crucial tactical timeout, LVC managed to come back all the way to win it. And uh, I think that really speaks to just the level of play that they have in the communication. Although this team has seemed a little bit too afraid to commit and take those risks throughout their games. When they have a round coldly calculated, there's no taking it from them and you can never count them out of any round. You can, I think that's fair to say. And I mean, any team that's managed to fight this hard in the winner's bracket, it has to be doing something, right? Uh, wasn't it you who said that Drexel has played the most games on the day? Yes, I did. So if we look over towards our bracket, I don't know if we can see it before uh, the match starts, but we actually had Drexel win their first match, lose their second, which sent them back down to the first round of the loser's bracket. So there, after winning their first round of the loser's bracket, they had loser's round two. So it makes for four total games. Meanwhile, um, LVC had a bye through the first round, not having to play that one. So they only had to play Drexel, then moving on to the semifinals, which is what you just saw against Cuztown. So they've only played two maps today, and this will be their third. Uh, very spaced out. Of course, this is a double header. So as we jump right on into our game, we are going to cafe for the first time today. And Jackal and Ayana, two crucial information gatherers, and now a, a third information gatherer on now on the defensive end, all being banned off. And Corbic, this could speak to the cookie cutter clear that you could have on cafe, but this seems like it's going to be a lot more difficult for both the dragons and the flying Dutchman to gather any sort of information. Yeah, it's actually a, a pretty solid, I think, game for, uh, band phase overall. Uh, Cafe, I think, of, one of, of all the maps that we usually see in rotation often has some of the more kind of interesting bands because things that people often want to ban i just don't think are super necessary here so the jackal ban the iana ban that's a the iana is a, the one that i think interests me the most valkyrie mira that's pretty standard i don't actually think you need to ban mira here but she's never a bad pick the downside of course is that you do leave azami on the board 
very strong operator on this map, which has a lot of soft destruction involved. A zombie kind of allows you to sort of reshape things a little bit, and you're probably going to see something akin to that. By the way, I do love Emporium here with this Soulless pick. It's an operator we've been seeing kind of flashing in and out all day long uh, and has been very effective, uh, both in kind of a uh, intel gathering function and a drone denial function, which is kind of a interesting little secondary purpose there uh, that Solus uh, can fill when they're using their visor. Let's take a look at how they're setting up this bomb site, though. Looks like a pretty stereotypical sort of hold slash setup for this space. I do not think we are going to see a pixel shield, though. Despite the Jaeger being present, uh, it looks like they are going to maybe go for a more kind of a aggressive approach based on what I see from this lineup. Yeah, it looks to be that, and also prepping for either the run out or the jump in, depending on what Emporium sees uh, later on in the round. But I also want to go and try to address the type of push you are going to go for, or uh, assault on attack. So you have all these players making their way towards the roof. You want to drone in, go for a top-down clear. My biggest concern right now is you're going to drone to make sure there's not immediate utility, but you can't drone too far in advance. You're going to be losing your drone and losing the ability to capture that intel. The second option that you have is you have Italian Mafia on that buck. You should be trying to go down to the second floor, get a good roam clear, try to stop any rotates down. Of course, you have the balcony you can jump over. But going for a lot of vertical play with the buck or even trying to have a nade prepped or the ash to blow up the floor of cocktail to displace the attackers as much and cause uh, a rotation frenzy into the unwelcoming arms of the attacker. That's what I call textbook for this site and exactly what I'd like to see from Drexel Dragons if that seems like a, it's in the realm of possibilities for the round. Yeah, exactly. I would agree with that assessment. They, they're trying to play this more aggressively and i like this use again of the soulless right you're, you're almost playing it like a pulse but different um the downside is you keep pushing down those stairs and you are eventually going to get isolated i mean essentially italian mafia does have a cutoff here if they choose to use it there by the way are those uh keep barricades i was talking about you can see how a zombie has just kind of restructured the area up in christmas to their liking but it's emporium who gets the first kill there was hunting for it for a while and then the senate jumps in and finds Trob with the shotgun. Nasty little peak hole there coming out of the humidor to just go ahead and murk one of them as soon as they drop in. Kind of, it looks like waiting for somebody else to take the plunge here as well. But most of the members of Drexel who are still alive, I think are already kind of in the building at this stage. Probably won't fall for that same trick again. I imagine they sussed it out pretty much immediately. Let's see what Italian Mafia can do down here near Pillars. Pulls off early. Emporium still operating mostly unmarked, but Reliable will come back and get the kill, and Brain Axe is down as well. Yeah, not looking very good for the attackers. They weren't able to isolate, but ha! finally Italian Mafia is going to be able to get that refrag. But a little bit... Not too little too late, Corbeck, as we have 20 seconds to go in this round. Finally, Buck is below in reading room, allowed to do some of that vertical pressure. But with 13 seconds, neither of these players, even though you're a three speed or in the five speed Ash, would not be able to make it up with enough time to clear sight and plant. And this first round is going to go the way of Lebanon Valley, increasing the consecutive rounds they have won against Drexel to, if my math is correct, which it rarely is, uh, I believe that's going to bring it to five or six straight rounds. Not bad. Not bad at all. Looking forward to round two. I imagine, yes, it will be down to kitchen service, kitchen cooking for the next setup here. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm interested to see what Lebanon Valley, just because we haven't seen them. So I, I don't know if they prefer certain things on defense, but I do mm -hmm. really like this defensive setup. You again, you have Emporium making another appearance on the Solus. Uh, you've got, you know, Senate bringing in the Kaid. So you do have some hard breach denial. Oryx, that's a choice I think you can kind of take or leave in a lineup like this, but he's never a bad pick necessarily, especially on a map which does have a lot of verticality like Cafe. I mean, that's the reason why operators like Solus have an advantage here, right? This is a very vertically oriented map. You are playing it almost always top down, including when you attack the first floor. I say almost always, uh, Binks, because every once in a while, a once in a blue moon, you do see a team try and come at this 
horizontally, maybe straight through bakery. Sometimes they attack the freezer wall. I do not think that is what Drexel is showing us here with their setup. It actually looks pretty stereotypical of a team that's going to try and come from the top. The only big differential here is that Brainax is playing a Thermite. I feel like usually you would want to see maybe somebody play a Hibana here just because opening hatches will be easier with the Hib, but whatever, you can make this work too. Yeah, you do have the can openers that Italian Mafia brings along with the buck, and that could work out uh, wonderfully for the attackers. But another thing that uh, when we talk about this cookie cutter is the reason why you go top down on Cafe is, yes, you mentioned the verticality, but because there's three main rotates up to second floor, only two rotates up towards the top floor. So it makes it a lot easier to go top down, clearing any defender that you can. And as far as hatches going down to the first floor, I believe there's only the one inside of dining room, which takes you all the way down into freezer, which is site, which means on a first floor, um, retake you have some of these second floor hatches to use but the moment you try to go down to first floor you only have those three stairs and those are the um, contention points so as long as the attackers lock that down with either a uh, nomad or a gridlock uh, you can see a lot of different abilities there but it all comes down to an effective drone game early on which is going to be hindered heavily on cafe by the fact that both jackal and ayana are banned you're relegated to using an IQ and your drones. There's not too much variability here. And you're starting to see that very clearly as we have two players on white stairs. They have yet to be cleared. Throb just moments away from pushing them over inside of reading room. But this first interaction, first gunfight is going to be happening around 1.30. And it won't even come into fruition because of the amount of time to rotate and the possible lack of information. It's interesting, actually, Trob on the IQ, probably a pick specifically looking for that Solus, right? Like, that would at least be my mm -hmm. thought process right there. That said, I mean, they, as you kind of pointed out, they didn't handle either of those roamers. So you're going to have to kind of constantly be on watch that one of them doesn't creep up the staircases and go for a kill here. And I mean, that's a bit rough for these players who are trying to make all this verticality happen because you genuinely can't feel safe ever, you know? Uh, and Plexios, I mean, he's above. I don't think they even realize that Plexios is above them, much less that Emporium could be coming back down on top of him. Let's find out because Plexio should be able to secure one kill, goes and looks for the second. Won't find that either, but a bad, bad moment here for Lebanon Valley as suddenly they lose two bodies in the fury of the firefight. Now you're down to a 3v4. Yeah, that was a great play. We saw the Thermite of Brain Axe actually get the hatch. That way they didn't have to get the Kaid Electro Claw that they saw on it. They opted to just blow the Thermite Charge next to it, which is a very good play and the only device in the game that you can do that with perhaps the Selma Breaching Charges. But that's just not worth it at that point or even to take Maverick. Regardless, Emporium is going to drop into Fireplace. They came from up top, drop to get a double kill. He's, he takes out the Senate. Ryguy also to fall to Reliable. Diffuser will be planted. Triple kill from Throb. They're going to sprint right on his site. Meanwhile, Emporium is going to get their double kill. It's going to be ring around the Rosie now as Emporium's made their way towards the case. Opting to stick it. Good run, sprint, and cancel. This gives Emporium a little bit of a hint at where the IQ could be. Just trying to bait things out. Swinging out. And Woo. the patience of the IQ of Throb is going to pay dividends as Drexel is going to even things out one-to-one. -one. Well, well, well. What a good late round play there by Trob, to be honest. Did not get caught by the bait twice managed to hold off on the bait uh which is really really good uh because it's very easy to get caught by that didn't get faked out played the 1v1 super well the ring around the rosy as you called it came swinging back on the other side got the job done and you love to see it Binks. you do actually genuinely love to see it a good matchup right there but again i will add what was it that made that so much more difficult for uh, Drexel at the end of the day? It was not having a mark on the two roamers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, that really hindered their attack onto site. And I, I do think it largely came down to the attacker bans. It makes clearing a lot harder. But... At the same time, that Nomad that we see picked by Ducks right now was not selected. They opted for the IQ instead, and that could have been to try to find Util and shoot it uh, through the floor on a very destructible site. Uh, in the end, it did obviously work out, and it was the IQ that stayed alive to the very end, so I can't criticize that pick too, too much. Um, 
but I do feel there was an easier way. I think Gridlock in this scenario might actually be better than the Nomad. Um, essentially because you can still, you, you'll create a route and... Um, of course, it's very hard to work through a nomad. I see, I see nomads, uh, or sorry, I see gridlocks tracks. I don't want to go that way. I think a gridlock mm -hmm. scares me more than a nomad does. That's interesting. I think, I think part of the advantage of the so the nomad over the gridlock. I think one of the big advantages there is the ability to kind of hide those air jabs a little bit better. I mean, the, the tracks are very noticeable, um, as you say, right? You see them and you're afraid. Um, they're very noticeable, and as a result, it makes it quite easy for, for someone to kind of deal with them, shoot them out. If you have a silence gun as well, I mean, it's just not going to be a huge problem for you. But it makes uh, a to lot of noise. Them. It does make a... Well, even a silence gun, yeah, I guess if they're breaking... No, it's not even bing, the silence. It's the breaking the tracks. The noise of breaking the tracks is a very, very audible, and you can hear yeah. that from... All, if you're hiding around a corner... Uh, of course, you're not going to have the vulnerability that an air jab creates. Right, you don't but get it's the, the paranoia, stun, right? Yeah, I mean, I totally understand. I, I get where you're coming from, but I do, I do think the the stun is what I would uh, is kind of the the make or break, right? The stun mm -hmm. and the ability to position them a little bit better are the two things that I think make the real difference there. And and obviously the three speed operator and the guns and what have you, but. Um, you know, I love Gridlock. I think she's a great operator. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with them taking Gritty here either. I think actually on this site, a Gritty is an excellent choice. It's going to require them to get on the bomb site, though, before I think those tracks become super valuable. But in terms of shutting down Red Stair that you see right here and the White Stairs on the other side, yeah, Gridlock will do that for you uh, nine times out of ten. Yeah. I think it just comes down to the fact that you're much more of a calmer Rainbow Six player. Six, Rainbow Six player. I get hit by an air jab, I'll panic, but after I've hit it, I know, okay, I'm good. Um, gridlock is just, I feel like it's impending doom, and I think uh, I'm just not very calm when it comes to things like that. If you're wondering what Oryx is doing, I, I thought they were going to go for a dash no. out of the barricade, but I stand corrected as it's just going to be a bit of a paranoia tactic. And you're probably wondering, the site's downstairs. They're once again all the way up on roof. That's because how easy it is to clear down. But um, Emporium's going to make me look absolutely silly. Is the Gridlock, uh, probably one of the best picks you can get there besides the Thermite, uh, is going to fall. And I, I, I'm very curious to why it was Ducks peeking out. It could have been a very unexpected pick. Mm. But they, they seem like they should be on the flex to support side more than anything. But I digress, as Lebanon Valley is really getting aggressive on this roam. Yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate that all our uh, gritty chat was rendered mute right there at the very start. <laughs> My <laughs> duck's just getting decapitated, but that's uh, that's the way it is sometimes. So, uh, like Italian Mafia penetrating deep in here, but he does not have any drone support, so that could be a little problematic. I think Emporium is waiting down there, and obviously you still have uh the davies on the oryx just kind of in the wild plexios is also up here i didn't realize that well this is an awkward position for italian mafia to be in with no intel I'm just gonna slow swing that i'm not sure how he figured that out he got the barest sight of a pixel right there but plexios not at all deterred goes ahead and secures the kill and now it's left to Wi-Fi guy to try and wrestle their way through this top floor not knowing probably by the way that the trade is enabled as well Wi-Fi guy is going to go for the swing Pletsios cool as a cucumber up there in the cocktail bar goes ahead and wax the next guy who walks through as well and that just leaves Trob now and Brain Axe Brain Axe I mean he'll go ahead and get one he's coming the opposite direction to test the metal of the man behind the bar, and he will win Ooh. that gunfight. Plexios goes down, and uh, well, he paid dearly for the honor of winning, and now they have a uh, mighty prospect ahead of them because Brain Axe is done. Yeah, very interesting round. Wasn't expecting that one uh, to to happen. I didn't. I didn't expect more of a final push, but ultimately, it did result in the two kills. And and had Brain Axe not been lit up so much, I could have seen more of a round. Um, but the Rob is just basically stuck without many options. Should be able to swing, catch the orcs on the rotate down. 
and 10 seconds ago and it really feels like that I, I don't know if you know the video of the guy that just keeps walking around and slapping everyone and nobody can do anything and that's what it felt like with the cap can there just walking around slapping everyone that got in his way and winning <laughs> essentially shut down the push of drexel and won the put uh, the, the round for his team well lebanon valley Cleaning up a little bit right there, right? They 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 had their they had their off round, then they had their uh, their very good round right there, and a lot of credit for that going to Plexios, of course, who did uh, have nerves of steel up there in the cocktail lounge and patience as well. Such mm -hmm. patience. I mean, so many players I think would have been tempted to get really aggressive on some of those swings and thought of Peeker's advantage, you know, uh, and instead, no, just waited and collected uh, as they came to him. Back up to the third floor we go, speaking of the cocktail bar, and it will be something similar to what they ran last time, uh, slight variations here. Emporium coming out, not the, not on the soul list this time, but rather on the pulse. So from reading machines to reading heartbeats uh, in the blink of an eye, we'll see if they get more value out of the pulse. I honestly think that the soul list probably is better, um, but it, you can definitely do some fun stuff with pulse here as well. Yeah, we're both of them can see where it's going to be planted. Um, I, I I miss some of this old meta of <laughs> just really going and setting up with two players hidden downstairs in some scenarios, with the only intention of oh no, don't get the early round frag. Just we'll wait till late round, and you just deny the plant. That's all we need from you. Uh, I always found that very entertaining as it came down to the wire and. Uh, just a lot of cold calculations. You can see clutch ups. I feel like it, it, it's the equivalent to those late round echo denials and those 1v4s. I think everyone uh, misses those types of crazy plays. And of course, they still happen, but uh, they, they, I think this is exactly why they've opted for the pulse. They could go for the run out if they wanted. Emporium's just going to be able to feed mass amounts of information to their team. If they're all the way up on the third floor hatch and they look directly below it or inside of. Um, train museum then they have a lot of great options but i, I digress as it, it appears that oh we might actually have a run out jumped out not expecting emporium and gets a great kill onto the cappy tau of throb as they rotate right back into the bottom of white stairs and thanks to that cookie cutter setup it looks like no one is there ready to greet him told you you could do some fun stuff with pulse <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't lying. Uh, that's not necessarily what I expected, to be fair, but it was well played nonetheless. And yeah, if uh, if Drexel isn't ready for it, man, you can get Assassin's Creed in real easy out of those windows on Cafe, case in point. Um, anyway, five to four, now the case here. And uh, Drexel probably wondering what to do. And this is a good little test of resiliency, because I feel like when you get kills like that, you're kind of, as a team, a little flabbergasted, and you sort of have to overcome but brain axe he's not showing any hesitation at all full speed ahead here on the sledge comes out swinging the ying candela goes in and that's a common sight for anybody who has ever played with the ying in any sort of unranked game mode as brain axe gets another kill and more candelas and smokes and everything that can visually clutter up the screen comes sailing in and they are gonna go for the plant love this angle from rifi guy here as well and continues to be a very aggressive play from brain axe who adds another one to the top Total. Finally, his rampage is stopped, but it does feel like maybe a little bit too little too late for Lebanon Valley. I want you to look at this. Now, of course, Lebanon Valley doesn't have many options. You have the repel. You had the buck down below ready to breach up towards the diffuser the moment they heard it. And of course, you had that hatch drop, but that gives a free audio cue to whoever is down below. I am a huge fan of that post plant setup from Drexel as it gave them so many different options and it shows a great depth and understanding into this map. And Corbic, we have to talk about that huge play from Brain Axe, the way they were able to make their way into heaven basically and clear and such a clean headshot to initiate that entire push, netting them a total of three kills and cutting the entire site in half. Mm, indeed, yeah, no, that was really, really well handled, honestly. Uh, and I liked to the 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 way in which they used the sledge and the way they which they used brain axe in general where he was just sort of the aggressor there like they just kind of let him loose and he was causing so much havoc that it sort of set up the rest of the team to make those moves it was a good like point to sort of break the the tension the surface tension of the site right there 
Um, and a well, well-deserved round win for Drexel. We'll see if they can repeat the feat again, because Lebanon Valley is going right back up here, and with a relatively similar lineup this time again, Davies coming in on the Oryx. I don't think we saw that last time. Emporium will stick with the Pulse. I don't think Emporium is going to be able to pull that same stunt again, though certainly he's prepping some windows for it. But uh, it'll be a it'll be an ambitious run out to say the least because they've got to be looking for it this time. I had a lost Binks here for a second. Very sorry. I'm having a bit of trouble with my my microphone. I've been trying to balance the levels, and I think I turned it off again. So ah, I, I, well, thank you very much, Corvick. Because like, the problem is you give me so much time and I, I, I start talking and I'm like, well, oh, I think he likes my point. He's just letting me go on and on and on. But nope, nobody can hear me and I'm talking myself in an empty studio. It's, it's amazing. Um, but as I was saying before anyone could actually hear me, uh, I think they, the, all the holes are made more as a mental uh, deterrent because you, the moment you see that they're prepped, you're going to go and try to clear there even if there's no one playing down below or you're going to constantly be fearful of that run out. And I think that the mental deterrent there is enough to force Drexel to possibly use all of their utility in places that it doesn't need to be, uh, especially on this final round of uh, attack. It, it, it makes no, it, there's no reason for Lebanon Valley not to try to use what they have uh, conditioned their opponent into. Hmm. That's a very fair point. And, uh, I think this is interesting. They're trying it a little bit differently this time. Brainax is actually coming in from below. Just gave away his position here. I don't think he has any idea that he's so close to the enemy as it were. Right by guy actually picking up a kill. Brainax nearly wins that gunfight. Good trade by Italian Mafia. Way to be in the right place at the right time. Love the comms that are happening right there. Now let's see if Plexios can get a cheeky little kill. Quick peel back there to avoid those flashbangs, but it's Trob who finds one. Italian Mafia gets the other one, and Drexel is all over. Lebanon Valley here on this third floor site. This has not gone well for Drexel at all. Just as bad as last time, if not worse, honestly, because the kills are far more distributed. Reliable trying to live up to the name, hits the bricks and doubles back down. White pops up, looks for the kill, won't find it. Candela goes off in his face. He does have Italian Mafia down, but he doesn't have a beat on Rifi Guy who swings out and finishes him off. And okay, uh, Bings, I'll be honest, with you if you're uh lvc i do not think do not think you ever want to go back to that bomb site ever again <laughs> no no that, that we saw very clearly that drexel has more than one way to attack the top floor of cafe and that they are very comfortable doing it and uh, should we see them go on to the finals i don't see this being a map that they're going to be allowed to play on with that being said i think it's very worth mentioning that this entire match has uh, been very, very close, just taking the lead on the half. I'm interested to see how they do on the defensive end. And last time, Drexel did go up 5-2, I want to say either 2, or I'm, a, I, I'm pretty sure it was 3 before LVC completely came back. So, of course, that's definitely in the back of Drexel's mind where they know we have what it takes to beat this team. We just have to make sure that we beat them before they can ramp up enough during this map uh, to, to take us out. And I think that's going to be a very pivotal point. Um, but let's look a little bit at the lineup that we have coming from LBC, where we see that Reliable is switching over to play the Nook, which is a very curious pick. Um, I don't know how much I like it because it, it really feels like it um, hinders almost some of the uh, the capabilities that other attackers take and the the silent roam doesn't feel too prominent mm. yeah yeah it's, it's valid valid thoughts i'm still trying to figure puzzle out here why we why we see i i combined Mark. figure and a puzzle there for a second i'm trying to puzzle out why we keep seeing warden so much uh I mean, okay, I don't want to hate on Warden. I actually really like Warden. Yeah. I, I dressed up as Warden for a Halloween broadcast once. I just don't see why he's being brought so frequently here today. 
I mean, I guess there maybe are some other operators who wouldn't fit in that slot. You're worried about perhaps flash grenades or, or what have you. It just seems like we've seen an awful lot of them. Uh, when, you know, Alibi, for example, exists and would be a really valuable pick even on this bomb site um, where you're kind of, you know, on the ground floor. Irregardless, though, back to kind of the action at hand. Curious to see what Reliable is actually capable of doing with this Nook, right? But for a while, Nook was sort of everywhere, and we haven't seen a ton of her today, though she's still very effective. The FMG uh, 9 nerfs, I think, are what kind of put her back a little bit. But if you can control the recoil on that gun, she is still an absolute terrifying fragger. Also worth pointing out here, Banks, such a passive defense from Drexel. Like, mm -hmm. really, really passive. They're not challenging any of these floors whatsoever. But look at how much time they've burnt. LVC is at the minute 20 mark, and boom, there's your first sign of destruction. So yes, that is a full minute before they have to essentially go right on into sight, uh, which gives a lot of time for them to displace Drexel. But this also gives them for Drexel a lot of time to really pounce on them and right now a safe haven is going to be bakery as well as red stairs so they should be able to rotate and really pressure their opponent as they move towards the site you have the freezer hatch which is open which could easily be a route and maybe this is why the warden is being played and we can die we can digest that a little bit in between rounds but it, it seems intentionally slow. You have a hole inside a freezer uh, as a clear sign that the retake might be the um, opted angle to, to, to choose. So 30 seconds to go, still a 5v5. And this is probably one of my favorites because as the earliest sign of chaos, it is a 5v5 with 30 seconds remaining. Davis is going to start cleaning towards the VIP. There's going to be a down over there, though, as we're going to have our first trade. Davis is going to go down, and there's an absolute flurry of red and blue all equaling out with a 2v3. Plexios next to fall to Brainax, and it's all left up to Davis. Davis has made their way towards white. They don't have a clear and obvious way into sight and this round's gonna go the way of Drexel all from holding out and turtling and having a great understanding of the angles that they hold as well as possess that's Drexel are going up four to two and here's the notorious timeout from Lebanon Valley just a uh, time in it you mentioned timeout it's all about time man it's just time. time a brief a brief history of time here but uh it's it's the issue becomes that time genuinely is a sort of six defender and that's exactly what happened in that mm -hmm. scenario right it totally bit them uh they took way too long to get set up and i don't feel comfortable saying that drexel did that on purpose that they were hoping that their opponents would like second guess themselves and that would lead to a really slow kind of top down clear uh to get them to that point but it did kind of work out that way um for what it's worth that said though yeah not not what i would consider to be mm. a uh <laughs> a, a wise or advisable strategy all the time in fact i'm actually a little surprised that LVC wasn't able to make more of the space that they had right there. Uh, it, all things being what they were. I mean, gosh, Drexel gave them everything. It they gave them two thirds of the map for free. It's exactly what we've seen in previous maps. LVC has been afraid to take that risk, make those risky, risky plays. Mm. Um, and I think that's what we're starting to see. And you mentioned time and the number one operator that tells us the time every single time is Warden with his fancy smartwatch. Uh, I want to give you my take on why he's been so prominent in these rounds. <laughs> First of all, MPX is very manageable. It might be a pea shooter, but for these yeah. players that don't want to have high recoil while having a magnified gun on defense, Warden with a 1.5 scope, MPX is great. Not to mention the fact I think he has the choice between a C4 and a shield. And of course, those shields are a very good thing to have. Of course, in this position, well, I keep hitting my mic. Um, I probably would have opted to take the frost because you get that same 1.5 as well as the traps that come along with it. But look at this. Drexel, what I think they started doing is prepping for what they did to LVC, and that was in the form of the Ying. That's the main way. Ying pushed on with smokes as well as flashes, and they want to make sure that they're ready to stop the push that they used to beat LVC. And I feel like that's the direct psychology uh, rooted in this uh, in this Drexel Dragons Italian Mafia Warden pick, where that should directly counter the Capitao and Ying. 
So even though they took it last round, that's and as well as the Senate with his flashes, it seems like now that this utility is on the board, Drexel has a great ability to stop it. And uh, more importantly, they're also getting that util of the deployable shield and not the best gun, but a manageable one. Hmm. I mean, I'm looking at this lineup and I, I see a glaring problem, which is there's... No, 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 no. I agree with what you're saying on the on the warden. I was just looking at this lineup. My home was more related to the fact that um, the Senate is playing Flores and should theoretically be able to trash the entire defensive setup of Drexel because they have really nothing that can deal with it, honestly. Um, that said, Drexel going for kind of a, or I should say Lebanon Valley, going for kind of an interesting take here. A uh, very cocktail side, which is not something we always see. And Plexios, they're kind of trying to use him as, like, the tip of the spear, much like we saw something done with, uh, I believe it was Brain Axe on the other side. Curious mm -hmm. to see how this works out, because I feel like the cocktail side of third floor is where attacks go to die. I, it just it never works out the way you want it to. And I don't think they're taking full advantage of the fact that they have Senate and those Rateros by focusing on this side, because they probably already could have gotten through, cleared out Pixel, uh, and been pushing their way into White Hallway and the bomb site, but instead we're gonna play these peekaboo games around the cocktail bar, and there's your first kill, Emporium, taken out by the aforementioned uh, Italian Mafia on Warden. Yeah, there's the first Ying Candela, your Warden's glance, smart glasses being activated as Plexios makes their way up. We could easily see a good spray. Brain Axe to get that first kill, spraying out from the. You thought the Warden was getting it, but no, Dux is also there to collect on their frags. Second Ying Candela being thrown out. Warden's smart glasses were not activated readily and right away, but they will be able to use to great effect. And there's going to be two more frags favoring the attackers now. Or sorry, favoring the defenders now. Sloan on the attack is going to be the Senate with two explosives drones at their disposal three flashes in 50 seconds so a lot of time to work with mafia lit up to a single sliver of hp but they don't have much information on where their opponents are going to be sitting they have hatch drops available are going to opt to go for at least one of them but this limited information is definitely going to come back to bite moving their way slowly they're going to hit by this malusi trap lots of information being spelled out spray out there goes rifi guy two more defenders to find you have Italian Mafia getting hit by a second charge. Now, this could be a shot from down below. We could see that sort of option. Just continuing to swing slowly. They know where Case is. So you just have to play to stop this plant. 10 seconds to go. Going for in a very obscure plant spot. Five seconds behind the bar. Spotted out by Traub. And that's going to be a great round for Drexel as they go on to match point here on match number nine of the Cuz Town University land. Well, okay, match point it is. Drexel locking it down on Cafe, trying to bring it home here in Lebanon Valley, who have played so well all day, just not able to muster what they need here uh, against this Drexel side, who honestly have put up convincing performances on both sides of the ball. Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna do anything, I mean, this is the time for mm -hmm. LVC. Defenders, so we'll see what they can possibly bring down. to the table here in this sort of desperation straits. The bomb site, Binks, is not a favorable one. I will say that this is not a great bomb site for defenders. There's a reason that this bomb is the tertiary site. Defenders. That does, I think, give more of an opening here to Lebanon Valley College than anything else. I just, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it feels a bit rough for LVC right now. They do kind of appear to be a team that sort of, I think, feels like they're getting beat, if you know what I mean. Uh, they just, yeah. there seems to be a certain lack of, like, snap in their play right now, and it's really hard to come back from that, especially if you've been playing your brains out all day, and you get to this point, and you're just kind of like, oh my god, we're down three, you know, it's match point. Can you reach deep down inside yourself and, and find the motivation to, to kind of power through? Yeah, it must. Say, it was also that off and on mentality where Drexel has been able to stay fresh all day. Meanwhile, LVC they won their first matchup against Drexel when they were fresh, and then they had to stop for a long while before they got a chance to play again against the against Custown. Of course, that resulting in a very narrow loss and a quick spray drop to get the opening kill on Jim here in Porium. Sorry. That's a huge opening frag, an unexpected one. Of course, we had the outlines, but that's also a much harder frag for Trob to get. And can we even talk about quickly 
just the sheer fact that Trob is 10 and 2 right now. And we have Brainax 7 and 6, Italian Mafia 7 and 4. And it, it means Rifi, who we've seen frag out in the past, has not had to, as two more explosive frags are going to erupt as Rifi is going to find their respective frag. And it's all left up to the Senate and Daves. So they have a few different options here. We have Amaru getting ready to just spring and just head right on into sight. I don't know if I trust this one. An aggressive shot. They see that the Gara hook was out. They're going to have to switch back. But they've got the Supernova suppressed shotgun looking towards white. We're going to see the flashes slowly ah. start to ring out. Barricade broken. Oh. Shot right by white stairs. Now down to a 1v5 and an absolute dream from Davies. All oh, the five players of Drexel getting ready to send themselves to the finals. Spraying out. Nothing going to come into fruition there. Davies going to have to rotate all the way back to back alley. Playing around the ice cream truck. A call that I have not had to make in a very, very long time. As they are holding on to anything. Hoping for aggression from the Drexel Dragons. Mercy even at this point. As Drexel has dominated here on Cafe. And then it does not look to be a repeat of what we saw earlier on in the day. As Drexel has warmed up. And the Drexel Dragons are breathing absolute fire, Corbick. Yeah, Davies. I mean, he just wants to just wants to get some sort of majestic one v five clutch, but I just don't think it's in the offing. And instead of a kind of decisive finish, wow. Well, never mind. I spoke too soon. <laughs> Brainax just swings the corner, hits him with the Mossberg. He believes in the power of the shot. He it rewards his devotion. And a beautiful map, by the way, by Brainax, who was an who was a player who didn't come up a lot in a lot of our other Drexel games he was playing off the chain right there definitely came in clutch for his team when they needed it a really 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 impressive map for drexel and they continue to live here at the guts down land yeah they've been through every single round of the losers bracket showing that they're a fire that is not ready to go out and we can just highlight our first map in cincinnati six to two seven to five loss to lvc earlier on in the day and that was a devastating one to watch do you start drexel narrowly losing each one of those encounters then down to the losers around one they had a great and dominant win against west virginia only dropping a single round then against robert morris a lot closer in that one as they narrowly won that four to six and of course our six to two dominant win over lbc sends them to the finals against your host cutstown university so really looking and shaping up to be a great finals as these two teams have yet to face off in this land environment so it's looking to be very very explosive and i'm really looking forward to see if the dragons are able to continue to ramp up and rise to the occasion yeah, it's got all the hallmarks of being a pretty interesting game. I mean, Cutsdown has played a lot as well, right? They're another team that has been in it to win it this entire time. So I'll be fascinated to see how they match up, whether Drexel can maintain the kind of tempo and the, and the experience that they were playing with on that cafe map and bring it to this final match of the day. But on that note, that is going to be it for myself, Binks, as well as Corbett. You can see our Twitter ads down below if you guys want to drop a follow or connect with us. Uh, I'm always happy to share my opinions on the map and give little tweets and critiques that I, I don't have time to go into here. And I'm sure the same can be said for Corbett. We just absolutely love the game, but it has been absolutely amazing to come to you from the Custom Land. And we're looking forward to seeing these, these finals play out. And you're going to have uh, Giddy and Whip It just to give you guys an absolutely amazing show. So don't go anywhere. The finals are going to be on very, very soon. What's up, everybody? I'm Tom Z. I'm captain of IGL for uh, Kutztown University, and we are now locked into the finals against the winner of Drexel versus LVC. Uh, we just came off of a win against LVC on border. It was a 7-3 for my team. Uh, looking forward to the final, of course, obviously, uh, a lot of players get like the nerves having been here and being bridesmaids last year. It just makes myself and my team more hungry to win. 
uh, just have that have that mental that these other teams might not bring. We're comfortable with playing either school. We've played Drexel a million times. We've scrimmed them a million times. And having just beat LVC, that gives us confidence. We know how to counter both teams. So I'm hoping uh, this game, this uh, loser bracket game, is a lot of fun for Drexel and LVC because whoever we play in finals is getting smoked. Welcome back in everyone to the Kutstone land. My name is Gibson. I am joined, unfortunately, as always, by Whippet Cast. Whippet, this is it. This is final time. We've had some excellent siege on showing tonight, but there's just one more game to go. Well, to be honest, what more do you want? One more game. One more brilliant game, Whippet, of course, was I muted. Made a, I made a joke about this before we went live. Like, oh, I went, I, I, I thought, I, went, I said I said to everyone in production, oh, I'll mute myself on Vmix before we go live. I didn't actually, I muted myself on my audio mixer. And I was actually muted on Vmix the entire time. <laughs> Professional. This guy, by the way, is, is, is cast at S-tier events, but I just want to put that out there. And he is cast at last chance qualifiers on Siege Main. We're here at Kutstown for this LAN and whip it. It is the home team, you know, Kutstown Esports. They did, may have spiked every other team to get to the final, but they're here nonetheless. They're taking on Drexel University, the Dragons, and what has been a pretty good run by both of these sides. But in a moment, we're going to look at that Drexel roster. And they've bounced back pretty well, but haven't they, from that earlier defeat? They have, I mean, this is a run from lower bracket, and this is always the most interesting aspect to, to a double elimination bracket. To me, is how the team from lower bracket is able to recover from that early loss and make a run through. They've played the most number of games anyone's played here today. They have been through the ringer. Now, does that mean you're going to come into this game warmed up and ready? Or is fatigue going to be a factor? Yes, we've only played best of ones, but it's still a lot of siege they've managed to play all day. It's a lot of seeds, it's a long day, and the concentration will be key going into this last one. Well, I, I just can't get over Italian Mafia staring at me behind Rai Fi's <laughs> it's, shoulders. It's such a... It's, it's such a it's, it, the, the, both those pictures back to back, it's just beautiful, right? He's yeah. like, he's honestly glaring over the shoulder, and then the moustache just makes it absolutely perfect. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I just, I'm jealous. I'm a little bit jealous, but we're going to look at our home side roster now too, and... They've had a pretty good one-two punch going on all day between Thunday and Tribune. And they'll be looking to dip into that well one more time. But I'm going to show some love to Golden this time. But Golden, especially on the last map on defense playing Oryx, he popped up in the mid-round a couple of times and got some vitally important kills that drove them to a victory. It's always important to have that player that can find those key moments in that mid to late stage. And Golden has been that. Like, as you said, on that Oryx play, Oryx play was able to have that huge impact. But I'm always going to lean into this one. Tribune and Thundee have had a massive day so far. They've got one more game to get it over the line. Can they continue that? But one little stat line, of course, we're talking about is, is I Tribune seems to be better on low HP. Mm -hmm. The curse of his. A curse or a blessing? I don't know. Either way, he has popped off. This is the final. This is how these teams got there. It's been pretty much untouchable for Kutstown as they have won... 18 rounds so far, and they've only dropped three rounds so far, all tournament long. Drexel University, of course, they won the first game against Cincinnati, then they lost to Lebanon College, and then they beat them in the rematch 6-2 in the last map you saw, which brings us back now to the final. But before we talk about the finals one last time, let's show a bit of love to Lebanon Valley College, Robert Morris University, the University of Cincinnati, West Virginia, Wesleyan College, and I think that's I think that's everybody. I think we got everybody in that one. Show a bit of love to the teams that have that have gone by. That was brave. That that was a lot of syllables back to back. I wouldn't have been able to say that one. That would have that's you know what, give you a round of applause for you as well on that one. But of course, I mean teams, everyone came out here, put on a good showing, and it's been a great day. Siege, I've loved every single single second I get to watch from the back end, or I'm getting cast as well. Gibby. We've had a great day. We've got one more game. What do you want from this final? What do I want? I want to see action, which I, and I'm going to go into more depth now because it is a very vague answer, but I want to see a lot of the early game aggression that we've seen from Kutstown all day long. But 
It's a fun one because you've got a team like Kutstown who are hyper aggressive in the early round. We've seen it before. They spawn peak. They look for early picks. Taking on a team in Drexel. Drexel, my, my throat just went for a second, but they're a team who every single round they play, win or lose, it comes down to the last 20 seconds. So stylistically, we've got a very interesting match that's coming up right now. And I want to see how that plays out. You know, what happens if Kutstown get an early pick? Does it put Drexel off schedule? Does it cause them problems in the late game? And vice versa, if Kutstown don't get the early pick, how will that affect them and their play style? Because you feel like going into the later rounds, that's when Drexel are strongest. The thing about this when I look at this stylistically is the Kutstown have been very good at just being able to be strategic in how they played it. Mm. I, mean, I refer to it as, as, as kind of that prime SSG style of how they play it, right? where they were able to go into the map and be risk adverse and not taking gambles and are going in step by step, doing it all by the book. That's how they played on Border in particular. If they can do that again, it's a recipe for success. The big issue is they've done, they played like that all day. If you know about this and you can get a map that suits the style, you can be disruptive to this. If you mm -hmm. get in aggressive and get in their face very, very early, especially on your defense, that's going to cause Cookson a lot of problems in my opinion. And especially if you can find the star players. If you can find Tribune or you can find Thunday very, very early, you leave a team already fighting on the back foot. So that would be an imperative statement, I think, for your opposition here. Just to be able to go in and try and find and try and take the fight early as you can. Early fights is going to be the key in this one. Any players in particular that you're looking to see them go head to head in this next coming matchup? It's a, diff it's a difficult one to, to pick a head to head out. Uh, for this one, I want to see what Tribune can do. I want to, I want to see what what we can see numbers wise get pumped out again. It being one of those, it's easy to put that kind of asterisk on on those performances when you have 14 and six, nine and zero, another 14 plus kill game on border, and then now we're stepping into our final. Has been on fire today. Does that fire keep burning? Have we seen the brightest yet, or will it begin to dwindle and go to embers in this one? That's the big thing for me again. Fatigue is a factor in this one. They played less games, so you'd imagine they should have a little bit of legs left in them. That's why I love finals, because especially when you have this best of one, you just don't know what's going to happen until we start swinging. So here's a question I'm going to ask you right now. If I told you I know what map it is, do you want oh. to know a little bit early? Give it to me. Spoil it. Spoil it. Tell me the map. We are going don't to be don't be Oregon, don't be Oregon, don't be Oregon. Skyscraper for the last map of the night. You like that? Bit, that the, do you like that? Me. That is a bit of me indeed. Skyscraper is one of those maps that I feel like it has, especially in Europe, finally kind of found its stride. Now, it's a map that regionally here in North America has been a little bit weaker for, for a lot of teams across all levels. It's not being developed. Stylistically, it doesn't suit them. Skyscraper, this is a big one. This is... Because this is a mixture of, of aggression and structure. And as well, you can't rely on cutting off rotates. There's no way to sit outside the building. You've got to get in. And I was talking about I want to see those aggressive early stage fights. Well, on this map, you can't sit outside for that long. Otherwise, you achieve nothing. You've got to get in the building. Which means you're immediately in danger from an early pick. I like this. Oh, Gibby, that's made my day. Mm -hmm. There's only one site in this whole map that you technically can sit outside of for a little bit and put some pressure on. And... To be fair, we only get one rotation on defense, so we might only see that site once or twice max. But what I like about this map is it is one that you need to get a lot of control on the inside because there's lots of opportunities for defenders to rotate up. Any map with three sets of stairs is always a fun one for defenders because you can get back in behind enemy lines. You've got a point. There's something you want to say. So you talk about a staircase. Black stairs is going to be that area that I really find exciting, right? We have seen from all levels of play, so we take the last 12 months of competitive play, this one section of the map has changed more than anything else in competitive play. From it being completely barricaded off to a rotate, to having foot level holes, head holes, and being completely soft. The options on that wall in the karaoke are the big thing. That defines how that karaoke bomb site will play out. Do you teams want to take from the office side, or do you want to focus completely on black, and how do you deal with that as a both an attacking and defending side is realistically key to that top floor. That's what excites me. It's just, it's one of those maps where that little area decides so much on one of the most critical bomb sites. If you can win your team karaoke time and time again, you're on a strong side structurally and defensively. That is where we'll see these teams. That is when we see the side swap. When we see these teams go head to head. I am very interested in how they approach this troublesome area differently. I'm excited. I can't wait. And you know what? I'm, you know the way 
sometimes you think casters start game. Casters start game. You know, what are they waffling for? Do we call out? Do we do we name and shame the player who's who's holding up the whole lobby? Can we? Can we do that, Gibby? Do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Our host for today, the guy who reached out to us asking us to cast, Tom Z is the guy who's holding up the whole show. And I see that there's a lot of people in chat showing him some love. So yeah, Tom Z, hurry up, man. The longer Tom Z takes, the more you have to listen to us waffle about why we love Skyscraper. What, but another area yes. that I love seeing gunfights in Skyscraper is in and around Dragon. That section of the map, you've got the wall, which teams like to leave soft as well, that pushes in towards Drum. That's a position up by Shrine that's very important for a defending team to hold as well, especially whenever you are attacking Karaoke Tea Room. It's just a fun map. I think Skyscraper being added to the competitive map pool, especially with the little tweaks that they made to the map, has turned it into a very good map. And it's a map that you tend to see more often on games like this. Games that aren't your regular best of ones where there's nothing on the line. Skyscraper is a map that teams like whenever they need to win. This is one of the maps though that I think is going to be a very interesting one. This is just me like going. I love a bit. I love Siege. Up the Siege, but I cannot stop thinking about this. Is this is Shallow is my favorite map, but this is my like developmental map. This is the one I think is going to be very very good in a couple of months' time with how it's going to go. Right now, it's super defense favored, especially in North America. Right, the offense really struggles to break this down. One of the moments I always go is. When we look at uh, the Japanese invitation where BDS mm -hmm. went over to APAC and they absolutely dominated. They dominated on this map and they turned the attacker favor. They lost more defenses than they won, won offenses, right? It is a huge if you can have a player who is massive on entry and can mm -hmm. just jump in, takes fights and has that confident level of aggression, they can run rampant on Skyscraper. Mm -hmm. If you have a good drone network and the ability to hold whatever cutoffs you have, which is realistically just down below on that split drop, Send it, someone sending in if one, the map gives you lots of one-on-one -on -one fights it's the way yeah. it works oh i'm excited I, I, I just too many thoughts too many words given you can you can probably sense it in me i just want, I want to get in the cast a bit of skyscraper you're excited and i can completely just understand little, it and a little bit look i'm looking forward to it as you said the map is still developing it's what you tend to see when new maps get added into the pool it takes some time for them to fully get wired on in you'll see a you know a style of defense that'll start and teams will love it and then you get the team that just works out the way to win like we know for a fact the best teams they not only look at how they play a map they study how other teams play it as well and i know for a fact that a lot of people playing this they, they like a bit of competitive siege. I know Tom Z loves watching comp. He's going to be I mean, watching all the games at SI, all the games in NAL, and I'm sure that he will feed that information through to his team. But another player that I think is going to have an impact on this one is Rifi. Rifi guy has had a very good tournament so far. <laughs> Gone under the radar sometimes, I think, as far as being the star of the show. But if you watch what he does in the game, he gets kills when he needs to, but he's an enabler. He's a great enabler for his side. And we've said it before, you can talk all you like about the flashy players, the players that have, that have a massive impact. You know, your Spoits, your Licky Facts, your Bolos. But it's the guys that work in the shadows that really allow those players to shine. On a map like this, your support play is going to be critical, right? This is where IGLs and supports are going to earn a lot of money is, is playing and dis dissecting maps like, like Sky. There's a lot of moving parts to consider. There's a lot of positions you need to think about and hope trying to hold. If you can enable your, your team, if you can enable your entries, you can enable something to happen, or you spot, or you can shot call, or make that split second decision, this map is going to be huge for you because it has openings. And it's, oh, I just, I love a bit of skyscraper. I absolutely do. It's a bit of you. It's a bit of me. It's, it's what I live for. It's what I live for. Give me. You know what, Gibby? You know when this map was implemented in Red Crow? You weren't... I don't know if you were around back then. Look, I'm 75 years old. I was around, but whether or not I was involved with the game is a different story. I played a Go 4 on the first week of Go 4 you could play on this map, and I won it. And no matter what, it is cemented... Not the Go 4, I won the map. I lost the Go 4 second round. But it is so like beautiful in my mind about how this map has changed so much, but it's got a special place... I just feel like this is, mm, 
I'm so happy. And you know what? Don't have to wait too much longer. We're time to jump on into it. Gibby! For one last time today, are you ready to go through the ban phase? I am ready. The bans today have been a little bit all over the place. We've seen Jackal removed quite a few times, but the first ban of the day will be Flores. Kutstown removing it again, and it's a ban that I think both of us agree can be a very impactful one. Those Flores drones, those Rotero drones are just cause a nightmare for defensive utility. Iana will be removed again. That's actually the second time we've seen Drexel ban out Iana as well, showing that they don't really want to deal with those clones and those nades on the other side as well. Valk will be taken out by Drexel because we know how impactful those drones can be. Whip it. That means we're going to have a very OP operator available on defense. Solus or his army. Yeah, I agree. That's, we are going to get one of them through, of course. Yeah, numbers game exists. But I would say I'm thinking this is... I'm leaning towards the Solace ban. Azami should be up here as well. Who's it going to be? Solace. Called it. I, called, I said I was leaning towards Solace, so that counts as a prediction, right? Yep. Yeah, it does. And yes. it's, it's a ban Ooh. we've seen before from Kutstown as well. You know, the Kutstown Flore, or the Flores and Solace combo, we've seen it from that side before. So we get ready to jump into round number one. This is it. This is the final. First team to hit either six or seven rounds will be the team that take victory in this event. So looking at that defensive lineup, a lot of trap operators right there. You got your frost and your cap can. You're going to get those three pog mats out there. You're going to get your cap can traps on the doors. And then you're going to rely on the bandit and the Womai to capture any utility that manages to make it through the map. And I like this. Barbecue Kitchen is going to be the first site on defense for, for Kutstown. So this, to me, screams confidence in the decision. So... Kutstown looked very, very strong. The first map that we casted them earlier today on their defense in particular, they went to Chalet and they broke down Chalet into a very difficult to solve puzzle with a lot of extensions, a lot of rotations away from the site. Here, because you know Drexel will need to take key areas of control and will be drawn in. The allure of holding that hatch inside of Geisha will summon them in. An extension all over the top floor with a good drone network, good information network, or at least awareness of what restaurant and supply look like, means you can once again spread yourself across the entire map. And I think that's exactly what they'll do. But, uh, give me. Bomb pick attempt, and Thomas very, very nearly finds the head. That would have been a huge opening pick. But give me, there's a frost. Who's it going to be? Round one, I'm going to say nobody to cast or curse it into existence. So, wait, usually with a frost mat, it's somebody like Sledge who likes to dip their toes into it nice and early. So, we'll see what happens. Of course, Kutstown missed the opportunity to get the opener as Tom went for the spawn peak. And that spawn peak that he went for as well is one that I know for a fact drives some players crazy because you're a pal on up. Well, the wire is going to show exactly where you're pushing from, and you got to keep your head on a swivel if you don't want to lose it in the early stages. And thankfully for Drexel, they managed to keep a full complement of players up. Tribune just waiting, lurking on the black stairs, trying to find a head of moment they will appear. Entrance away from office, and this is a pretty standard approach for most offensive teams. You'll walk in, you'll take the opposing side of map control, and try and brute force yourself towards it now. That drum, that shrine area, that's where this map, that's the front line of this map, and it's going to be very key to take. Tribune will get the opening pick on towards Trob, you lose that twitch, you lose the shock drones, and a very potent weapon. And a massive pick early, again, manpower is a huge advantage to hold on a map like this, and Geisha should fall reasonably soon, this angle designed to help hold on the drum control, it work both ways. Yeah, the thing is, the site is below as well, so these defenders are just being a nuisance by being up around the spot of the map, and Brian Axe is going to get the opener for Drexel. The sides had four each, and there's Duck to get one onto Thunday, as now all of a sudden Drexel have the numerical advantage. You spoke about these stairs. Well, Tribune is going to be on main stairs right now as he begins to push his way up. Tom Z picking brings us back to a three versus three as Brian X does toss the nade down the stairs. Nobody in situ, though, so that's a waste of a critical piece of defensive utility and that is the last of the needs that they have in the setup as well so no utility usable left for these attackers it's all going to be done by the barrel of the gun and golden has just made it a little bit more difficult as he has taken down brain axe with player advantage in favor of the defense now you're going to just think about playing the trade game hold your key power positions and don't really overextend that's what i'd imagine they're going to do at this stage 
25 to work with. They'll have to try and brute force their way downstairs, but again, Kirsten, you don't need to extend, and they probably won't do so. So, as Pengu loves to say, 20 seconds after the clock, diffuse in hand, what do you do? We have to find it with their guns, but I have a feeling it's just going to be a slow anticlimactic end of the round, but perhaps I speak too soon. Right by guy will find one on the Tribune. Eight seconds, the Selma will give them an opening. They might be able to stick this down, but it's going to be triple zero. Dawning, Italian Mafia is going to get one more. Could stand. Are they going to throw this away? The case goes down, triple zero. Tom's on a slither of HP, a fraction of health, no C4 to work with, and the case goes down, he gets one, and that's all he needs. He only needed one, triple zero was there, and just at the last moment, the 11th hour, he delivers and gets the opening round for Kutztown. Well, he was late for the start of the game, but he was bang on time at the end of the round to win that one for Kutztown, as that is a round one. Well, positive signs for Drexel. You said it looked like the round was done and dusted, but they fought their way back in. As you like to say, they scrapped and brawled their way into a winnable position, but the cover wasn't there. And we move on to round two. So this time we're going to go to karaoke to a more standard area of the map that we expect to see defenders play. You look at the setup they're bringing. Tribune will take the Warden to just stop teams from smoking off as they push their way in from the, the door, from the balcony towards back stairs, maybe try to make their way in. So, but here's why I ask you a question. And this is oh, where... Dear, this is scary. But this is where a lot of teams have conflicting ideas. Inside of karaoke, that wall that goes towards black stairs, some teams like to reinforce both of them. Some teams like to make a rotate. Where do you lie when it comes to that one? Because whether or not you do, it has a big impact because Osa is in play and Osa is an Gibby. operator that thrives on it when it's open. Gibby, I could write a oh. dissertation on this site, on that position alone. There's a lot that goes into this one. It's... Ugh. That's the big puzzle for a lot of teams, and there's no real right answer. It's stylistic. It's about who you're playing and how you play. And one thing I've not seen a lot of is look at how they fortify Dragon. They mm -hmm. want to hold that with an iron fist. They've locked it down. Four reinforcements and the bandit wire holding that area. That is huge. That is massive, actually. I'm very intrigued to see how that's going to influence this round. I am, and we're also seeing Finca, an operator that we haven't seen a lot of in competitive gameplay over the last few months since the, you know, the recent nerf. Do I hear a little, little whisper? I have, Gibby. A little whisper from the test server. It's you, so it's going to be loud. It's not going to be a whisper. Oh, okay, Gibby. Get ready for a lot more Finca again. That LMG with the muzzle break is very good on the test server, so just keep your eye on that for that. Are, are we going back? Oh. Boom goes the dynamite and down goes Italian Mafia. But are you telling me that we're about to get into that scary, scary Charlotte Major style again? Listen, this that's a bit of me that is, so I'm not going to complain. But well, we're for Pamba. <laughs> yeah, maybe Pam Pamba's certainly yearning for an LMG to be viable again, I'd imagine. And they tossed out. That will force, force, force the player of Minibar out. That will be Tribune, who gets caught out with the LA5. Brainax finds that, shuts him down. A minute 45 left to go, and a good entryway happened. A one-for-one -one trade. You've lost your ace, and that's not great. Not great, not terrible. Depending on how Black Surge are set up, if it's fully reinforced, that's where you get a little bit scared, but they can try and brute force their way. They think you have trouble, you're able to get one more. Thundy falls, and well, they're really trying to fight and take control of Drum back once again, but I don't think it's an advisable take to do this. I'm not sure, and you've also, look, oh, the Kutzler said you've lost Thundy and Tribune, the two players who had the biggest impact whenever we played on Border a little bit ago. Tom Z is going to drop to Ducks, which now brings us to a two versus four. Golden finds one, so it's all down to him and Atsio to hold this site down. Finca will boost, which will get all of his teammates back up to practically full HP, which will have a potential impact, but Golden, okay. That EMP... Should have removed the crosshair, but it hasn't as Trob will peek down the line. Golden, that Nomad has probably done have a favor. That sent them the great way, and Atsio finds the kill. Triggers the oh two. My. Atsio has just built different. He gets one on the Rifi guy as well, and we're into a two versus one. Dox makes it a 1v1, and we're 30 seconds on the clock. It's Dox against Golden, but who is going to leave the, go lay the golden egg at the end of this one? As he pushes now towards Barrel. No case in the back pocket. He spots him out. He goes for the peak, but Golden gets the kill. Drops down Toaster for dramatic effect. And well, 2-0 lead for Cutstone, but watching the way these rounds have played out, Whippet, it has not been a 2-0 game so far. Brave, brave decision to take that fight with the SMG-11, knowing you're up against an ARX. 
and ARX basically sends you to the grave with, a, with two shots and you decide to peek it wide. Very, very brave. Very good result. Two rounds in a row, but as you said, these have been close rounds. That one in particular, coming down to that one versus one. As you finding two, a miracle on that second arrives and gets that to a position where they can win the round. Cuts down. We thank the lucky stars for that one for thanking Azio for that huge 2k. But no, but alas, third round, bomb site rotation. We're going to go to exposition office. This is the one that raises an eyebrow to me, Gibby. This is a difficult, difficult site to hold. And remember we spoke earlier about this being a map that you kind of have to get into as a def as an attacker. This is the one site where you don't necessarily need to do it that quickly. You can play from the breach and do some work, but... I want to cast our minds back to that last map for just one second. That okay. nomad, that nomad that sent Golden in towards Shrine instead of forward towards Drum probably inadvertently had a massive impact on Kutstown winning that round. Because it took, because at that point in time, had he went the other way, Golden is taken out. Yeah, it's, it's those little. Siege is, is a beautiful game because it, it can often be a death by a thousand paper cuts and Tom is going to go for that C4 spawn peak. Will it arrive? I think the detonation was a little bit early. I think you have to wait like an extra second for it to connect with the ground. Brave attempt though. I like it. I'm always here for a little bit of technology deployment. See someone get aggressive with it. I'm here for it. You love aggression. I know you do. And it's, it's what the game's all about. End of the day, it's an FPS. I absolutely adore when teams get aggressive, get in the face of their opponents. And I like this Oster Shield up close and personal. It looks like there's going to be an extra, extra bit of tempo, a bit of speed to this. The main walls now we opened up and they've established that control. They open up the position now behind Minibar to force that power position. Now, all of this without opening that single wooden door and the opening pick. That is absolutely huge. You cleared one of the most difficult... The Difficult to clear power position, and you not need to go below to do it. You can now be direct. Palacio is going to find two. Trippy is going to get slain. No, and this brings us to a very, very rapid three versus three. That was a quick little double trade back, and now Trob was going to open up this balcony door as well. We've got a player creeping in the distance. We'll just stay hidden for a little bit longer. But you look at the operators that are in place. You got Ducks. You got Trob. You got Italian Mafia. Is Osa and Nomad. You can still take control of the site with what you have left alive, but again, no real offensive utility left on the board with it. No nades, no flashes. Again, you're you're forcing your team to win this with the barrel of their gun as opposed to their minds in this situation. The scary thing as well is there's no impacts on the defense. All these Osa shields are basically permanent fixtures. Yes, you got a C4, but that's just been used up. Fondi's going to be able to find one of the Italian Mafia. That's the Osa. Oh, that's the player behind an Osa shield now. That's your ace. Trob will try and creep forward and get control of the minibar, but the Gaia will be burning away in the distance. He can't take that control and air jab. Dent is off the distance, but Duck's next to fall. And this site begins to look a little bit impossible to break down. Throw ball alone. Can't even find one. And that's going to be a rapid conclusion. Gets on the DBNO, but 2k threes out the feed. And that is three rounds in a row for our hosts. They're looking strong here in Sky. But again, it doesn't feel like it's been a whitewash on defense from Kutztown. It's been a very, very back and forward game, but... At the end of the day, all that matters is the score on the top of your screen. And Kutstown are winning 3-0. Two more defenses left for them. And I think Drexel have made a good decision taking this timeout. Now, take it when you can still have an impact on the game. You've still got two attacks left on the board. This is a map where, as you said before, in NA is very defender favored. And because of that, Kutstown being 3-0 up, it's kind of to be expected. If they go into the split, though, 4-1 up or 5-0 up, uh, you'd start to worry for Drexel a little bit at that point. Yes, you're saying, thank you, Captain Obvious. If you're 5-0 down on your half, it's it's not a good thing, but yeah, it but is... Have, have you actually just done a Michael Owen? Look, nearly. No, because uh, I, no, actually, no. I actually have substance behind it, though. I'm going to say it is a very defender's f his favorite map. I don't know if that counts, Gibby. You have just said, if you're 5-0 down, it's not great. It's true, though. I can't really repeat is it, is that it, one. Is it a lie? <laughs> no. But no, there you go. I, uh, I can't disagree with you on this one. I, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. You know you know the way Ace and Dez, Ace is always like, do you know who the winners are? The chat. Don't say it. They're, don't they're say not. It. They are not. They have to listen to us. I, I listen to you, Gibby. Chat. I listen to you. Chat. I, I, right. 
we we know you're there. I am just going to apologize is on this, behalf of myself chat, and Whippet. Is this chat in the room with us now? <laughs> when did you start hearing from this chat individual? Right. Don't start making me think that the voices aren't real. Well, I'm in your head, mate. Of, of course. Thank, thanks, everyone, chat. We, we know. Listen, this wouldn't be the same without you guys watching at home. Home. And even if I am a figment of Gibson's imagination, I still appreciate you guys. But round number four, we shall go. Cuts down. Lead 3 0. How can they do this? Barbecue will be a sight once again. We'll go with that, that rotation. No frost this time. We can't make a prediction for that one, but who's going to walk into a cap can? S multiple people. <laughs> I see I see multiple people in the future stepping across those little laser wires. More importantly though, I see Drexel bouncing back after that timeout. It's they need to. You need to start putting a little getting the end product. You know, they've assembled every round really well up until the last ten seconds where Kutstown have simply just said no. We're we're winning this round. They are the captain now, so we move into this one. Drexel have a couple of players playing outside the building looking to find a free pick and use the Kutstown aggression against them. And it is a little change. I am noticing a change here, Whip, but compared to are how you? Drexel were playing already. We're, yeah, we're, they're we're, we're 10 seconds in. What's different? They're droning a lot more. They're trying to work out where these defenders are. They're slowing down the pace of the early stages and trying to slow down the Kutstown aggression. And Traub gets the opening pick based off of that information. And now they know there's a player inside of Geisha as well. So feed the information to the Sledge and see if Sledge can potentially pick up a freebie here as well. And Rifa is going to come under from some fire as he looks deep towards Shrine. A lot of damage taken from that as well. And this is one of the rare angles you have that acts as a cutoff on this map. And they're in sight. Okay. Right, so, Drexel have just walked in and they've taken sight. Tribute will be able to get one, but this plant's gonna go down. Three, two, one, time for a retake. You got right by guy on this cross, locks down a lot of drum, locks down terrace, locks down dragon. Trouble will be able to get one of the tribute, and this round should be for the offense. You have players vaulting outside. You don't have to worry about the retake upstairs, and this is a problem though. Trobe's gonna get slain out. Three versus three, a C4 lob that. That should be able to find one of the shot. No shot, shot, I believe. That's huge. Tom's gonna be able to get one on the right by guy. And now, the advantage of the defense, they can try and play for trades. Send two bodies out here if you win the fight above. This could be huge, Gibby. There's a chance for this one. And Tom! Oh my! Out they go! There's one! They need to find a second one, but they're running out of time. A second one lobs it on out. It comes down to one versus one. Italian Mafia, he's got the job done. Time hits critical, and we get one round back for Drexel. And he gets a 3k just for good luck as well. Huge. Hoover, in, as our Gibby. Finnish friends would say. Hoover! Hoover rounder! So, we, give, give me, you, I have I have never once said a Finnish word on broadcast, and you just made me say a Finnish word. You've barked at me all the time in Finnish on broadcast. <sighs> Koira. <laughs> so, <laughs> the thing is, though, remember what we were saying about using the tactical timeout and actually talking about what Kutstein are doing? So, Drexel droned a lot more in the early phases, identified that Kutstein were playing a heavy roam game, and just said... If you're going to defend the whole of the map, that means you're not defending sight. So we're just going to hop in the window, get the case down, and let's be real. Shooting that C4 out of the sky is what won them that round. I don't think that is the moment. It had an when impact, they got though. that, it did, it did, no doubt. If the C4 goes off, the guy there, then, yeah, the round goes, we go 4-0. To me, what I see in all of that is why did no one just hop on the case and have a cover? This is also true. There's, a, there's an easier solution than sending... Listen, I would have loved... I call this the lap time run out, where you send as many bodies through a window at once and see what happens. I would love that they'd done that. Probably wouldn't have worked. But, just someone defuse. Someone on case. Someone cover. That's all it takes. It's, I, I agree with you, but at the same time, they tried to make a play. And sometimes, even if the what we think is the right thing to do, the players think the other thing. Had someone jumped out and got the kill, we say, wow, what a play. So, look, Kutstown lead 3-1. The They're duality moving. of Siege, Gibby. The duality of it. it. It's hard. It's hard. I know. You're a one, you're, you've got a point five KD now, so I do know it's difficult for you sometimes. <laughs> uh, it's, 
Right. Right. There, now, there's lies and slander being thrown here on the cast. No, oh no. And you, you've literally, you've said on the Rainbow Six main channel. Yes, I that have. I have a point four. There was Probably twenty. There was twenty k people watching, and now they think I have a point four. I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth. See, you're using this to mask the fact that you're a point three. I'm a point nine. A point. It's been a rough season. <laughs> a rough season. Okay, we don't. I don't want to talk about what I've had to deal with. Okay. You've stacked with me. Everyone knows what you've been dealing with. <laughs> There's not enough. Of, there's not enough of a finished carry they can do with with one day of playing with you in duos. So nope. minute thir minute thirty left. Throw is going to be able to find one on the toms. Gets us back to a four versus four situation, and a lot of map control has been initially gathered. They're kind of knocking on the door already. Dragon and Shrine a key area. The player here is going to get caught out. There's nothing really Golden can do. Trapped in a corner, no way out. Advantage, now the offense once again. And once again, we talk about this better use of information. They've got a fantastic drone, net, drone, drone network. They know where the threats are, and they're able to deal with them absolutely perfectly. Ducks, finds on the Tribune, and then we find ourselves in a three or a four versus two situation. We've been here before on this site, but as you know, the man of the hour is now shut down, leaving it in a four versus one. Thundee, you've had impressive performances before, but can you find one out of the bag this time? Gets one. Can't find a second. Throw shuts it down. Gets us to one round dividing these two teams, Gibby. I think this is beginning to heat up. This is perfect for Drexel. You take the time out, you win two rounds on the trot, and now momentum is really heavily moving your way. So for Kutstown, if they lose this round, I wouldn't be surprised if that's when they decide to take their time out. You know, you've lost three rounds on the bounce. Things aren't going your way. Work out I'll what's going on. I take can't it now. now. It's a bit late. Well, okay, it's too, uh, it's too late. Okay, yes. I will talk about after that round. Structurally, the game changed. Right, that time it was called by Drexel, and immediately you could sense that there was a better drone understanding. So Drexel went from not knowing what challenges they were facing to understanding exactly what Kutztown had planned for them. That's a structural change. When you feel that and you realize what you had planned and brought out on your defense isn't working anymore, yeah, that's when you need to mix it up. That's when you need to make that call to call that timeout. Now, we're going to the offense. So, see, that's... I got caught out a little bit. I got caught out there a little bit, Gibby. Okay. We just had a side swap around yeah. early. Yeah. This is Siege. This is... This is first to six, <laughs> I'm remember. Used, I'm used to first to seven. I'm sorry. It's okay. We'll get through it together. No, no I'm sorry. I was wrong. Ah! Maybe I was just, wrong on a broadcast. I can't think. Breathe in. Breathe out. It's no. okay. It's okay. I, I hold my I hold my breath the entire broadcast, mate. <laughs> I'm built different. I keep telling you that. That would explain some of the stuff you say. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a lot of things are coming. A lot of things are being made clear right now. <laughs> <laughs> right, what's happening, Gibby? What's so happening? What is happening is siege. Yeah. Siege, oh, this is what? the Kutstown land. So the siege. 30 seconds into the round, this is the early phase where all the attackers are just going to work their way in. Tom Z will open this wall, giving them the line of sight in towards Dragon from that area of the map. We're going to see a typical knock entry on the ground floor. Turn on your utility, don't take out any cams, be as sneaky and quiet as possible, and see if you can find a freebie in the early stages. And, well, Tom Z... Has a little look around and goes, I didn't think that Bandit was going to be tricking that single wall. But luckily for him, the Bandit was a half a second too early with it. With that trick, and now Tom Z might be able to open he that wall. It. Three, two, no, one, oh. boom. Now they focus on the double wall to try to get that open and pinch the side. But Brain Axe hits a big kill. And that one under the knock is huge because now the Bandit can trick that wall. And Thatcher will need to work very, very well with that Thermite to get it open. The big thing about that is we lost both. So, so Thony had used both of the nades to clear the band that wires off that single wall and try and do it off the main breach. Throb's going to be able to find Tom's that shotgun up close and personal. And this round gets a little bit sketchy. You've got no nades remaining. So you've used all four of your available HE grenades. So you can't displace these key positions, whether you're on the same level or down below. And you've got single wall, and that's about it. And if uh, you lose Tribune here, things get a little bit harder. 
I think a rotation needs to happen. You need to start pushing a different side completely. A shotgun goes off. We see Golden get set on the trobe. A trade happens. And this could be huge. A Tribune can get at least one from this one. Plays it carefully and does so. We're back in this one for Kurtzstown. They need to play this very carefully though and not get over aggressive. They need to control their tempo and their pace. They still got a lot of time to work with. Find the threats. Find them and pick them apart slowly. But Ducks gets Tribune. Makes it a second on the Golden. Now in a one versus three. This round is all but done. As a, this is going to be a problem. Italian Mafia is low HP. If at Zio can hit that one, it gives him a chance. But now we're seeing the Echo Drones being used to just disorientate and discourage any sort of a push through the single wall. And Italian Mafia hits the kill with the bearing nine. But whip it. Look at the we're utility. Level. Look at the utility. They didn't take I'm stun looking. grades. And they didn't take flash grades, right? They took four claymores. They didn't use a single one. Yes, there wasn't any runouts, but if you're not going to even use the claymores, take flash grenades. Take another bit of utility that you can use to assist with the push, because if you're not worried about them running out, and you have players like Tribune and Thunder who can push in the site, enable them more. Use that secondary utility to assist the push. I, You know, Gibby, it's a dark day for the parish. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. I've just said I agree with you. Again. Three it's times tonight. Thing. Three times. Oh, don't don't remind me. This is so. I, I talked. To, I, I kind of ends about this entire Black Stairs area. What we've seen here is basically the oldest iteration of what teams do. A shield on that rotate. A rotate set up, and I do like the little touch of that Zami Kiba barricade put at the very top of those stairs. If you want to know what that does, basically it means as you walk up those stairs, it restricts your angle. You can't clear the player on the shield as easily. You have to push a lot deeper all the top of the stairs. And of course, that leads you exposed to the hallway. And when peeking that angle, you're a lot more vulnerable when you do that. So again, a small thing that's going to make that position a lot more, lot more tenable. And again, it's why the theory of this site alone is one of the most... Well, this position is, is one of the big puzzles to solve on Sky. And we've seen loads of different ways the attackers have attempted to do it in the past. Now, big change from earlier games today, and it had it was used a little bit in the last ma or last round, was the fact we're seeing Echo be played a little bit more. Bearing nine in the back pocket as well. I, I wonder if Italian Mafia is rocking the shotgun, the supernova, in tandem with that bearing nine. It is. And the supernova got a little bit of a buff. It's great for site setup. You know, the fact that the supernova is a little bit more viable I'm as I'm gonna a actually say, I'm no no no. It is it is awful for making rotates. Don't even it is the <laughs> worst thing I've ever made rotates in my life. I love it. It's a little bit of Japanese technology, but no, I'm not for rotates. I'd rather use anything else. A bailiff anything. It's awful for it. Yeah, it's look, I'm trying to find the positives here, but I do like you the supernova you can and fights. You literally one-tap someone from a mile away, Gibby. That's, mm -hmm. that's the benefit. You, someone peeks you from, like, a villa away, they're dead. And, well, we'll see if it works. Italian Mafia hasn't had to use it yet. The Bearing 9's been the weapon of choice. Trob deploying a little bit of verticality on the map as well as he stands on top of that tea table inside of tea room. Looking down and below to catch any sneaky Kutstown players as they make their way in. And... The one thing could start the Drexel are doing really good on these two attacks so far as well. Stalling. Forcing Kutstown to slow down the pace a little bit and picking up free kills. But Tribune is going to open up his tally in this round with the nade from below on the Trob. And that's a problem. Trob has been a bit of a menace so far. Tribune gets another one as he's starting to slowly get that kill count up further again. Tom Z will Ash charge open the soft wall and all of a sudden they've got a direct avenue and towards that karaoke site. Rai is now thinking about rotating back towards site as Dux is going to get in a gunfight with Tribune. Both players getting a little bit of damage there. Brainax is still focused on this karaoke push. Nobody from Kutstown is... That's not karaoke, Gibby. That's Geisha. Geisha. That's Geisha. Geisha. The most iconic... The most iconic room in the game! Tribune, Tribune finds a third, though. Dux is going to be that victim of one. Is What's Tribune on for now? Won't be an ace. It might be a 4k. Thumbleep is able to get one of the Brain Axe and it's going to be a problem. The Wi Fi guy will get one more trader back. But the case will go down. This round is going to be a difficult one. This retake is immensely challenging. You got one player on the rappel and it's going to be Azio who gets that final pick and shuts it down. Curse Town finally stem the damage, get themselves back in the lead. But Gibby, who was it, Geisha? Come on. Everybody. Ghosts. Yeah? It was fighting demons. Like you with those chicken wings. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Giddy. It is, for myself and Giddy, it is 2 a.m. right now. And uh, Gibson has lost the plot completely. You know, you know that I was one of the first people to cast this map when I came into the competitive pool in Europe. I think, so this is, this is, yes. this is going to be craziness, but it was a, a university league in EU called Buell. And, <laughs> and it was like a day after this map got out of the competitive pool. I raise you that. I raise you that. I had the very first rework chalet comp game ever oh. in Benelux. Oh, it's a bit of you that. Of me. But I think it was the first the first game in Europe on this map, and my, the calls it came in a day later. Getting the calls right was an absolute nightmare. <laughs> it was like, do you know what? He's in that we're room. Call, He's over there. He's here. That. Uh. It was like, I we'll mean, call every really room calls. geisha. It's like, we'll call every room geisha and see if anyone notices. I mean, you, Gibby, you don't you, Gibby, you, I don't think you know the calls now anyway. You know I don't. I'm 75 years old. And it's 2017. Congrats. You, you, were, you were 74 at the, early, at the start of the stream. Congrats, man. 75. I was Good actually up, 20 when I met you, and you've aged me that much. You're welcome. I've stolen, I've stolen your soul. Your life essence belongs to me. <laughs> Whatever happened, your old Jew? <laughs> Listen, uh, we don't talk about that, all right? That's, some people got skeletons in their closet, and well, sometimes they're figurative, sometimes they're literal, you know? Mm -hmm. We'll move on, we'll move on, we'll pretend. <laughs> Just, if, any, reasons we will. If, if anyone in law enforcement is listening, this is all in jest. Don't listen. Yes, it's all, it's, all, it's all jokes, all jokes among friends, right, guys? Right, chat? <laughs> So, let's get back into it. Kutstown winning 4-3. Won their, that round on attack after Drexel managed to get the size level. Three rounds apiece. Tom Z getting aggressive on the entry. Ash with the kiss in the back pocket as well, by the way. Keep an eye on how that one is going to play out over the course of the round. We saw Gridlock toss a couple of those out on the door. The double door to prevent the run out as well. And, well, Brain Axe is going to push it. It looks like it's time to execute. Smoke going out on site. Traub is going to take someone down with a cap can tribute. We'll get the kill on the Brian Axe inside a barbecue. Case is going down again. Traub gets the kill on the Thunder as he's holding this position very well. Mistakes a banister for ahead, but it's okay because he's still having pretty big impact on this round as he gets a C4. Wasn't Tribune peak? Wasn't just peak? Tribune, please peak. He's building please suspense. Don't, don't leave, he's building don't suspense. Don't leave me in anticipation like this. Peak the cap can. Peak him, please. He's so close. Cap can on the corner. Are they oblivious to each other? I think they are. Surely you'd have to, you'd have to hear it, right? There oh, we go. There it is. All right, gets the freebie. Gets it now. That's the second kill in the round for Tribune. Three versus three. A minute left to work with. You've got the opening on the site, but Tribune's left in DBNO. Gets caught out. And gets finished off by Ducks. Another one in Italian Mafia finds a second in the round. That case shouldn't go down. Azio might be able to stick this one out. Gets himself on an active one versus two, but pops up in the case and gets shut down. Gibby, once again, we find ourselves level. Does that mean that we're going to see every round in regulation? I think it does. It, it does. That's it, a brief call. Like, I'm, re, I'm recalibrating my brain because it's best of six. First to six. Yes. <laughs> I'm brilliant. I, numbers, numbers are like a... I'm not a counting type of guy. I agree. I, plus one. You are an accountant, Gibby. That's your job. No, I agree that you're not a numbers guy. Oh, okay. I thought you were agreeing that you don't also... Although, I will say, I wouldn't let you do my taxes. So, I, you, I don't know how good an accountant you really are. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> First off... Yes. I wouldn't trust me to do anybody's taxes. The That's one person whose taxes I would want to do is yours. Hey, 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 listen. <laughs> I feel I feel like you wouldn't do a good... I feel like you'd, you'd, you'd do me dirty on that, actually. I've got a suspicion you would. You don't know something crazy, right? And this is... this, oh, this is tell me. For, for us Europeans, this is mental. In America, all of the viewers and all the players, they have to do their own taxes. Give me, I'm gonna I'm gonna break your heart here. I do that as well. That's because I'm a freelancer. You've never paid a tax in your life, mate. I have! I have! 
<laughs> you've broken me. You took nine rounds of the grand final, Whoa. you've broken me, Gibby. What's Once going again, on? if any members of Law Enforcement are watching, this is all a jest. <laughs> so, round nine is underway. Two minutes and 44 seconds on the clock. One of these sides will move to match point if they're able to take the lead in this round. There is a Frostmatt in play. There is an Echo once more. You've got smoke from Rifi to delay the push a little bit more. And Kutstown kind of struggling to break down this defense that Drex put up. The defense has just been set up to slow them down and make sure that they can't get into sight very early. Tribune will begin the drone. Look, he's checking all of his corners, checking below. You cannot afford to miss drone in a scenario like this. This is a best of one. This round is to move on to match point for one of these two sides. Any mistake that is made will be punished. This is one of the most difficult rounds to find yourself in a player, right? You make a mistake in this round and you could lead your team to being on map point disadvantage. A brilliant nade down below. Good guesstimation of what arrived and that's going to be Italian Mafia off the board. You'll lose that echo. You'll lose the active use of those yokai drones. That is huge. That is huge. That means that late plant can go down. That's massive. So, now they're just going to wait to get the single wall open again. I think they used a nade from below to get rid of that utility, which... A smart know, choice, personally. Yeah, so you've got it open. You know, there was a chance that maybe Banda could have been nearby as well, so you could have picked up a free kill on that one as well. But looking at the utility game now, once more, you've got three claymores. They've, they've used one this time around, and you've got two smokes. How can you use that utility now to win you the room? Well, one way we've seen it in the past is toss those smoke grenades deep. Give yourself a position to move in. Tom Z's got himself a couple of footsteps that he can scan, and he finds smoke way off in the distance. And again, look, being a defender, just getting scanned whip it can cause you some problems. It just it gets into your mental. It's one of those things going to sit in the back of your head, but Tom was about, about to say on a huge position. He's going to act as that pressure relief for his team, off on a separate push, but he's by himself. He won't get traded. That picks are free. We'll lose Tribune to Trobe, who finds that with the Sterling SMG. 35 seconds. Advantage of the defense. Drexel just need to hold on, but the Nook seemingly has already got all the way in, has dropped prone. We'll try and creep forward, and that, that resistance, that suppression of sound might be enough to get them to sneak on in, and we will see one trader back. This this needs to be huge, as Thundee will find his 3k in this round, but needs to find even more. The smoke will choke out Golden. It's all down the knock. He finds a quad, oh but it's no! going to be a team kill. Oh, no. It's all down to you alone. you got to get a race. Otherwise, your team goes on this disadvantage. Oh, tantalizing close by a feeling. Triple Zero is calling. And that might be all she wrote for the round. He'll try and stick it. Triple Zero. It's there. It's arriving. The anticipation build. Will he get it down? No, he doesn't. Right by you. finds it. And we're on map and championship point for Drexel. That team kill right there cost them the round. We said that any mistake would be punished. And it was. And now Drexel are on match point. Kutstown take their time out. The only opportunity they have left to do so. Will they be able to use it to claw their way back into this one? Or will Drexel finish this one here and now? And whip it, I'm looking at the kill feed. Traub has gone nuclear for Drexel compared to the rest of the night. You know, Talia Mafia, nine kills. Dux has been eight. Three players leading the way for their side. The biggest surprise for me is Tribune eight, only getting eight kills for him in nine rounds to me is shutting him down based on how he's played tonight. Gibby. Gibby, Gibby, Gibby. My heart cries out for Thundy in that situation. He was feeling himself. He was on a heater. He could see. He could see the, the, the glory of that moment. A single pixel moved. Single pixel out of place. Unfortunately, it was his teammate sends to the ether. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. There's no other way to put that. Timeout called. Mental reset. You go again. One more round. Do or die. End of regulation. Either Kirstown, the hosts of this competition, can get themselves overtime, or Drexel crown themselves champion right here, right now. It was a nice shot, though, wasn't it? He, he absolutely oh, fried. So clean. He oh, I was fried. right. Okay, like, <laughs> well, in all fairness, right, right, Dad, and nice shot. I put that in chat straight away. I've just got fried. I'd be, I'd be. Uh, that's fair enough. <laughs> it's like, 
it's one of those ones you're in the heat of the moment you see a little bit of movement in sight and you just shoot it and he was unfortunate and that could be the mistake that costs the game for Kutstown. and you know as much as we say he threw the round he's the one that gave them the chance they had no right to even get into that scenario where it was a 2v1 for Kutstown. but he made a big play and unfortunately, it all just came apart at the last moment. So Karaoke Tea Room will be the dance floor for the very last round in regulation. But will Kutstown be dancing their way into overtime? Or will Drexel be your champions of the Kutstown LAN? We're going to know in the next 2 minutes and 45 seconds. What a game this has been. Both teams pushed it to the limit. I don't know if overtime is calling. Kutstown certainly have a good chance of doing it. Once again, they'll be faced with an extension all the way. They'll be clearing from the softest side. That will be their intention. A full map clear. How can Drexel slow this down? What can they present? What puzzles will they throw in the way of this one? A good drone network down below knows and clears that entryway. And imagine Nook on Thunder will once again act as that backstab, that catalyst in these key moments. Very tentative few moments to begin this round. Well, every moment is tentative now for Kutstown. You can't afford to give anything away to Drexel for free. Drexel have played really well in this final so far. One Kiba barrier has been removed. Tomzy is just harassing that Azami with those little zaps of the laser. But, of course, only one HP taken every single time. He manages to do so. And now Golden will begin to enter through the building. He's pushed into office already. It's going to begin moving. Tribune as well steps on up. They've got control of Dragon nice and early, but Tribune's got to get rid of this Echo Drone because it's going to cause him some problems, and he does take some damage as Rifi is pushing off of the damage. I like the way Drexel have decided, okay, we're going to give you this part of the map, but we're going to use our utility to cause problems for you once you get there. Showing up the flanks, Claymore's placed, minute just to work with, and the opening pick goes to Thundee. The man of the hour, the starlight of that previous round, gets the opening here, huge, and he's down below by himself, acting as that, that catalyst, that fifth player that's just gonna try and strike and find those weaknesses. He's probing, he's looking for a way in, and he's, well, the chat says, he's patient, he's waiting, he's trying to find something, Nook is so influential. Will it be too little too late? 50 seconds, give me less than a minute to work with. And they still need to find the front line, but Thunder finds a second one. This is his world, we simply live in it. Tom's gonna get one with the Brain Axe. Overtime is calling, and it's only one more to find. It's all down the right fight, guy. 30 seconds in the Azami. High impact, but shut down by Thunder on the look. Give me, we're going to overtime. Is there any other way you'd want a final to go? Honestly, you nope. gotta go to overtime for a final. Round 11, Kutstown on attack. Drexel getting the benefit of defending first, which means that if they win this round, they're guaranteed at least one more defense on match point. Kutstown, if they can break the server right now and win this round on attack, it'll cause a lot of problems for Drexel. Now, once again, we're seeing the impact that a tactical timeout can have on a game. And once again, Whippet, the one thing we're noticing, once the tactical timeout is taken, the drone game ha improves tenfold. Attackers need to locate the better your drone game, the better your chance of winning. But Gibby, you know what I'm going to say about that round? That was redemption for Thundee. Yes. That was redemption. He's on a heater right now. 12 and 8. He's come alive these last couple of rounds. And on that nook, he's been so, so key. On the site, that he nearly clawed his team back. They go once again. Can they get themselves on championship point on the offense? That would be huge. You said break the serve. Get themselves on their defense. This, give me this is the type of final I love. Absolutely every single ma moment, every action, every second now matters. Overtime now begins. What a match it's been. Well, the scenario is simple. Once again, you're playing for the benefit of getting match point on a defense on this map. Kutstown win this one. They will defend for the win. Drexel win this one. They're guaranteed at the very least to get to defend for the win in the early stages. So let's have a look at the attacking lineup that's being brought. Well, remember we were talking about utility and how they were bringing claymores on the Kutstown side, but weren't necessarily using them. Look at the lineup this time. They're bringing six stone grenades and two nades. 
which means that when you go for the execute, when you go for the push, when you want to get aggressive, you're not just relying on gun skill alone. Way better dis distribution of utility. The one thing I will say, the only HGs you have on the Nook. Nook's not going to be with the primary front of this force, and likely you're going to send Thunder in down below, and he's going to use those nades to clear the utility of that single wall. Clear any key shields if needs be, or that double wall, the impact's there. That's going to be his plan, and actually, no. They're not going for the normal default push. They're going to try and creep their way in all the way from Geisha. A good setup, and this is going to be a very difficult one. Though. Once you get to that shrine doorway, you've got no real option, no real breach potential. you kind of just got to walk on in. That could be a problem. It definitely will be. So... Kurtzstein have began to take a lot of map control already, but no names have been taken on the kill feed just yet. You can see the site off in the distance, and it's a very different push than what we've seen earlier today. They've gone for a complete push from east to west as they make their way inside. Thunday, the man who has had a massive impact on the attack so far, will look to be the first point of contact. Looks down toaster, make sure nobody's in position. Tom is just being a problem for the side on this area of the map. On the ash this time, instead of taking the hard breach. But there's one minute to go. Not a single player has fallen with but We're going to have a pretty explosive 55 seconds. The opening pick of this round could decide who was on the map point. That is simple as. Every second becomes critical. The player behind Dragon is the front line. And he nearly gets caught, but Thundee knows the influence he can have. Right, like I guess the opening pick for an instantaneous trade. A C4 sent out Tribune's next to fall. The Yokai scones happen, but everything is going to get a little bit tense. And Rifle Guy finds a second one, but so does Thundee. Three versus two, and once again, the Nook needs to find a way in. It's going to be Azio and Thundee, the last two standing. 24 seconds, Gibby. They've got a charge on in. They've got a limited number of entry ways and avenues to try and work it. It's down to what your gun can do. And we've seen them in this position once before. Hopefully a TK won't be the tail of the tape this time around. He'll creep his way in. 10 seconds to make something work. Find some magic. Find something. And he's going to waltz on in his side. Looks one way. As he gets one pick. He'll try and find a second. But caught out by the cross with a player prone behind desk. And we're going to go map and championship point for Drexel. And this is heartbreaking for Kutztown. They now need to win an attack if they want to win this game. But they get to defend once. Drexel, they're in the same scenario. You win this attack, you're winning the championship. Kutztown started this whole series on a ground floor defense. This time, they're going to Exhibition Office as the last place to play. A site which has actually had a surprisingly good defensive win rate. It's probably one of the sites that you would say attackers have a little bit more joy on whenever they come to Theme Park. And looking at the defensive lineup theme there, Park? Theme Park, look, my brain, it's late. It's nearly 3 a.m. here. It's Skyscraper. But yeah, I mean, this is prime ranked hours. Don't act like I've not seen you awake at this time before. I've never been awake when I play ranked. I'm just simply... <laughs> I'm simply just a member of the stack. I am an NPC. Is that different from normal? Well, you're an NPC in real life, so... W between the two of us, we, we live a pretty, Mate, pretty NPC life. I don't exist outside of the siege. <laughs> not siege, not there. Simple as. So, Gibby. This could be our very last round of the day. This could be it. We could crown a champion. Drexel could walk Ma away from this offense. They could get it done. Match series. Oh, thank God they changed off Monty. <sighs> I'm glad. I'm glad. I had, I, I had an actual heart palpitation when I saw that. That scared me. For, for context, myself and Gibby have witnessed. Have we too witnessed many. too many match point Monty's? Work the opposite way. So I don't ever want to see a team deal with that again. But for Kurt Sam, on your defense, you need to play this perfectly. You can't overextend. You can't mix risks. This is where you need to play the safest siege you've ever done. Everything you now need to do is be calculated. First pick, you need it. You really can't make an argument against that. And with, oh, well. Timing. Damage and he picks that wide. That is absolutely huge. Opening pick for Thunder, who's come alive late on in this series. Gets that pick. One of the shields being placed and deployed, but no more. That's the only one that goes down. The breach will get opened. Avenue's available. The opening pick for Kurt Sam. Absolutely critical. No.
Kutstown just need to hold their nerve. Do not give anything away for free to Drexel. Drexel now need to force the issue. You're a, you're a player down. You need to now force the issue. The player you've lost is Trab. Trab has been going absolutely nuclear so far this series. 12 kills over the course of this game so far. So Reach is now open. Rifi guy will go on the repel and just look in towards site, trying to find the free kill that could be provided. And oh no. I thought for a second there might be an attempt at a wall buying. Tom Z had a lot of damage there in the distance, but there will be Golden taken down by Rifi Guy. Dundee and Tom Z have those C4s in the back pocket, but going to work below will be the Nook trying to find a free kill onto one of those players. But now there's one on the stairs. I saw a silhouette in the stairs, whoop it. Brian Axe yes, has absolutely did. no clue. No information. The drones haven't spotted that one out yet, and they've got no clue. He is there. Then they work with four versus four. And the Nux got the advantage. That quiet, that sneaky, that stealth attribute could be massive, but patience is a virtue. And Goyo gives away that position. That could have been brutal, but Tom's going to get slain. Three versus three, a level trade once again. 40 seconds to work with. And this is exactly what you want, down to the narrowest of margins. Wounded players on Kurtzson, however, could be a factor. A single stray round is enough to find from the R Tribune in the grave. Rainax might be able to walk on up and has the vertical angle. That could be huge and impactful for Kibby. Less than 30 seconds. Rainax could be the linchpin. Well, fires off the first couple of shots, but aggressively steps up into VIP. Now, Atsio takes down Ducks. It's now a three versus two. Rifi makes it a 2v2. Brianax swings around the corner, misses the shots. Ten seconds to go. Rifi guy takes down Tundi. 20 HP Tribune. 20 HP hits the double Tribune. I'm telling you, 20 HP is the magic number as he clutches that one out. We are going all the way in the last game of this tournament every single round you could play to close this one out one last dance between these teams cuts down on the offense once again fundy on that nook has been spectacular Drexel have looked at times to put up a steadfast defense and not to give an inch. This, this is what I love, Gibby. A final go in the distance. What more is there to want? The best way. The two best teams making their way into the final. And it is going all the way. Will the hometown be taking this one or will Drexel steal this one away? <sighs> but what is it about Tribune whenever that HP... It's 20. The man is a menace. I'm still... I'm trying to catch my breath, Gibby. Tribune has been a little bit quiet this map. In, in all respects, continuing what we've seen so far. 20 HP comes down to a 2v1. It was a quick fire one. But gets the job done. Saves his team. And gets us to this round. Round 13. In this format, that's it. End of the road. Last round. Last map. This is it. Everything has led to this moment. The stakes, they're so high. And what you've just listened to, folks, is the Irish version of Eminem. What? You got one shot. One shot. One opportunity. Sees everything you ever wanted. One moment. It's too late for that, kid. It's too late. Cast the siege, Gibby. It's too late for this. I mean, I've never casted a round of siege in my life. You're not real, wake up. <laughs> so, speaking of waking up, both of these sides have one more chance to win this tournament. Drexel on defense, so already you feel like the, the favor is slightly pointing their way. Cap can trap will be dealt with early, would be an absolute shame. Well, actually, it's Tribune. If Tribune steps into that cap can trap, he wins the round when he hits 20 HP. So, let's see if it, that will have an impact on this round. But... I want to see Kutstown drone really effectively this time around. I want to see Drexel just slow down the pace and make it really difficult for Kutstown because once you get into a 20 second push, everything, everything goes mental. You don't know what's going on, who's going where. All you need to know is you take down the defuse, the guy with the case, you win the game. Vertical control, so key, so impactful on this site, the bearing nine. A little bit more, a little bit more tameable 
since the muzzle brake changes has arrived. Wi-Fi guy holds up, posts up inside a restaurant, which is a blue silhouette quite close. And I think Tom's just wandering into yep. a cat can trap. Yep. He'll be wary now of every single door frame he'll have to get close to. And you'd imagine there's at least one or two of those closer to sight. These castle barriers now face a problem. He can't clear this, at least in a timely fashion, meaning he might have to give up on this position completely. Thumbly looks to get a little bit closer and more direct to sight. He'll waltz on in and he'll get that one pick on the throw, but gets himself instantaneously traded. That is your X Factor. Thumbly has been that guy so many times but he can make no more impact 50 seconds remain 50 seconds to go and tribune will find one on to rifi guy four versus three the numbers in the favor of kutstown there's another kill atzio was the one to make it a four versus two 40 seconds to go kutstown now can see they can smell that series victory that championship victory in this land final Tom Z is getting droned in, so they're still not forgetting their A, Bs, and Cs of Siege as he sneaks closer and closer to Barbecue Door. Echo still alive and kicking, playing on that top floor. He can deny this with 20 seconds to go. We've seen it before in a major. Will Echo be the one that clutches this one out? Docs, he finds the kill on Atsio. It's a 3v2 now. As he's going to get checked out. Player on the hunt. Seven, six, five. Diffuser is in hand. A swing into the other room. Tribune is going to put the case. Time it. is going to go. Echo should win this one. There you have it. Drexel gets the win. And Kutstown lose. And it's an Echo drone that has the final say. Congratulations, Drexel University. Your 2023 Kutstown University land champions. There is no more heartbreaking way to lose a final than a Yokai drone. On the ceiling above you, triple zero beckons and calls only for that sonic blast to crush your championship dreams. Drexel, as you say, Gibby, are your champions. What a final that was. Pushed each other to the absolute limit to all the maps played in this format. And what a game it was. It was a blast. It's been a brilliant tournament to be involved with as well. You know, you and I had chat after SI saying that being there and watching it got us really in the mood to do a cast again. And thankfully, we didn't have to wait too long. But, but there's a couple of very important people that we got to thank. First off, I think we got to thank the viewers. You know, you guys kept us company the whole night. I hope you enjoyed the broadcast as a whole. I'm going to thank Corbeck and Blinks, the other or Binks, the other two casters tonight. They did a fantastic job. Our great producer, Saffron. All the guys at Now Loading Esports for producing tonight's event. But whip it. We've got to thank all the teams as well, don't we? So we're going to send some love to Kutztown Uni, Drexel University, West Virginia Wesleyan College, Robert Morris, the University of Cincinnati, and Lebanon Valley College. And I hate to have to do this, but but thank you too for being my duo on the night. It's been okay. It's been it's been you know what, Gibby? I'll, I'll I'll share the I'll share the opinion. Yeah, thank you. It was it was bearable to work alongside you once again. Oh, of course, thank you for for Kurtzland University for hosting this thing. It, it, this was an absolute blast from our perspective. The work and every game absolutely provided. It's been a wonderful event, Gibby. Anything you want to say? Well. Until next time is all I got to say. Stay safe, everybody. Enjoy the game, and we'll see you all next time.